पंद्रह सौ प्री लोडेड गानो वाला की पैड फोन धमाकेदार साउंड के साथ कारवा मोबाइल हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे दिस डिस्कोर्स इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एंड आचार्य ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वाइड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट मैटर सो आई रिक्वेस्ट please try to hear with rapt attention all of us are working very hard with just one aim in life just one aim but we have many desires one may ask yes the endeavors could be many but the aim is one and that is happiness we think if we become very rich very knowledgeable very beautiful very learned have good family members and friends with us that will make us very very happy and this is the fundamental mistake that we make in our attempt to become happy why fundamental mistake because we are seeing all those people who have achieved all these things the richest person the best ceo of all times the best celebrity of all times on the planet the best of the sportsmen they are all unhappy anxious and many times depressed for many many years if not months what is the mistake that everybody is committing the same mistake happened with arjuna also arjuna also was materially a very very successful person he was a very great general one of the greatest fighters he had very good looks he had very nice family he was a very sharp moralist had a very kind and loving family but despite all these achievements which we think will make us happy arjuna was not happy what is a mistake so we have to always remember this example which the shastras give patanga we all know a moth how moth is very much convinced if i just get closer and jump into fire i would become very happy the moth is captivated by the vision of the fire in a similar fashion we are captivated by these opulences materialistic enjoyments of mind and body and we think if i can just get closer and enjoy all these things i would become very very happy in life and this is a mistake just like a moth jumps into fire and realizes another feature of fire which is heat we realize another very painful feature of this material world birth death old age disease and unlimited anxieties and complexities so just like a moth we are jumping into so many miseries getting attracted by the green grass on the other side materialistic success so we should take guidance from wise people we cannot concoct our own formula for happiness h2 plus o2 is water there is a standard way for making water we cannot create water out of anything else in a similar fashion there is a standard formula for happiness we cannot manufacture our own way to become happy just like the sweet when you put it on your tongue you feel very good sensation that is a design of the tongue that is a way you can enjoy relish the enjoyment of taste in a similar fashion it is very important to have knowledge about our own self if we want self satisfaction and happiness in life and this knowledge is so important that the supreme personality of god had lord krishna had to come descend down incarnate to explain it to all of us through the medium of arjuna 
सो लॉर्ड कृष्णा एक्सप्लेन टू अर्जुन वासांसी जीर्णानी यथा विहाय जस्ट लाइक वी चेंज क्लोथ वेन द क्लोथ बिकम ओल्ड वी चेंज द बॉडीज वी आर इटरनल वी आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस बॉडी होल लाइफ वी वर्क वेरी हार्ड जस्ट टू सेटिस्फाई द एक्सटर्नल्स नॉट केयरिंग अबाउट आर ओन सेल्फ आई एम कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दिस बॉडी एंड दिस नॉलेज ऑफ सेल्फ स्पिरिट सोल वॉट इज स्पिरिट सोल एंड हाउ टू सेटिस्फाई द स्पिरिट सोल इज एक्सप्लेन वेरी ब्यूटिफुली इन द स्क्रिप्चर्स यथा तरोर मूल निशेचन तृप्यंती तत्र स्कंद बुझोप शाका नो बडी हैज दिस नॉलेज इवन दो सम पीपल आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड आई एम नॉट द बॉडी आई एम स्पिरिट सोल बट दे डो नॉट अंडरस्टैंड फर्दर वॉट इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ द स्पिरिट सोल एंड हाउ टू सेटिस्फाई द स्पिरिट सोल If I stop all the hard works of simply satisfying my external dress I understand putting food stuffs on the dress will not satisfy me but this does not give me positive knowledge of what will satisfy me and that knowledge the scriptures mention yatha tarur mool nishechanena the mool the root of the tree is to be watered if you want to nourish the entire tree we need to put the food stuffs in the stomach if all the limbs of the body have to be healthy in a similar fashion this most important knowledge is explained in the upanishads and in the bhagavad gita that the soul is part and parcel of super soul supreme lord god krishna explains to arjuna mama evansho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana you are always my ansha my part and parcel just like the finger is part and parcel of this body if this knowledge is not there with the finger and finger tries to put in some other body in some other mouth or in some other place so finger cannot be happy in a similar fashion we are trying to serve so many people but we are not engaging ourselves in the service of god and we are part and parcel that is the design of the soul soul is connected to god just like the leaf is connected to the root of the tree the limbs of the body are connected to stomach so only when the food stuffs are fed to the stomach finger all the limbs get nourished in a similar fashion the message of bhagavad gita is devotional service unto the supreme lord so who is that supreme lord who is god and how do we understand i am different from this body and what is the way of satisfying the supreme soul this wonderful knowledge of the science of self the super self this material creation the purpose and all the connected categories is very beautifully explained in bhagavad gita so if all the knowledge of the upanishads is compared to cow which explains the fundamentals of spiritual life the most important essence of that knowledge just like the most important essence of cow is milk so it is explained in the glorification of gita sarvopanishado gavo dogdha gopal nandana partho vatsa sudhir bhokta dugdham gita amritam mahat If all the knowledge of Upanishads is compared to cow the wonderful knowledge which all the western scientists Heisenberg Niels Bohr Nikola Tesla all of them were very deeply studying the essence of that knowledge is Bhagavad Gita and who is the milkman who is taking out this essence of all the Upanishads he is Gopal Nandanaha Lord Krishna supreme lord himself and Arjuna is vatsa compared to calf and the milk is drank by other people aside from the calf and they are called sudhir sudhir bhokta so if we want to relish this essence of the upanishads we have to have this quality of being sudhir very very sober senses are controlled satisfied in all circumstances but even if we are not so sudhir need not worry simply by hearing this message with rapt attention we will become sudhir and then we will realize this knowledge So I am very glad that we are going to discuss this knowledge. My name is Gaur Mandal Das from Hari Krishna Movement. I congratulate all of you. Now we are going to realize the most important knowledge in the corpus of all the Upanishadic knowledge which is called the Bhagavad Gita. If we assimilate this nicely, 
and spread this knowledge to everyone the whole world will become very very happy so let us start with chapter 1 of bhagavad gita the only qualification is hearing with attention so 5000 years ago there was a rift in the family of the kurus who were the rulers of hastinapur pandavas were the rightful heirs to the throne but their uncle dhritarashtra who was ruling on their behalf pandavas who were yet to come of age wanted his sons to occupy the throne so pandavas were very liberal they told it is fine let our brothers rule we are not greedy but we are kshatriyas we cannot have any other occupation kshatriya is but trained to rule and in this way maintain his livelihood so please give us at least five villages on being denied any piece of land whatsoever even equaling the tip of a needle when all the peaceful negotiations failed finally a war was declared rather it became the world war all the kings of the world got divided into two parties kauravas and pandavas and dhritarashtra who was the king king is supposed to lead the fight but because he was blind he could not join so dhritarashtra is sitting in his own palace with his secretary sanjay who was a student of vedavyas and by the mercy of vedavyas he was able to envision everything that is happening on the battlefield of kurukshetra so this discussion between sanjay and dhritarashtra as explained in the great historical epic mahabharat forms the basis of all the philosophy of bhagavad gita so let us start with chapter number 1 observing the armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra dhritarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kurukshetre समेतायुत्सव मं का पांडवाश्चवत संजय धृतराष्ट्र सेड ओ संजय आफ्टर असेंबलिंग इन द प्लेस ऑफ पिलग्रिमेज एट कुरुक्षेत्र वॉट डिड माय सन्स एंड द सन्स ऑफ पांडू डू बीइंग डिजायरस टू फाइट द फोरमोस्ट थिंग before we even begin to hear the vedic knowledge or the knowledge of bhagavad gita is understanding verifying the source we would have got this confusion or we should think now that bhagavad gita has got so many editions and similar is the case with other vedic literatures and every edition is conveying a unique meaning so how do we understand which is the right meaning the original sense what krishna wanted to convey to arjuna this is very important to discover so we should not simply start hearing from any source otherwise it is told it can create disaster in our spiritual life people who have done commentaries which are very famous on bhagavad gita they describe oh it is actually not a historical incident it is an allegorical narrative the kurukshetra is human body pandavas are the five senses and kauravas are hundred vices within the body and this battle is our internal struggle of senses to overcome the vices but this is very wrong understanding because it is explained in various parts of the vedas kurukshetra dharmam achare there is reference of kurukshetra as dharma kshetra as dhritarashtra is speaking here If you have to perform dharma any religious activities go to the pilgrimage dharma kshetra of kurukshetra kurukshetra dharmam acharet so kurukshetra is considered and even now we know it is a geographical location so why this discrepancy happens it is because people do not know how to take the right knowledge the right knowledge original intent is very carefully preserved and passed on the succession of disciples in schools called parampara or sampraday so it is told in the padma puran in garg samhita which are those sampradays vedic schools from which you should get this knowledge so it is said sampraday vihinaye mantraste nishfala matah 
श्री ब्रह्म रुद्र सनका वैष्णवाश्रिति पावना यू मे बी वेरी हैप्पी ओ आई हैव रेड दिस वेरी नाइस मंत्र इन द वेदास और गीता आई एम चैंटिंग दिस एवरी डे बट द वेदास आर टेलिंग इफ यू हैव नॉट रिसीव्ड इट इन परंपरा निष्फल मत दैट इज निष्फल ऑफ नो यूज अदर प्लेस इज वेदास मेन्शन निष्फल स्मृत so nishfal it is useless if it is sampraday bihin that is why it is important to stick very carefully to one sampraday or disciplic succession so which are these disciplic successions how do we find so it is mentioned uh, as i quoted in this verse shri brahma rudra sanaka first sampraday is shri then brahma lord krishna gave this knowledge to goddess lakshmi then lord brahma is another immediate disciple Lord Shiva is also another immediate disciple, and the fourth sampradaya is that of fourth sampradaya is that of Kumaras, the sons of Brahma. So they pass this knowledge to their disciples, and then they decide it among our disciples who can pass it without any change, who has understood the perfect meaning, and in this way he was declared the next guru. Then that guru chose another perfect person who can pass it on without any change. so sanskrit is such a wonderful language even in english a statement can have many many meanings what to speak of sanskrit which means most reformed so every verse of sanskrit can have 60 70 or many more meanings so we have to understand in this parampara krishna explained to brahma brahma explained to narad narad explained to vedvyas he explained to madhvacharya this called brahma sampraday and we humbly belong to this brahma sampraday which is one of the four original sampradayas to pass this knowledge without any change and not only the original meaning but the spiritual potency is also passed on in this succession we can memorize all the shlokas of the vedas and bhagavad gita but we will not be able to have realization we can read देही नस्मिन यथा देहे कौमरम यौवनम जरा आई एम नॉट द बॉडी आई एम स्पिरिट सोल बट द रियलाइजेशन विल नेवर कम हाउ आई एम नॉट द बॉडी आई एम स्पिरिट सोल ऑलवेज लस ग्रीट सेंसेज विल बी पुलिंग अस सो दिस रियलाइजेशन इज पास्ड ऑन इन दिस परंपरा दस ओरिजिनल मैसेज एंड द स्पिरिचुअल पोटेंसी दैट इज वाई वेन वी चैंट मंत्रा रिसीव फ्रॉम द बोनोफाइड गुरु कमिंग इन परंपरा दैट मंत्रा बिकम्स इफेक्टिव and that promotes us to spiritual realization so but we are very fortunate we are in touch with the brahma sampraday and thus the spiritual potency and the original meaning is kept intact so dhritarashtra also is knowing that kurukshetra does not mean the body thus he is very much afraid concerned that kurukshetra is dharma kshetra place of pilgrimage the place has got very strong influence upon the activities and intentions of people living over there so dhritarashtra is concerned there should not be any truce between the parties because he wanted the battle to happen pandavas to be defeated and his sons to occupy the throne so he is asking sanjay did the armies actually fight being assembled on the battlefield of kurukshetra let us see what sanjay replies संजय उवाच दृष्ट् तो पांडवानीक व्यूढ़ दुर्योधन स्तदा आचार्य उपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत संजय सेड ओ किंग आफ्टर लुकिंग ओवर द आर्मी गैदर्ड बाय द सन्स ऑफ पांडु किंग दुर्योधना वेंट टू हिस्स टीचर एंड began to speak the following words pashyatam pandu putranam acharya mahatim chamum vyudham durpad putrena tava shishena dhimata my teacher behold the great army of the sons of pandu so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple the son of drupad so duryodhan now is pointing out the defect of acharya dronacharya what is the defect 
Dronacharya and Drupad Maharaj had a quarrel. And to take revenge of some offenses which he took from Dronacharya, Drupad Maharaj, who is Drupad Maharaj, father of Draupadi, the wife of Arjuna and the Pandavas, Drupad Maharaj, he performed a very powerful sacrifice because of which he got the benediction of a son who will be able to kill Dronacharya. And thus he got Dhrishtadyumna. And he sent Dhrishtadyumna to Dronacharya only to get trained in the art of military warfare. And Dronacharya being a liberal Brahmana did not hesitate to impart all the secrets of military science to Dhrishtadyumna. And now the great army of the Pandavas, the Kauravas were not expecting that Pandavas being in exile for so many years will be able to arrange a large army and that to arrange in wonderful phalanx which is difficult to break. So Duryodhana is pointing out defect. You did not hesitate to impart military secrets to your disciple and now see Drishtadyumna has arranged the phalanx of the army of the Pandavas. Now do not commit any such mistake in futures. Do not show favoritism to your disciples anymore. So a very extraordinary display of character is shown here by Dronacharya. If we come to know that this person is going to kill me, shall we teach him or her the science of military warfare, the art of killing? But Dronacharya could do that being a liberal Brahmana. So what is this Brahmana? Actually, Brahmanas are the most important people in a Vedic society. Brahmana does not signify caste system that is a perverted interpretation and practice of very beautiful Varnashrama system which is created by God. The system which is called Hindu Dharma, it is not, there is nothing called Hindu Dharma. Hindu is a geographical term, other side of the Sindhu Valley. They could not uh, pronounce S, so Sindhu became Hindu. People who are living on the other side, this Aryavarta province, which is called India today, came to be known as Hindus and their practices Hindu religion. So just like science is not American science or European science or Indian science, African science, no. Science can be called electromagnetism, optical physics, quantum mechanics. In a similar fashion, religion means the instructions given by God so that we can have self-realization. In a similar fashion, this religion which was practiced in this Aryavarta and actually it was uh, practiced across the globe. Now it has got reduced to this portion and practically it has vanished now. Just the remnants are there in the form of caste system. So in this system of Varnashrama, the leaders were the Brahmanas. Who is a Brahmana? Not as per any surname. Krishna tells, Chatur Varnyam Maya Shrishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Just like in democracy, the society is divided. There are lawmakers who are different, bureaucrats are different, and uh, the ordinary public is different. All of them have the right to vote. In monarchy, this was not the system. In uh, communism, the system is different. And in Varnashrama system, the society was most scientifically divided by the perfect arrangement of God in eight divisions, four Varnas of social orders, and four ashramas, they were spiritual orders. So in this system, we have body and soul. We need to take care of soul as well as the external body, thus marnas and ashramas. And the ultimate result is self-realization. So brahmanas are considered the head of the body of society. The body can continue without other limbs like hands and legs, although they are important. But if the body is severed of its head, it will fall down immediately. So Brahmanas are considered the head of the social body. If Brahmanas are not there, it is catastrophe in the society. Why catastrophe? Because Brahmanas only are able to understand the most important fundamental knowledge which should be the basis of all other activities that we do. And what is that fundamental knowledge? That is the knowledge of eternality. If we are working very hard to decorate our house, we are painting, we are putting bunting, festoons and so much work is going on, we are 
arranging the entire rearranging refurbishing entire house with imported furniture so people will ask who is coming to your house why you are working so hard and if you reply yes i am working so hard so that i can burn it down then people will tell you are you crazy so the vedas point out actually similar is our situation now entire life we are working very very hard just to take care of this body which will eventually be burned down so taking care of house is important but if it is not your permanent house what is the use so we are eternal this is the essence of the vedic literatures and bhagavad gita so if you are eternal just like you are sitting in a restaurant you will move out you need not waste all your money in decorating arranging your chair and the interiors of restaurant because you are going to carry on you are a traveler similarly we are eternal travelers having temporary experience in this body and we don't care to work for our eternal benefit but waste all the efforts for temporary benefit we leave all our loving people all our property all the name fame recognition acquired and move on this is the mistake of civilization so this concept is difficult to understand people are doubtful and we will be doubtful just like a sick man is doubtful of the actual taste of the food when a man is sick he cannot tell what is the real taste of food because all the food is bitter to a sick person so he will always remain doubtful similarly we have got this disease of bhavaroga bhavaroga means accepting material bodies and bodily concept of life thinking i am the body just like a madman sometimes he thinks i am traffic police and he is controlling the traffic on his own mad or they think i am doctor like that so we are thinking i am this body this is a disease called bhavarog so when we are affected by this disease we can never understand our eternality but brahmanas are free from this disease and they can understand that we are eternal so taking care of mind and body is important but they are important only if they are contributing to our eternal self our eternal benefit so thus the brahmanas are the head of this social body so how does one become a brahmana janmana jayate shudras shastras explain by birth everybody shudra what is shudra shudra means one who is untrained and who cries for insignificant small things now because this systematic training of evolution in higher consciousness is missing entire society gets disturbed very easily and there is depression panic attacks suicides and all such mental agonies because by birth everyone is shudra just like a child keeps on crying we will keep on crying in our life unless we promote ourselves to higher platform and for this the vedas the varnashrama system recommends sanskaras janmana jayate shudra sanskarad bhavet vijah now of course just the external formalities of sanskaras have remained when the child child is sent to school the child gets educated gets a good job or does good business and settles in life but if he takes it as a formality let me go to school and come back it will not produce the desired effect so now just some formality is remaining in the name of sanskaras some person who is not qualified to chant mantras and do yagya he is chanting mantras and doing some yagya and uh, having no realization put some thread on the shoulders and then a person is initiated this is the remnant of varnashram system just external formality but there is a great science behind this so if the rules and regulations procedures are taken care of the lifestyle is altered and these sanskaras are performed in a proper way then they give us elevation in consciousness sanskarat bhavet dvijah if a person goes through these proper sanskaras he becomes dvija dvija means twice born first birth even the animals have that as a human being we are expected to take second birth what is second birth spiritual master becomes the father and the vedas become mother and only a dvija who has taken such second birth is 
qualified to understand the vedic knowledge as a sick man cannot tell the real taste of food a person who is not dvija praina shruti gocharam they cannot understand the vedas so taking these formal steps of sanskaras is important after initiation person becomes dvija and dvija are given admission in the vedic schools and then he starts studying the vedas ved pathed yo vipraha and when he becomes scholar vastly learned in the vedas he becomes a vipra vipra means learned scholar and then when one realizes that knowledge as we were discussing reading shloka is not enough you have to realize that fire is hot fire is hot is one thing touching the fire and knowing oh this is hot this is called realization so when a person has realization brahma janati one understands aham brahmasmi i am different from this body i am spirit soul and mama evancho jeev loke the spirit soul is eternal servant fragment of the supreme soul that is called perfect realization brahma janati ti brahmana so one who understands this brahma gyan he is called brahmana a realized soul thus brahmanas were not bound by any rules of the state brahmanas are directly in touch with the supreme lord and thus they were only authorized to become acharyas thus dronacharya was the acharya he taught uh, the pandavas but he did not teach them brahma vidya his students he taught them dhanur vidya because the brahma vidya is meant for the brahmanas and they were kshatriyas so he taught them dhanur vidya but it is very important that unless a person comes to this platform of realization as one self being different from body they should not become teachers because if we miss this fundamental aspect of eternality then all our education is useless because it simply promotes hard work for just temporary gains atra shura maheshwasa bhima arjuna samayudhi yuyudhano viratascha Drupadascha Maharathaha Here in this army there are many heroic bowmen equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna and there are also great fighters like Yuyudhan Virat and Drupad So Duryodhan is now analyzing the warriors on the opposite side and the strength of his army Drishtaketushchekitanah काशीराज वीर्यवान पुरुजित कुंती भोज शैब्य नरपुंग देर आर ऑल्सो ग्रेट हिरोइक पावरफुल फाइटर्स लाइक धृष्टकेतु चेकिताना काशीराज पुरुजित कुंती भोज एंड शैब्य युधामुश्च विक्रांत उत्तम वीर्यवान सौभद्रो द्रौपदेयाश्च सर्व एव महारथा देर आर द माइटी युधा मन्यु द वेरी पावरफुल उत्तमौजा द सन ऑफ सुभद्रा एंड द सन्स ऑफ द्रौपदी ऑल दीज वॉरियर्स आर ग्रेट चैरियट फाइटर्स अस्माक विशिष्टा तबोध द्विजोत्तम नायका मम सैन्य संज्ञाथम तान्रवीमिते ओ बेस्ट ऑफ द ब्राह्मणास फॉर योर इन्फॉर्मेशन लेट मी टेल यू अबाउट द कैप्टन्स हू आर स्पेशली क्वालिफाइड टू लीड माय मिलिट्री फोर्स भवान् भीष्मश्च कर्णश्च कृपश्च समितिंजय अश्वत् देर आर पर्सनैलिटीज लाइक योर सेल्फ भीष्मा कर्णा कृपा अश्वत्थामा विकर्णा एंड द सन ऑफ सोम दत्त कॉल भूरिश्रवा हु आर ऑलवेज विक्टोरियस इन द बैटल अन्ये चा बहव शूरा मदर्थे त्यक्त जीविता नाना शस्त्र प्रहरण सर्वे युद्ध विशारदा 
there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake all of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and all are experienced in military science aparyatam tadasmakam balam bhishma bhirakshitam paryaptam vidam etesham balam bhima bhirakshitam our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by grandfather bhishma whereas the strength of the pandavas carefully protected by bhima is limited so here duryodhana is making an estimation of strength and he is telling very confidently that we are having odds on our favor to win this battle because the pandava army is led by bhima who duryodhana considered like a fig and it was a fact he was a fig in the presence of bhishma the great fighter who was leading the side of the kauravas so duryodhana is very expert in calculation and here also we are very expert in calculation we are having many many researches the research papers are just increasing every day very nicely we are calculating what is going to make us happy but all the calculations are failing why the calculations are failing so this incident is very very instructive in this regard because lord krishna was connected to both the parties he told i cannot be partial so he came upon a solution i divide myself into two segments one side will be my army another side will be me who will not fight so anybody who approaches me and asks i will reward accordingly so duryodhana and arjuna both got to know one side is narayani sena of lord krishna which was not defeated anywhere they were able to defeat even the demigods the residents of higher heavenly planets on other side was lord krishna but lord krishna told i will not pick up any weapons because if lord krishna picks up weapons who can defeat him so both of them arjuna and duryodhana became very eager to approach him to seek the desired favor duryodhana reached first lord krishna was taking rest at that time being very eager to ask the desired wish he sat very close to the head of lord krishna who was resting arjuna also reached and being a devotee of krishna he took the humble position sitting at the lotus feet of krishna krishna when he woke up he saw arjuna and he told arjuna you have come please tell me what do you want Duryodhana immediately told no no i came first but krishna told but i have seen arjuna first so it is his right to ask first uh seeing this uh, argument duryodhana is telling no i want first try to ask arjuna immediately blurted out he told no krishna i just want you i don't want anything else and duryodhana was presently surprised arjuna has become mad anyway no problem arjuna you keep krishna i will be satisfied with the army thank you very much krishna he told so duryodhana thought what use would be lord krishna because he is anyway not going to take weapons let me have his army and defeat the pandavas this is the mistake which all of us do we calculate very nicely let me have nice education nice wealth nice body we go to gym every day spend many many hours over there and let me do more certifications more courses let me set up more business have more branches let me have very nice family members have nice spouse and in this way we are very nicely calculative to become happy but why our calculations are failing the world is working very hard for many years and as the world statistics shows the depression is increasing anxieties are increasing because like duryodhana we miss this most important factor in our calculation and that is god kali kale naam roope krishna avatar krishna has descended in the form of his holy name so when we request people you please chant 
कृष्ण टेल्स इन भगवद गीता नाइन चैप्टर वर्ष नंबर थर्टीन सततम कीर्तयन तो माँ आम ऑलवेज कीप ऑन चैंटिंग माई नेम पीपल थिंग वॉट विल चैंटिंग कृष्णा नेम्स डू लेट मी डू माई कैलकुलेशन एंड वर्क वेरी हार्ड एंड बिकम हैप्पी बट वी सी वेर इज हैप्पीनेस सो वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड पुट दिस फैक्टर इन द फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ आर कैलकुलेशन प्लीज हैव गॉड इन योर लाइफ देन दैट विल मेक अस हैप्पी सो अर्जुना डिड नॉट कैलकुलेट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हैव कृष्ण ऑन माई साइड एंड देन इवन दो अर्जुना वॉज वीक इट वॉज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर हिम टू डिफीट ग्रेट जनरल्स लाइक द्रोणा भीष्म एंड कर्णा Arjuna was less powerful much less powerful compared to them but he was able to defeat all of them because Krishna was on the side of Arjuna so let us just have Krishna on our side and then we'll be victorious in the struggle against all the material miseries of life ayaneshu cha sarveshu yatha bhagam avasthitah bhishmam eva bhi rakshantu सर्व एव ही नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट गिव फुल सपोर्ट टू ग्रैंड फादर भीष्मा स्टैंडिंग एट योर रिस्पेक्टिव स्ट्रेटेजिक पॉइंट्स इन द फैलिंग्स ऑफ द आर्मी सो दुर्योधना इज बिहेविंग लाइक एन एक्सपर्ट डिप्लोमैट बिकॉज ही इज टेलिंग द ग्लोरीज ऑफ भीष्म देवा आर आर्मी इज हैविंग ग्रेट चांसेस ऑफ विक्ट्री बिकॉज वी हैव भीष्मा but dronachary is also as qualified as bhishma in terms of fighting so in order to pacify him also give respect to him now he is telling yes even though bhishma is qualified but all of you are very important we have to give protection to bhishma because if bhishma focuses fighting just on one side and we can break into our phalanx attack bhishma and thus we will lose our general so all of you also are very very important we have to protect bhishma very carefully तस् संजनयन हर्षम कुरुवृद्ध पिताम सिंहनाद विनद्योच शंखम दध प्रतापवान देन भीष्मा द ग्रेट वैलियंट ग्रैंड जायर ऑफ द कुरु डायनेस्टी द ग्रैंड फादर ऑफ द फाइटर्स ब्लू हिस्स कॉन्शियल वेरी लाउडली लाइक द साउंड ऑफ अ लायन गिविंग दुर्योधना जॉय so bhishma wanted to give joy to his son uh, grandson duryodhana that i will not leave any stone unturned in this war and thus he blew his conch shell but he also wanted to indicate by conch shell which is eternal insignia of lord krishna lord krishna always carries conch shell with him that please understand krishna is on the other side so even though i will not leave any stone unturned victory is on the side of pandavas tata shankhascha bheryascha parnavanaka gomukha sahasaivabhyanyanta sa shabdastu mulobhavat after that the conchels bugles trumpets drums and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tumultuous tata shvetair hayair yukte mahati syandane sthitau madhava pandavaschaiva divyau shankhau pradhadmatuhu on the other side both lord krishna and arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by the white horses sounded the transcendental conchels panchajanyam rishikesho devadattam dhananjaya pandram dadmau mahashankham bhima karma vrakodarah then lord krishna blew his conchel called panchajanya arjuna blew his the devadatta and bhima the voracious eater and performer of herculean tasks blew his terrific conch shell called pandram a very significant word is used here to address lord krishna rishikesh every sanskrit word has got great meaning rishik 
means senses and isha means controller or master so lord krishna is described here as the master or the director of the senses we have got five knowledge acquiring senses by which we sense this world we understand what is happening and now we have created many extensions of the senses just like the television or the newspapers through it we are able to sense the things whatever is happening in the world around us but we have to understand the senses cannot give us absolute knowledge the government which has provided us televisions or the internet signals very tightly regulates these extended senses whatever the government wishes we will be able to perceive through these extended senses in a similar fashion lord krishna has given us these senses and the senses even we can understand if we have gone through the basic scientific books our eyes can see a very small range of the electromagnetic spectrum 400 to 700 or 900 nanometers not beyond that that is called vibgyor the visible range and then what to speak of spiritual existence even the personalities or the objects which emit or reflect light beyond this vibgyor spectrum we will not be able to see them so our senses give a very limited perspective of this world thus we can never tell what is reality using our senses even material reality then what to speak of spirit which is beyond the range of all the senses only when lord krishna is willing who is the master of the senses our senses mind is also considered sense sixth sense mana shashthan indriyani prakriti sthani karshati lord krishna explains to arjuna in bhagavad gita so just like our senses have got limitations our mind also has got limitation which is the sixth sense just like a mind of dog cannot understand anything about the advanced sciences that we study mind of a child cannot understand he should go to school and study to prepare for his future he is forced to do that similarly our mind cannot understand everything then why are we thinking by research work using our senses and mind we will be able to understand god and spirit senses provide a small window to the world is it not common sense mind has got its limitations is it not common sense so sometimes some scientists who are atheistic or agnostic uh, actually all the real scientists science was meant actually to discover absolute truth what is this world about all about from where it has come now it has got drifted off into technology and we are using science to create means of carnal gratification or mental gratification but science was also meant to understand absolute truth so you'll be surprised to know i was surprised when i read that schrodinger heisenberg niels bohr the founders of all the wonderful technology i'm speaking here you are hearing this revolution has come because of quantum mechanics and they are the founding fathers and all of them were great readers of the upanishads and the vedanta Oppenheimer, Albert Einstein, all of them. But some of them who are not so enlightened, they tell these people, religious people, are having blind faith. But one scientist, I think Charles Townes or somebody else, has very beautifully told that people accuse the religious people of having blind faith, but actually, the atheistic scientists. are the people who should be accused of having blind faith because they are having blind faith on their mind and senses that with this they can understand everything of this world this is blind faith isn't it we understand uh, our brain and mind has got limitations but thinking my brain my mind can explain me and i can understand the complete reality and thus let me engage in research depending upon this mind and senses this is blind faith so just see vedas are uh, so nice so veda still do not depend upon your research work you will never be able to understand absolute truth understand who has designed your senses and then if he is pleased he can change the design and then you will be able to understand complete reality so lord krishna rishikesh he seated within our hearts 
and is willing to give all the direction to us he is willing to give us complete knowledge but we do not want it we do not surrender to krishna just like the teacher cannot impart knowledge to the students unless the students surrender they agree to take admission in the school follow the rules and regulations attend classes on time wear the uniform pay the fees then only they can be imparted knowledge doctor cannot help the patient if the patient does not surrender agrees to be operated by the doctor we cannot reach any place if we don't surrender to pilot so we see that in day to day life also surrender is very much required so god can give us complete knowledge and direction if we surrender to god so thus we should be very very eager to understand these instructions of bhagavad gita surrender means simply following the instructions so let us first understand all the instructions and then try to follow completely and then krishna will take complete charge of our body not just he becomes director but he becomes complete absolute controller of a soul which is completely surrendered and then we are led to the right actions which bring happiness to us and to everybody else अनंत विजय राजा कुंती पुत्रो युधिष्ठि नकुल सह देश सुघोष मणिपुष्पक काश्यश्च परमेश्वा सह शिखंडी च महारथ दृष्टुम्नो विराटश्च सात्यकिराजि द्रुपदो द्रौपदेयाश पृथ्वीपते सौभद्रश्च महाबाहु शंखान दद्मो पृथक पृथक किंग युधिष्ठिर द सन ऑफ कुंती ब्लू हिस कॉन्शियल द अनंत विजया एंड नकुल एंड सहदेव ब्लू द सुघोष एंड मणिपुष्पका द ग्रेट आर्चर द किंग ऑफ काशी द ग्रेट फाइटर शिखंडी दृष्टि द्युम्ना Virat and the unconquerable Satyaki, Drupad, the sons of Draupadi, and the others, O King, such as the son of Subhadra, greatly armed, all blew their respective conch shells. Saghosho dharat rashtra nam ridayani vyadarayat nabhascha prithivim chayva tumulo abhyanu nadayan. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious and thus vibrating both in the sky and on the earth it shattered the heart of the sons of Dhritarashtra. So when the party of the Kauravas blew their conch shells there is no such narration explained that the Pandavas got disturbed but when the Pandavas blew their conch shells vyadarayat their hearts became shattered. because a devotee is never disturbed in any circumstances the pandavas the pandavas were pure devotees completely surrendered to lord krishna and thus understanding the supreme lord who is the creator of unlimited universes is on our side then what is the cause of any fear so we are very very fearful in our life the way to come out of all the fear is taking shelter of lord krishna the supreme personality like pandavas have taken here atha vyavasthitan drishtva dharat rashtran kapidhvaja pravritte shastra sampate dhanur udyamya pandavah rishikesham tada vakyam idam aha mahipate o king at that time arjuna the son of pandu who was seated in his chariot his flag marked with hanuman took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows looking at the sons of dhritarashtra o king arjuna then spoke to rishikesh krishna these words अर्जुन उवाच 
सेनोभ्ये रथम स्थापय मेच्युत यदेहम योद्धु कामस्थितान्मया सह योधव्यम अस्मसमुद्यमे Arjuna said, "O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies, so that I may see who is present here, who is desirous of fighting, and with whom I must contend in this great battle attempt." Again, a very significant word is used here to address Lord Krishna, and that is achyuta. the relationship between the lord and his devotee is very sweet the devotee has no other intention but to serve the lord and the lord has got nothing else to do but to serve his devotee thus we can see lord krishna sometimes becomes the doorman of his devotee like he became doorman of bali maharaj sometimes he becomes child like that of nand maharaj and yashoda sometimes he takes lowly positions as that of charioteer like here he has become of arjuna but arjuna is very conscious that my dear lord krishna you have kindly agreed to become my chariot driver but i understand your supreme lord so please excuse me i am ordering you to take my chariot between the two armies you don't become any less than the supreme personality of godhead thus he is used the word here achyuta means infallible you always remain the supreme lord another understanding is chuta means fallible we are all chutas the conditioned living entities when the living entity falls from the spiritual platform and gets trapped by the laws of nature then this situation is called chuta but lord krishna although he appears in this material world made up of material energy he remains achyuta he never becomes controlled by the laws of nature this point is very important to understand because our perspective of world is given to us under the control of material nature if we have got the body of a pig we will find stool to be very tasty if we have got human body we will find other delicacies like sweets milk sweets to be tasty so the way we perceive the world it depends upon the body which is in control of material nature we don't have absolute perception of the world but when lord krishna comes here he does not become controlled by the laws of nature although it appears that he is also taking birth he is also dying somebody shot an arrow and it struck the toe of krishna and krishna left his body why you are telling that he is god and see somebody killed god can god be killed he cannot protect himself even from an arrow how he can be god or he is crying being fearful of the mother how god can cry that is why kunti marani tells tad atyanta vidambanam your activities are bewildering so it is not very easy to understand the activities of krishna simply by seeing those activities some people tell you need not read the activities of krishna books like mahabharat bhagavad gita simply you know the activities and you understand pick up from their behavior no we will be completely mistaken thus krishna tells in bhagavad gita janma karma ch me divyam evam yoveti tatvatah my birth and activities don't follow material laws they are divyam completely transcendental spiritual anybody who is able to understand these laws he will also become immortal so it's a great science when lord krishna comes here it is nato natya dharo yatha it is explained by kunti maharani it is like a dramatic actor acting on a stage he acts as if he has taken birth he acts as if he is dying just like an actor on the stage he is telling i am having a heart attack actually nothing is happening in a similar fashion lord krishna does performance here he acts to attract the attention of conditioned souls living entities like us towards his wonderful activities but then sometimes he surpasses all the laws of nature lord krishna 
showed in his mouth all the universes to Mother Yashoda. Lord Krishna lifted great hill Govardhana on his little finger for seven days continuously without eating, drinking or taking any rest. These are extraordinary activities. So sometimes Krishna performs ordinary looking activities, sometimes extraordinary activities, but Lord Krishna always remains achyuta beyond the laws of nature. Thus this Bhagavad Gita is valuable because this is absolute knowledge. Any human being does not deserve to give knowledge because his knowledge, the knowledge taken by the research using mind and senses, it is conditioned by this body. Just like a sick man finds all the food bitter, we will give knowledge basis our understanding the way our senses perceive the world. But Lord Krishna being transcendental, this instruction is absolute and without any fault and mistakes. Thus the name used here is Achyuta. This is second reason of using this word. Yotsumanana vekshaham ya etetra samagataah dharta rashtrasya durbuddhe Yudhe Priyachikir Shavaha. Let me see those who have come here to fight, wishing to please the evil minded son of Dhritarashtra. Arjuna is telling Lord Krishna, Can you please take the chariot in between the parties so that I can see who has come to fight with me? Sanjaya Uvacha Evam Upto Rishi Kesho. Guda Keshena Bharata Sena Yorubhayor Madhye Sthapayit Varathottamam Sanjaya said, O descendant of Bharat, being thus addressed by Arjuna, Lord Krishna drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties. Arjuna here is being addressed as Guda Kesha. Gudaka means sleep or ignorance. So Arjuna is said to have conquered sleep and ignorance because of his constant association with Lord Krishna. So here the ignorance which Arjuna displays of that of a materialistic man, this ignorance is created so that we can get instruction, perfect knowledge, because we will never ask these spiritual questions. We are generally interested in material enjoyment. Otherwise, Arjuna is Guda Kesha. He is constant companion of Krishna. Just like an iron rod kept in fire, it becomes fire-like. It also starts emitting heat and light. Anybody who touches that iron will get burnt. In a similar fashion, just maintaining constant touch with God, the Supreme Spirit, spiritualizes us completely. Our body also becomes spiritual and we also surpass ignorance in sleep. Thus the great devotees, very advanced spiritualists, they are not bound by the conditions of hunger, thirst and sleep. When Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken for seven days continuously, Shukdev Goswami kept on speaking, Parikshit Maharaj kept on hearing, without eating, drinking or sleeping. Similarly, the six Goswamis, Shad Goswamis, who have founded the current Vrindavan. So Lord Krishna spent all his time and wonderful childhood pastimes he performed in Vrindavan. But then after that, all the places got lost. The invaders came, they attacked, it became jungle. So all the places were restored by the Shad Goswamis of Vrindavan. Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Srila Jeev Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami. And these Goswamis who were earlier materialists, behaving like materialists at least, and sleeping for many many hours, 12 hours, 13 hours. When they became devotees, they surpassed all the influence of biological needs also, and they were sleeping just for one or two hours in a day. So can we imagine a person sustaining himself with just one or two hours of sleep? That is possible in spiritual life. Guda Kesha. So if we also maintain constant touch with Krishna, we will be able to surpass the influence of ignorance and sleep. So how to maintain that now? I do not see Lord Krishna around us. As we discussed in the beginning of the discourse, Kali Kale Nam Rupe Krishna Vatara Satatam Kirtayanto Mam Lord Krishna tells, constantly keep on chanting my names. So this is very important message of Lord Krishna to Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. Satatam Kirtayanto 
constantly do kirtan keep on taking chanting my names so whatever activities we are doing throughout the day if we keep on taking the names of god then we will be maintaining constant touch with this incarnation naam avatar of god just like ramadi murti shu kala niyame natishthan many many incarnations are taken by god as ram varaha narsimha etc in kali yuga naam avatar this is also incarnation incarnation in the form of sound so by chanting the names of god constantly we maintain constant touch with god and we surpass all the ignorance and get knowledge by the mercy of god bhishma drona pramukhatah sarvesham cha mahikshitam uvacha partha pashyaitan samavetan kuruniti in the presence of bhishma drona and all other chieftains of the world rishikesh the lord said just behold parth all the kurus who are assembled here tatra pashya sthitan parthah pitrin atha pitamahan acharyan matulan bhratrin putran pautran sakhin tatha shvashuran surdashchayva senayorubhayorapi there arjuna could see within the midst of the armies of both parties his fathers grandfathers teachers maternal uncles brothers sons grandsons friends and also his father in law and well wishers all present there tan samikshya sakonte yah sarvan bandhu navasthitan kripaya parayavishto vishidan idam abravit when the son of kunti arjuna saw all these different grades of friends and relatives he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus arjuna uvacha drishtve mam svajanam krishna yuyutsum samupasthitam sidanti mam gatrani mukham cha parishushyati arjuna said my dear krishna seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit i feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up ve phatushta sharire me rom harshascha jayate gandivam sransate hastat tvakchayva paridahyate my whole body is trembling and my hair is standing on end my bow gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning so we can imagine what is the situation of arjuna suppose our relatives brothers fathers father in laws and all other dear friends teachers and relatives come before us taking swords arrows and guns in their hand willing to kill us what would be our situation they are willing to kill us the people whom we love the most and we are supposed to kill them we are duty bound the situation would be very very pathetic and this is the situation of arjuna as soon as he saw he wanted to see who has come and when he saw all his relatives who were very dear to me bhishma is there whom i was calling as father and bhishma was correcting arjuna i am not father i am grandfather when you try to cry crime when he would try to climb on the lap of bhishma such bhishma he is now standing with arrows willing to kill arjuna his teacher drona and all other people so this material world is summarized very beautifully as pavarga in the vedic literatures what is pavarga so this is very important instruction again usually we do not know for what we should follow the dharma 
द साइंटिफिक रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन फॉर आर कंडक्ट इन लाइफ वाई गॉड इज गिवन दीज इंस्ट्रक्शन एंड इफ एट ऑल सम पीपल फॉलो इट दे थिंक इट इज फॉर इकोनॉमिक डिवेलपमेंट बट एक्चुअली येस इन द कोर्स ऑफ रिलीजन इकोनॉमिक डिवेलपमेंट इज ऑल्सो मैंशनड धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष बट एक्चुअली सच रिलीजन्स आर चीटिंग रिलीजन्स इट इज मैंशन इन भागवतम एज कई तव धर्मा कई तव धर्मा मीन्स चीटिंग रिलीजन जस्ट लाइक द पर्पज ऑफ स्कूल इज टू इम्पार्ट एजुकेशन but the child is introduced into this education system through play school anything so school is nice place to go i am able to play there very nicely but actually the purpose is to take a child away from the playful sporting so that serious business of education he can undergo similarly when people are not very wise just like a small child such dharmas are required which are called kaitava dharma and in the vedas it is told you follow these rules and regulations nicely do this yagya do this daan do this kriya tap sadhana and you will enjoy material fame name comfort spouse defeat of the enemies and all such things but what is the real purpose of dharma that is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam dharmasya hi apavargasya nartho arthay upakalpate hardly people know this nobody teaches this धर्म से ही अपवर्ग से धर्म इज मेंट फॉर अपवर्ग नलिफाइंग पवर्ग वॉट इज पवर्ग सो मेनी एक्टिविटीज विच आर हैपनिंग इन द वर्ल्ड वी हैव सो मेनी नेशंस वी हैव सो मेनी यूनिवर्सिटीज वी हैव सो मेनी इस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स वी हैव सो मेनी फैक्ट्रीज ऑफिस बिजनेसिस स्पोर्ट्स एंड सो मेनी न्यूमरस एंगेजमेंट्स but all of this can be summarized in pavarga what is pavarga so we have wonderful alphabets in the devanagari pa fa ba bha ma this string is called pavarga the pa series pa means parishram everyone has to work very hard in the material world so parishram is the beginning of this material world and then after parishram there is fa fa means fena what is fena sometimes when the horse runs so much there is foam in the mouth of the horse so so much hard work a person has to do he will become completely exhausted fatigued this fatigue fena is another feature second feature of material world we have to work very hard and fena foam starts coming out of mouth we get tired and when we work so hard then what happens pa fa ba what is ba ba means bandhan we get some results either objects situation have a high status in the society or some loving people around us or animals around us and then we get entangled we have strong attachment for all these things positions and people and that is called bandhan attachment what happens because of this bandhan bha bha means bhaya fear then the person is always fearful when the child attains status of top ranker he is always fearful oh i may not lose even one mark otherwise i'll get second rank always anxious if a person becomes rich he is afraid i may not lose my wealth i may not i have purchased a new car dent may not come in my new expensive car i have got some relatives who oh, something may not happen to my relative always these thoughts are bothering and thus a person is always fearful my people may not go away spouse may not go away money may not go away my reputation may not go away thus a person is constantly fraught with fear and his life becomes very troublesome and fearing fearing what happens ma ma means mrityu death this is some in substance of material life nothing else the always expected happiness which gives satiation to the heart never comes about because a person does not know the science of the self being part and parcel of supreme self he never counts krishna in his calculations like duryodhana we simply want krishna's energies armies even though we approach god sometimes just like duryodhana approached krishna we approach god not for god but for god's opulences 
God's strength, God's army, God's wealth, but never for God. And that is why Pavarga happens. So Dharma means Dharma se hi apavarga sya. Real purpose of Dharma is to stop this hard parishram, stop this constant fear, and which is because of material attachments, and stop the process of death. This is the aim of human form of life. After evolution through so many species, finally we have got this human form of life. Tūnam yatet na patet anumrityu yavan. Before death arrives, we should prepare ourselves that there is no more death. We should become immortal after this death. This is the preparation, but we have no knowledge. So we have to understand. Just like using science, we have stopped certain diseases. Similarly, using the science, wonderful science which is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, leading our life basis those principles, we can stop death also. Just like diseases have been stopped, some diseases. All the diseases can be completely stopped and death can be stopped by following the scientific regulative principles of the Bhagavad Gita. And that is the aim of human form of life, preparation for immortality. Thus, Dashrath Maharaj, when he met the sage Vishwamitra, who came to meet him in his court. So when we meet each other, we generally ask, how are you, how are you doing, how you, your family members are. But what can you ask a sage? So. The father of Lord Ramchandra, Dashrath Maharaj asked, Ai histam yattat punar janma jayaya. My dear sage, how are your endeavors going on to win over this repeated death? Punar janma jayaya, repeated birth and death. This is the aim of human form of life. This is the purpose of dharma. Otherwise, the situation is like that of Arjun, fraught with anxieties. Nacha shakno mi avasthatum Brahmativa chame manaha Nimitani chapashyami Viparitani keshava. I am now unable to stand here any longer. I am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling. I foresee only evil, O killer of the Keshi demon. Another very significant word used here is Viparitani. Arjuna is telling Krishna, we think this war is going to give us happiness through kingdom. But I think Viparitani, the reverse is going to happen. I will come in complete distress. So if the science of God is not taken into account, the spiritual knowledge is not taken into account, then any action which we do, it will have viparitani, the reverse effect. And very clearly we can observe this in the society around us. Computers were invented so that we can save time from the tremendous filing and other labor. But we see computers have made us even even more busy. The means of transport were there to save time. But those very means of transport, so I am speaking here from the city of Mumbai, Mumbai people spend so much of time because Mumbai city has got additional facility, very good public transport, local trains and buses. So people very fondly, they are forced to spend on an average two to three hours minimum every day in these modes of transport. So reverse has happened. Rather than saving time, their time is going in this transport. Now because this transport is there, they have to travel. Vipiritani. Social media was invented so that we can increase socializing but it has made people isolated and depressed. Socializing has been cut off, reduced. Vipritani. We think in our life just a couple of years more and then after this stage everything would be settled, I'll be very happy. But after every couple of years, instead of expected happiness, complexities and anxieties increase in our life. So what kind of knowledge are we cultivating in our life? Ya vidya sa vimuktaye vedas tell. Vidya should make you liberated, should make you happy. But by this advancement of knowledge, we become more and more stressed and depressed. It means we are cultivating ignorance. Why ignorance? Because this fundamental first equation itself we have committed mistake. That I am eternal spirit soul. 
part and parcel of God. Nacha Shreyo Nupashyami Hatva Svajana Mahave Nakangshe Vijayam Krishna Nacha Rajyam Sukhanicha I do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle, nor can I, my dear Krishna, desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. So Arjuna, the word he has used here for happiness is Shreya. There are two kinds of happiness, Shreya and Preya. Preya means immediate happiness. And Shreya means ultimate happiness. So Arjuna is telling Krishna, immediately uh, I think I may become happy by winning this war. But I don't see any ultimate happiness, Shreya, in this. So this should be our consideration always. This act, now it is giving me satisfaction, instant gratification. But what does this material enjoyment do to me in the long run? I get addicted to it. Today I want to see one video, I want tomorrow two videos, more. One cigarette I have, I want more, two cigarettes. So immediately I get gratification, but in the long term the desires always keep on increasing. And there is a limitation being put by mind, body, society and the laws of nature. And thus we are never satisfied by this material enjoyment. Instant gratification, long term dissatisfaction. So we should understand where is Shreya, even though initially it could be troublesome, but ultimate happiness, where does it lie? Kim no rajena govinda, kim bhogair jivite nava, yeshamarthe kangshitam no, rajyam bhoga sukhanicha, ta ime vasthita yudhe, Pranashtyakvadhananicha Heto kim no mahi krite Nihatya dharta rashtranaha Kapri tisya janardana O Govinda, of what avail to us are kingdoms, happiness, or even life itself, when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed in this battlefield? O Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, brothers-in-law, and all relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me, then why should I wish to kill them, though I may survive? O maintainer of all creatures, I am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for the three worlds, let alone this earth. Papam me vashaye dasman Hatpaitana tata yinaha Tasman nahavayam hantum Dharta rashtran Swabandhavan Swajanam hikatham hatva Sukhinasyam madhava Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, husband of the goddess of fortune? And how could we be happy by killing our own kinsmen? So according to Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. One who gives you poison, one who sets fire to your house, one who encroaches your property, who kidnaps your family members, attacks you with deadly weapons. So such aggressors can be killed. And there is no, although killing is a great sin, but if you kill these people, six categories, then there is no sin incurred. 
सो अर्जुना इज टेलिंग दैट दे आर आत ताइना दे आर अग्रेसर्स बट Arjuna is saintly person at the same time and a saintly person is not supposed to avenge like this but such saintliness should not be displayed by a kshatriya such saintliness is meant for brahmanas non violence so non violence which is dharma of brahmanas was very strictly followed in the vedic times thus vishwamitra he could have killed the tadaka rakshasi but he came to dashrath maharaj to beg for his sons ram and lakshman for such an act vishwamitra was so powerful but he was knowing what is my dharma non violence even though i have power but it cannot be used that can be for my temporary material benefit it will be against my eternal benefit so a kshatriya he is not supposed to practice non violence because somebody has to defend the citizens and thus arjuna being a kshatriya was not supposed to exhibit this saintly behavior so this is the confusion but then there is another confusion even though kshatriya is not supposed to show this behavior and kill the other party but here the situation is different because the other party although they are aggressors but they are relatives also and the relatives should not be killed in this way there is lot of dharma sankat in the case of arjuna there is duty as a saintly person but then there are aggressors he is a kshatriya kshatriya is supposed to kill but then on the other side the aggressors are relative relatives and family members who are not supposed to be killed so arjuna is completely puzzled and also he is feeling very disheartened seeing his family members ready to kill him and thus he is very much disturbed yadyapyete na pashyanti लोभोपहत चेत सह कुलक्षय दोषम मित्रद्रोहे च पातक कथम न ज्ञेय अस्मादस्मावर्ति कुलक्षय दोषम प्रपश्यदर्जनादन ओ जनार्दन ऑल दो दीज मेन ओवरटेकन बाय ग्रीड सी नो फॉल्ट इन किलिंग वंस फैमिली or quarreling with friends why should we with knowledge of the sin engage in these acts killing relatives is a very big sin they cannot bother at least we being intelligent should bother this is a great sin kulakshaye pranashyanti kula dharma sanatana dharme nashte kulam kritsnam adharmo abhibhavatyuta with the destruction of dynasty the eternal family tradition is vanquished and thus the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligious practice adharma bhi bhavat krishna pradushyanti kulastriyah strishu dushta suvarshneya jayate varna sankarah when irreligion is prominent in the family o krishna the women of the family become corrupt and from the degradation of womanhood o descendant of vrishni comes unwanted progeny so arjuna is citing various reasons he is very nicely calculating being a devotee having compassion in the heart also being a very righteous person not getting maddened by the desire to have sovereignty on the planet earth he is telling i am not just calculating my distress my dear krishna but it is having other very serious implications also now all these people are elderly members of the family the male persons if these elderly people are killed here then the family tradition would be lost in family tradition not only the vocational skills were passed down but also these practices contributed to spiritual salvation which is the ultimate aim of life of the individual now when elderly family members are not there to monitor these sanskaras and conduct the family tradition will be lost and the ultimate aim of life would be baffled and when there are no senior people to keep the family religious then the woman would become corrupt and polluted 
if we don't follow religion nicely there is no higher pleasure in life then corruption adultery is the result and if woman becomes adulterous that is a disaster for the entire civilization so how to bring a good progeny on this planet it is a great science and chastity of womanhood is very important factor in this if women are chaste pious religious then the child would be born in a very good consciousness and they can be admitted into the varnashrama system so varnashrama system is not just one sided just taking care of the spiritual side but also it take cares of the most nice management of the society so society needs brahmana which is like head so society also needs kshatriyas which are like arms the varnashrama is not one sided just taking care of the spiritual side and ignoring the material comforts no just like the body has got many limbs and all the limbs should be properly protected taken care of in a similar fashion varnashrama system very nicely sees to it that all the limbs are taken care of protected and they are very healthy in good shape so in order to protect the brahmanas which as we discussed are the heads of the social body this varnashrama system is very important not every person can have the brain to have spiritual realization not every person can practice all the rules and regulations which enable one for spiritual realization like satyam shama dama titiksha so brahmana is avowedly truthful even though he can lose his life for speaking truth he will never speak false so people ask why do you believe in the vedas there are many reasons if you read you will also believe but one important factor is it is coming down through the brahmanas who can never interpret a false meaning who never take a salary brahmana is having complete control on mind and senses he does not get carried away by the demands of the body so he takes arms because he has no time to go for a job he is engaged in pathan pathan yajan yajan to study and to explain give this knowledge to others yajan yajan to do yagya worship the supreme lord tell others how to worship and thus because he has no time for other less important maintaining livelihood such activities he goes and begs arms and people being generous can give extra arms to them he will keep just the amount required for the maintenance of that particular day he will not save it for tomorrow also and he will also do charity for all the excess goods received so in this way a brahmana is supposed to follow many many qualities so to have such qualities it is important to have such body also which enables a person to practice control of senses control of mind tolerance titiksha shanti very peaceful arjavam very simple simplicity so all these qualities uh, and such qualities are maintained even in animals we know if you want to maintain a good breed then they should not be bred with some other uh, combination so the breeds are also very carefully preserved unrestricted mixing among the breeds if it happens then the dogs also become very dull the cows also are not able to produce sufficient milk so just like in animals we present good bodies by preservation of breeds the similar preservation was practiced in the varnashrama system also unrestricted mixing of the varnas the classes was not allowed so such people whose bodies have been designed to act as kshatriya who are very strong and having uh, lording over nature having administrative skills and who are very very brave will not deny any challenge even though the challenge can lead to their death but kshatriya cannot avoid the challenge to accept a combat so like this many many other features were there such trainings required unique bodies and these were very nicely preserved and one very important factor is chastity of womanhood so then if women they start mixing they become adulterous then the child 
would not be of very good body and mind not of good consciousness and when the progeny itself the child itself is not having capacity to enter into varnashrama system just like everybody uh, cannot take admission into school people are having dementia autism and so many other things so if the body itself is not capable of entering even into varnashrama where is the question of spiritual perfection and peacefulness in the society if there are only mad people in the society society cannot be peaceful so sane people keep the mad people they help them they treat them very nicely but it is done by sane people so to maintain such sanity preserve the unique qualities required for the maintenance of society the strict rules and regulations of avoiding illicit sex and adultery was required and only when a person is very devotedly religious such adultery can be avoided in society and if the elderly members are killed who will protect the women whom untrained men can entice into unwanted progeny so thus arjuna is counting all these very important reasons sankaro narkayaiva kulagnanam kulasya cha patanti pitaro hesham lupta pindo daka kriya when there is increase of unwanted population a hellish situation is created both for the family and for those who destroy the family tradition in such corrupt families there is no offering of oblations of food and water to the ancestors lupta pindo daka kriya is very important here yes we have responsibility for the family members as long as they are there in this body once death happens then there is no responsibility but vedas tell no our family members at the time of death they have le- left shed of this external covering only they have continued so our responsibility is not over after death if family members if they have committed sinful acts they have not properly atoned for it then they might have to suffer in hell or they might have got trapped in ghostly bodies if we commit suicide and if there is accidental death or those people who are very much attached to the material objects of possession house or the relatives then such people are not able to promote themselves to next gross body and they get stuck in ghostly body ghostly body is very horrible the demands of the body is there but the demands are there but you cannot fulfill because you do not have body so when pind daan happens the oblations of food which is offered to lord krishna and such water is offered to the ancestors then they are relieved from such hellish punishment and ghostly bodies and they get a gross body so this is a great science which is not known now today so arjuna is telling that how pindadan will happen if the family tradition is lost in such families as it is happening now in many families there is no pindadan and very famous hollywood actor he was seeing his son who died an untimely death and then he was very much concerned what to do uh, he was able to see his son the spirit of his son and then somebody suggested him do this uh, shraddh ceremony pindadan and then they came to haridwar did this ceremony to get uh, to help their son get rid of this ghostly body so thus it's a great science many many such proofs are there provided we have time to study these literatures and understand science behind it and another very important uh, understanding is people may ask oh what is this hell arjuna is repeatedly telling hell hell whether there is hell in heaven so it is common sense we simply have to understand uh, this axiom that designer is there behind every design you cannot mathematically prove it but it's common sense this uh, microphone you are seeing can it assemble automatically no the computer or the phone on which you might be hearing this discourse can it assemble automatically no so this brain which is also much much more powerful than a computer can it assemble automatically can this body which houses this brain assemble automatically no so behind this there is a creator so creator god 
he is the supreme powerful person uh, everything is under his control so he has not made a fallible system where if a person kills one person or 100 people he can be hanged till death just once this is unjust no if a person has killed more people more punishment should be given to them so god does not have imperfections in his creation he is a supreme creator all powerful person so perfect divine justice is perfectly meted out so such people who cannot be punished for their misdeeds here god has made an arrangement it is common sense isn't it so laws of nature are very nice they act equally on everyone so the balance punishment which has not been meted out here there has to be some place where god implements that nobody is above god nobody can stop god from executing his will his desire and god has made equal system because we are all his children if we harm other children then harm will come to us this is called law of karma so thus nobody can stop god to make a perfect arrangement if a person kills more people he should also be given more punishment once he can be killed in this body but balance punishment should be meted out in a place and that place is called hell so simply if we understand one axiom designer is there behind the design then all the things all the concepts we can understand very very easily so hell exists heaven also exists but unfortunately we have no knowledge of the laws of nature and almost entire civilization civilization is geared up to enter into hell in the ignorance of these laws which are described in the bhagavad gita but arjuna is very cautious if we break these laws then all these families will end up and we will also end up in hell दोषरे तय कुलघ्नानम वर्णशंकर कारकये उत्साद्यंते जाति धर्मा कुल धर्मा च शाश्वता ड्यू टू द इविल डीड्स ऑफ द डिस्ट्रॉयर्स ऑफ फैमिली ट्रेडिशन ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ कम्युनिटी प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड द फैमिली वेलफेयर एक्टिविटीज आर डेवेस्टेटेड उत्सन्न कुल धर्माणा मनुष्याणाम जनार्दना नरके नियतम वासो भवती त्यनुशुषुमा ओ कृष्णा मेंटेनर ऑफ द पीपल आई हैव हर्ड बाय डिस्प्लिक सक्सेशन दैट दोस हु डिस्ट्रॉय फैमिली ट्रेडिशंस डवेल ऑलवेज इन हेल सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड यूज्ड हियर अगेन इज अनुशुषुमा Arjuna is not citing these reasons of a dharma basis his own understanding of life and his own perceptions he is telling anushrushama i have heard this the vedas are called shruti they are the user manual given to mankind god being perfect person he makes perfect arrangement also so that his children may not suffer here with every machine there is a user manual if we don't follow those things we may spoil the machine and spoil ourselves also so because we are ignorant of the vedas now thus despite tremendous hard work to become happy the civilization is creating more and more distress so we should not simply get carried away by our own perceptions please remember the example of moth as per the perception and understanding of moth jumping into fire will make the moth very happy no anushrushama hear from vedas what will make you happy and not and practically we can see those people who follow the vedas who are into devotional service they are in complete bliss despite all the external material inconveniences if they exist and they are also satisfied in conveniences so we can practically see it is proof also so anushrushama simply we have to hear from the vedas a real user manual given by god from the beginning of creation but we have heard vedas have been created by vedvyas and these books were written some time back so yes the books were written some time back because people were so sharp before they were called shruti dharas that is why vedas are called shruti they were passed down in oral reception once if the disciple hears from the spiritual master he will be able to remember for the rest of life and understand also very quickly thus this bhagavad gita takes people take years to understand even after that they don't understand but arjuna was able to understand assimilate the knowledge 
in around 45 minutes or maximum 1 hour people were very sharp but when vedavya saw manda sumand matyo mand bhagya hi padrata people are going to become very very lazy and less intelligent he understood it is important to write it down in books by one hearing they will not be able to memorize or understand so thus the books were created recently but vedas are extant always they are always existing in this wonderful parampara as we have discussed in the beginning guru shishya parampara so in this parampara simply we have to understand what will make us happy what is not what is fact of life what is not we should not try to judge the taste of food understand the reality a sick man cannot taste food we cannot understand reality for thus each and every person 7 billion people have their own perceptions opinions about life only when we are free from the laws of nature we can have absolute perceptions by the mercy of absolute truth krishna aho bat maha papam kartum vyavasita vayam yad rajya sukalobhena hantum svajanam udyata alas how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness yadi mam apratikaram ashastram shastra panayah dhart rashtra rane hanyas tan me kshem taram bhavet i would consider it better for the sons of dhritarashtra to kill me unarmed and unresisting rather than fight with them so arjuna being very compassionate he is like a saintly person understanding the laws of nature he is telling krishna i do not want to fight i am not ready for this kingdom i can be killed unarmed i am ready for that but please let me not engage in this ghastly warfare संजय उवाच एवं उक्वाजुन संख्ये रथोपस्थ उपाशत विसृज्य सशरम चापम शोक संविघ्न मानस संजय सेड अर्जुन हैविंग द स्पोकन ऑन द बैटल फील्ड कास्ट साइड हिज बो एंड एरोज एंड सैट डाउन ऑन द चैरियट हिज माइंड ओवरवेल्म विथ ग्रीफ Arjuna has casted aside his bows and arrows crying practically in great distress sat down on his chariot i cannot fight he told so this is the beginning and the background of entire wonderful philosophy which now lord krishna is going to speak second chapter onwards which if we are able to understand nicely our life will change it will witness such a wonderful change that we'll no longer be the same person the only requirement is hearing with rapt attention thus arjuna has casted aside his bows and arrows and grief stricken he is sitting on his chariot telling krishna i cannot fight this is the beginning and the background of the wonderful knowledge of bhagavad gita which actually begins second chapter onwards when lord krishna is going to speak this knowledge is so profound if we are able to assimilate in our life we will witness an amazing change in life life will no longer be the same so we should be very very enthusiastic and eager to hear what lord krishna is going to speak now in the second chapter Second chapter is the summary of all the contents of Bhagavad Gita. So again, one request I have, please hear it with rapt attention. See you in the second chapter. That's all for the first one. Thank you so much for hearing. Hare Krishna. हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे
टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सेकेंड चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता कॉन्टेंट्स ऑफ द गीता समराइज दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एंड आचार्य ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वाइड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट लेट सी वर्स नंबर वन संजय उवाच तम तथा कृपया विष्ट अश्रुपूर्णाकुलेक्षण विशीद वाक्यम उवाच मधुसूदन संजय सेड सी अर्जुन फुल ऑफ कंपैशन एंड वेरी सॉरोफुल His eyes brimming with tears Madhusudana Krishna spoke the following words Arjuna was feeling great compassion and this compassion is considered a very good quality However this is the first instruction of Bhagavad Gita that compassion lamentation and tears on material platform are because of ignorance of the knowledge of the self usually we think and that is how we define all the activities of our life all the activities are directed towards comfort of the body we think if the body is comfortable then we'll be happy if there is discomfort for the body such situations we are willing to avoid but compassion and lamentation simply for the body is like compassion for the dress of a drowning man if a man is drowning and we are crying for the dress of such a person then that is less intelligence in a similar fashion we have to understand more important than saving the dress is saving the person who is drowning with that dress but all the efforts are simply to save the dress this body is nothing but dress of the spirit soul that is why it is told by lord rishabdev lord rishabdev was also incarnation of krishna and his great son was bharat maharaj and because of bharat maharaj this entire planet got the name bharat varsha before his rule it was called ilavrat varsha so bharat maharaj along with his brothers was given very very sublime instructions by his father rishabdev before he was about to take sanyas and the most important of all instruction is lord shri rishabdev tells to bharat maharaj nayam deho deh bhajam riloke kashtan kaman arhate vid bhujamiye tapo divyam putra ka yen satvam shuddhyed yasmad brahma sokhyam tvanantam human life is not meant simply to bring comfort to the body rather people do not know we should try to take voluntarily discomforts that is called tapasya tapasya means willingly one is taking discomforts in life for what for spiritual pleasure for spiritual advancement the body becomes purified if one takes discomforts according to the direction of the scriptures and by such scientific taking of discomforts even for maintaining physical body we take discomforts otherwise we'll get diseased and for spiritual fitness spiritual pleasure physical discomforts mental discomforts are very much required thus vedic culture is full of tapasya so human life is only meant for tapasya rishabh dev tells sense enjoyment which is available even in the lower species like that of stool eating hogs vid bhujam ye human being should not work to enjoy the same pleasure but one should do tapasya so that one's existence becomes purified 
वंस द एग्जिस्टेंस इज प्यूरिफाइड देन अ पर्सन कैन एक्सपीरियंस ब्रह्म सौख्यम स्पिरिचुअल प्लेजर एंड बिकॉज वी आर स्पिरिट सोल्स अनलेस वी रिलिश स्पिरिचुअल प्लेजर इन आर लाइफ वी विल ऑलवेज बी डिससेटिस्फाइड सो अर्जुना हियर बिकॉज ऑफ इग्नोरेंस वॉज सिंपली क्राइंग फॉर द एक्सटर्नल ड्रेस ही वॉज थिंकिंग आई एम गोइंग टू किल माई रिलेटिव एंड ही वॉज नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन दिस एक्टिविटी ऑफ फॉर लाइज द स्पिरिचुअल इमेंसिपेशन ऑफ बोथ द पार्टीज हाउ इज इट सो दैट लॉर्ड कृष्णा विल एक्सप्लेन श्री भगवाच कुतस्वाकमलिद विषमे समुपस्थित अनार्यजुष्ट अस्वर्ग्यम अकीर्ति करमर्जुन द सुप्रीम पर्सन भगवान सेड माई डियर अर्जुन हाउ हैव दीज इम्प्योरिटीज कम अपॉन यू दे आर नॉट एट ऑल बिफिटिंग अ मैन हु नोज द प्रोग्रेसिव वैल्यूज ऑफ लाइफ they do not lead to higher planets but to infamy very important word used here for lord krishna is bhagwan shri bhagwan uvacha what is bhagwan why god is called bhagwan this question may come in many minds so the entire vedic system of education directs a man to have brahma jigyasa brahma jigyasa means to understand the spiritual existence what is the ultimate reality why am i existing who am i within this body who has created this body a wonderful supercomputer who has assembled this wonderful brain who has assembled these most wonderful fantastic cameras called the eyes like this who has manufactured this body in which every cell is more complex than a metropolitan city who has assembled and for what purpose what is the truth of life this is called brahma jigyasa so just like modern science has analyzed actually whatever we see around us the atomic physics says it is actually nothing but combination of protons neutrons and electrons nothing else protons neutrons electrons they combine together to produce whatever we see around us but now the science has become more advanced and they are understanding no even proton neutron electrons are not the fundamental particles they are combination of some other energies like this if we keep on tracing ultimately what is truth what is this substance that we are seeing around us wood cement is definitely definitely an illusion but even atoms and proton neutron electrons are also not the ultimate reality so what is that ultimate reality the substance which is manifesting in so many forms around us so the vedas inform us that is brahm or the spirit so unless a person understands this ultimate reality the problems of life cannot be solved so those who are seers of the true shrimad bhagavatam explains vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj gyanam advayam that absolute truth is discovered by them in three phases which are those three phases brahmeti paramatmeti bhagwan iti shabdyate the first phase of understanding the ultimate truth absolute truth is called brahm brahm means spiritual energy when we keep on analyzing go deeper what is the fundamental energy we will understand there is one energy which is all pervading and when a person advances further he realizes actually this energy which is all pervading is coming from a person who is present in all of our hearts that is called paramatma in this body there is atma that krishna will explain in detail in 13th chapter of bhagavad gita but along with atma there is another atma and that is called param atma so the individual atma is conscious of this body but paramatma is conscious of all the bodies this is called second phase of realization of absolute truth 
that the energy which is there everywhere this energy is coming from a person who is present in the hearts of all the living entities and then the third and the final phase of realization of absolute truth the most advanced transcendentalists are able to understand the bhagwan feature from brahmeti paramatmeti bhagwan iti shabdyate so this bhagwan feature is the ultimate word in realization of absolute truth what is the meaning of bhagwan some people ask whether bhagwan is a person or simply an energy actually if we understand the sanskrit language the meaning of the root then such a question will not arise bhagwan van means possessor and bhag means opulences the definition of bhagwan has been given by parashar muni father of vyasa dev the author of mahabharat bhagavad gita the compiler of all the vedas his father parashar muni has given definition in the vishnu puran aishwaryasya samagrasya viryasya yashasa shriya gyan vairagya yashchaiva shannam bhag itingana bhag means opulence there are six kinds of opulences which make a person attractive one opulence is the beauty beautiful people attract others second opulence is wisdom it attracts third opulence is power strength if a person is very strong fame and renunciation so any person who has got these opulences and riches so any person has got these six opulences becomes very attractive so parashar muni explains samagrasya there could be many many rich people but nobody can claim all the riches in the world belong to me so all the riches are owned by a person that person is called bhagwan so any person who can claim that all the riches wealth of the world creation belongs to me that is bhagwan so any person who has got all the opulences in completion that is called bhagwan bhagwan means who is having all the riches who is most beautiful who is having all the strength in this world who is most wise who is most learned he is called bhagwan thus these are the attributes of a person so bhagwan means possessor of opulence a person so ultimate truth cannot be simply dead energy impersonal energy because we see beautiful designs around us energy cannot act automatically and create designs there has to be a conscious designer so some people tell god is only a person ultimate truth is person some people tell ultimate truth is only all pervading impersonal energy but actually the all pervading impersonal energy called brahm and bhagwan are non different features of absolute truth absolute truth is having personal aspect as well as impersonal aspect but the impersonal aspect energy is dependent on the person so there is no difference between the two brahm and bhagwan they are one and the same example given is like that of sun and the sunlight there is no difference between sun and sunlight because it is not possible that sun is existing without its light and it is not possible also that light is existing without sun so in that sense sun and sunlight are one and the same but still there is difference if i am seeing the sunlight i am contacting the sunlight it does not mean i am touching or i have entered the sun planet this is called achintya bhed abhes oneness and difference at the same time so in this way definitely absolute truth is brahm all pervading energy which is non different from bhagwan but this all pervading energy is emanating from bhagwan the personality of godhead just like the sunlight is emanating from sun this is the perfect understanding of absolute truth so thus uh, ved vyas has not written shri krishna uvacha because people may think oh krishna one powerful man is giving his opinion so throughout the bhagavad gita lord krishna has been addressed whenever lord krishna speaks as shri bhagwan uvacha shri bhagwan uvacha ved vyas wants to tell please understand this knowledge is coming from bhagwan the supreme reality 
from whom all the living entities are coming all the planets are coming all the matter is coming he is the creator therefore knowledge given by him is perfect so people are having so many confusions about this world what is this world all about what is the purpose who we are and we are going to get answers of all these questions by bhagwan the supreme person creator himself how fortunate we are so let us see how lord the supreme lord is going to give this wonderful wisdom to arjuna and bring him out of lamentation क्लैब्यमस्मगमफ नयतवै उपपद्य क्षुद्र हृदय दौर्बल्यम त्यक्तिष्ठा पर सन ऑफ प्रिथा डो नॉट यील टू दिस डिग्रेडिंग इम्पोर्टेंस इट डज नॉट बिकम यू Give up such petty weakness of the heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Arjuna uvacha katham bhishma maham sankhe dronam cha madhusudana ishubhiv pratyotsyami puja rhavari sudana. Arjuna said, O killer of Madhu, Krishna. How can I counteract with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? So it is Vedic injunction etiquette moral obligation that superior should not be offered even a verbal fight. And who is superior? A person can be superior in knowledge that is the first criteria or in social position that is second criteria. or in age if a person is more in age social position or knowledge such people are called superiors and they should never be offered even a verbal argument it is sinful activity so if a verbal argument also cannot be offered here arjuna is being told to kill them so he is telling how can i pierce them with arrows arjuna is completely bewildered this is against the religious injunctions guru nahatva hi mahanubhavan sheyo bhoktum bhaiksham api haloke hatvarth kamanstu guru nihaiva bhunjiya bhogan rudhira pradigdhan it is better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers even though they are avaricious they are nonetheless superiors if they are killed our spoils will be tainted with blood na chaitad vidma katarno gariyo yad va jayema yadivano jayeyuho धृतराष्ट्रीड all the good qualities he is a very virtuous man even though he was put along with his family into so many troubles by the kauravas and such aggressors are standing their wife was attempted to be disrobed in a full assembly they were given poison their house was set on fire and so many other life attempts were made so an ordinary person would not leave the chance to attack such an enemy and kill him but arjuna his senses are perfectly under control very nicely as per his capacity he is analyzing oh this is sinful this is bad even though i can kill them they are avaricious but what will happen to their families they are elderly people they are supposed to guide family families without guidance will fall down from the path of religion will not attain the ultimate objective of life like this arjuna is 
when in the eyes live with control senses and control mind he is analyzing the situation so thus arjun is perfect candidate for self realization unless the senses are controlled unfortunately today there is no training for controlling the senses we think the more we indulge in sense enjoyment we'll be happy no that is illusion if the senses are not controlled there is no question of coming to the platform of knowledge and without knowledge and devotion there is no question of liberation कार्पण्य दोषो पहत स्वभाव पृछा ता धर्म सम्मूचेता यश्चित ब्रूहि तन्मे शिष्यस्तेहम शाधि प्रपन्नम नाउ आई एम कन्फ्यूज अबाउट माई ड्यूटी एंड हैव लॉस्ट ऑल कंपोजर बिकॉज अ वीकनेस in this condition i am asking you to tell me clearly what is best for me now i am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me karpanya dosho pahata swabhavah the word used here is kripana from kripana comes karpanya what is kripana kripana means miser and who is a miser it is explained in गर्ग संहिता यो वा एतद् अक्षरम गार्गी अविदित्वा अस्माल लोकात् प्रयति स कृपण एनी पर्सन हू डज नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द साइंस ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड पास इज अवे फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड लाइक कैट्स एंड डॉग्स सिंपली केटरिंग टू द डिमांड्स ऑफ मटीरियल माइंड एंड बॉडी सच अ पर्सन इज कॉल माइजर वाई सच अ पर्सन इज कॉल माइजर हू डज नॉट डू स्पिरिचुअल इंक्वायरी because miser does not know how to utilize the assets he could be very rich but he would be living a very wretched life in a similar fashion in human form of life by self realization person can solve all the problems of life but if a person does not do self realization he has wasted this very rich asset of a human form of life so he is called miser and such misers mainly they are not able to have spiritual inquiry because of material affection and family attachments we are all just like travelers suppose in a long journey we sit in a restaurant with some strangers and we spend all our money on taking care of such strangers and all our love and affection we show on them so such an act is not very wise because all of us will carry on to our respective destinations we are never going to meet again that is the situation in this material world we are all travelers we are traveling through various bodies life after life and then we assemble in this world and we meet in this eternal voyage in groups called families so if you simply spend all the time the family members are natural objects of affection but if a person is overly affectionate he is attached to anything in this material world people or objects places anything then a person will get trapped in the cycle of birth and death so arjuna here because of strong family affection is not able to wage a war which is his duty even though his family members are standing on the other side So Arjuna is conscious that this is karpanya dosha this is miserly weakness because of this family affection i am not able to do my duty and unless a person does his duty very nicely there is no question of self realization another important word used in this verse is shadhi mam tvam prapannam so when such complexities arise in life arjuna is very successful person very strong person there is no material dearth in his life but still he is perplexed so even though we can become very very successful in our material life perplexities are going to come in life and the solution lies in prapadyante shadhi mam tvam prapannam surrender one has to surrender to krishna or krishna's representative who is called guru or spiritual master unless one completely surrenders to guru there is no question of solving the problems of life 
Of course, such surrender is not blind. Just like using our intelligence, we find a very good doctor and then surrender unto that doctor. Doctor, please operate my heart and you please fix my disease. Unless such complete surrender is there, doctor will not be able to help despite doctor's willingness. In a similar fashion, unless we completely surrender into spiritual master, we cannot solve the problems of life. Of course, we should be wise enough to have knowledge who is a bona fide spiritual master. Only then surrender should be done. Nahi prapashyami mama panudyad yachoka mucho shanam indriyanam avapya bhuma vasapatnam riddham Rajyam Suranam Apichadhipatyam I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to destroy it even if I win an unrivaled kingdom on the earth with sovereignty like that of the demigods in heaven. Sanjaya Uvacha Eva Mukva Rishikesham Guda Keshav Parantapaha Nayotsya Iti Govindam Ukva Tushnim Babhuvaha Sanjaya said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. Tam Uvacha Rishi Keshaha Prahasan Neva Bharata O descendant of Bharat, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief-stricken Arjuna. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Ashochyanan Vashochastvam Pragyavadansha bhashase Gatasuna gatasuncha Nanushochanti pandita The Blessed Lord said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. We see in the society, stress, depression, lamentation is continuously increasing. And now various people, even celebrities are telling, it is okay, we should not be shy. Depression is normal. No sir, it is not normal. It is normal for the ignorant people who are not educated people. But a person who is educated, educated person, learned man, is called Pandita. So those who are wise, Pandit, such a person does not lament Lord Krishna is telling either for the living or for the dead. He does not lament for any situation of this material body. Lamentation is only the business of the people who are not trained in the science of self-realization. Because I am not the body, I am spirit soul, I remain eternally the same. So all the lamentation, this distress is because of Abhiniveshataha. Abhiniveshata means absorption. As a sleeping man gets absorbed in the body of the dream and thus he creates situation of so-called happiness and distress, ideally he should be unaffected because it is only a dream. In a similar fashion, we are spirit souls, we have got nothing to do with this body and this world. But when the spirit soul starts thinking out of illusion, I am this body, then the situation of so-called happiness and lamentation is created. But a person who is wise laments neither for the living nor for the dead. Natvevaham jatu nasam Natvam neme janadhipaha Natchaevana bhavishyamaha Sarve vayam atafparam Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, 
nor all these kings nor in the future shall any of us cease to be so this is the first instruction which is given by lord krishna to arjuna never was a time when we were not existing and there shall never be a time in future when any of us will cease to exist arjuna was thinking oh if i kill these people they will cease to exist so krishna told no there is no cause of lamentation because we are spirit soul different from the body we will never cease to exist and apart from the eternality of the individual soul the individuality also is being expressed here there is a class of philosophers called mayavadi impersonalists who tell that we have come from the supreme spirit and now we have got trapped in this body again we have to merge in the supreme spirit so this is rejected by krishna in the word sarve vayam atah param vayam means plural plurality and this plurality of consciousness is also asserted in various upanishads like katha upanishad shweta shvatar upanishad nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko yo bahunam vidhati kaman so the upanishads point out there are two kinds of nityas or eternal entities there is nitya one singular entity and nitya naam so many eternal entities there is chetana one conscious living entity which is different from so many other conscious entities what is the difference eko yo bahunam vidhati kaman this one eternal living entity conscious living entity takes care of all other infinitesimal consciousnesses so thus plurality is explained here there is one soul which is infinite which is supreme it takes care fulfills the desires bahuna with dhati kaman of multitudes of infinitesimal atomic living entities so there was never a time sarve vayam atah param lord krishna explains when we were not existing we were always existing and in future also there will never be a time when you merge into me or anybody anybody merges into me we will all continue to exist in future देहिनोस्मिन् यथा देहे कौमारम यौवनम जरा तथा देहांतर प्राप्त धीरस्तत्र न मुह्यते एज द एम्बॉडीड सोल कंटिन्यूअली पासेस इन दिस बॉडी फ्रॉम बॉयहुड टू यूथ टू ओल्ड एज द सोल सिमिलरली पासेस इनटू अनदर बॉडी एट डेथ द सेल्फ रियलाइज्ड सोल इज नॉट बिविल्डर्ड by such a change as we did not cry for change of bodies our body was p shaped in the womb of mother then it developed into a grown up embryo then it came out as a child we did not cry why was p size now my body has changed similarly the child body got transformed into a young body we did not cry at that time for the change of body and then the young man became old man we did not cry for such a change of body similarly krishna is telling tatha dehantara prapti at the time of death soul simply is going to change the body what is the need of crying anyway we are changing body always and death is final change we move to another body simply a change of external appearance so what is the cause of lamentation so dhiras tatrna muhyati death the media the news it is filled with such news and the whole world is lamenting for death but it is told dhira a self realized soul is not at all disturbed by death matra sparshastu konteya shitoshna sukh dukh da agama paino nityas सो इवन दो वी मे थियोरेटिकली अंडरस्टैंड आई एम नॉट द बॉडी बट स्टिल वी फील द पैंग्स ऑफ द बॉडी 
to have practical realization is difficult it needs great advancement in spiritual life but there is a stage just like when a person wakes up from the dream he is no longer affected by the calamities of dream he understands i am not the body of dream such a state of wakefulness self realization is possible but that is very advanced stage till then a person has to lord krishna recommends here tan stiti shasva bharata unfortunately many people have taken to profession of spiritual life and they try to solve the material problems of their disciples in the name of spirituality please ask what is your material desire and i will fulfill it i will cure your disease your toothache and people think this is spiritual life arjuna was in distress so krishna did not tell arjuna okay arjuna no problem you will sit i will fight for you or take this pill of ash and throw it on the enemy enemy will get destroyed no krishna told that is the nature of this material world as long as one is there in the body action reactions will continue just like you feel heat and cold the summer and winter seasons they come and go similarly happiness and distress is nature of this material world we think if i do some adjustment in my life my life will be all set and i will be happy that is not possible so as long as a person is not very advanced where one can practically realize i am not the body one has to tolerate tan stiti shasva bharata tolerate for what for spiritual life when we execute our spiritual duties then in course of such duties just like it is told in the vedas one has to get up early in the morning and take cold water bath now such bath has to be taken even in the winter season so that is a duty like this it is told uh, that you have to fast on certain days in a month if we fast then uh, hunger pangs will disturb a person but one has to tolerate that is called tapasya so one has to learn how to tolerate such material dualities in course of performing the spiritual duties yam hi na vyathyante te purusham purusharshabha sam dukha sukham dhiram somritatvaya kalpate O best among men Arjuna the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation So very important word used here is amritatvai kalpate amritatva immortality this is the aim of life So one may ask why so many austerities tapasyas are recommended why to take physical discomfort because this physical discomfort brings immortality to the soul there will no longer be need to accept more bodies material bodies which come along with concomitant distress of birth death old age and disease so if we are able to tolerate the happiness and distress we are neither related by material happiness nor we are disturbed by material distress then amritatvai kalpate such a person becomes eligible for amritatva immortality yes so uh, some of the richest people of the world are funding research how to become immortal god is telling here the standard procedure so the spiritual life is nothing but scientific discipline to attain the stage of immortality and solve all the problems of life na sato vidyate bhavo न भाव विद्यते सतः उभयोरपि दृष्टोंतस् वनयोस्तत्वदर्शिभिः दोस हु आर सीयर्स ऑफ द ट्रुथ हैव कंक्लूडेड दैट ऑफ द नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट देयर इज नो एंड्यूरेंस एंड ऑफ द एग्जिस्टेंट देयर इज नो सेसेशन दिस सीयर्स हैव कंक्लूडेड बाय स्टडीइंग द नेचर ऑफ बोथ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स Arjuna is crying so Krishna tells you should cry for the substance and not for illusion if at all you wish to cry there are many things in the world which we perceive as real but are non existent just like water in the desert that is actually called mirage it is illusion we 
see water but water is not there in a similar fashion krishna is telling before crying you understand whether that thing is reality or illusion thus all the philosophers have always been wondering what is reality and what is illusion am i dreaming right now because how would a person know one is dreaming or not even what i am touching this desk i am touching this is dream or this is reality what exists and what does not exist how do we understand that so here lord krishna is quoting the version of the seers of truths how can we understand what is reality and what is illusion krishna has explained just in one verse very beautiful verse na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate satah lord krishna explains those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non existent there is no endurance so anything which does not endure does not exist and what exists there is no cessation of it so what does not endure we see so many animals around us dog cat fish are they going to endure always no it means they do not exist similarly we see people around us we see our family members will they always exist no they will not endure it means they are non existent they don't exist or oh, don't exist but i touch them i speak with them how do we understand the meaning of the statement they are non existent then what is it that i am seeing around me i am seeing so many personalities species they don't exist means what you are seeing is only dress such identities do not exist just like a man can take the get up of a woman and perform very nicely on the stage similarly another person can take the dress of a lion somebody can take the dress of a tree but there is no tree on the stage there is no lion on the stage there is no woman on the stage the male members have taken these different dresses they are completely different from the appearance those characters on the stage in a similar fashion what is there within everybody either the dog on the street or the fish in the water in the aquarium or within all our family members whom we identify as father mother children male female uncle aunt friend enemy is spirit soul and these are simply different roles which we have taken such personalities do not exist just like on the stage a person has taken certain role he has taken the role of a farmer but farmer does not exist he has taken the role of a warrior warrior does not exist it is only the external get up in a similar fashion dog does not exist there is no dog over there that is why it is told krishna will explain further in bhagavad gita pandita samdarshina shuni chay vashopache cha brahmani gavi hastini a learned man whether he sees an elephant dog or a dog eater he does not discriminate the external dresses he knows these are only dresses within it same similar spirit souls are living so thus a wise person does not discriminate this is my family this is enemy this is human this is animal he sees all of them on equal level he understands these identities do not exist these are simply the designations given to the dresses so thus uh, arjuna is being informed by lord krishna please do not fall for these roles some spirit soul has taken the role of grandfather of your teacher actually these are only roles such personalities do not exist so what we see around us are only dresses we are getting attached simply to the dresses we have never seen the spirit soul which is living inside the dress so is it sanity to get attracted by the dresses if a man comes in the dress of a woman and another man gets attracted oh i want to have marry that woman oh that is not woman itself on this that is a man actually in the get up of a woman this is the illusion of this materialistic society we get trapped in the external appearance of dresses and not able to see the spirit soul living within the dress so thus krishna tells arjuna and of the existent there is no cessation spirit soul always continues to exist it will leave this body enter another body the spirit soul is reality and these external designations please 
such personalities never exist they are only dresses avinashi tu tadvidhi yena sarvam idam tatam vinasham avyayasyasya na kashchit kartum arhati no that which pervades the entire body is indestructible no one is able to destroy the imperishable soul antavantai me deha nityasyokta sharirinah anashino aprameyasya tasmad yudhyasva bharata only the material body of the indestructible immeasurable and eternal living entity is subject to destruction therefore fight o descendant of bharat ya enam veti hantaram yaschainam manyate hatam ubhau tau na vijani to nayam hanti na hanyate he who thinks that the living entity is the slayer or that he is slain does not understand one who is in knowledge knows that the self slays not nor is slain na jayate miyate va kadachin nayam bhutva bhavita va na bhuyah ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na hanyate hanya mane sharire for the soul there is never birth nor death nor having once been does he ever cease to be he is unborn eternal ever existing undying and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain veda vinashinam nityam ya enam ajam avyayam कथम स पुरुष पार्थ कम घातयति हंति कम ओ पार्थ हाउ कैन अ पर्सन हु नोज दैट द सोल इज इनडिस्ट्रक्टेबल अनबॉर्न इटर्नल एंड इम्यूटेबल किल एनी वन और कॉज एनी वन टू किल वा सांसी जीर्णा यथा विहाय न वाणी गृहणाति नरो पराणी तथा शरीराणी विहाय जीर्णानी अन्यानि संयाति नवानि देहि एज अ पर्सन पुट्स ऑन न्यू गार्मेंट्स गिविंग अप ओल्ड वंस सिमिलरली द सोल एक्सेप्ट्स न्यू मटेरियल बॉडीज गिविंग अप द ओल्ड एंड यूजलेस वंस नयन छिंदी शस्त्रण नयन दहति पावक न चयन क्लेदयो नाशोषयति मारुत द सोल कैन नेवर बी कट इन टू पीसेस बाय एनी वेपन नॉर कैन ही बी बर्न बाय फायर नॉर मॉइसन बाय वॉटर नॉर विदर्ड बाय द विंड अछेद्योम अदाओं अक्लेद्यो शोष्य निर्वगतस्थाचलोम सनातन दिस इंडिविजुअल सोल इज अनब्रेकेबल एंड इनसल्यूबल एंड कैन नीदर बी बर्न नॉट ड्राइड ही इज एवर लास्टिंग ऑल पर्वेडिंग अनचेंजेबल इमूवेबल एंड इटर्नली द सेम so sometimes people experiment to find out about the soul this consciousness which animates the body at times there are experiments where they just want to weigh the body before and after death in this way they want to understand the mass of the soul sometimes they want to use advanced instruments some radars to capture the motion of the soul but here lord krishna is describing that the soul cannot be cut cannot be cut into pieces cannot be moistened by water cannot be burned by fire 
the soul cannot be perceived by any of the material instruments because the soul is beyond material dimension technically called turiya so something which is not belonging to material dimension can never be perceived by scientific experiments if at all we have to have knowledge of soul then understanding it from the creator is the only bona fide way here lord krishna further explains it is unbreakable and insoluble and it is everlasting all pervading we are willing to find out whether there is life on other planets here it is being told life is there on all planets soul is all pervading we may not be able to perceive in which form life is existing but uh, here it is being explained soul is all pervading everywhere you will find the souls there is life on every planet and actually science is now beginning to understand even in fire we find microorganisms so thus even on sun planet there is life on every planet it is full of life bustling with life avyakto yam achintyo yam avikaryo yam uchyate tasma devam vidit vainam nanu shochitu marhasi it is said that the soul is invisible inconceivable immutable and unchangeable knowing this you should not grieve for the body another important word used here is achintyoyam means inconceivable as a dog's brain cannot understand our science and technology similarly the creator lord krishna is telling our brains are not designed our minds are not designed to conceive soul soul is inconceivable to material minds so thus how much ever we try we will not be able to conceive how something is always existing and uh, it cannot be broken into pieces and the small same small soul it animates such a huge body of that of whales and elephants and that of even small ants and mosquitoes how it becomes all pervading how it enters the body how it leaves the body it is very difficult to conceive so if we want to have knowledge understanding from the creator is the only way ath chayanam nitya jatam nityam va manya semritam tatha pitvam mahabaho nainam shochitum arhasi If however you think that the soul is perpetually born and always dies still you have no reason to lament o mighty armed Now Krishna is speaking from the perspective of an atheist As soul is inconceivable it might be difficult unless somebody is austere or devoted it is very difficult to understand the subject matter of soul But even if a person is not able to understand the eternal existence of soul lord krishna is telling if you think this consciousness is function of matter under certain mature material combination the body gives rise to consciousness then also you have no reason to lament because if everything is just chemical then who cries for loss of some chemicals then all your relatives they are nothing but chemical combinations so who cries for loss of chemicals so thus krishna is telling in any case you should not lament jatasya hi dhruvo mrityu dhruvam janma mritasya cha tasmad apariharya arthe natvam shochitu marhasi for one who has taken his birth death is certain and for one who is dead birth is certain therefore in the unavoidable discharge of your duty you should not lament avyaktadini bhutani vyakta madhyani bharata avyakta nidhananyeva tatra ka paridevana all created beings are unmanifest in their beginning manifest in their interim state and unmanifest again when they are annihilated 
So what need is there for lamentation? Now Krishna is presenting both perspectives. If you do not believe in the existence of eternal existence of soul and such philosophers were there even 5000 years ago they were called vaibhashikas or lok yatikas such philosophers would say that consciousness is the result of chemical combination so anyway nobody cries for loss of chemicals and uh, just like the children they make some sand castles on the beach and then they dismantle it nobody cries for the loss of castle in a similar fashion these bodies are nothing but castles of earth which has combined together so death is nothing but dismantling of this castle why should you cry for it and if at all you believe in the eternal existence of soul then the soul was always existing it took this dress and then again it has left the dress again there is no cause of lamentation in other words krishna is telling no thoughtful person will lament in life lamentation distress is only meant for people who are ignorant brahm bhuta prasannatma na shochati na kankshati shochati lamentation is not meant for people who are educated in the science of self prasannatma they are always happy so thus happiness does not lie in working very hard for material success unfortunately in the absence of this guidance given by lord even the best brains of the society are spoiling their time thinking material adjustments will make us happy no we are spirit soul when we become callous for the material adjustments and rise to the platform of self realization then only there is freedom from lamentation otherwise it is going to continue आश्चर्यवत्पश्यति कश्चिदेन आश्चर्यवदति तथा चान्य आश्चर्यवचन अन्यशृणोति श्रुवापीन वेद न चेचे सम लुक ऑन द सोल एज अमेजिंग सम डिस्क्राइब हिम एज अमेजिंग एंड सम हियर ऑफ इज एज अमेजिंग वाइल अदर्स इवन आफ्टर हियरिंग अबाउट हिम cannot understand him at all just like a small child who is always busy with his toys cannot understand the function of the government the economic policies and so many advanced concepts similarly people who are very fond of materialistic enjoyment actually there is no difference small child is crying for and hankering for toy car and a grown up man so called educated man is hankering for a big car what is the difference car is big or small both are made of matter material ingredients thus any material desire is but childish but childish a child becomes very sad when he sees his favorite character dying in in the movie similarly if we also cry seeing death in this world which are nothing but movie characters this life is but a movie soul has taken a role for certain time then such situation such behavior is not expected from wise and learned people so anybody who has any material desire i want a big house i want car i want so called success or so called people actually this is only ignorance it is childish so as a child is not expected to understand advanced subject matters people who are very much attached on the material platform cannot understand about soul and some who are able to have some understanding they are also not able to have perfect understanding of the soul they mistake soul to be the same as super soul so the vedas are mentioning nitya nitya naam chetana chetana naam atma se jantur nihito guhayam there are two souls in the guhayam in the heart atma and parmatma so if at all they are able to understand that i am soul different from body they start thinking oh, i am only parmatma i am god and there are some philosophers who tell you are god you don't realize you are god this is not recommended here as per bhagavad gita nitya nitya naam nitya naam plural infinitesimal living entities will continue and all their desires will be supplied by nitya one infinite soul 
Lord Krishna has told the soul cannot be cut into pieces. Nayanam chindanti shastrani. It is, it cannot be broken. So it is not that from one soul, small souls have come up. Again, it will merge. It will become God, or that you are God. So all these are misunderstandings created because of material desires, either desire to enjoy matter or desire to leave matter for attaining liberation. Both are different formats of material desires. So when a person desires the satisfaction of God, then he is able to have perfect understanding of spiritual life. So Krishna is telling here, others cannot understand about the soul even after hearing a lot. Dehi nityam avadhyoyam dehe sarvasya bharata tasma sarvani bhutani natvam shochitu marhasi O descendant of Bharat, he who dwells in this body is eternal and can never be slain. Therefore, you need not grieve for any creature. This is the conclusion of Lord Krishna about the subject matter of soul. Lord Krishna presented both the perspective. If at all you are thoughtful, even though you are atheist, you should not lament. If for you, uh, everything is chemical combination, who cries for loss of chemicals? And if you understand, you are wise, you understand eternal soul, again, why you are lamenting? But Lord Krishna being God, he needs to give proper knowledge about soul, he explains. Please understand the conclusion is, he who dwells in the body is eternal and can never be slain. Dehi nityam avadhyoyam. Deha means body, dehi means one who lives in the body. One who lives in the body can never be destroyed. This is a great revelation and a person should get very much fascinated by this knowledge. Oh, I am eternal. Then who was I in my previous life? What am I going to become in the next life? We all understand, oh, nature, nature does, yes, nature does everything. Nature is going to give us next body. But we also understand nature works strictly as per laws. So which are those laws which are governing my next body? Now everybody is so very much cautious of oh, which school I should take admission in, which college I should have, which business I should launch. Which technology is going to come? Let me keep myself updated, otherwise I'll be out of business. We are going to be out of body. Where is preparation about next life? This is very important subject matter, a great revelation. And this is just the beginning of the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Understand that we are eternal. So Arjuna was putting forth various reasons not to fight. First of all, Arjuna was telling, I do not think how any good can happen. It will cause us great distress and lamentation. So Krishna has given argument of soul different from body to avoid all the lamentation. Arjuna gave another argument of not fighting. He is telling this is against my duty, against dharma. Now Krishna is going to give arguments to Arjuna how fighting is his duty and it is not against dharma. Even though he is supposed to kill his elderly respectable relatives. Swadharmam apichavekshya navikampitum arhasi dharmyadhi yuddhashreyonyat kshatriyasya navidyate Considering your specific duty as a kshatriya, you should know that there is no better engagement for you than fighting on religious principles, and so there is no need for hesitation. <clears throat> Dharma means intrinsic behavior or characteristic which cannot be separated. It has come from Dhri Dhatu. Dhri means to capture. Dharma means something which maintains one's existence. Just like sweetness is the dharma of sugar, sugar cannot be bitter. Heat is the dharma of fire. In a similar fashion, different dharma is given to living entities who are absorbed in the bodily concept of life. 
their intrinsic behavior which they are never supposed to leave using that way performing duties in that fashion they should maintain their existence why such duties are given so that eventually they can come to the platform of self realization just like the dharma for a young student is not to carry calculator in the examination hall and the dharma for an advanced student is to carry one must carry scientific calculator in the examination similarly for kshatriya it is not allowed to be non violent and for brahmana it is not allowed to be violent he must always remain non violent so something which is dharma for one person becomes a dharma for another so just like the child is gradually trained in a similar fashion the consciousness is given chance for gradual elevation to come to its original state thus arjuna was having body of a kshatriya so krishna is telling arjuna please stick to your swadharma what is your swadharma as a kshatriya your specific duty is to fight so even though there are inconveniences you should tolerate because if you do not stick to your dharma you will not be able to attain self realization and only by self realization you can attain immortality yadrichhaya chopapannam स्वर्गद्वारम अपावृत सुखिन क्षत्रिया पार्थ लभंते युद्धमीदृश ओ पार्थ हैप्पी आर द क्षत्रिया टू हूम सच फाइटिंग ऑपर्चुनिटीज कम अनसॉट ओपनिंग फॉर देम द डोर्स ऑफ द हेवेन्ली प्लैनेट्स अथ चेतम धर्म अथ चेतम इमं धर्म्यं संग्राम न क्यसी तत स्वधर्म कीर्ति हिवा पापम अवाप्यसी इफ हाउ एवर यू डू नॉट फाइट दिस रिलीजियस वॉर देन यू विल सर्टनली इनकर सेंस फॉर नेग्लेक्टिंग योर ड्यूटीज एंड दस लूज योर रेप्यूटेशन एज अ फाइटर अकीर्ति चापी भूता कथय्य संभावि चाकीर्तिमरणाच्य पीपल विल ऑलवेज स्पीक ऑफ योर इन्फेमी एंड फॉर वन हू हैज बीन ऑनर्ड डिस ऑनर इज वर्स देन डेथ भयादृणाद उपरतम बहुमतो द ग्रेट जनरल्स हु हैव हाईली एस्टीम्ड योर नेम एंड फेम विल थिंक दैट यू हैव लेफ्ट द बैटल फील्ड आउट ऑफ फियर ओनली एंड दस दे विल कंसिडर यू अ कावर्ड अवाच्यवादाश बहून वदिष्यती तवाहिता निंदव सामर्थ्यम तथो दुखतर नुकिम योर एनिमीज विल डिस्क्राइब यू इन मेनी अनकाइंड वर्ड्स एंड स्कॉन योर अबिलिटी वॉट कुड बी मोर पेनफुल फॉर यू हतो वा प्राप्यसी स्वर्गम जित्वा वा भोक्ष्यसे महीम तस्मादुत्तिष्ठ कौंतेय युद्धाय कृत निश्चय ओ सन ऑफ कुंती ईद यू विल बी किल्ड ऑन द बैटल फील्ड एंड अटेन द हेवेनली प्लैनेट्स और यू विल कॉन्कर एंड एंजॉय द अर्थली किंगडम देर फोर गेट अप एंड फाइट विथ डिटर्मिनेशन सो इफ अ क्षत्रिय डाइज फाइटिंग ऑन द बैटल फील्ड फेसिंग इज एनिमी देन ही इज इमीडिएटली प्रमोटेड टू प्लैनेट्स वेर द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग इज वेरी वेरी हाई So Arjuna is being told if you die then you will go to heaven if you live you are victorious then you will enjoy the earthly kingdom thus by all means you should fight Sukh dukhe samekritva 
लाभलाभ जया जय तथो युद्धा युज्यस्व नैव पापम्यसी डू द फाइट फॉर द सेक ऑफ फाइटिंग विदाउट कंसिडरिंग हैप्पीनेस और डिस्ट्रेस लॉस और गेन विक्ट्री और डिफीट एंड बाय सो डूइंग यू शैल नेवर इनकर सिन So Arjuna was fearful of committing sins, breaking the laws of nature. So we should be very, very careful of not committing sins. All the sufferings that we have is only because of breaking the laws of nature that we have. If we think, oh, now this uh, some virus is there in the world, it is creating problem. Let me now fix it with some technology. the technology might be able to fix the virus but if we have broken the laws of nature more more viruses are going to attack us so if we break the laws of nature we suffer bad people around us bad situations around us bad governance these are only instruments this people do not know so we should be very very careful not to commit sins and here lord krishna is telling arjuna If you fight simply for the sake of fighting as a matter of duty without getting attached to the results without caring for victory or gain profit or loss then such an action never incurs sin so do not worry in this attitude you please fight eshate abhihita sankhe buddhir yoge tvimam shrinu buddhya yukto yaya patha कर्म बंधम प्रहास्यसी दस फार आई हैव डिक्लेयर टू यू द एनालिटिकल नॉलेज ऑफ सांख्या फिलोसफी नाउ लिसन टू द नॉलेज ऑफ योगा वेयर बाय वन वर्क्स विदाउट फ्रूटिव रिजल्ट ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा व्हेन यू एक्ट बाय सच इंटेलिजेंस यू कैन फ्री योरसेल्फ फ्रॉम द बॉन्डेज ऑफ वर्क्स सांख्या मीन्स analysis analytical study of body and spirit soul has been carried out very nicely by lord krishna and this is what lord krishna is explaining as sankhya now after very nice analysis of one's existence completely different from the body lord krishna is explaining the second level it is not sufficient just to know that i am not the body if we understand i am not the body I will not be affected by the distress of the body but I do not want just freedom from stress and miseries I want positive happiness and pleasure in life So how can the soul have positive pleasure in life happiness in life when the soul engages in the service of the super soul gets connected with the super soul and that is called yoga Yoga word is very famous but people do not know what is the actual meaning of yoga we think throwing hands and legs around in the air that is called yoga the word yoga actually has come from yuj dhatu yuj means to link or to connect so the process of linking the individual soul with the super soul god is called yoga what is this linking it is not any mechanical linking just like man and woman get linked in a relationship so we have a relationship with god we have forgotten that relationship so when a person is able to revive his relationship once we are out of this bodily concept of life by following the spiritual discipline under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master our memory is revived of our eternal relationship with god god is eternal we are eternal and our relationship is also eternal so when we are able to revive that relationship and engage in the service of god in that relationship then that is called yoga Now here there are various kinds of yoga systems described in the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna is explaining a very advanced form of yoga practice which is called Buddhi Yoga. Yoga is a ladder. Not everyone is expected to be on the top rung of the ladder. So as per the capacity of individuals different rungs different processes of yoga have been recommended. but a person should not get stuck at any of the level one should keep on progressing karma yoga 
ध्यान योगा राज योगा अष्टांग योगा फाइनली अ पर्सन शुड कम टू द लेवल ऑफ भक्ति योगा विच इज़ द टॉप मोस्ट योगा सिस्टम विच इज़ ऑल्सो नोन बाय द नेम बुद्धि योगा बुद्धि योगा मीन्स डूइंग योगा नॉट बाय चेंजिंग योर एक्सटर्नल सर्कमस्टांसिस एज द योगाज एंड आसनाज योग आसनाज एंड द प्राणायाम्स विच आर पार्ट ऑफ हट योगा और अष्टांग योगा विच इज़ नॉर्मली टेकन एज योगा इन दैट यू हैव टू डू एक्सटर्नल एडजस्टमेंट्स यू हैव टू लीव योर हाउस फैमिली गो टू द हिमालयाज और सेक्रेट प्लेस प्योर प्लेस एंड देन सिट देर अलोन स्टॉप योर रीटिंग स्टॉप योर एक्टिविटीज सम एक्सटर्नल अरेंजमेंट्स हैव टू बी डन बट दिस बुद्धि योगा इज सच एन एडवांस प्रोसेस देर इज नो नीड ऑफ एनी एक्सटर्नल अरेंजमेंट यूजिंग द सेम एक्टिविटी यू आर एन एजुकेटर यू कैन कंटिन्यू योर प्रोफेशन ऑफ एजुकेटर you are a businessman you can continue being a businessman arjun was a fighter he could continue being a fighter at the same time do yoga establish your relationship with the supreme soul how simply by manipulating your intelligence this is called buddhi yoga so this very advanced form of yoga lord krishna will now explain to arjuna and although this is most advanced this is most practical also because being situated in one's own position in one's own occupational duty one can perform and attain success of spiritual life so what is this yoga let us try to hear very very carefully नेह भिक्रम नाशोस्ति प्रत्यवाय न विद्यते स्वल्पम्यस्य धर्म से महतो भयात् इन दिस इंडेवर देर इज नो लॉस और डिमिन्यूशन एंड लिटिल एडवांसमेंट ऑन दिस पाथ कैन प्रोटेक्ट वन फ्रॉम द मोस्ट डेंजरस टाइप ऑफ फियर so lord krishna explains if you follow this process of yoga suppose you are able to finish only 5% in this life there is no loss next life you will begin from that point 5% in material world it is not possible that you finish first two years of your college in this life and next life you continue from third year it is not possible but in this process of buddhi yoga neha bikrama nasho asti there is no loss or diminution from the same point you can continue in next life and keep on continuing till you reach perfection and it is told swalpam apyasya dharmasya even though you have just a small beginning in this path it saves you from the greatest danger what is the greatest danger people think oh if i lose my job that is great danger if i lose uh, my family member that is great danger yes these are dangerous situation but anyway we are going to lose all these things and after losing all our relatives all the money name fame position that we have if we degrade to lower species of life that is the greatest danger most serious fear so now there is lot of talk about uh, data data colonization we should not give our data to others we will lose our independence people care lot about their independence the independence day is national holiday it is celebrated people take pride in independence nobody wants to become dependent everyone wants equal rights but what if after human form of life we degrade to animal species we become dog finish all independence is gone we become domestic animal all independence is gone and if you don't become domestic animal life is much more horrible always we are fearful somebody can kill me somebody can attack me suddenly fearing fearing ultimately somebody will kill attack and we are finished so this is the most dangerous fear just imagine you are there out and there are all killers around you anybody can come and kill you any time how your life would be so full of fear this is the greatest fear of life if i degrade to animal species unfortunately there is no knowledge just like children we are attached to materialistic pursuits and we are not able to think that the nature has given me this human body some species have got animal bodies also if i become animal how horrible my life would be but if we perform buddhi yoga 
even a small beginning saves from from degrading to animal species a human form is guaranteed and a person begins from the point he stopped in the previous life व्यवसायात्मिक बुद्धिर एके हा कुरु नंदना बहुशा खाहि अनंतश्च बुद्धयो व्यवसायिना दोस हु आर ऑन दिस पाथ आर रेजोल्यूट इन पर्पस एंड देयर एम इज वन ओ बिलवर्ड चाइल्ड ऑफ द कुरुस द इंटेलिजेंस ऑफ दोस हु आर इररेजोल्यूट is many branched so those who are following this buddhi yoga process they are fixed up because they know the aim of life but not everyone is able to appreciate that this is the aim of life the highest activity and even the vedic scholars are not able to appreciate this why they are not able to understand lord krishna explains yami mam pushpitam vacham प्रवदंती अविपश्चिता वेदवादरता पार्थ नान्यदस्ती वादिन कामस्वर्गपरा जन्म कर्म फल प्रदा क्रिया विशेष बहुला भोगश्वर्यति प्रति Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets, resultant good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there is nothing more than this. Bhogeshwarya prasakta nam taya parit chet sam. व्यवसायात्मिका बुद्धि समाधौ न विधीयते इन द माइंड्स ऑफ दोस हु आर टू अटैच टू सेंस एन्जॉयमेंट एंड मटेरियल ऑपुलेंस एंड हु आर बिविल्डर्ड बाय सच थिंग्स द रेजोल्यूट डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड डज नॉट टेक प्लेस त्रैगुण्य विषया वेदा निस्त्रैगुण्यो भवाजुन निर्द्वो नित्यसत्वस्थो निर्योगक्षेम आत्मवा द वेदाज मेनली डील विद द सब्जेक्ट मैट सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर राइज अबव दीज मोड्स द वेदाज मेनली डील विद द सब्जेक्ट of the three modes of material nature rise above these modes o arjuna be transcendental to all of them be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self vedavad ratah partha na anyad asti iti vadina people get trapped in the fruitive activity segment of the vedas called karma kanda because generally people in this world are having material desires so vedas in order to gradually bring them to the point of surrender to supreme lord in order to increase their faith in the vedic authority promise them material benefits you do this sacrifice this charity this tapasya austerity and you will get such wisdom such heroic power such fame and very nice life partner good children and because people are having material desires they get stuck in following these things of the vedas thus many people ask why krishna's name is not much mentioned in uh, rig yaju sam and thar ved the vedas but that of various devatas are more mentioned yes that is fact krishna's name is mentioned but not much because vedas mainly talk of karma kanda portion fruit of activity for that there is no need of disturbing supreme lord and uh, you can approach other devatas and get your desires fulfilled actually even for that material desires also we should approach supreme lord because he is supreme power but people are not interested in the supreme lord and uh, thus veda still it's all right you have no interest in supreme lord you have only material desires approach these various other devatas 
बट वेन अ पर्सन इज इवन बिकॉज वेन ई फॉलोज दिस कर्म कांड पोर्शन मटीरियल डिजायर विल बी फुलफिल्ड बट इवन आफ्टर फॉलोइंग एंड फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ ऑल द मटीरियल एस्पिरेशन द कंटेंटमेंट ऑफ द हार्ट डज नॉट कम सो देन अ पर्सन इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कम टू नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ नॉलेज दैट इज कॉल्ड द ज्ञान कांड which is mentioned in the upanishads that is called vedanta it is at that point that lord krishna is telling arjuna to come to at least so mostly people tell ved vada ratha partha they tell oh there is nothing more than religious rituals and you do this ceremony do this fasting and uh, you visit temple once in a while and that's all what is religion i am very religious man so krishna is telling please do not get stuck in these religious formalities and rise to vedanta the end of the vedic knowledge the knowledge of the upanishad spiritual inquiry and krishna is telling very importantly nirdvanvo nitya svat satvastho niryoga kshema atmavan the whole world is bothered about gain and safety i want to gain more money i want to gain more fame recognition respect property in the society or people are worried about safety once you have gained it i may not lose it but krishna is telling be free from all anxieties about gain and safety oh then uh, if i simply care yes i will care about spiritual life but then at least we have to bother about material affairs if i don't think about my gain and safety uh, then i will be in distress this is the general understanding but krishna is telling no why no let us see the next important verse यावानर्थ उदपाने सर्वत संप्लुतो दके तावान सर्वेशु वेदेशु ब्राह्मणस्य विजानतः ऑल पर्पसेस दैट आर सर्वड बाय द स्मॉल पॉन्ड कैन एट वंस बी सर्वड बाय द ग्रेट रिजर्वायर्स ऑफ वाटर सिमिलरली ऑल द पर्पसेस ऑफ द वेदास कैन बी सर्व टू वन who knows the purpose behind them so in india it was mainly full of villages even now uh, mainly the population lives in villages but earlier the cities were very very less hastinapur dwarka very less cities mainly it was village because people were knowing we are just travelers instead of building a huge palatial apartment let me save my efforts for spiritual salvation so they would live a simple life in village and how would they arrange water there were no boring and uh, modern supplies as we have now so there were wells and there were different wells for different purposes there would be one well in which you can take bath from another well you can take water for drinking purpose then there is third well for washing clothes fourth well for washing dishes in this way there would be at least half a dozen wells in villages but if you have river in the village then there is no need of well then all the actions can all the activities can be carried out on the river bank you can wash clothes there you can take bath you can fetch water for drinking because in flowing water there is no contamination but in static water of well there can be contamination so here it is being explained if you have a river in your village a big water reservoir then there is no need of having small wells there is no need of digging making such a great effort so similarly a person who is a brahmana brahmana means brahma janati ti brahmana who is a self realized soul who knows the purpose behind all the vedas then he need not follow other religious formalities for gain and safety So what is the purpose of the Vedas that Lord Krishna will explain in the Bhagavad Gita itself 15th chapter Vedaischa sarvair aham ev vedyo vedant krit vedvid ev chaham from all the Vedas i am to be known so ultimately the end of knowledge is to understand the science of god so a person who understands krishna who understands god then there is no need of following any religious formalities or worrying about gain and safety 
So this process of buddhi yoga is so nice Lord Krishna is explaining that automatically yoga and shema will happen. Whatever gains are required for your comfortable living, those gains will be arranged. And whatever requires to be protected for a comfortable life, that protection will also follow. This is buddhi yoga. So people think if I follow spiritual life, I will suffer in the material life. I will have material discomfort. No. Spiritual life is all inclusive. If we follow buddhi yoga, then not just we have spiritual advancement, but also all the material comforts follow automatically by the grace of the supreme lord. How is it so? Lord Krishna will explain. Karmanevadhikaraste Ma phaleshu kadachana Ma karma phalhetur bhur Ma te sangostva karmani You have a right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. So this is Buddhi Yoga, very important and well-known verse. But people uh, are missing the crux, do not understand the actual import. So here Lord Krishna is telling, Karmanne vadhikarahte. You have a right to perform your duty, but you do not have adhikara ma faleshu on the result of the activity. So somebody will tell, Oh really, I have a right to do my job, but I do not have the result, right on result, right on salary. Yes, this is the right understanding. We have right to do our job, but we do not have right upon the result which we are generating out of our activity. How is it so? Why we do not have right? So actually it is simple understanding. Buddhi Yoga, we need to have little intelligence to understand this. If we see in the world around us, there are so many species. We have various plants and trees which produce grains and fruits. Suppose the plant in the field tells, I have been standing here braving the heat, cold and the sunlight and I have produced these grains. So they belong to me. I will not give it to humans or to other animals. Then humans and animals will die. If the mango tree tells, this mango belongs to me, I have produced it. I will not give it to anybody. What shall we eat? If the tree does not give its leaves, its barks, its wood to us, how shall we make our houses? So we have to understand there is very nice symbiotic arrangement in the nature. Just like the workers in a factory. Say somebody is working in a mobile factory. So the training given to manufacture the mobile handsets, the required technology, equipments and the materials all have been provided by the proprietor of the firm. So the worker cannot tell, I have manufactured this handset, so I will carry it home. He has no right over the result of his activity. It belongs to the proprietor. In a similar fashion, whatever actions we are doing from this body, this body does not belong to us. We have not manufactured this brain, this intelligence. So the skills, the body and the matter that we manipulate to produce some effect in this world, that matter also we have not created. So the ingredients, the material, the training, the body, the brain, intelligence, everything is given by God. So actually the result belongs to God. Ma faleshu kadachana, we do not have right upon the result. So God has a plan to use it for the welfare of all the other species. So if at all we are not able to understand that it belongs to God, we can use it that also Krishna recommends in the 12th chapter, you use it for general social purpose, for so-called pious activities and charity. But you are not entitled to enjoy everything for yourself. Unfortunately, now what is happening in society? We think whatever I earn, it belongs to me, I will enjoy it. Whatever property I have made that belongs to me, I will enjoy it. This is ignorance. We are disturbing the laws of nature. If the plants and trees do not give us their produce, then there is no civilization. 
but human being human being has got some freedom which he should use to engage in the service of god he uses that freedom to become independent of god so this is very bad mentality so thus lord krishna is telling you have right to do your duty but you are not entitled for the results then how will i maintain myself yes for maintenance we can take it for maintaining keeping body and soul together that much resources i can enjoy and apart from that it should be used in the service of god that is not mentioned in this verse because this is the beginning lord krishna explains that in further verses lord krishna explains yat karoshi yat juhoshi yat dadasi tat kurush madarpanam whatever you do offer the result to me because i am the proprietor that lord krishna gradually will reveal his identity aham sarvasya prabho matta sarvam pravartate i am the supreme proprietor everything belongs to me then lord krishna tells ma karm phal hetur bhur do not become the cause of your activity if i do any activity for my sense pleasure then i become the cause of that activity and then that activity creates karma bondage if i do let's say good activity i have helped some people done lot of charity then if i did this charity for my pleasure oh yes uh, i will enjoy name and fame without keeping the pleasure of god in mind not under the direction of god then the money will come back to us we have to take one more birth to get back that money and as soon as we take birth then the pains of birth staying in the womb of mother so many diseases old age and death they also follow thus we get trapped in the bondage of action and reaction so thus it is told ma karm phal hetur bhur do not do any activity for your pleasure you feel good in helping others you feel good in uh, tasting some nice food stuff so i'll work hard so that i can eat nicely you feel good in showing off your property to others so you are working no if for your feeling good you are doing any activity then you become the cause of the activity and you have to face the result of the action just like a soldier soldier may kill many many uh, people but if he has done this killing under the direction of king then he will not be given any punishment but without the direction of king or government the soldier kills enemy without order even that is considered a sin how you can kill even enemy without my order then he will be punished so for his own enjoyment on his own he cannot kill even enemy but on the direction of the government the soldier can do unlimited killings and there would be no sin incurred for that similar case happens with us also on our own if we do any activity good or bad we get trapped in the cycle of karma but if we do that activity only for the satisfaction of god then we are free from the bondage of action and reaction now one may tell oh if nothing belongs to me uh the result of my activity do not belong to me then why to act so here it is being told mate sangvastva karmani no you cannot do not be attached to not doing your duty because not doing duty is sinful yogastha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya siddhya siddhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyate be steadfast in yoga o arjuna perform your duty and abandon all attachment to success or failure such evenness of mind is called yoga siddhi asiddhi we do any activity because we want to see ourselves successful we rejoice success and we become very much disturbed if we fail in our attempts so this is not yoga these kinds of activities create bondage a yogi can also do the same activity of studying doing business doing job or any other service but how a yogi acts without attachment to success or failure siddhi asiddhi samah bhutva a person should not care just like a soldier should not think oh why i am being ordered to fight will i win the war or i will lose the battle no 
If the soldier is ordered you go and fight the soldier should march ahead and fight without caring for profit and loss This is called a yogi a yogi understands what is the desire of god and he simply acts for the pleasure of god without caring for success or failure in that activity This is called yoga such equanimity is yoga दूरे नवर कर्म बुद्धि धनंजय बुद्ध शरण अन्वेक्ष कृपण फल हेतव ओ धनंजय रिड योर सेल्फ ऑफ ऑल फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज बाय डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड सरेंडर फुली टू दैट कॉन्शियसनेस दोज हु वॉन्ट टू एंजॉय द फ्रूट्स ऑफ देयर वर्क आर माइजर्स so krishna is telling avaram avaram means abominable karma so this fruitive activity doing any activity so that you can enjoy the result it is avaram god is telling it is abominable because it is stealing it is just like a worker creating any product in the factory so that he can use it for his own self that is stealing that is abominable that is criminal mentality So God has given everything everything should be offered simply to God God is a person this is the revelation of Bhagavad Gita that is why God is called Bhagwan a person and why this person is so demanding give it to me give it to me no actually he is not demanding this demand is not of an autocratic ruler this demand is that of a of an eternal lover a lover expects please do it for me give something to me to eat that gives pleasure in the relationship thus we will find further in bhagavad gita krishna is telling patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktaya prayachhati if you are an ordinary person you are not very rich person uh, at least you can grow a plant in your house that everybody can do and offer the leaf of that plant from to me is it very difficult task you cannot even do that at least you have water in your house toyam please offer that water to me but bhaktiya please do it with love why krishna is telling this because krishna knows unless we engage ourselves in this loving relationship with god we will never be satisfied and anyway we are doing this activity nobody works in this work world very hard so that he can enjoy all the money and prosperity that he has he uses those things for others he uses them for the people for his family members but unless one uses it in the service of god there is no satisfaction of the heart a person works very hard for the family the family is never satisfied they ask what you have done for us and the person poor fellow entire life has worked only for the family for his bed up uh, uh, till his best capacity but they complain what you have done so neither the object of service is satisfied neither the person who is rendering service is satisfied so when the family is not there especially in the western countries people have dogs pets and they want to engage their money in their service sometimes they give all the property to dogs because a person wants love loving reciprocation in the life So Krishna knows we living entities can never be satisfied unless we revive our loving relationship with God. So Krishna is not in need of anything; He has everything. So when we offer the result of our activity to God, then what happens? This loving relationship is established, and then that satisfies us so much we do not have any material desires. And when we do not have material desires, the nature is designed only to fulfill our desires. Then we will not have material body. and if we do not have material body we have a spiritual body and we go to the place where the personality of god is living that place is called vaikuntha padam gachanti anamayam that krishna will explain here so this is called broad mentality this is called a loving relationship liberal mindedness krishna has given me everything let me work just for krishna and other mentality let me work so that i can enjoy i can steal personally what i produce neither we can okay no no i don't use it for myself i work very hard so that i can do charity and help others no sir you cannot do charity of stolen goods that is also crime everything belongs to god so it should be used only for god now again please do not think service of god is exclusive of service to other living entities 
we are part and parcel of god krishna will explain so service of god automatically yavan artho dupane sarvata sampluto odake so please do not think service of god will exclude service of family member service of nation service of other people animals rather all these living entities are automatically served it is not that when we love god we start hating our family members no real love for the family arises when we love god otherwise nobody can love even family that is why even among the most closest relationship husband and wife there is separation there are so many divorces because people are interested in their own pleasure personal pleasure but when we understand when we love god when we know my family members are also part and parcel of god we cannot love a person and hit his finger so we understand if i love god they are also part of god inseparable part of god so how can i hate them so love of god if it is brought in our life then a person actually increases one love for his family members increases his love for all the species and universal welfare happens automatically if the family members don't behave nicely he understands oh still i should behave nicely because they are part and parcel of god they may be in ignorance they are offending me but i know that they are part and parcel of god how can i hurt them so thus all the relationships are automatically improved and a person's all duties are automatically fulfilled just like we do prasad distribution sometimes people take it as poor feeding so that is not poor feeding we are distributing prasadam the remnants of god to other living entities by taking this rich and poor without discrimination they all advance in their knowledge of god in their love of god but those people who are poor and hungry they are also fed automatically so social service automatically is taken care so thus if a person simply realizes one's duties towards god all other duties are automatically fulfilled but if one forgets his duty towards god then no sir you cannot do charity with stolen goods your object of charity will not be satisfied neither will you be satisfied so krishna is telling avaram karma karpana phal hetva do not become a miser in this human form of life you can enjoy some temporary happiness by enjoying the results of your work but then you are a miser you do not know if you simply offer that to god instead of using it for your own self you can attain unlimited happiness for which you are hankering and you can attain immortality buddhi yukto jahati ha उभे सुकृत दुष्कृते तस्माद योगाय युज्यस्य योगः कर्मसु कौशलम अ मैन एंगेज इन डिवोशनल सर्विस रिड्स हिमसेल्फ ऑफ बोथ गुड एंड बैड एक्शंस इवन इन दिस लाइफ देयरफॉर स्ट्राइव फॉर योगा ओ अर्जुना व्हिच इज द आर्ट ऑफ ऑल वर्क so yoga buddhi yoga is nothing but the art of all work the best way of performing any action is called yoga so somebody can do the activity which is called sin which is stealing breaking the laws of nature which is called dushkriti so krishna is telling do not do dushkriti but krishna is telling here ubhe sukrit dushkrite do not do sukriti also do not do good deeds also now this person can ask why krishna is telling sukrite dushkrite i will not do bad deeds why good deeds are also prohibited because as we discuss in the previous verse so called good activity is also bad and we can understand from a different perspective also any good activity will it stop our death will it stop our diseases will it stop our old age no it means even that activity is sinful otherwise nature will not kill us so any activity which does not stop our death is actually sinful activity right if any person is being given capital punishment to be hanged till death it means he has done wrong activity so we have to understand any activity which does not stop our death old age and disease that is bad activity so why good activity is also called bad activity because what is good activity all the resources belong to god 
now those you want to use directly in the service of others without engaging them in the service of god thus it is bad activity but still it is recommended because at least you start thinking about others you do not remain on a very lower platform of animal consciousness my life my resources for myself at least you start thinking about others so such pious activities are recommended but even if you do pious good charitable noble activities what you will have is a good birth with good material facilities enjoyment in next life but whatever enjoyment material facilities we have we may become very educated beautiful successful and uh, then we may have a big house for ourselves but then instead of suffering from covid in a small house you will suffer from covid in a big house suffering will not go you may be less educated you may attract a life partner who is also less educated or less beautiful if you are having a beautiful attractive body learned body you may attract a life partner which is beautiful and learned but fight with the life partner will happen the pain will always be there so you fight with a less educated life partner or more educated life partner similarly death will also accompany and old age will also accompany so thus if a person is wise he understands so called good activities also do not solve the problems of life i simply suffer from the same problems in a different setup so one should not do good and bad activities both because both entangle us in the laws of karma as soon as we do any activity we produce reaction of that activity which we have to suffer or enjoy in a material body and as soon as we take a material body it means birth death old age and disease these miseries they follow so krishna is telling rise above good activity and bad activity simply do the activities in yoga in buddhi yoga in krishna consciousness so when the activity is done only for the satisfaction of the supreme god then such activity is called neither good nor bad such activity is called akarma it does not bring any material reaction it brings spiritual reaction you become spiritually happy and liberated from cycle of birth and death karma jam buddhi yukta hi phalam tyaktva manishinah janma bandha vinirmukta padam gachhanti anamayam the wise engaged in devotional service take refuge in the lord and free themselves from the cycle of birth and death by renouncing the fruits of action in the material world in this way they can attain that state beyond all miseries so when we renounce the action the results of our actions then we attain a stage beyond all miseries padam gachhanti anamayam we become free from janma bandha vinirmukta from the cycle of birth and death oh so krishna is telling us to commit suicide you become free you do not take birth again you stop to exist no as krishna has already explained there was never a time we were not existing there will never be a time we will not exist but we will get freedom from this process of taking material bodies birth and death happens to material bodies we will continue to exist how shall we continue to exist anamayam in a state beyond all the miseries that place is called vaikuntha so now uh, the limitations in modern science do not give us knowledge about other planets life on other planets so just like we have various elements in our body there is earth water fire but apart from this body there are places where only water is there water is predominant there also there is life then only earth is predominant there also there is life and only fire is predominant like sun globe there also there is life in a similar fashion there is a planet rather there are many many planets where only spirit soul is there there is no matter at all now because only they are made up of spiritual substance time has got no influence upon them they are eternal so because there is no temporary nature there is no death no disease no old age no change introduced by time so the vedas tell us not to waste this human form of life in transferring to other planets where the living standards could be better but ultimately life will end diseases old age will happen one should work to transfer oneself to a state of anamayam 
where there is no misery at all and that is called vaikuntha tad dhamam param mama the supreme person he lives on that planet so that description further we will understand in the bhagavad gita very beautifully elaborately lord krishna will explain so this is the aim of human form of life this is beyond moksha not just freedom from birth and death but going to spiritual planet and engaging in activities full of loving relationship with god and his associates yadate moh kalilam buddhir vyati tarishyati tada gantasi nirvedam shrotavyasya shrutasya cha when your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard श्रुति विप्रतिपन्ना ते यदा स्थास्यति निश्चला समाधावचला बुद्धिस्तदा योगम अवाप्स्यसी व्हेन योर माइंड इज नो लॉन्गर डिस्टर्ब्ड बाय द फ्लावरी लैंग्वेज ऑफ द वेदास एंड व्हेन इट रिमेंस फिक्स्ड इन द ट्रांस ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन देन यू विल हैव अटेंड द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस सो व्हेन अ पर्सन स्टार्ट्स एक्टिंग इन बुद्धि योगा रियलाइजेस हिज रिलेशनशिप विद द लॉर्ड he experiences such an extraordinary happiness in life he does not care about flowery language of vedas oh you will have such material enjoyment in other planet or this planet he does not care about religious formalities and rituals so one need not wait till death for the proof of spiritual life even in this body person can perceive and realize all that we have discussed this extraordinary spiritual happiness which is called samadhi the transcendental consciousness so what are the symptoms of a person who is absorbed in such consciousness even while living in this material body that is called sthita pragya that lord krishna is going to explain now to arjuna arjuna uvacha sthita pragya se ka bhasha samadhi sthasya keshava स्थितधीकिं प्रभाषेत किं आसीत व्रजेत किं अर्जुन सेड व्हाट आर द सिम्टम्स ऑफ वन हुज कॉन्शियसनेस इज दस मर्स्ड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस हाउ डज ही स्पीक एंड व्हाट इज हिज लैंग्वेज हाउ डज ही सिट एंड हाउ डज ही वॉक important word used in this verse is samadhi samadhi sthasya keshava one who is situated on the platform of samadhi or transcendence spiritual platform how does he behave how does he talk how does he walk what are the symptoms so this samadhi is the ultimate objective of yoga in the ashtanga yoga process which starts with yam niyam asan pranayam dharana dhyan finally one has to reach the stage of samadhi samadhi means complete absorption in the thoughts of krishna so many yoga processes now people are getting patents also for it and people are inventing various ways of doing yoga but somehow they have forgotten the ultimate objective which one has to attain by doing yoga it is not simply reducing belly fat or some physical fitness or some temporary peace of mind but the ultimate objective of yoga is to reach the stage of samadhi when a person is completely absorbed on the mind is absorbed on the spiritual platform and spiritual platform means mind is absorbed on the form of lord krishna so the recommendation of meditating on some voidness or some light candle light or sunlight or some impersonal effulgence or focusing on uh, anything else it is not recommended as per the standard instructions given either in the patanjali yoga sutra or in bhagavad gita or in any standard book of yoga that is why it is told shravanam kirtanam vishnoho smaranam 
the meditation contemplation has to be there on vishnu similarly it is told in mahabharat shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresham the form of lord is described very beautifully the lord who is shantakaram bhujagashayanam the most peaceful lord who is lying on the bed of snake padmanabham suresham he is having lotus navel he is the master of all demigods lakshmi kantam kamala nayanam he is the husband of lakshmi the goddess of fortune and his eyes are very beautiful like the petals of lotus flower meghavarnam shubhangam his color is like that of dark cloud so in this way the description is given of the personal features of the lord and then it is told yogi rid dhyan gamyam the yogis rid in their hearts dhyan gamyam so the meditation means meditation on this form of the personality of godhead within one's heart this is the authorized instruction as per mahabharat patanjali yog sutra bhagavad gita or any other standard book of yoga practice so we should be very careful we should not fall for such modern inventions rather the yoga process is coming from the god it should be taken from the authorized sources so only when the mind is completely fixed without any deviation on the form of personality of god a person reaches the stage of samadhi so this uh, system is also explained by lord krishna in the 6th chapter of bhagavad gita but arjuna rejects that we will see very nice conversation it is and when arjuna rejects because he tells i am a householder how can i go to the himalayas or Uh, some jungle and sit there alone i have to leave all my family members my uh, my kingdom and all other opulences and so much hardship i cannot take i cannot control my mind in that way so krishna tells do not worry you are already the best yogi because yogi naam api sarvesham mad gatena antaratmana among all the yogis mad gatena antaratmana within his heart one who is always thinking of me shad dhavan bhajate yo maam and with great faith bhajate has come from bhaj dhatu means to render service who is always thinking of me and rendering me service same yukta tama mataha he is the best yogi so this is the yoga process which is being prescribed by krishna to arjuna and that is the yoga process which is meant for the people in this age of kali yuga so krishna also will uh, prescribe other yoga process as we will see so that arjuna can reject and so that we can understand when arjuna could not follow who was trained in gurukul and mind and senses were perfectly controlled very sharp moralist but he could not follow so what is the hope for people like us who are always disturbed and short lived that is why it is told in the scriptures krite yad dhyayato vishnu krit means in sat yoga the process was this ashtanga yoga dhyan yoga process dhyayato vishnu but the word used here is vishnu again please uh, uh, mind these verses very carefully dhyayato vishnu impersonal meditation on void light x y z is not recommended anywhere dhyayato vishnu and treta yam yajato makhay in treta yog the same spiritual success was possible by doing yagyas fire sacrifices dwapari paricharyayam in dwapar yoga that success was possible by elaborate temple worship deity worship but in kali yuga we do not have any qualifications to follow either of these processes so kalau in kali yuga in this millennium tad hari kirtanad we need not worry same result can be attained by hari kirtana chanting the names of hari so this is the first symptom of a person who is in samadhi that he will always be talking only of krishna or of matters related to krishna kalau tad hari kirtana that success can be attained by hari kirtan chanting the names of god it was also mentioned in the 9th chapter of bhagavad gita as we will see in the verse number 14 satatam kirtayanto mam because the mind is always absorbed in thoughts of krishna so yogi a real yogi cannot do anything but talk only of krishna 
Thus it is told Satatam. Satatam means always. Krishna mentions Kirtayanto. Kirtan means to chant or to speak about Krishna. Maam. Satatam Kirtayanto. Maam. About me. So this is the first symptom. One who is in Samadhi, he cannot do anything but talk only of Krishna or of matters relating to Krishna, Krishna's service. And then other symptoms of transcendence, they follow automatically. Which are those symptoms? Let us see now. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Prajhati Yada Kaman Sarvan Parth Manogatan Atmani Evatmanatushtaha Sita Pragyas Tadochyate the Blessed Lord said, O Parth, when a man gives up all varieties of sense desire which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness. Rajahati Yada Kaman, when a person gives up all Kama means material desires. Any desire which is not for the satisfaction of Krishna, when we directly want to enjoy our senses, that is called Kaam. Atmendriya Preeti Vancha Tare Bali Kaam. It just does not mean only the gross sexual desire, but Kama means any kind of desire which is meant for direct enjoyment of senses without pleasing the senses of Krishna. So, person whose consciousness is absorbed in transcendence, who is Krishna conscious, Prajahati Yada Kaman, he gives up all such desires. Why he gives up such desires? Because significant word used here is Sarvan Partha Manogatan. These material desires are actually the result of mental concoction. This is very important. Our mind suggests us something. You please do this and you will become happy. And then we chase those suggestions of mind thinking that I will actually become happy. But we have to understand, just like a small child, child's mind suggests him so many desires. You get this toy, you will be happy. You eat mud, you will be happy. You eat many, many chocolates, you will be happy. You don't go to school, you will be happy. But all these are harmful desires. And we have seen previously the example of moth. The mind of a moth suggests, Oh, this fire is so nice. If you have a closer look, you will be very, very happy. And the moth loses its life, following the suggestion of mind. Thus, as long as the mind is contaminated by material energy, it is not liberated. One should not listen to the suggestions of mind. So just like following the suggestion of mind in case of child and moth, is very very dangerous. It is dangerous for every conditioned soul. So the suggestions of mind are because of association. The material desires are actually because of association. We are hankering for this pleasure which a person can only attain in Samadhi when he is absorbed in loving service of Krishna, always thinking of Krishna. In absence of such pleasure in life, then material desires arise in our life. Even we can understand it from the love affairs of this world also. Sometimes people leave all the their comforts of rich house and family if the family don't agree for marriage. And uh, the young couple, they live in a very humble circumstances. So why they are able to give up all the comforts of their wealthy families and they are able to live a simple life? Because there is love in life. So we are all hankering for this loving relationship. But real loving relationship can be established only with God. On material platform, it does not stay. So when there is no love in life, then automatically you want certain enjoyment and then you develop some mental concoction, you asso develop association. If you associate with Tamoguna, you develop tamasic desires. You saw some drunkards and you assume that they are Enjoying, oh, let me also drink wine and I will enjoy. Let me also smoke, I will enjoy. From birth, we were not 
having such desire oh let me smoke let me drink but we had association of smokers and drunkards so such desire came into our mind the students have certain desire i want to crack this particular examination why this is also mental concoction we associated with certain people who were preparing or who had cracked those examinations or who gave value to that examination and then we thought oh if i crack this exam i will have recognition in society and then i will be happy and then we started following this thing it became our desire so our desires are the result of association we are hungry for pleasure now in association of such people one moth saw another moth oh let me also uh, chase fire and then lost its life so in such association we develop mentally concocted desires and such desires do not actually give us happiness so a person whose consciousness is absorbed in krishna who is in transcendence he is completely satisfied and thus the material desires do not arise in his heart therefore sarvan parth manogatan prajahati yada kaman he is able to able to give up all the material desires because he is very very satisfied just like a man who has eaten till neck in a feast he does not have any more desire to eat any of the tastiest dishes atmanne vatmana tushtah sthita pragyas tadochyate satisfaction is to be found on the platform of self platform of soul so we can find enjoyment on the external platform there is a design you give sense objects to the senses and then there will be pleasure on the external platform but a person who is absorbed in transcendence who is sthita pragya he takes pleasure internally the soul when it is engaged in the service of super soul then there is internal self pleasure because such a yogi is absorbed in the self pleasure he does not care does not feel the need at all to satisfy the senses externally so this is first symptom he will not have any material desires dukheshu anudvigna manah sukheshu vigata sprihah vitaraga bhaya krodhah sthita dhir munirochyate one who is not disturbed in spite of the threefold miseries who is not elated when there is happiness and who is free from attachment fear and anger is called a sage of steady mind the whole world gets disturbed when they have material problems miseries and they become very happy on finding material happiness but a sage of steady mind is not disturbed by material happiness or distress because he is having complete faith in krishna he is completely dependent upon krishna whenever he faces any miseries in life he takes it as mercy of god because miseries are also very much required when we have material miseries we develop purification of consciousness we develop detachment for this material world and detachment for material world is the result of all spiritual knowledge so this material world as we discussed is it's a very dangerous place it is like a drop of water which is there on the leaf of or the petal of lotus any time with a even a small gust of wind it can fall down and now in kaliyuga even in human species there is so much disturbance so life is very very uncertain any time there is calamity there is chaos there is distress there is depression there is accident so life in material world is full of danger so thus detachment from the material world is a great asset and that is brought about by material miseries so a devotee perfectly knows this fact whenever misery happens he takes it he understands not a blade of grass moves without the sanction of krishna so the miseries are also taken as blessing as mercy of krishna he thinks i should suffer much more but krishna has minimized my misery and when he is having material happiness he is not very much carried away by it he has no personal desire to enjoy in this world he only desires to give pleasure to krishna thus for personal pleasure if it comes in his life 
he takes it as an opportunity to use these comforts to engage more enthusiastically and energetically in the service of Krishna. His only aim is to satisfy Krishna, give pleasure to Krishna. Thus, he is not very excited to have any personal pleasures in life. And he is also very happy if there are reversals in life, he takes it as mercy of Krishna. Thus, he is always equipoised. And then, Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha, it is very difficult to get freedom from Raga, attachment, fear and anger. Now, because the devotee's aim is only to satisfy Krishna, he does not get attached to anything here. Just like a cashier who is sitting on the bank, he does not get attached with whatever money flow can happen. He is seeing a lot of money in front of him, but he understands this money does not belong to me. So that is why there is no attachment. So a devotee perfectly knows nothing belongs to me. My family members actually, they are Krishna's family. In this life, we have assembled together as we discussed, just like travelers assemble in a restaurant. So they have assembled, they belong to Krishna. My duty is to take them to Krishna, to make them advanced in this process of yoga. So thus, there is no undue and overly affection for the people around him. Similarly, the resources, the money, the opulence that he has, he understands I am just a cashier and everything, this entire property belongs to Krishna. So that he does not develop attachment with people, place or resources because he understands I am just custodian of Krishna's property. So there is no attachment in life. And people are very, very fearful. Oh, I may lose uh, somebody, I may lose some money, I may lose my position. Because we are very much attached. And because a devotee is not attached, he is free from fear also. Vi Taraga Bhaya Krodha. And when we are attached to material objects, we are not able to enjoy them. Anger arises. Krodha. And when there is no tendency to enjoy the objects for yourself, then there is no anger at all. Thus, simply this understanding that everything belongs to Krishna makes a devotee, a transcendentalist free from any kind of attachment, fear and anger. Can we imagine a state even the most successful people are fearful? The most successful sportsmen, they are fearful of performance. Even though they are on top of world, they are fearful. The best of the performers in academics are very fearful. I may not lose my rank. So everybody in this material world is fearful, but a devotee is fearless. How nice is the consciousness and is free of anger as well. Next symptom. Yes, sarvatrana bhisnehas tat tat prapya shubha shubham nabhinandati nadveshti tasya pragya pratishthita he who is without attachment, who does not rejoice when he obtains good, nor lament when he obtains evil, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Same example, cashier. Sometimes there is a lot of flow of money. So if money flows in our life, we become very happy. Or material success, bank is growing, the share value is increasing. It does not matter to the employees. But if I think, oh, this money belongs to me, everything, then I'll become very elated. Or if there is inauspiciousness means if we lose money, if we lose reputation, lose X, Y, Z, then we become very much disturbed. But if a person is fixed in this consciousness that everything belongs to God, then auspiciousness or inauspiciousness, one is not disturbed by this. Just like a cashier is not disturbed by so much excess flow of money or no flow of money. He understands money does not belong to me at all. So thus, a transcendentalist is not at all disturbed by so-called good or evil events which can happen in one's life. Thus, he is always situated without any disturbance. Yada samharate chayam kurmo angani vasarvashaha indriyan indriyarthebhyas one who is able to withdraw his senses from the sense objects as the tortoise draws his limbs within the shell is to be understood as truly situated in knowledge. 
So just like a tortoise, it spreads out its limbs when required and then it is able to draw its limbs inside the shell as well. In a similar fashion, a transcendentalist is very different from a materialist. Materialists have loose senses, they cannot withdraw them. They cannot control when there is urge of the eyes to watch something. They cannot control the urge of tongue to taste something or to talk something. They cannot check the urge of belly and genitals, they get carried away. But a devotee follows the do's and don'ts very nicely. So do's and don'ts are very very important for spiritual life. Without regulating the senses, nobody can make advancement. So please note here, stopping the activities of senses is not recommended. As it is recommended in the Ashtanga Yoga, stop all the activities of senses, sit down firmly. You have to close your eyes, you have to uh, not get deviated by any of the material sounds. You have to stop even eating and drinking. And sometimes the ants, they build hill on the body of a yogi. Sometimes uh, the insects, they eat away all the flesh. As it happened with Hiranyakashipu, Valmiki, so many sages, they cannot move, they cannot eat, they cannot drink. They just have to be sitting on that place. All the sensual activities are stopped. This is the process recommended for the devotees. It's for uh, normal people who are not devotees. But those who are having positive knowledge of God, different kind of yoga system is recommended. And that is what is recommendation of Krishna to all of us through Arjuna. Don't stop the activities of senses. Just like in a class when the student is naughty, he may be told pin drop silence, do not talk anything. But a student who is wise, he is encouraged by teacher to come and give a speech. So for a foolish person, they are told, hands up, punishment is given, or kneel down. But a person who is uh, having some skills, he will be told to go and perform on the stage. So thus, different yoga processes are for different people. When positive knowledge of God and there is no knowledge about personal features of God, how to engage in service of God, then such processes are recommended. Okay, do not do at least wrong materialistic activities. Stop the material activities which are cause of all distress. Sit down in one place without eating and sleeping. But those who are having positive knowledge, they are supposed to behave like tortoise. Spread out your limbs in the service of God and for personal enjoyment, no, no, do not indulge. Pull your limbs back. So perfect control of the senses is required just like a tortoise. But it is not so easy. I am addicted to so many things. I cannot even uh, regulate my senses for basic things like controlling tea, coffee, smoking or watching some videos. Then how can I exercise such perfect control, use my senses only when required? That is explained here in the next verse. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehinaha rasvarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate The embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment though the taste for sense objects remains but seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste he is fixed in consciousness. Niraharasya Dehina When you restrict your senses from enjoyment, the taste remains in the heart. So, if you tell a child, sit down, uh, do not do mischievous activity. The child may sit down for a while, but then he will be restless. He wants to go out and play and jump around. In a similar fashion, unless we have a higher taste, the senses will fall for the lower taste, the material activities. So, in order to control the senses from material enjoyment, one needs to experience Param Drishtva Nivartate. Param means higher taste. When you have higher experience, better pleasure, then automatically we will not fall for lower pleasures. And then uh, we can have uh, some research. Go and study the life of great devotees. How they are very easily able to give up all the activities of personal sense enjoyment. There must be something which is there in their life, just like Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. They were very, very rich, but they gave up all opulence and they were sleeping under different trees every night in Vrindavan. How was this possible? Because they were experiencing very extraordinary taste in the service of Krishna. And as Yamunacharya says, 
he is a very stalwart devotee the spiritual master of shripad ramana jacharya he was a king before and kings have all the royal opulences and there is so much physical enjoyment in relationship with the other gender so when yamuna chare he renounced his kingdom became a pure devotee he is giving his experience what is this spiritual pleasure he tells yadavadhi mam cheta krishna padar vinde nav nav rasa dham niyudyatam rantu masit tadavadhi bat nari sangame smaryamane bhavati mukh vikar sushtu nishti vanam cha yadavadhi from the time i have engaged myself krishna padar vinde in meditation upon the lotus feet of krishna nav nav rasa i am experiencing newer and newer pleasures in my heart by this meditation and when i remember my old gross enjoyment which i had with nari sangame with many women as a royal king my mouth curls in distaste bhav tu mukh vikar sushtu nishti vanam cha and i spit at this thought so it is very difficult to control the sexual urge but he is telling when i think of that enjoyment that was such low grade enjoyment compared to what i am experiencing now by meditating on the lotus feet of krishna because i am experiencing a higher taste my mouth calls in distaste for these lower grade pleasures this is the way of controlling one senses like a tortoise one has to have param drishtva so jasi krishna so clearly he is explaining param drishtva you have to experience higher taste taste of spiritual life then you will be able to do it yat to hi api konteya purushasy vipaschitah indriyani pramathini haranti prasabham manah the senses are so strong and impetuous o arjuna that they forcibly carry away the mind even of a man of discrimination who is endeavoring to control them so here krishna is telling the situation of spiritualists who are not devotees who are not able to engage their senses in the service of krishna so krishna is telling yatato hi api konteya even though a spiritualist is endeavoring learned man is trying to control his senses vipaschita means very learned a person becomes advanced in this knowledge but still pramathini the senses indriyas are so strong haranti prasabham mana forcefully they carry away the mind and we all must have experience in our life we want to control the senses regulate the life but senses are so strong and impetuous forcibly they carry away the mind so krishna is warning if the mind is not having higher engagement then you will have to follow the dictates of the senses so thus krishna recommends here how to have that higher taste we have been discussing engagement in the service of krishna one may ask where it is recommended it is recommended now here very directly in verse number 61 tani sarvani sanyamya yukta asit mat parah vashe hi yasyendriyani tasya pragya pratishthita one who restrains his senses and fixes his consciousness upon me is known as a man of steady intelligence vashe hi yas now krishna is telling how you experience that higher pleasure what activity do i do that i experience that higher pleasure greater than materialistic enjoyment that is explained here yukta asit mat parah vashe hi yas indriyani the indriyas have to be controlled in such a way that mat parah yukta asit yukta means engaged the senses have to be engaged mat paraha means in my service so the senses are classified as 5 uh, sometimes 10 when you include the karma indriyas and mind is also considered as a sixth sense mana shasthan indriyani prakriti sthani karshiti so all the senses including the mind yukta asit mat paraha in my service they have to be engaged krishna very clearly he is explaining here so this is the highest conception of yoga practice there are many kinds of yogis but krishna is warning unless they reach to this understanding of personality of god 
and they get positive knowledge of engagement in the service of god when we engage in the service of some people or animal or pets here we get certain pleasure but unless you have knowledge of god and you engage in service of god you cannot experience that param drishtva which will be able to help you get rid of the troublesome materialistic enjoyment so very clearly yukta asit mat paraha the senses have to be engaged in my service this is the way of having higher taste and for those whose senses are not engaged what happens krishna explains now dhyayato vishayan punsa sangasteshu pajayate sanga sanjayate kamah kamat krodo bhijayate while contemplating the objects of the senses a person develops attachment for them and from such attachment lust develops and from lust anger arises so one who is not krishna conscious is subject to such strong attachment and lust while contemplating on the objects of senses if a cashier is not conscious what is my relationship with the bank i am not proprietor he will develop lust if he sees lot of money he would like to enjoy for it for himself so one who is not engaged in the service of krishna when he sees any object of senses he thinks how i can enjoy it dhyayato when he sees contemplates sangha he develops attachment i want to enjoy it and sangha sanjayate kama strong desire lust develops to enjoy the sense objects and then the lust is not fulfilled and when the lust the desires are not fulfilled kamat krodh bhi jayate anger arises krodhat bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibhramaha smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati from anger delusion arises and from delusion bewilderment of memory when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost and when intelligence is lost one falls down again into the material pool so krishna is warning here the yogis who are not yukta asit mat para who are not engaged in the service of krishna when they contemplate on the sense object attachment lust anger from anger bewilderment of memory and when memory is bewildered intelligence is lost when intelligence is lost person falls down on the material platform so other yogis also can reach a stage of peace and transcendence but they cannot stay on that platform because a slight agitation created by the mind slight contemplation on sense objects makes them fall down as it happened with vishwamitra a very great yogi and menaka came and he heard the jingle of her bells ankle bells and then he was not able to continue in meditation and he enjoyed with her and then after many many years he realized what mistake i have done i was so nicely advancing in my spiritual life similarly sobhari muni this muni was so advanced that he was able to meditate within the water so he was sitting within the water so that he can avoid any distraction but within the water he saw two fishes copulating and then he could not control the suggestion of the mind he came out married many many princesses and he also lost his spiritual growth so in this way even though these yogis were absorbed on very advanced brahma platform but they could not stay for a long time they fell down thus krishna is warning here please do not follow this process in which higher taste you do not attain thus krishna explains in the next verse rag dvesh vimuktaistu vishayan indriyais charan atma vashyair vidheyatma prasadam adigachati one who can control his senses by practicing the regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the lord and thus become free from all attachment and aversion two word is very significant here two means but so krishna has described the fate of a non devotee yogi but krishna mentions two but a person who is devotee 
even if god exists we do not want to take help of god to make our life perfect we want to advance on our own strength we don't want to take even god help god's help if even god exists but such a process is not recommended in the bhagavad gita in the standard books of yoga here it is mentioned prasadam adigachati vidhe atma so when a person is able to follow the regulated principles of freedom Sometimes people think oh this religious life spiritual life is very hazelsome so many restrictions are imposed upon us actually these restrictions are important just like traffic rules and regulations may be considered restriction unnecessary restriction but a wise man knows if these traffic regulation little restrictions are not there it will create so much of chaos and accident in a similar fashion such restrictions are recommended they are actually regulated principles of freedom just like a sick man is given some prescriptions and proscriptions if he follows that he'll be fit then he can enjoy life so as long as we are there trapped in this body in this bodily concept of life following these restrictions regulated principles of freedom are important so when we follow these do's and don'ts very nicely in the service of krishna we attain prasadam we attain the mercy of krishna without prasadam without mercy of god we cannot advance so we should not get carried away by the philosophies oh you are only god you just have to realize you are god no the word used here is prasadam you are not god so you need mercy prasadam of god if you are god where is the question of receiving any mercy no prasadam mercy Mercy is the key factor for spiritual advancement as per the yoga process described by Lord Krishna prasadam adigachati and a person can attain mercy when he follows the do's and do's and don'ts very strictly and engages senses in the service of Krishna what happens then when he receives prasadam mercy of Krishna he becomes free from all attachment and detachment also so materialist is attached and a non devotee yogi is detached they go leave all the people and all the sense objects they go to a far off place they are detached but a devotee is neither attached nor detached he simply wants to engage in service of krishna so if i am there around sense objects uh let me use those sense objects in the service of krishna if it is required his his only consideration is what gives krishna pleasure if i leave everything and go far away and that brings displeasure to krishna i don't want to have such detachment also so a devotee is perfectly situated in the understanding that my existence is only for the pleasure of god because i am part and parcel of god this secret krishna will reveal mama evansho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana yatha tarur mool nisheshanena just like you put water on the roots of the tree all the leaves are automatically satisfied this is my design i am unsure of krishna just like the finger is unsure of the body only when the finger puts food stuff in the stomach finger will be healthy so a devotee knows this i should not get carried away by attachment let me directly enjoy the sweet finger should not think or detachment what is the use of feeding the stomach if i am not able to enjoy the food stuff no so similarly devotee is neither attached nor detached he knows i am unsure of krishna only when i satisfy god satisfy krishna i will gain satisfaction in life so when mercy is received this knowledge is awakened and devotee becomes free from attachment as well as detachment prasade sarv dukha nam hanir asyop jayate prasanna chetaso hiyashu buddhi paryavatishthate for one who is so situated in the divine consciousness the threefold miseries of material existence exist no longer in such a happy state one's intelligence soon becomes steady 
when the mercy of the lord is received then there are no more miseries in life the devotee becomes very happy so this happiness is very much required to understand the science of god those who are always troubled by threefold miseries who are there on the platform of rajoguna and tamoguna cannot understand the science of god so when we follow this process of buddhi yoga the first installment of spiritual advancement that we receive is freedom from all the miseries of material life and prasanna chetasho chetaso hi ashu very soon he becomes prasanna very very happy so if by following spiritual life we are not becoming happy means we are not following the standard method otherwise very soon a person should become fixed on the platform of happiness and when a person continues to engage in yoga practice on the platform of happiness then intelligence becomes very clear all the confusion is removed and very clearly understands who am i who is god what is this creation what is the purpose and there is no more confusion in life naste buddhira yuktasya na cha yuktasya bhavana na cha bhavaya tashante ashantasya kutas sukham one who is not in transcendental consciousness can have neither a controlled mind nor steady intelligence without which there is no possibility of peace and how can there be happiness without peace so here again krishna is warning please do not indulge in other yoga practices in which nasti buddhir ayuktasya ayukta any yoga practice which does not recommend yuktaha means engagement in the service of krishna please do not follow that krishna has told so many ways you will contemplate on the sense objects you will get carried away you will not be able to experience higher taste so here krishna is telling nasti buddhir yuktasya nacha yuktasya bhavana one who is not yukta yukta asit matparah who senses not engaged in my service he cannot have fixed intelligence because he will not have higher pleasure in life then they would always be calculating as we see a materialist is always thinking let me crack this exam then his intelligence changes let me crack that exam also then intelligence changes let me do this job then intelligence changes let me do some other business or some other job uh, then let me marry this person let me divorce this person let me do this let me spend time with in this fashion their intelligence is not fixed always they are wondering what will make me happy so the disturbance is in life is because of no fixed aim because nothing satisfies the spirit soul apart from krishna consciousness so here krishna is telling if you don't engage in my service what will happen nasti buddhi intelligence will not be fixed and intelligence controls the mind people ask how do i have a controlled mind we can have a controlled mind by controlled intelligence when the intelligence is not controlled not fixed then mind will be disturbed mind will be going on this plan that plan this idea that idea mind will always be disturbed na cha yuktasya bhavana bhavana means when the mind is fixed on happiness na cha bhavayata shantir and if the mind is not fixed then there is no shanti there is disturbance ashantasya kuta sukham and krishna is telling if there is no peace in life then where is the question of happiness so krishna has explained again he has warned time is very less this age krishna spoke this bhagavad gita just uh, at the end of dwapar yuga before the beginning of kali yuga he wanted to reiterate stress this very important method in kali yuga people will anyway be very much disturbed so save time from gradual processes of yoga understand this topmost yoga practice buddhi yoga engage your senses in my service offer the results to me try to establish a loving relationship with me don't follow this artificial yoga practice ashtanga yoga adar yoga which was meant for sat yoga vedas are telling krite adhyayato vishnum krite yoga it is for sat yoga no where in the vedas it is mentioned in kali yuga you follow this practice we not gain success and further ultimately success of any yoga means yogi hrida dhyan gamyam dhyanavasthita tad gatena manasa pashyanti yam yoginah the meditation has to be there upon lord vishnu krishna in the heart 
so yogis artificially they want to do this meditation they first want to avoid all the distractions stop all the activities of senses then they start dharana contemplation and then they come to meditation and then they reach samadhi artificially they want to focus on the form of krishna but very natural way of focusing is engaging in the service of krishna when you serve anybody there is a loving relationship and when there is love always you are thinking of your object of love so this natural process of yoga is being recommended by krishna here you please engage in my service whatever little means you may have please use it to the best of your capacity and when there is seva there is love and when there is love you develop revive your affection for me then always you will be thinking of me and the process of yoga is naturally attained without artificial austerities which were recommended for previous ages so krishna tells if you do not engage intelligence is not fixed mind is not fixed thus there is disturbance in life there is no peace and without peace there is no happiness इंद्रियाणाम ही चरता जन्मनो नु विधीयते तदस्य हरती प्रज्ञा वायुर्नावमिवांभसी एज अ बोट ऑन द वॉटर इज स्वेप्ट अवे बाय अ स्ट्रांग विंड इवन वन ऑफ द सेंसेस ऑन विच द माइंड फोकसेस कैन कैरी अवे मैन्स इंटेलिजेंस सो इफ यूर इंटेलिजेंस इज नॉट फिक्स्ड देन माइंड विल फोकस ऑन एनी ऑफ द सेंसेस जस्ट लाइक विंड टॉपस द बोट even contemplation on sense object of any one of the senses it will topple your intelligence your spiritual life completely and you will again for for material sense enjoyment tasmad yasya mahabaho nigrahitani sarvashah indriyan indriyarthebhyas tasya pragya pratishtita therefore o mighty armed one whose senses are restrained from their objects is certainly of steady intelligence so just like the enemies are curbed by a higher power higher force by human endeavor efforts it is not possible to control the senses so when the senses are engaged in the service of the lord lord's power controls the senses but when we engage in some in certain practice as described here controlling the senses then there would be a reaction from the people around us and what is that reaction very nicely krishna explains yanisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagarti sanyami yasyam jagrati bhutani sanisha pashyato mune what is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self controlled and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage so people may scoff oh what is your life what is this krishna consciousness this yoga you have been following you have been reading bhagavad gita your life has got transformed now you no longer take pleasure in material enjoyment yes people will say like this they may scoff at times also and krishna is telling that is natural ya nisha sarvabhutani the night time for materialist is day time for spiritualist a spiritualist does not give value to these external sense objects which are very low grade third class pleasure which always give rise to so many complexities and so many miseries in life but a materialist gives value only to the external sense objects has no value for internal spiritual pleasure a materialist is giving no value or rather does not believe upon the existence of spiritual pleasure the existence of spirit soul and a spiritualist does not give any value to the existence of material identities because all these identities are merely dresses and illusory so what is day time for spiritualist is night time for materialist that is but natural so when people but we need to answer people if they are such questions why your course of life seems to have completely uh, turned around then we can give them this wonderful logic which krishna is giving here apuryamanam achala pratishtham samudra mapa pravishanti yadvat tadvat kamayam pravishanti sarve 
स शांति मापनोति न काम कामी अ पर्सन हु इज नॉट डिस्टर्ब बाय द इनसेसेंट फ्लो ऑफ डिजायर्स दैट एंटर लाइक रिवर्स इनटू द ओशन व्हिच इज एवर बीइंग फिल्ड बट इज ऑलवेज स्टिल कैन अलोन अचीव पीस एंड नॉट द मैन हु स्ट्राइव्स टू सेटिस्फाई सच डिजायर्स so krishna is telling just like so many rivers are entering in the ocean but the ocean is not disturbed ocean remains very placid in a similar fashion although so many desires will enter the body but only the person who does not try to satisfy those desires he attains peace if a person tries to fulfill the suggestions given by the mind of materialistic enjoyment he loses his peace of mind why इट इज एक्सप्लेन इन श्रीमद भागवतम ईज जिसो का इवान लह सेंशुअल एन्जॉयमेंट इज एक्चुअली नॉट एन्जॉयमेंट एज वी डिस्कस प्रीवियसली ऑल्सो इट इज मेंटल कॉन्कॉक्शन देर इज हंगर फॉर हायर प्लेजर सो वी फॉल फॉर वट एवर प्लेजर इज अवेलेबल इमीडिएटली एंड दिस प्लेजर इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड इट इज अडिक्टिव इन नेचर नो बडी नीड्स टू बी अडिक्टेड बट वंस वी स्टार्ट चेजिंग फॉलोइंग दोज एडिक्शन वी कैन नॉट हेल्प but getting carried away it is not required to smoke it is not required to drink similarly it is not required to have any kind of material enjoyment but once we start material enjoyment the desires always keep on increasing kandu yane na karyo re dukha dukha example given is as an eczema patient has got many wet sores on his body and those are very itchy sores but if a person tries to rub or scratch that sore the itching sensation only increases and if you scratch more finally it starts bleeding the sore becomes worse disease becomes worse so that is the nature so that is why uh those people who are poor their distress is not so much as that of rich people because poor person has hope if i become rich then i'll be happy but rich person rich person becomes hopeless Now I've got so many resources. I have gained recognition, name, fame, money also, and I am trying to have all the sense objects enjoyment I can have. Still, why there is dissatisfaction in my life? What do I do more? So they become more distressed and they come in depression because they do not see any hope. What else do I do to become happy? This is the nature of material happiness. It is like putting butter into fire. The senses always demand more. Today you have one cigarette, two cigarettes. then for same kick you need to have four cigarettes then eight there is no end to it little sex more sex varieties of sex there is no end to it so please understand this is the nature of material happiness nobody educates the best of the brains in the world they do not know after topping in the country in various examinations making the best of uh, technical and business plans ultimately they do not understand because unless prasadam there is mercy of lord it is very difficult to understand this knowledge that actually krishna god is telling a person who tries to satisfy the desires which are always flowing within this mind and body he never attains peace because that is not the design all the material enjoyments are but addictions you do not need them but once you start enjoying them you cannot stop having it so one who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires why is not disturbed because he is relishing higher pleasure such a person attains peace so is it not very simple logic so when people tell oh what is day for us is night time for you you are having other please please explain this that this is real life which we need to actually have it is common sense then finally krishna is giving the conclusive knowledge in this chapter विहाय कामान यस्सर्वान पुमांशरति निस्प्रिह निर्ममो निरहंकार सशांति मदिगछति अ पर्सन हु हैज गिवन अप ऑल डिजायर्स फॉर सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन हु इज फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर्स हु हैज गिवन अप ऑल सेंस ऑफ प्रोप्राइटरशिप एंड इज डिवॉइड ऑफ फॉल्स ईगो ही अलोन कैन अटेन रियल पीस सो विहाय कामान so he understands this logic material desires are addictive it is like rubbing or scratching the wet eczema sore it will only increase worsen the situation so he gives up material desires and 
nirmamo nirahankara he becomes free from the sense of proprietorship that everything belongs to god nothing belongs to me should should be used in the service of god and then he becomes nirahankara ahankara as krishna will describe further is an energy which makes the soul believe i am this covering i am this body because of this i feel i am the body of the dream i feel i am this body man woman animal so when a person gives up material desires by following this process of yoga then he is become he becomes freed from proprietorship and he becomes freed from false ego he is able to understand i am not this body i am different from this temporary identity and then sa shantim adigachati then he understands i am different what is the profit what is the loss nothing belongs to me he is very very peaceful esha brahmi sthitif partha nainam prapya vimuhyati thitva syamant kale pi brahm nirvanam richhati that is the way of the spiritual and godly life after attaining which a man is not bewildered being so situated even at the hour of death one can enter into the kingdom of god so when a person has this consciousness even at the time of death if one is able to maintain this consciousness then he attains brahm nirvan nirvan means cessation of material existence some philosophers say yes you have to get liberation but after liberation there is void there is no life So such a philosophy is all right for people who are hardcore sense gratifiers who are realize who have realized that sense enjoyment gives only frustration and they are so much frustrated by material enjoyment they want to stop this life they just want to get rid of this material life and such philosophy is recommend that you stop this material existence and then you stop existing there is no existence beyond it but this is not what is recommended in bhagavad gita here the special kind of nirvan is the object and that is called brahm nirvan brahm nirvan means positive life a diseased person it is not sufficient for him just to get rid of the disease but he needs to have now positive enjoyment he wants to eat now he wants to walk around move around play enjoy with his family and friends so this positive liberation is called brahm nirvan attainment of the kingdom of god tejo vari mridam yatha vinimayo yatra trisargo amrisha dhamna swena sada nirastu hukukam satyam param dhimahi the god of god the description is given in the scriptures as there is tejo vari mridam in this body there is fire there is water and there is air and there is consciousness also and outside this body we see there is a world which is predominantly of water and there is life in water water bodies and then we see there is a world which is predominantly of fire the sun planet and life is there on sun also fire as we discussed scientists have found uh, the few microbes which are there in fire also like this there are other species who exist in a world completely made up of fire So there is a world which is completely made up of water there is a world which is completely made up of fire there are planets like this there is planet which is completely made up of spirit spiritual substance and krishna tells tad dhamam paramam mama that is my abode so this positive knowledge of spiritual life not just material life is illusion material forms are illusory no you are soul within this body you have a form but that form is spiritual that is revealed when we are out of this material body or out of this bodily concept of life god is not simply an energy god is a person god is having form and there are many activities which are called devotional service in which one has to engage in order to realize this positive spiritual existence and transferring oneself not to any material planet but to the planet which is made of completely spirit is the aim of the topmost yogi that is what is recommendation of krishna so if a person follows this yoga system as described by lord krishna he attains brahm nirvanam attainment of spiritual planets where there, where there is no influence of time and thus there is no fear 
no anxiety and there is always higher pleasure of krishna consciousness with this we end the second chapter which is the summary of bhagavad gita here karma yoga is explained gyan yoga is explained and a hint of bhakti yoga is also given further very beautiful instructions await us in the third chapter of bhagavad gita that we will discuss in the next session hari krishna हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे चैप्टर थ्री कर्म योगा इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर लॉर्ड कृष्णा डिस्क्राइब्ड अर्जुन इन वर्स नंबर थर्टी नाइन टू paths of self realization sankhya and buddhi yoga which is also known as karma yoga but there was some confusion on the part of arjuna the confusion was not deliberate but it is natural when any subject matter is new the student is expected to put some questions because this knowledge should not be kept just in books it has to be applied and arjuna being a sincere student wishes to have a clear understanding so that he can practically apply in his life so let us see what arjuna asks and how krishna clarifies his doubt this session is dedicated to his divine grace ac bhakti vedant swami prabhupad our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of the worldwide hari krishna movement arjuna uvacha जायसी चेत कर्मणस्ते मता बुद्धिर्जनादना तत्किं कर्मणि घोरे मोजयसि केशवा अर्जुन सेड ओ जनार्दन ओ केशवा वाई डू यू अर्ज मी टू एंगेज इन दिस घैस्टली वॉरफेयर इफ यू थिंक दैट इंटेलिजेंस is better than fruitive work as we have seen in the last chapter lord krishna has completely denounced criticized the tendency of fruitive work fruitive work means expecting to enjoy the results of one's activities and arjuna was shown the path of buddhi yoga to become free from the bondage of work now arjuna is asking a common question which comes in mind of many new fight spiritualists who have just taken to spiritual life and people ask and they assume okay spiritual life means giving up all the duties all the responsibilities and just keeping ourselves in a secluded place and retiring chanting hare krishna maybe 24 hours in some jungle or on some mountain this is the understanding of spiritual life but here lord krishna wants to make it very clear that the actions of a spiritualist and a materialist can be very much same externally a person may not be even able to make out that he is a spiritualist or a materialist but there is a huge difference in consciousness So that is why this process is called buddhi yoga the yoga of intelligence the senses can act in the same way arjuna was a fighter before arjuna was a fighter afterwards after hearing bhagavad gita also but what changed was consciousness so here arjuna is asking krishna you tell krishna consciousness is the path buddhi yoga is the path so just let me retire from my duty is why then you again tell me that you please engage in work let us see what krishna answers vyamishrene va vakena buddhim mohaya seva me tadekam vad nischitya yena shreyo ham apnuyam my intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions therefore please tell me decisively 
what is most beneficial for me shri bhagavan vacha loke smin vividha nishtha pura prokta maya nagha gyan yoge na sankhyanam karma yoge na yogina the blessed lord said o sinless arjuna i have already explained that there are two classes of men who realize the self some are inclined to understand him by empirical philosophical speculation and others are inclined to know him by devotional work so here krishna is explaining clearly the two paths one set of spiritualists they are called the sankhya yogis or the gyan yogis they renounce the duties given by the varnashrama institution brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra brahmachari grahastha vanprastha and sanyas these are four social and spiritual divisions of varnashrama institution in this institution as per the psychophysical situation of a person certain duties are assigned so that person can gradually move from tamasic mode to satvik nature and eventually become a self realized person and stop the process of repetition of birth and death this is the sum and substance of all the duties ultimately to make him krishna conscious but there are some people who renounce all these duties they just want to understand krishna by philosophical analysis that is called the path of sankhya or gyan yoga there are others they are also spiritualists but they want to understand god by the process of work they are called karma yogis so both the yogas are very important and they are interdependent that is why we will see krishna will explain immature people those who are not wise they think it is different they both are interdependent as is religion and philosophy some people they simply philosophize without any understanding of religion that is simply mental speculation that will not lead us to end result our brain is too tiny to understand anything about the absolute truth without the help of religious scriptures the instructions given by god on the other hand there are some people who simply get stuck in the rituals without understanding any philosophy and they become fanatics so that class also we have seen there are religious people who are fanatic without any philosophy and there are some people who are simply philosophizing trying to understand what is truth without understanding from god what is truth they want to understand god without explanation of god so both the cases uh the person is not able to understand absolute truth so there should be religion religion means instructions given by god we have to purify our brain intelligence so that we can understand god and philosophy is very much required for so spiritual life is not a sentimental process it is a scientific understanding of absolute truth but if there is only philosophy without religion again it is a failure so sankhya and karma yoga both go hand in hand na karma nam anarambhan naishkarmyam purushoshnute na cha sanyasa na deva सिद्धिम समाधि गच्छति नॉट बाय मियरली एब्स्टेनिंग फ्रॉम वर्क कैन वन अचीव फ्रीडम फ्रॉम रिएक्शन नॉट बाय रिनंसिएशन अलोन कैन वन अटेन परफेक्शन अर्जुन वाज विलिंग टू रिनाउंस सो यस दिस रिनंसिएशन ऑफ ड्यूटीज इज आल्सो रिकमेंडेड सन्यास इज रिकमेंडेड बट फॉर अ पर्सन हु इज वेरी एडवांस्ड एंड हु इज सेल्फ सेटिस्फाइड unless the heart is very much cleansed by the performance of prescribed duties artificially just like a person who is very much addicted to drugs in rehabilitation centers he is given small doses so that gradually he can give up immediately it is not possible to give up so that is why for general people it is not recommended that they renounce the duties immediately so when the heart is purified by proper discharge of duties then renunciation is allowed but prematurely krishna is telling simply if a person is renounced he takes sanyas he wears the dress of a sanyasi <clears throat> it does not mean his consciousness is that of a sanyasi and he will have a nasty fall down 
नहीं कश्चित क्षणमपि जातु तिष्ठत्य कर्म कृत कार्य ते ही अवश्य कर्मा सर्व प्रकृति जैर गुण ऑल मैन आर फोर्स टू एक्ट हेल्पलेसली अकॉर्डिंग टू द इम्पल्स बॉर्न ऑफ द मोड्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर देर फोर नो वन कैन रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम डूइंग समथिंग नॉट इवन फॉर अ मोमेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड यूज हियर इज कार्य ते ही अवश्य कर्मा अवश्य मीन्स हेल्पलेस सो अर्जुना इज बींग वॉन्ट बाय कृष्णा नाउ यू आर टेलिंग आई डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू फाइट बट यू हैव गॉट बॉडी ऑफ अ क्षत्रिय सो हेल्पलेसली यू विल एंगेज इन फाइटिंग but now if you fight according to my instructions your life would be glorious you will become free from the bondage of work later if you fight according to your own whims you will get up you will end up getting more entangled so avasha word is very important krishna is telling jatu tishthati akarma krit without doing any work nahi kashchit kshana bhi even for a moment nobody is allowed not to do any work Everybody is avasha helplessly being dragged by the forces of nature. Nature gives us the body and through this body nature controls us. Force is there of belly and thus we are forced to go out and take up some duty job or business and we are forced to work hard to fulfill the demands of belly. Grow food or earn money to have food. Then there is force of genitals. so one is forced to have a partner and then one is forced to work to maintain the partner and then further extensions of the family then there is force of mind mind wants name fame and for this again a person is put to hard work certain kind of work then a person gets tired body forces want to go to sleep in this way the body is continuously forcing us so a person is helpless a moth helplessly is driven towards fire a deer helplessly is driven towards music and then the hunter catches the deer loses its life in this way we are helpless nature is forcing us to clean ourselves to dress ourselves to work work harder to eat to sleep so we are completely helpless and we feel this helplessness in our lives so in order to become free from this helplessness we need to take instructions from bhagavad gita but now krishna is telling arjuna so please understand nature forces one to do certain duties now you may decline i do not want to eat after some time hunger would be very strong and you will be forced to eat so in a similar fashion please do not try to skip your duties immediately as long as you are driven by the forces of this body karmendriyani sanyamya yaaste manasa smaran इंद्रियार्थान विमूढ़ात्मा मिथ्याचार स उच्यते वन हु रिस्ट्रेन्स द सेंसेस एंड ऑर्गन्स ऑफ एक्शन बट हुज माइंड डवेल्स ऑन सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स सर्टनली डिल्यूड्स हिमसेल्फ एंड इज कॉल्ड अ प्रिटेंडर सो अर्जुना यू मे टेक सन्यास बट देन योर माइंड विल ऑलवेज बी डवेलिंग अपॉन सेंस एन्जॉयमेंट सो सच अ पर्सन इज नॉट कॉल्ड अ सन्यासी रिनाउंसर ऑफ ड्यूटीज but a pretender although he can be in dress of a sanyasi yasvindriyani manasa niyamya rabhate arjuna karmendriyai karma yogam asakta sa vishishyate on the other hand he who controls the senses by the mind and engages his active organs in work of devotion without attachment is by far superior so one has to work but work without attachment that is why even a householder's life is called ashrama grahast ashram ashram means where spirituality is in center krishna consciousness is in center so without attachment even a person is householder here krishna is telling he is much superior much better than a pretender sanyasi so it is told sanyas ashram is so strict if a lusty thought is entertained by a sanyasi the injunction is he should leave his body the body becomes so contaminated 
तो सन्यास आश्रम इज सो स्ट्रिक्ट यू डो नॉट हैव राइट टू लिव विद अ कंटेमिनेटेड कॉन्शियसनेस दस दीज थिंग्स आर प्रोहिबिटेड इन कल युगा कल पंच विवर जयेत सो इट इज नॉट दैट सम पीपल डिल शास्त्राज वर्मेंट फॉर ओल्ड एजेस नाउ इट इज ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी वी हैव टू चेंज द रूल्स नो द शास्त्राज रिकमेंड डिफरेंट रूल्स फॉर डिफरेंट मिलेनियम्स इन सेंचुरीज दैट इज वाई द ध्यान योगा विच वॉज रिकमेंडेड फॉर सत योगा इट इज नॉट रिकमेंडेड नाउ द सैक्रीफाइज द स्पेशल काइंड ऑफ सैक्रीफाइज द्रव यज्ञ विच वॉज मेड फॉर त्रेता योगा इज नॉट रिकमेंडेड नाउ द डी टी वर्शिप फॉर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन विच वॉज फॉर द्वापर योगा पंच रात्रा इस तो केवल है इन कल योगा कलाउ तू नाम मात्रेणा चैंटिंग द होली नेम्स ऑफ द गॉड इज अ रिकमेंडेड यज्ञ और द प्रोसेस तो दस द शास्त्राज गिव द विजडम फॉर डिफरेंट एजेस एंड दस दे आर ऑलवेज एप्लीकेबल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज अ रिकमेंडेशन फॉर दिस एज सो दस इन दिस एज इट इज टोल वन शुड नॉट टेक सन्यास एवरी रिस्पेक्टेबल पर्सन वॉज एक्सपेक्टेड टू टेक सन्यास गो टू जंगल एट फिफ्टी ईयर्स पंचा शोर ध्वम वनम व्रजेत व्रजेत मीन्स वन मस्ट गो विद लिंग बट नाउ देर इज नो ब्रह्मचर्य ट्रेनिंग विदाउट ब्रह्मचर्य ट्रेनिंग सन्यास इफ अ पर्सन टेक्स देन अ पर्सन मे बिकम अ प्रिटेंडर सो नाउ ऑल्सो इफ अ पर्सन इज वेरी मच एडवांस्ड एंड क्वालिफाइड दे कैन टेक बट इट इज नॉट अलाउड फॉर जनरल पीपल जस्ट लाइक नाउ इफ समबडी डजेंट टेक एजुकेशन it is not acceptable similarly some respectable person not taking sanyas was not acceptable at all in uh, previous ages but in kali yuga for general people it is told you remain in your engage in your duties wherever you are but work without attachment in the spirit of devotion niyatam kuru karmatvam karma jayo hy karmanah शरीर यात्रा चे न प्रसिद्धेद कर्मण पफॉर्म योर प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी फॉर एक्शन इज बेटर देन इन एक्शन अ मैन कैन नॉट इवन मेंटेन हिज फिजिकल बॉडी विदाउट वर्क यज्ञाथात्मो अन्यत्र लोको यम कर्म बंधन तदर्थ कर्म कौंतेय मुक्त संग समाचर work done as a sacrifice for vishnu has to be performed otherwise work binds one to this material world therefore o son of kunti perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain unattached and free from bondage so the point to be noted here is krishna is not recommending ordinary passionate kind of work as people tell work is worship just do your duty very nicely you need not spend time in reading the vedas understanding go- science of god and getting too much into it just do your duty nicely work is worship when the injunctions of krishna are followed and what is the injunction yagya arthat when a person does work sacrificing the results for the pleasure of lord vishnu or krishna then work is worship otherwise work binds one to this material world anyatra loko yam karma bandhana person gets bound up in the karmic activities so yagya means sacrifice sacrifice for whom yagyo vai vishnu the scriptures tell another name of yagya another meaning of yagya is vishnu and lord krishna further he will explain uh that do all the works sacrifice everything only for my pleasure for those people who do not have knowledge that all the yagyas are meant for ultimate satisfaction of vishnu they are recommended to do sacrifice for other devatas also but if a person is wise he should understand this is there mentioned throughout the vedic literatures people sometimes they do the duties very nicely oh yes i am very religious person i go to temple i do all the sanskaras we did garbhadan sanskar then we did uh, uh, namkaran jatkarna sanskar upanayan sanskar we are very religious now it is told in the vedas 
अत पुंबिर्द्विज श्रेष्ठ वर्णाश्रम विभागश स्वानुष्ठित धर्म से सम सिद्धिर हरितोषण हरितोषण द प्लेजर ऑफ हरी इज द पर्पज ऑफ स्वानुष्ठित धर्म से परफेक्शन ऑफ वंस ड्यूटी आर बी एबल टू प्लीज हरी धर्म स्वानुष्ठित पुंसा विश्वक्सेन कथा सुय नोत पादेद रतिम यदि श्रम एव ही केवल श्रम एव मीन्स इट इज यूजलेस इन डेवर इफ वासुदेव कथा रुचि द टेस्ट फॉर हियरिंग द साइंस ऑफ गॉड हैज नॉट अवेकेंड देन द पर्पज ऑफ डूइंग ड्यूटीज इज नॉट सॉल्व इज नॉट सर्व सो दिस इज द पर्पज ऑफ ऑल द ड्यूटीज हरितोषणम सम सिद्धिर हरितोषणम परफेक्शन ऑफ वंस ड्यूटी सम सिद्धि दैट इज कॉल्ड सिद्धि मीन्स परफेक्शन सम सिद्धि मीन्स अल्टीमेट परफेक्शन If a person does his duty very perfectly, then the result would be pleasure of Hari. It is for him. Everything is happening here. So by doing our duties very nicely, if we follow the Vedic injunctions, automatically a person should become very inclined. One should develop great taste to hear the message and the signs of supreme personality of Godhead. If it is not happening, Shram Evhi Kevalam. So Krishna is telling Yagya Arthat. only for the purpose of sacrifice if you understand who is the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices that krishna will declare bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarvalok maheshwaram like in a factory who is the ultimate beneficiary the proprietor so krishna declares in bhagavad gita bhoktaram yagya tapasam i am the ultimate beneficiary enjoyer of all tapasya that anybody does and all the sacrifices it is being offered to any demigod but ultimately I am the ultimate beneficiary. Why, Sarv Lok Maheshwaram? Because I am the supreme proprietor. But it is not easy to have understanding of God in the lower modes of nature, because we are having various material desires. So, as per the capacity of the individuals, whatever modes they are being conducted by, various other sacrifices are recommended in the Vedas. And if one follows this path of sacrifice. one will become free from the bondage of karma sinful activity if a person is very very tamasic for them them also there is yagya if i want to eat meat i cannot maintain a slaughter house because ultimately the vedas want to make a person very satvik so there is injunction you offer sacrifice to goddess kali ghastly form of material nature so one can do the such sacrifice outside the city and uh, he can do only on amavas so in that way there is regulation every day person is not eating meat and then if he follows this sacrifice gradually the meat eating meat eating tendency this violent tendency will be eliminated from the heart so for rajasic person who want wealth heroic power who want to defeat their enemies different yagyas for different demigods are recommended सह यज्ञ प्रजा सृष्ट्वा पुरोवाच प्रजापति अनेना प्रसविष्यध्वम एष वोस्तविष्ट कामधोक इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ क्रिएशन द लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल क्रिएचर्स सेंट फॉर जनरेशंस ऑफ मेन एंड डेमी गॉड्स अलोंग विद सैक्रिफाइसेस फॉर विष्णु एंड ब्लेस देम बाय सेइंग बी दाउ हैप्पी बाय दिस यज्ञ सैक्रिफाइस because its performance will best to upon you all desirable things devan bhavayatane na te deva bhavayantu vah parasparam bhavayantah shreyaf param avapsyatha the demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you thus nourishing one another there will rain general prosperity for all unfortunately people sometimes call such descriptions in the vedic literatures of devatas demigods very powerful living entities having supernatural powers living on other planets in this universe as mythology however the vedas never mentioned it mythology जीवस्य तत्व जिज्ञासा नार्थो यश्चेह कर्म भी दिस इज द मोटो ऑफ ऑल वैदिक एजुकेशन वी आर एंगेज इन वेरियस एक्टिविटीज यू कैन डू सर यू कैन डू बिजनेस जॉब 
or any menial service or you can be a king or politician but karma bhi of all the actions what is the purpose the purpose is not simply enjoyment of senses like animals but the purpose is tatva jigyasa to understand what is the truth of this life who has created this world what is the purpose why am i here why am i suffering when we suffer we go to doctor in a similar fashion we should have this question why am i suffering something is unnatural i am doing which i am not supposed to do so human life is meant for such inquiry all the actions which we are doing the result is that we jigyasa one should inquire truth so such professors of the vedic culture who were sages they have approved this knowledge as being absolute truth if we want to understand computers we go to faculty of computer science if we want to understand automobiles we go to faculty of mechanical engineering similarly if you want to understand what is truth of life we should go to faculty of truth department and this truth department you'll find only in the vedic culture in vedic culture all education is meant only for knowing truth that is why all the pass outs of vedic schools called gurukul they would never take up jobs because a person needs to be independent first of all in order to understand truth so only those people who did not go to vedic schools gurukuls they would take up jobs otherwise jobs were never taken by any educated person in the vedic culture they would remain free either they would uh, cultivate their own farms work 3 months in a year and balance time they would cultivate krishna consciousness or they are kshatriyas they collect tax and give protection to people they are also not dependent on money for somebody or they are brahmanas he is satisfied simply by maintaining keeping his body and soul together somebody gives more donation he will distribute it he doesn't want to even accumulate money for next day such exalted culture so such people such great sages have approved this is truth faculty of truth so just like we have not seen neutrons we have not seen electrons we have not seen protons we have not seen the black holes and we might die without seeing them but we believe in them yes proton neutron electron quarks so many subatomic particles they exist black holes do exist we might not be able to see electromagnetic waves do exist in a similar fashion just like we are depending on some authorities to believe on things we cannot perceive directly here also we depend on such authorities and it is not difficult to understand the existence of demigods you see this is wonderful machine now this session is being recorded on a camera these eyes are more advanced than most advanced camera that we have made till now how the image comes it falls on the retina the curvature is so perfect the curvature could have been distorted from birth there should there could be some deficiency of course some very sinful people they have this thing but uh, normally for most of us the curvature is just right that the image falls on the retina how did the atoms decide that we adjust in this way that the curvature should be focused on the retina and then there is mechanism to control the intensity of light there are sufficient proportion the exact nice ratio of rods and cones which define our perception of colors if it changes we become color blind in every living entity the right amount of rods and cones the ability to distinguish colors is present then there are optical nerves just like in camera how the recording uh, it is able to be converted into electrical signals and then this electrical signals are transmitted so there is proper mechanism wiring in the brain who has done this wiring and then the image which is formed that is inverted there is optical nerve which inverts that image again so that we can see the world right side up not upside down so who created this very nice optical nerve which inverts the image in the exact degree 180 degree is it not a wonderful mechanism then it goes to spine from spine it goes to brain what wonderful machine it is this just i and there is so much wonderful mechanism happening in this body food that we eat it goes calcium will be taken out will be sent to the bones vitamins will be taken out will be sent to the respective uh, organs wherever it is required the waste will be collected it will be excreted how nicely it is happening air comes we need only oxygen oxygen is taken 
अदर गैस इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड आर एलिमिनेटेड हाउ नाइस मैकेनिज्म इट इज सो देर इज समबडी हु हैज डिजाइन इज इट नॉट सो दैट इज अ फैक्ट इट इज डन बाय अ डेमी गॉड हिज नेम इज ब्रह्मा ही हैज डिजाइंड ऑल आर बॉडीज एंड ब्रह्मा आल्सो हैज बीन क्रिएटेड बाय समबडी ब्रह्मास बॉडी हैज बीन डिजाइंड बाय समबडी दैट इज लॉर्ड कृष्णा दैट द वेदास डिफाइन सो इन दिस वे uh just like in any establishment there is one king and there are so many ministers or prime minister under him so many ministers in a similar fashion there is one supreme personality who is called god under him there are other ministers of universal affairs they are called demigods why is it difficult to understand somebody has created all these machines isn't it the right chemicals right uh, how nice design it is chanakya pandit says when i see just this mechanism as soon as the child is out there is milk in the breasts of the mother not before that not after the child is grown up because the child cannot survive on anything other than milk and the milk comes out at the right time and it has all the nutrients required for the child and child cannot survive on anything else than the milk how nice is this mechanism so there are people who are doing it and there is somebody who is controlling all such people who are doing this thing he is called supreme lord and those people who are directly responsible for such activities just like now in a city there is water supply there is power supply similarly please do not think it is happening by chance the rain the water the air the food that we have everything is in control of demigods it is mentioned in the scriptures now our science does not allow us otherwise we could have gone and practically seen but now we cannot go so we take help of authorities and these authorities are not ordinary they are very powerful they have dedicated their lives to find truth and these authorities reject general perception that we have calling it as illusion so will they believe and propound some mythology no by request let us try to very uh, with great deliberation with diligence read the vedas and we also will be convinced that this is fact God is fact the supreme creator demigods are also fact so here krishna is telling the demigods being pleased by the sacrifice will also please you and thus nourishing one another there will reign general prosperity for all as we give tax to the government government maintains all these departments very nicely and the facilities are given to us we have nice transport nice education and uh, all the public facilities defense health care is done by the government if we don't give tax then again we will not be taken care properly and we will suffer eventually if we give tax we are uh, given pre- proper care we earn more money we give more tax there is general prosperity for all similar cycle happens here in the universe also so a person is supposed to do yagya by yagya demigods are pleased they are nourished and they nourish us in this way mutually the demigods and the living entities by following this chakra the cycle of yagya everybody for everybody there is prosperity the science is not known to people ishtan bhogan hi vo deva dasyante yagya bhavita tair dattan apradayebhyo yo bhungte ste na evasah in charge of the various necessities of life the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yagya sacrifice supply all necessities to man but he who enjoys these gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is certainly a thief a person does not give tax he is called a thief and can a thief be happy no so a thief could be less intelligent or a thief could be technologically very advanced he has nice weapons with himself he has night jammers he has all the nice technology with that he is robbing a bank or a person without technology stealing both are called thieves and both will be punished in a similar fashion people wonder sometimes what is lacking in society we are having more and more researches every day the institutions are getting more and more funds we are advancing in our so called technology but still the suffering is also increasing because we are not doing yagya apart from self realization even for material prosperity we understand giving tax is required so because we are not doing yagya krishna is telling stain a vasaha he is a thief so simply by advancing in technology and science but remaining a thief not doing yagya sufferings will not go away and the proof is we are seeing 
there is so much analysis in the world how the stress is always building up and the natural resources they are getting depleted the west us 40% of it is very badly drought struck they are trying cloud seeding so many things but even though theoretically we have such measures nobody has been successful in doing cloud seeding it is not possible so here we will see next krishna mentions how these yagyas are very important the rains happen because of yagya because of rains we have food grains and then there would be no scarcity if we don't do yagya most advanced cities water table is going down natural resources are getting depleted this will happen so we have to become an honest man do yagya do sacrifice and there are some very nice side benefits also of such yagyas what is that yagya shishta shina santo muchyante sarva kil bishay bhunjante te tvagham papa ye pachantyatma karanat the devotees of the lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin this also we do not know so many basic things unfortunately we do not know which was part of the culture yagya shishta shina santaha santaha means saintly people what kind of food do they eat yagya shishta the remnants of yagya and why do they do that muchyante sarva kil bishay we suffer only because of sins we have to understand please this is very important it is ignorance if we think because of bad government i am suffering because of bad neighbors i am suffering because of bad family members i am suffering bad life partner bad boss bad subordinate bad weather no sir we are suffering because we have broken laws of nature these are merely instruments of our suffering that is why a person should be desperate to know what are the laws so that i don't break them further and continue or expand my suffering and i should be eager to get rid of the reactions which have accumulated because of past sinful activities and how to do it this is the way yagya shishta shina santa by eating yagya shishta remnants of yagya shishta food which is offered in yagya or offered to lord krishna yagya is one of the names of lord krishna so directly either we offer to krishna and then we take the food or we do yagya which was being done in treta yuga like that we get freedom from the sinful reaction just imagine person becomes free from sinful reaction he becomes happy just by eating the food that is why it was culture in the country that nobody would take food without offering it first to lord krishna in the temple every brahmana he would have a shaligram shila to worship shaligram shila is another incarnation of lord krishna and the food would be offered first to shaligram shila and then if he is worshiping some other devatas they would be given prasadam which is offered to shaligram shila then it would be distributed to general people everybody and if we do not do that the advantage is if we do that we are freed from the sinful reaction bhunjante te tvagham papa ye pachanti atma karanat atma karanat if a person cooks food for one's own pleasure gratification agham pap he is not just doing pap sinful activity agham pap means very greatly verily he is eating only sin krishna is mentioning because if you cultivate food first of all tilling the field plowing you kill so many microorganisms or germs insects so killing is killing soul is same either in small body or big body whether you smashed a person who was walking on road or who was riding a big vehicle the act of killing remains the same punishment remains the same so some soul is there in small body or in big body if killing is happening the nature is automated to bring suffering to us in the next life and we will be killed and then after that uh sometimes there is death because you are uprooting the plant completely the plant dies the plants and vegetables also have life if their death happens then that is also killing and when you grind the grains again so many small living entities get smashed when we cook in flame of the fire so many living entities die again when we eat when we chew when we drink water so many small living entities again die there is lot of death involved in the process of cultivating harvesting and cooking and eating food 
and we are responsible for all such deaths. If we do not offer food in yajna to Lord Krishna, when we offer food to Lord Krishna, then the food becomes purified of all contamination. Just like the government told, whatever money you have accumulated, you declare your assets and then you submit it to the government and then you will not be punished for that. So in a similar fashion, just a crude example we are discussing here, if you offer the food to Krishna, it becomes purified. Why it becomes purified? Because the living entity anyway has to die. But if that living, all those living entities who died in this process of food and that food is offered to Krishna, their life becomes a sacrifice in the service of Krishna. So they would have followed the gradual process of evolution from insects to bigger insect, then to reptile, then to birds, beasts and gradually human being after many many lifetimes. But because now their life has become sacrificed for Krishna because that food has been offered to Krishna, they immediately get promoted to a human form of life. This is a great science. Thus that food becomes purified, it becomes a benevolent activity for all the species involved. And when a person tastes that purified food, he is freed from all sins. Now everybody cooks for their own self or worse we are getting the food which is cooked from some other person. So we do not know that when we cook food, our consciousness mixes with the food. So if we get food cooked from the from a person who is having very low consciousness, no proper character, no regulation in habits, very angry, lusty, we will also get anger and lust automatically. These things are not known to people and they tell why my mind is disturbed, why this thing is happening. The food you are eating, it is being cooked by whom? First of all, it is not offered and it has been cooked by a person who is having very low degraded consciousness. What will happen to us? So all these basic things are not known to us. Then who can stop our suffering? First of all, we don't do yajna, we don't offer. There is no uh, understanding that I am suffering because of sinful reactions. So thus it is very imperative. We read, we have a systematic understanding of Bhagavad Gita. Annad bhavanti bhutani Parjanyadanna sambhavaha Yagyad bhavati parjanyo Yagya karma samudbhavaha All living bodies subsist on food grains which are produced from rain. Rains are produced by performance of yagya, sacrifice and yagya is born of prescribed duties. So food grains happen because of rains and the rains happen because of yagya. Thus, because we are reducing yajna, it is told in the Vedas, the rains would be very very scarce in the days which are going to come in Kali Yuga, especially towards the end of Kali Yuga. So, it is not by chance, nature is providing everything under very stringent laws. And yajna is born of prescribed duty, if you don't do your duty, where is the question of sacrifice, sacrificing the results. Karma Brahmodbhavam Vidhi Brahmakshara Samudbhavam Tasma Sarvagatam Brahma Nityam Yagya Pratishthitam Regulated activities are prescribed in the Vedas and the Vedas are directly manifested from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahmakshara Samudbhavam Consequently, all pervading transcendence is eternally situated in acts of sacrifice. So very important word used here is Brahmakshara Samudbhavam. The Vedas are coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the version of Bhagavad Gita. In other places it is written, Aparusheya. Vedas are not given by any human being. That is, it is perfect knowledge. Aparusheya, not by any Purush, any human being. Brahmakshara Samudbhavam. They are manifest from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are the user manual for our life without any human frailties and imperfections. So even if a person wants to have materially comfortable life, having all the natural resources, we need to do yajna. But then how to do yajna? Could be the next question. Where to find qualified brahmanas? Finding a yajnic brahmana is very difficult. It is almost impossible in Kali Yuga. To find the ingredients for yajna, to have proper procedure, it's not possible to do standard Vedic yajna, fire sacrifice. And every grahastha is supposed to do five kinds of yajna. 
to avoid so many avoid the reaction of so many inadvertent sinful activities that we do while walking talking sleeping regular activities so many living entities are dying and all those sins are getting accumulated so how do we do this panch yagya five kind of sacrifice in this kali yuga thus it is told yagya is sankirtana praya ir yajanti hi sumedasa doing yagya is very important but as we were discussing vedas recommend practices as per time place circumstances and capacity of the individual as per your capacity you follow so now people are very degraded it is told in kali yuga kalau shudra sambhava everybody shudra shudra means untrained it is not indicating any caste shudra means untrained person now everybody is untrained and who cries for small insignificant things everybody cries gets distressed very easily and brahmana means who is not disturbed at all even for death of his own self or his relatives or anybody else he is not disturbed by the changes of body he understands it is only a dress because of illusion we are identifying ourselves with the body just like a man crying because of a bad dream so when everybody shudra in kali yuga we have no capacity to do anything else when we don't have proper brahmanas yagic brahmanas another simple method is recommended but please note even though it is simple it does not mean it is less effective rather it is most effective it more than compensates the deficiency of any good qualities of previous ages but not everybody will be able to appreciate it thus bhagavatam the crux of all vedas recommends yagya sankirtana prayer yajanti sumedasa the supreme person yajanti will be worshiped by medhasa means in, one who is intelligent sumedhasa means one who is very intelligent so those people who are very bright very intelligent they will be able to understand the importance of sankirtan sankirtan means chanting the names of god together bahu bhir militva gayati iti sankirtana so very simply if we chant and hear the names of god the glories of god and the signs of god that is called sankirtan discussion or singing about god name signs activities qualities of god so the intelligent people of kali yuga in this age are recommended to follow this sankirtan yagya and the same results can be attained what people did by performance of dhyan yoga for thousands of years valmiki 60000 years he did tapasya vishwamitra father mother of krishna did tapasya for 10000 years and like this so many living entities very advanced saints have done tremendous tapasya for thousands of years same result can be attained by sankirtan in this age so this is the process very simple process recommended if somebody is follows krishna consciousness sankirtan yagya then uh, automatically all the material necessities resources will be given all the demigods will be pleased and a person will make perfect spiritual advancement at the same time evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati hayha aghayur indriya ramo mogham parth sajivati my dear arjuna a man who does not follow this prescribed vedic system of sacrifice certainly leads a life of sin for a person delighting only in the senses lives in vain so krishna is telling one who does not sacrifice the results of his activities for krishna who lives only to enjoy the senses his life is waste he lives in vain and this is what most of us are doing today but now here krishna mentions an exception so much krishna has told you should do duty 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 sacrifice the results of the activity but there is exception what is that यस्वात्मरतिरेवस्यात्मतृप्त मानव आत्मचुष्ट कार्यम न विद्यते वन हु इज हाउ एवर टेकिंग प्लेजर इन द सेल्फ हु इज इल्यूमेंट इन द सेल्फ हु रिजॉइसिस इन एंड इज सैटिस्फाइड विद द सेल्फ ओनली फुली सेशिएटेड फॉर हिम देर इज नो ड्यूटी so one may ask then who is supposed to renounce and just engage himself in the study of the vedas 
so here it is told yes there is a category of people who are atmarati who are completely satisfied so such people they can renounce the activities their occupational duties and they can read the vedas they can just chant hare krishna entire day they can worship krishna and completely have a renounced order of life but such a person should be atmarati it should not be simply the change of dress to get public attention but a person should be self satisfied so two kinds of people are called self satisfied or atmaram this word is used in bhagavatam also so one class is impersonalist who just understand the concept of brahma jyoti brahma jyoti is the spiritual effulgence which is coming out from the body of krishna as krishna will declare in bhagavad gita brahmano hi pratishtha ham that brahma jyoti situated on me just like the sun and sunlight is non different similarly krishna and the light coming from krishna's body there is no difference they are one and the same unit but still there is difference because the light is light and the personality is personality the source of light so those people who have just knowledge that the absolute truth is light they don't have further knowledge that this light has got a source called the personality of godhead they are also atmaram they are atmarati they are self satisfied but this kind of self satisfaction cannot continue eternally because by nature we are meant to enjoy loving relationship activity in the service of krishna so a person can be very peaceful there for a very very long time but then we want the pleasure of relationship pleasure of activities and then a person falls down to material platform there is another class of atmarati who are devotees who are always engaged in the service of krishna they are also self satisfied always relishing the pleasure of krishna within the self the relationship within the self they also don't feel the pull of sense enjoyment because they are already completely satiated so for both these people there are no duties so the gyanis the impersonalists they study they hear the vedanta whereas devotees they do sankirtan they do meditation they offer prayers in this way they completely engage themselves in the service of krishna giving up their occupational duties for such people it is not required they can give up because what is the purpose of all the duties perfection of duty that we have discussed some siddhir hari toshanam that is pleasure of hari so as a student who has graduated out of school who is studying in college he need not attend classes because he is graduated or sometimes students who are very wise they are given promotion they need not attend uh, lower classes so a person who is atmarati self satisfied for him there is no need of these subordinate duties naiva tasya krite nartho na krite neha kashchana na chasya sarvabhuteshu kashchid artha vyapashraya A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties nor has he any reason not to perform such work nor has he any need to depend on any other living being A self-realized soul has no reason to perform the prescribed duties and there is no reason not to do the duty so what he is supposed to do he can do anything as per the wish of the supreme personality of godhead that is what lord krishna is recommending now tasmad sakta satatam karyam karma samachara asakto hi acharan karma param apnoti purushah therefore without being attached to the fruits of activities one should act as a matter of duty for by working without attachment one attains the supreme so the supreme is impersonal brahma jyoti for the impersonalists and the supreme is supreme personality of godhead for the devotees for the buddhi yogis or bhakti yogis so in either case if a person works without attachment then one attains the supreme either the brahma jyoti or the association of krishna in the vaikuntha planets or in golok vrindavan the topmost of the vaikuntha planet where he lives personally with his associates
कर्मणवाहि संसिधि आस्थिता जनका दय लोकसंग्रहमेवापी संपश्यन कर्तमर्हसी Even kings like Janak and others attained the perfectional stage by performance of prescribed duties therefore just for the sake of educating the people in general you should perform your work so here krishna is telling arjun to perform his prescribed duty of fighting only why because he is quoting the instance of janak maharaj father of mother sita who was a self realized soul a pure devotee even though he was a self realized soul still he acted and fought many wars and did all the regulated prescribed duties of varnashrama because as krishna will explain in the next shloka please hear very carefully yad yad acharati shreshthas tat tat evetaro janah sayat pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartate whatever action is performed by a great man common men follow in his footsteps and whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts all the world pursues so the world will pursue the leaders of the society yad yad acharati shreshtah and the best leader is the king himself so if king is found not to be doing the duties of varnashrama nicely then all the ordinary people who are not self realized they may also leave their duties thinking oh this is the right conduct so that is why it is very very important for arjuna krishna is telling because you are also leader you are also king the great general people look up to you so please do your duties very nicely but asaktam without any attachment not for enjoying the results of the activities न मे पाथास्ति कर्तव्य त्रिषु लोकेशु किंचन नाप्तमवाप्तव्य वर्त एव च कर्मणि ओ सन ऑफ पृथा देर इज नो वर्क प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर मी विद इन ऑल द थ्री प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स नॉर एम आई इन वॉन्ट ऑफ एनी थिंग नॉर हैव आई नीड टू ऑप्टेन एनी थिंग एंड येट आई एम एंगेज इन वर्क now krishna is beginning to explain his position krishna has mentioned in the second chapter and in this chapter also to sacrifice the results now krishna gradually will bring arjuna to the point of directly giving instructions sacrifice the result for me why what is my position here krishna begins to explain and more clearly krishna will start explaining next chapter onwards Here Krishna explains Name parthasti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana In the three worlds there is no work prescribed for me nor am I in want of anything So it is said in the Shvetashvata Upanishad in many many Vedas the position of the supreme personality of godhead Dehi deh vibhedoyam neshvare vidyate kvachit There is no difference between the deha and dehi there is a difference our body deha is different and dehi we the dweller of the bodies are different but ishvare in the supreme personality of godhead na vidyate kvachit such difference does not exist so for krishna there is no difference between krishna's body and krishna's soul some people tell when krishna tells surrender unto me not to krishna to the soul within krishna we have to surrender no This is ignorance. They don't know the Vedas. They don't know the science of God. Neshvare vidyate dehi deha vibheda. There is no difference between body because we don't want this body which is full of diseases, death, old age, and birth, all such troubles. So why God will take such a nasty body? So there is no need for him. His body is completely spiritual. Satchidananda vigraha. Does the Vedas tell? न तस् कार्य करण च विद्यते गॉड डज नॉट हैव मटीरियल सेंसेज लाइक अस ही हेज गॉट स्पिरिचुअल सेंसेस अंगा ये सकलेन्द्रिय वृत्ति मंती एवरी सेंस कैन डू द एक्शन ऑफ एनी अदर सेंस बिकॉज एंटायर बॉडी इज मेड अप ऑफ सब्सटेंस कॉल स्पिरिट कृष्णा सिंपली बाय सींग द फूड कैन टेस्ट द फूड 
Krishna simply by breathing can speak the Vedas. So in this way, one limb can perform the action of any other limb simply by hearing the mantras for offering food. Krishna can eat food. So that is why it is told, "Na tat samas cha vyadikas cha drishyate." Thus, there is nobody who is found equal to or superior to Krishna. Na tat samha cha abhyadika. There is no question of adik being superior to Krishna. Nobody has such body that one limb can perform the action of any other limb. Parasi shaktir vividhayav shruyate. He has got multifarious potencies. All the energies of the world belong to him. Swabhaviki jnana bala kriya cha. So we need to work hard to acquire jnan knowledge about certain thing. We need to work hard to get strength. We need to work hard to develop kriya skills. But for Krishna, it happens automatically. Simply by his wish, everything happens. So there is no reason for Krishna to do any work, because whatever he desires happens automatically by his energies. So thus, Krishna is telling, there is no reason for me to engage in any kind of activity. Still, Krishna does activity. Why? Yadi yaham na varte yam jatu karmanya tandrita. मम वर्तमानुवर्तन्ते मनुष्यापार्थ सर्वशः फॉर इफ आई डिड नॉट एंगेज इन वर्क ओ पार्थ सर्टेनली ऑल मेन वुड फॉलो माय पाथ उसी देयुर इमे लोका न कुर्याम कर्म छेदहम संकरस्य च कर्तास्याम उपहन्यामि वा प्रजा If I should cease to work then all these worlds would be put to ruination I would also be the cause of creating unwanted population and I would thereby destroy the peace of all sentient beings Krishna is telling if I cease to work then all these worlds would be put to ruination I will be the cause of creating unwanted population if I don't follow brahmacharya then accepting grahast ashram people ask why krishna married because for general people marriage is very important not everybody will be able to control the senses if krishna did not set an example by marriage lord ramchandra did not set an example by marriage then general mass would follow because they are kings so king has to be very ideal in all respects so marriage people think marriage is for enjoying sex life rather the purpose is totally converse it is to regulate one sex life if there is no marriage then person will do sex unlimitedly without restriction and sex life is so horrible that the dissatisfaction always increases in the heart thus in west where people have unlimited opportunity for sex there is more depression more chaos in life because as krishna will explain dura purena kamena this lust is never satisfied it always burns more and more the more you satisfy so in order to regulate when the lust is regulated and finished then the memory is stable then a person can peaceful have a peaceful mind and think about god and the purpose of life so that is why the marriage recommendation is there so that lust can be regulated and then sanyas it can be given up So Krishna told if I don't follow these rules and regulations of Varnashrama dharma then general people will start following my path and nobody would marry and then I would be the cause of creating unwanted population if we don't marry don't follow garbhadan sanskar purify consciousness in purified consciousness create progeny the soul which will come if the husband and wife simply for sex enjoyment they mate and child is by product of such enjoyment child would be very lusty would be born with all lower qualities so one has to have very purified consciousness and at the time of conceiving the child the child carries the consciousness of father and mother so these sciences if and now nobody knows it the children are naturally disturbed very lusty greedy angry having very much the base qualities and the whole world is disturbed so krishna is telling sankarasya unwanted progeny population will be created i would be the cause and the whole world will be put to ruination they will be inclined to do all nasty activities will not agree to become god conscious very easily but 
It is important to note, even though Krishna has done activities for guiding us, Krishna has shown some supernatural activities also to assert that he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, very nicely it is told in the Vedas. Nayata samachare jatu manasapi hi anishwaraha vinashyati acharan maudyad yatha rudro abdhijam visham so Mauryad, foolish people, they want to imitate personalities like Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva drank poison. Can we drink poison? No. So please do not give argument that Lord Shiva, he has done some pastime, some activity of smoking, I will also smoke. No. Lord Shiva has taken the responsibility of advancing on the spiritual path, the most tamsic living entities like ghosts and goblins. Thus, he moves around in the graveyard and he externally maintains a tamsic appearance. So, one should not also try to become tamsic. No, Lord Shiva has taken that responsibility of delivering ghosts and goblins on the path of spiritual advancement. If we also take such external get-up, we will fall in tamoguna very badly and lose the opportunity of advancement. So we should not give this argument, Shiva smokes, I will also smoke. Shiva can smoke, Shiva can drink poison also and still live very happily. But we will die immediately. So Krishna danced, did Ras Leela, I will also do Ras Leela. No, Krishna did for a certain reason. You cannot imitate that. So that is why Anukaran, Anusaran, two words are used. If a person does Anusaran, that is what is recommended, following their footsteps, their instructions. And if a person does Anukaran, if he tries to act in the way Krishna has acted, Shiva has acted, they would be destroyed. So thus it is told, Mauryad, foolish people, Rudro, Abdijam Visham, Rudra drank poison, if they want to imitate, they will be finished. So not to imitate, but to follow the footsteps is the required necessity for spiritual advancement. Sakta karmanya vidvanso yatha kurvanti bharata kuryad vidvans tatha saktash tikir shurloka sangraham As the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results, similarly the learned may also act but without attachment for the sake of leading people on the right path. So thus there is no necessity of leaving house for perfecting one's spiritual life. As the materialist is acting, similarly we may also act. There is no need of changing one's position. Sthane sthita shruti gatam. We simply have to shruti gatam, keep on hearing the signs of Krishna and explain it to others. Keep on hearing the names of Krishna, explain it to others. Shruti gatam, tanuvan manobhir. And surrender to Krishna wherever you are. Try to fulfill his orders, like he is ordering Arjuna to fight. Similarly, Krishna has got a plan here to deliver this knowledge to people. Simply, if you do our activities for the service of Krishna, for delivering this knowledge to people, then wherever, whatever job, business, occupation we are doing, we can do that. But without attachment to the results, that is a spiritualist, perfect spiritualist. This is spiritual life. When the end is material enjoyment, that activity is called materialism. When the end is spiritual enjoyment, enjoyment of Krishna, then that is called spiritual life. As simple as that. That is Krishna's recommendation here. As the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results, similarly learned may also act, but without attachment. For the sake of leading people on the right path. Na buddhi bhedam janayed agyanam karma sanginam joshaye sarva karmani Vidvan Yukta Samacharan Let not the wise disrupt the minds of the ignorant who are attached to fruitive action. They should not be encouraged to refrain from work, but to engage in work in the spirit of devotion. Prakrate Kriya Marnani Gunai Karmani Sarvashaha Ahankara Vimodhatma Karta Hammiti Manyate the bewildered spirit soul, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature. So this is very important verse again. It is told here, please again read this verse very carefully, verse number 27. 
of this third chapter. Prakrite he kriyamanani gunaye karmani sarvashaha. Prakriti, nature is doing everything by the three modes of nature guna, sattva guna, raja guna, tamo guna. Ahankar vi atma, but mudha means foolish. Vi mudha means specially foolish. Specially foolish living entities, what do they think? Out of false ego, false ego means, as we discussed, because of this energy, we think I am the body. So in this false ego, I am this body, they think I am the doer also. Karta aham, I am the doer, iti manyate, in this way they think. So this is ignorance. We are helpless, almost like puppets. In human life, we have got some freedom. Otherwise, in all other lower species, non-human species, animals, reptiles, birds, beasts, we are just like puppets. They are completely controlled by the modes of nature. As we can see, the animals cannot change their behavior. The dog will eat in a certain way, will sleep in a certain way, will mate in a certain way, and so do other animals and plants also. But human being can change, and he should change for good. Unfortunately, we are changing for the worse. We are becoming animal-like, non-regulated in our activities. Regulation control means human, no control means animal. So this freedom is given so that we can further move up the evolution ladder, get more sattvic bodies, if not we are able to liberate ourselves. But unfortunately in today's civilization, do whatever you want. This life is all in order, there is no next life. So person becomes very eager to enjoy his senses like animals because he will die very soon and eventually becomes an animal in the next life. So thus, uh, nature is doing everything, we are not the doers. In human form of life, we have got certain freedom. But in human form of life also, we are almost very much forced, avashaha. We are passive actors. If we have got body of a man, if we are in ahankar, we will get attracted to women. I think, oh, I am choosing a woman. No, sir, you are being forced to choose a woman. Similarly, woman is forced to choose a man. Helplessly, mind-body gets attracted. And then, there is hunger. You are forced to eat, forced to uh, work. Then, nature makes you believe because of this energy. Because of Rajaguna and Tamuguna, person thinks, I am the body. Now, he wants name and fame in society. Forced to do certain kind of activity. If you have got uh, uh, certain modes of nature, mix of Rajaguna and Tamoguna, we will be doing the task of a farmer, businessman, a trader. If we have got Rajaguna predominantly, we will be doing the task of administration, we will be Kshatriya, a warrior. If we have got Sattvaguna, we will be doing the task of Brahmana as per the qualities that we have. If we have got Tamsik mode of nature, then we will be doing Shudra work or less than that. As per the qualities, helplessly we think, we behave. Psychology, physiology is under control of nature. How the body is acting, how the food is getting digested, nothing is in our control. Unfortunately, we think I am the doer. No. Nature is doing it, it is nature's plan, just like the government decides. Now we want to make a road here. So the mason and the laborer cannot tell I have made the road. Engineer cannot tell I have made the road. Government, we tell government made the road. They are acting as instruments. If engineer tells I will not make the road, laborer tells I will not work on the field, will the road not be made? Road will still be made. So the action is being done by government. And we can choose to act. Similarly, action is being done by Prakriti. We are thinking I am doing benefit to some living entities. I am causing harm to other living entities. No, we cannot do anything. If harm has to happen, benefit has to happen, that happens as per the individual karma of the living entities. We may become instrument. If money order has to go to somebody, the postman earlier, uh, this digital transactions were not there before. So postman will carry money. So anybody can choose to act as postman and he can carry money order. But he, postman cannot supply money to anybody. So we should not think, oh, uh, I am dependent on my boss to give me money. I am dependent on somebody to give me, no. If money is in destiny, money will come by ways and means. We should just do our regulated work. That's it. By working hard, we will not be able to increase our opulence. We might be able to accumulate for some time, but that money will go away. Either by disease, theft, robbery, 
or our relatives will enjoy but we will not be able to enjoy even by accumulation if uh, i think oh, these living entities are dependent on me for maintenance no prakriti nature is maintaining under supervision of krishna we may choose to act as instrument if we do our duty nicely to maintain our family members will be rewarded if we don't do our duty nicely we'll be punished if a civil engineer he is not now doing his task nicely he'll be punished if he does nicely he'll be rewarded promoted but he is not the doer in a similar fashion we should understand i am simply an instrument the work will happen harm will happen good will happen to people so that is why a living entity saves time from material activities yes we do maintain people we maintain our family we maintain everybody but for ultimate elevation to krishna consciousness unnecessary we don't take anxiety to solve the problems of life because we cannot solve it problems will come as per destiny so we do regulated work try to solve problems as far as possible but we should understand it is happening as per the nature we are simply an instrument so our focus should be to elevate krishna consciousness of my own self and that of my family members and society and nation this is the prime motto of work for a spiritualist tatva vittu mahabaho guna karma vibhagayo guna guneshu vartanta iti matva na sajjate one who is in knowledge of the absolute truth o mighty arm does not engage himself in the senses and sense gratification knowing well the difference between work in devotion and work for fruitive results so vimud atma what he does karta ham iti manyate he thinks i am the doer and he works very passionately thinking everything is on my head i have to do and takes so much of anxiety because of this tu krishna tells but tatva vit tatva means truth one who is the knower of truth he does not act in this way so krishna tells here guna guneshu vartanta iti matvana sajjate one who is in knowledge of absolute truth does not engage himself in senses and sense gratification knowing well the difference between work in devotion and work for sense enjoyment now the whole world what is the purpose what does our education tells us you become successful so that you can enjoy but this science is missing that we are part and parcel of krishna just like a leaf cannot enjoy leaf is part and parcel of tree water has to go to root leaf will enjoy automatically if we serve krishna we enjoy automatically we are part and parcel of krishna so in the absence of this knowledge people were for directly enjoying and they increase their miseries in life so a person who is tatvavit he does not do work for senses sense gratification he does work for the satisfaction of supreme prakrater guna sammudha sajjante guna karmasu tan krishna vido mandan krishna vinna vichalayet bewildered by the modes of material nature the ignorant fully engage themselves in material activities and become attached but the wise should not unsettle them Although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge. Now Krishna is telling here the duties of our ashrama system which tell you that you have some certain responsibility for certain living entities it is inferior. If we take care of our primary responsibility of service to God all these are automatically taken care as we have discussed in the previous session. It is all inclusive but one should not unsettle them. because they will not be able to understand and unless they do these duties which are inferior they will not be able to come to the platform of understanding their supreme duty that is hari toshanam so you also act as they are acting but tell them to act in the spirit of devotion towards the supreme personality of godhead mai sarvani karmani sanyasya adhyatma chetasa निराशीर निर्ममो भूत्वा युद्धस्व विगत ज्वरः देयरफॉर अर्जुन सरेंडरिंग ऑल योर वर्क्स ऑन टू मी विद माइंड इंटेंट ऑन मी एंड विदाउट डिजायर फॉर गेन एंड फ्री फ्रॉम इगोइज्म एंड लेथार्जी फाइट नाउ सम पीपल हु आर स्कॉलर्स ऑफ संस्कृत 
and who have been unfortunate not been able to receive the knowledge in parampara what is the actual meaning of the words and verse they may tell oh why you are telling one has to sacrifice the results to krishna for god yagya means sacrifice they do not know they have not read bhokta ram yagya tapasam the direct verse krishna is telling i am the ultimate beneficiary they may argue like that so they should read this verse where krishna directly is mentioning the purpose of bhagavad gita mai sarvani karmani krishna is telling mai unto me sarvani karmani sanyasya all the work should be surrendered unto me directly mai word is used sanyasya adhyatma chetasa chetasa means consciousness consciousness should be fixed on me mind also should be intent on me surrendering all your works unto me with mind intent on me adhyatma chetasa mai unto me consciousness should be fixed nirashir nirashi means without any desire for gain we do any work for personal gain that is a karmi materialist karma yogi means he acts but he has no desire to enjoy the gain why nirmamo bhutva mama means something belongs to me proprietorship one is thoroughly convinced this body belongs to krishna mind belongs to krishna he has created machine i belong to krishna so everything that i have belongs to krishna so he simply maintains himself that is a brahmana as we discuss if there is little more money which is not required for that day's maintenance he will do charity immediately next day again he will beg for his maintenance or pick up some uh, grains from the field or the marketplace in this way he will just have resources for that day's maintenance because he knows krishna is maintaining everybody tomorrow he will uh, maintain me in this way he does not accumulate depending completely upon krishna so this is ideal so even though we may not be able to follow the ideal we can be practical but the practical way it is told in the vedas is a person should not enjoy more than half of his wealth up to 50% he can enjoy the living standard should be not exceeding 25% of the income 25% because we are householders we need to have for emergency purpose and 50% should be used in the service of krishna as a very great industrialist of our country mr nanda nilekhni he has pledged 50% of his wealth and he quoted the shloka of bhagavad gita that please do not think that the results belong to you the very famous shloka which we discussed in the previous chapter chapter number 2 that you have right to do your duty karmanne vadikar hate ma phaleshu kadachana but it does not entitle you to the result of activity you have no right upon the result he quoted this verse from bhagavad gita and he pledged 50% so thus uh, we are very fortunate in our country uh, and across the world now bhagavad gita is very famous people are realizing and they understand this is the shastrik injunction ideal is just maintain your body and soul but we cannot expect ideal standards from everyone so practical is 50% at least you use in the service of god you sacrifice and in this way if you follow even this even 50% could be more we can start sacrificing a bit but if we are able to attain this platform of using minimum 50% of wealth for krishna we will be having consciousness of a sanyasi sanyasi is always in bliss and the same bliss can be experienced by a householder who is running an industry or doing the regular job if he performs activities in this fashion for the satisfaction of krishna so thus krishna is telling nirmama a person can do that only when he is nirmama nothing belongs to me just like a cashier he accepts so much of wealth to give everything to bank he knows nirmama it does not belong to me so we have to understand we have become very lusty and greedy like thieves want to enjoy everything it does not belong to us that is why always stress and anxiety builds up in our life so nar- nirashi you work surrendering all your works mai unto me and while we are doing activities for krishna we should be thinking of krishna also or chanting his name that is the recommended way of thinking of krishna in kali yuga satatam kirtayantu mam satat means always keep on chanting my name so even though krishna is in the background of the entire battle krishna is right there charioteer st- sitting in front of arjuna but still arjuna is being recommended by krishna man mana think of me 
Srila Prabhupada explains very nicely, even though Krishna is in the background, still Krishna is telling, think of me. So we should do work for Krishna while thinking of Krishna. Another example given is that of a, a woman who is having an extramarital affair. That is not encouraged. Example is given. Who is having an extramarital affair? She would be more careful. People tell, oh, if I follow spiritual life nicely, I am not able to do my duties nicely. No, that is why this example is important. Acharyas have told, she is always thinking of uh, her paramour, beloved. And at the same time, she is more cautious so that nobody should suspect that she is having an affair. Thus, she is becoming irregular in the household duties. So she does household duties even more carefully, but in her heart, she is always thinking, when will I meet my paramour? When will I go out? In a similar fashion, person can be doing any activity, but Adhyatma Chetasa in his heart, he is always thinking of Krishna. This Adhyatma Chetasa will develop in Kali Yoga by always chanting the names of Krishna. So we can do all activities a practice. Our tongue should be used. In 9th chapter, we will see Satatam Kirtayanto in always chanting the names of God. If you belong to other religion Prabhupada tells, you have different name of God, you can chant that also, but that should be name of God. And if you are doubtful, then we have standard name, Krishna, you can try this. You are scientific minded, you are very fond of experiments, try this method and see the result in your life. So this is the way, this is the purpose of Gita. Mai Sarvani Karmani, all activities that you do, surrender the works unto me and mind should be intently fixed on me. You should not aspire for the gain, enjoying the gain and understand Nirmama, nothing belongs to me. Yudhyasva Vigata Jvaraha Now don't become lethargic, oh nothing belongs to me, everything belongs to Krishna. Okay, let me do some formality, no. Without lethargy and without feverish mentality which people have, I want to win somehow. Without feverish mentality, without lethargy. Vigata Jvaraha Full of enthusiasm for the service of Krishna, fight. ये मे मतम इदम नित्यम अनुतिष्ठन्ति मानवाः श्रद्धावन्तो न सूयन्तो मुच्यन्ते तेपि कर्मभिः वन हु एग्जीक्यूट्स हिज ड्यूटीज अकॉर्डिंग टू माय इंजंक्शंस एंड हु फॉलोस दिस टीचिंग फेथफुली विदाउट एनवी बिकम्स फ्री फ्रॉम द बॉन्डेज ऑफ फ्रूटिव एक्शंस So now Krishna is telling here, using a very important word, ultimately we want freedom from the reactions. Karma bandhan prahasyasi. Because of karma we are getting bodies and bodies give us misery, material bodies. So if you act in such a way, you will be free. But sometimes, uh, because we are all envious here, everybody who is in material world, he is envious of God, he or she is envious. So Krishna is telling, anasu yanto, who follows my injunctions without envy because envy can come oh i should give everything to you what kind of god krishna is is too much demanding but we should understand this demand is not of a dictator it is that of a lover just like in traditional families in india wives would not work they would take the responsibility of educating training the children which is very important work now the children are getting spoiled and as we know the consciousness of a person is very important who is cooking the food so these very important tasks they would do and actually working at home is very nice and now uh, after this pandemic people don't want to return to office even in the offices of the best companies because uh, nobody likes to leave home and uh, what is the best job than spending time with the people you love educating your children taking care of them so this very important task was given now people started neglecting this task of a homemaker now the women are going out and exploitation is happening abuse is happening thus the vedas tell if woman goes out then it is very risky how much protection you can give this abuse is bound to happen so women should always be protected this is the version in the vedas so just like a dutiful wife As soon as the husband gets salary, she would demand, give everything to me. The husband would lovingly give everything to her. This is the demand Krishna is having. Krishna, what is the need? Is Krishna in dearth of wealth? No. He is so much loving us. He knows unless they develop 
loving relationship revive this relationship for me they will not be satisfied so he wants to rekindle this loving relationship so he is asking give it to me and thus we will have a loving relationship you will develop love for me so we should not become envious krishna is dictator he is telling just think of me no it is love beloveds do tell think of me and sing for me glorify me so krishna is just training us how we can again rekindle loving relationship so anasuyanto one who follows these injunctions without envy of me then they will become free from the bondage of work so by doing work you become free from the bondage of work this is called buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga ये तदभ्यसूय तो नानुतिष्ठती मे मत सर्वज्ञान विमूस्तान विधि नष्टा न चेत सह बट दोज हू आउट ऑफ एनवी डिसरिगार्ड दीज टीचिंग्स एंड डू नॉट प्रैक्टिस दम रेग्युलरली आर टू बी कंसिडर्ड बेरेफ्ट ऑफ ऑल नॉलेज बी फूल्ड एंड डूम्ड टू इग्नोरेंस एंड बॉन्डेज बट इफ समबडी इज एनवियस आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू रेग्युलेट माई सेल्फ एज पर समबडी कृष्ण और अ बुक i will have my own life then krishna is telling he is doomed he will suffer just like a small child if he does not take the advice of the parents it is very dangerous for him somebody will kidnap he will eat anything spoil his health small children they take sometimes naphthalene balls thinking it as a uh, sugar candy one such incident happened in our movement also small child died so if the children don't listen the strict advice of their parents their health career everything would be lost so thus krishna is telling please do not disregard i also request all of you with folded hands please do not disregard yes uh, i am very happy that all of you are listening these instructions but we have to practically apply the instructions in our life also for this personal guidance is required thus we could have done a regular jobs and serve krishna why we are there we have renounced our regular duties and occupation because some people are required who can give this knowledge to people tell them how to practically apply these instructions so please take advantage so take advantage of such devotees who have renounced dedicated their life so that they can explain people guide people how to practically apply these instructions so please if there is any difficulty you think it is impractical it is because of lack of knowledge everything is practical in a step by step manner gradually we can follow all these instructions perfectly and we can be all of us can be in our own situation perfectly self realized souls so please try to come in association of devotees and in their guidance apply personally and krishna is warning here like a child both those who do not follow they will be lost they are doomed to bondage सदृश चेष्टते स्वस्तेर्ज्ञानवानी प्रकृति यानी भूता निग्रह किं क्यति एवरी मैन आई रिपीट इवन अ मैन ऑफ नॉलेज एक्ट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू इज ओन नेचर फॉर एवरी वन फॉलोज इज नेचर वॉट कैन रिप्रेशन अकम्प्लिश सो कृष्ण इज वॉर्निंग अर्जुना नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू लीव फाइट Repression will not accomplish anything unless the heart is cleansed. So use your tendencies in my service. Indriya se indriya syarthe ragadvesha vyavasthita tayor na vasham agachet tauhiya se paripanti na. Attraction and repulsion for sense objects are filled by embodied beings. but one should not fall under the control of senses and sense objects because they are stumbling blocks on the path of self realization just like sometimes very attractive offers come click on this link you have a certain reward waiting for you we don't fall for that some people call us they want the details of our credit cards debit cards and give us attractive options we might get attracted but we don't click on such malicious links we don't respond to such calls in a similar fashion in this material world unfortunately when we see any sense object we feel attraction that is nature of this body something will be attractive something would be repulsive and our life's motto is to chase those things which are attractive and avoid those things which are repulsive but krishna is telling no you should simply know what god desires me to do 
and then just engage myself in the service of God as per the direction of spiritual master and not fall for the stumbling blocks of sense objects they are stumbling blocks on the path of self realization try to tolerate just like a married man or woman can get attracted to somebody beyond their life partners but they don't go and marry them they understand it is not right we may find something very expensive which does not belong to us but we don't start enjoying that we wait for our wealth to grow because if i enjoy that i become a thief So in a similar fashion, many things would be attractive. Krishna is telling, but don't fall for that. One should strictly follow my injunctions and tolerate the attraction and repulsion of the sense objects. Shreyan swadharmo vigunaha paradharma swanushtitat swadharme nidhanam shreyaha paradharmo bhaya vaha. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties even though they may be faulty than another's duties. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duties better than in, in than engaging in another's duties. I'll repeat. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties even though they may be faulty than another's duties. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duties for to follow another's path is dangerous. Arjuna wanted to take the path of brahmanas even though he was a kshatriya. Brahmana is told to follow non-violence always. But kshatriya no. Even though while fighting he can be destroyed one should not resist from doing his duty. because death anyway has to happen if we do our duty nicely now we are getting promotion at least if not liberation in the next life because we are eternal so par dharm bhayavah do not do this thing please if a small child carries calculator he will not learn basic calculation would be lost he should not imitate the advanced students who calculate using scientific calculators in their examinations no one should not imitate the duties At the same time advanced students should not imitate lower children oh let me also not carry calculator then he also will not be able to learn at his level it is required so thus everybody should carry their own prescribed duties even though one may be destroyed doing their duties arjuna uvacha ath kena prayukto yam papam charati purushah अनिच्छन्नपिवार्ष्णेयबलादिवनियोजितःअर्जुनसेडूडिसेंडेंटफुलेक्ट्सवन if you do not eat food which is offered to me which is offered in the sacrifice then again you are committing agham papam gross sinful activity so krishna has described in so many ways one who does not do his duty he is sinful now arjuna is telling krishna i understood that uh, there are all these activities which are sinful but there is something which forces us to do sinful acts what is that bala divan yojita something engages us in these activities even though i am not willing to do sins i want to sacrifice for krishna but i cannot do that i want to control my senses i don't want to fall for sense objects attraction repulsion but helplessly i do that what is the reason for this arjuna scientifically now wants to understand the design of this nature what is that energy which is forcing us even though i am unwilling to commit sins now krishna will help shri bhagavan vacha kamesha krodhesha rajo guna samudbhavah mahashano mahapapma vidhyenam iha vairinam the blessed lord said it is lust only arjuna which is born of the contact with the material modes of passion and later transformed into wrath 
and which is the all devouring sinful enemy of this world dhume navriyate vah nir yatha darsho malena cha yathol be navrito garbhas tatha tene damavritam as fire is covered by smoke as a mirror is covered by dust or as the embryo is covered by the womb similarly the living entity is covered by different degrees of this lust avritam gyanam etena gyani no nitya vairina kamarupena konteya dushpurena nalena cha thus a man's pure consciousness is covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust which is never satisfied and which burns like fire a person is harmed and sometimes killed by the enemy so there is no harm by anything external to us all the harm is because of this enemy which is called lust which is sitting within us what is this lust krishna tells kamesha krodesha rajaguna samudbhavah when a living entity becomes forgetful of god comes in contact with the material nature then the tendency of loving god gets transformed into lust just like the milk is transformed into curds so now we think this lust is very nice let me satisfy my lust and this is the biggest mistake why mistake because krishna is telling here dushpurena analena cha dushpurena means it is never satisfied as we discussed previously it is like itching sensation of an eczema patient who is having wet sores on his body If you try to scratch it the sore worsens itching increases and ultimately it starts bleeding in a similar fashion the lust is never satisfied have we not experienced and lust does not mean only sex pleasure that is a grossest manifestation of lust lust means this also we have discussed atmendriya preeti vancha tare bari kaam any tendency to enjoy one senses directly independent of krishna's pleasure that is called lust even sexual pleasure is not lust if one is using sex life for producing krishna conscious children that also krishna will mention further dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamo asmi bhartarshaba krishna is not against sex life otherwise why there is grahast ashram but it should be ashram all the activities are for spiritual advancement when sex life is done for spiritual advancement right uh, spiritual soul is brought into this world then such sex life krishna does i am that sex life so sex life is authorized but if it is for spiritual advancement a spiritual child is brought into this world by chanting the mantras purification of consciousness it should be executed in proper time many regulations are there but If a person tries to enjoy sex pleasure just for personal gratification then that is called lust. If a person enjoys any of the senses for one's own enjoyment then that is called lust. Atmendriya preeti vancha. Even desire for name and fame prestige in society that is also subtle form of lust. Any kind of tendency of independent enjoyment is lust. And we think oh if I satisfy the demands demands of tongue skin genitals or my name fame i will be satisfied but have you not experienced we are never satisfied we want more sex sex with different partners with different genders with different species also it is never satisfied you eat you want to eat more different varieties of food in different locations never satisfied sleep you want to sleep more and more never satisfied you want to watch videos want to watch more and more never satisfied so it is like fire analena anala means fire it burns like fire the more you supply fuel the more it burns 
So thus a person is completely frustrated and perplexed. That is why uh, the World Health Organization is ranking United States of America as one of the most depressed nations of the world for last three four years. Why they have uh, so much GDP, so many nice technological advancement, most advanced defense mechanisms, nice warships, nice commandos, everything, and even unemployed person is having so much of money, nice education, state education, nice healthcare, everything is there. But why depression? And we have seen in our life also, lust never satisfies. Now you have 10 million rupees, you want 100 million. And why the most intelligent people are not able to understand? Because Krishna tells. Indriyani mano buddhir asya dhishthana mucyate etair vimohyatyesha jnanam avritya dehinam The senses, the mind and the intelligence are the sitting places of this lust which wields the real knowledge of the living entity and bewilders him. Why we are not able to understand because so as we analyze the situation, the strategic position of enemy before launching an attack, it is important to know where the enemy is sitting. So before we attempt to defeat lust, we need to know where the lust sits. So Krishna tells here to identify the enemy's location. And the enemy is sitting in senses, mind and intelligence also. So we are helpless. Because the lust is sitting on the intelligence, a person is not able to understand the simple concept. Thus Krishna has used the word here, Jnanam Avritya Dehinam. Jnanam Avritya means cover. It covers the knowledge, wields the knowledge. Jnana Vijnana Nashanam it is called. It destroys Jnana and Vijnana as Krishna mentions in the next shloka. Tasmatvam Indriyanyadav Niyamye Bharatarshabha Paapmanam Prajahihyenam Jnana Vijnana Nashanam Therefore, Varjuna, best of the Bharatas, in the very beginning curb this great symbol of sin, lust, by regulating the senses and slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. So it is called Jnana Vijnana Nashanam. Jnan means knowledge of soul different from the body, it is Nashanam. So if we engage in lusty activities, too much sex pleasure or any kind of independent pleasure of the senses, then we are bound to believe that I am this body. Jnan Nashanam. And Vijnan means specific knowledge of the soul. I am not the body is one level. Jnan specific knowledge means if I am not the body, then who am I? I am not the child of my parents, then who are my parents? If I am not belonging to this nation, to which country I belong? What is my real identity? So what is the real identity of the soul within this body? This external identity is false. We need to know. What is my relationship with God? How to engage in that relationship? This is called Vijnana, specific knowledge of the soul. So Jnana and Vijnana are lost. Jnana, Vijnana and Nashanam. How much ever we try to speculate, use our intelligence, we will not be able to understand this basic spiritual concept that I am not the body if we engage in lusty activities. Thus Krishna is telling, in the beginning itself, Tasmat Indriyani Adha Uchanakya Pandit says, fire, disease and enemy should be destroyed in the beginning itself. When they build up later, you cannot, they will kill you. So Krishna is telling, how to control lust, many people ask. In the beginning only training should be given. That is why Brahmachari, Brahmachari, Guru Kule Vasandanto Guru Hitam. Brahmachari should Danta, he should learn how to control the senses very nicely and work only for the satisfaction of Guru. His senses should be so regulated that, so this training of what we are discussing here, this complete training was given in the Guru Kul. You could be the son of king, but you do work as a menial a servant and you go out to beg alms and whatever you have raised you should not think it belongs to you you offer everything to guru guru or hitam you could have got many gold coins also give it to guru guru or hitam and you are so much dependent upon guru if guru does not call you for lunch you are supposed to skip the meal 
So nothing belongs to me, everything belongs to spiritual master. Nirmama, this training was given. So in the beginning, it is told in Bhagavatam also, Kaumar Acharit Pragyo Dharman Bhagavataniha. From five years of age, this knowledge should be given. Otherwise, later it is difficult to control. So Brahmachari learns this sense control. So it is very easy. They are very easily able to maintain nice grahastha and uh, many times they directly move to sannyas because senses are so perfectly controlled. They are trained to see every woman as mother and thus they are very easily able to control, destroy this enemy for lust in the very beginning itself. However, we should not lose hope that what to do now? Krishna consciousness is so powerful, this buddhi yoga what Krishna is recommending that even a late beginner can make one's life perfect by strictly following the rules and regulations under the guidance of spiritual master. So it does not matter, we could be late, but if we are sincere and serious, then we also can, every layman can also become a lover of God. But it is important to understand, the lust is sitting on the intelligence, lust is sitting on the mind, lust is sitting on the senses. So our mind and intelligence will misguide us. That is why I know I did this lusty activity previously, how much I suffered. Other people, they do this lust. Other people, they do this lusty activity, they are put to jail. And I will also lose my life or I'll be sentenced, but still a person does lusty activity. Because intelligence gets covered. Why we are not able to understand the simple logic that lust is like fire, it never is satisfied, never satiated. So, if I try to satisfy the lust, it will always keep on increasing. The demands of personal enjoyment always keep on increasing. So what we need to do is transform it back into love of God. So it is very difficult once love of God transforms into lust. But by this process of buddhi yoga, Krishna consciousness, it can be transformed back. It is possible. But one has to follow rules, regulations very strictly not depend upon one's mind and senses, depend upon Krishna's mind, Krishna's intelligence, intelligence of the Guru and the sages. Then our intelligence will be purified and we will be able to understand all these logics very nicely. Understand I am not the body, I am soul. Understand what is my actual constitutional position. Indriyani paranyahur indriye bhyav param manaha manasastu para buddhir Yo saha. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And the soul, he is even higher than the intelligence. Evam buddhev param buddhva sanstabhyatmana matmana jahi shatrum mahabaho Kama Rupam Durasadam Thus knowing oneself to be transcendental to material senses, mind and intelligence, one should control the lower self by the higher self and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. So Krishna has explained the internal hierarchy. Indriyarni Parannyahur Senses are superior to dull matter, you control matter using senses. Higher than senses is manaha, mind, with mind you control senses. Manasastu para buddhir, higher than mental energies, intelligence, with intelligence you control the senses. And higher than intelligence is mind, you choose, I should apply my intelligence in understanding Bhagavad Gita. You choose, I want to apply my intelligence in solving this puzzle. You are the controller of intelligence. So thus Krishna is telling because you are the supreme, by spiritual strength, you should try to control this lust, try to control your senses. By educating yourself in knowledge of spiritualizing the higher self, gaining spiritual strength, you should control your lower selves. Now, even though we may understand my senses are not in my control, we want to control senses on the level of senses. We want to control mind on the level of mind. By mental practices, we want to control. It is not possible, very difficult. You want to control the mechanical motion of wheel by holding the wheel. That is very foolish way of stopping the vehicle. By higher energy, you can control the lower energy. Turn off the ignition 
and then the wheel will stop fan will stop so this is the better way and the actual way recommended way of controlling the senses one has to understand that the spirit sits on the topmost chair of this internal hierarchy now the spirit is very weak so we have to empower the spirit and by spiritual strength we will be able to control the intelligence intelligence is next door enemy of spirit so intelligence becomes purified when we have spiritual strength with pure intelligence one should control the mind and with controlled mind one should control the senses in this way one can destroy the enemy of lust remove them from mind senses and intelligence so krishna has concluded this very important chapter karma yoga by spotting this enemy all the problems of this life are only because of this enemy called lust tendency of sense enjoyment independent of krishna and gross form of it is the sex pleasure so entire varnashrama system takes a person eventually from shudra to brahmana to ultimately sanyas so that this tendency is controlled so we should not think why will suffer in life if i don't enjoy you know anyway we are not enjoying this so called happiness which we have by satisfying our lust this very happiness is actually the enemy of all of us just like the happiness which a moth insect derives by seeing the flame fire that very happiness becomes a cause of death of the moth it jumps into fire loses its life similarly we are having all the problems only because of the so called flickering happiness which anyway never satisfies us the happiness that we want is love of god for this very scientifically professionally we follow spiritual life under the guidance of a pure devotee and then once the lust is transformed into love of god then we will understand why i was hankering for this thing all this so the conclusion of this chapter is arjuna is being recommended please do not leave work because uh, artificially you become sanyasi that is not recommended in mind the thoughts will always come and even if you think you are atmarati you are completely self satisfied still for the sake of guiding common masses because you are king you should work but how you should work without getting attached to the results of activity and mai karmani sarma sarmani all the work should be surrendered unto me the result should be surrendered unto me and mind should be intent on me should be thinking of me always in this way you please fight and then when arjuna tells krishna i may not be able to follow the instructions because something forces me to do wrong activities that is called lust so krishna tells arjuna yes control your senses in the very beginning and then by spiritual strength how do we get spiritual strength it is very simple yatha tarur mool nishechane na leaf and root always remember this shastrik example put water on the root leaf becomes nourished so if we serve krishna we get nourishment we become strong and then we'll be able to control lust and all the problems of life are the same so with this we finish the third chapter called karma yoga now we will begin another very wonderful chapter fourth chapter transcendental knowledge till then please keep on contemplating and try to apply practically these instructions in your life thank you for listening hari krishna हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे चैप्टर फोर ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाल आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एन आचार्य of the world wide hare krishna movement shri bhagavan vacha imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivasvan manave praha manur ikshvakave bravi the blessed lord said I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god Vivaswan 
and vivaswan instructed it to manu the father of mankind and manu in turn instructed it to ikshvaku evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu sakalene ha mahata yogo nashtah parantapa the supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way but in course of time the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost so the concept that we discussed in the first chapter in the beginning it is again reiterated here this was the shloka that we had discussed evam parampara praptam before we even begin to understand or hear any spiritual subject matter it is very important to understand this principle the medicine should be taken as per the instructions on the label so here bhagavad gita is describing how this knowledge should be received krishna explains it is not that arjuna for the first time i am giving you this knowledge imam vivasvate yogam this knowledge of yoga connection of individual soul to the supreme soul the science of yoga i had spoken to vivaswan the sun god controller the predominating deity of sun planet and vivaswan spoke to manu his son manu spoke to his son ikshvaku in this way in this succession the knowledge came down evam parampara praptam many times people ask us so can you please explain what is your interpretation of bhagavad gita so we explain no we do not explain our interpretation we explain the meaning as it is people are very fond of interpreting the vedas and thus there is so much of chaos and confusion people ask just see see this bhagavad gita this has got one meaning another bhagavad gita another meaning everybody has given his or her own interpretation E is equal to mc square. We have read in basic sciences. Now, if somebody gives interpretation, E means elephant, M means monkey, C means cat, then what is the use? Then you have spoiled the formula. You will not be able to arrive to any proper understanding. You please ask from the person who has given the formula, or in his succession, his disciple, his disciple. In this way, we can understand perfect meaning. E is energy, M is mass, C is velocity of light. and then you get perfect knowledge so actually how somebody can interpret you have to take it from the creator as it is the real meaning the moment you interpret it that means it is your understanding and what is the use of our understanding 7 billion people can have 7 billion interpretations so the correct meaning is understood from the creator from the original speaker the original speaker is lord krishna as we read in previous chapter Brahm Akshar Samudbhavam, the Vedas have got its origin in the supreme personality of Godhead. Brahm Akshar Samudbhavam, it is not created by any human being. So, from the Creator, or in Creator's disciplic succession chain of spiritual masters and disciples, this knowledge can be understood. So, before we understand this subject matter from anybody. we should kindly ask can you please explain what is your parampara in which succession do you belong unfortunately 99.9% of the versions of bhagavad gita that we have they are all spoilt interpretations of course we have many in the sanskrit language but that is not widely known now there are sanskrit commentaries right explanations by sridhar swami by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu balde vidya bhushan jeev goswami but unfortunately people are shri pad ramanuj acharya and in all these different bona fide explanations you will not find any contradiction the moment there is contradiction it means one of them is wrong so thus we should be careful otherwise 
we will be spending a lot of time instead of coming to right conclusion we may end up having a wrong understanding of god sa evayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratanah bhakto si me sakha cheti rahasyam ye tad uttamam that very ancient science of the relationship with the supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend therefore you can understand the transcendental mystery of this science so krishna gives here the qualification of understanding bhagavad gita krishna is not telling a karmi can understand or a gyani can understand or ashtang yogi can understand krishna is telling bhakto asi me sakha cheti you are my bhakta my devotee and my friend so rahasyam i am speaking to you this great secret because only a devotee can understand a lover of god who has got relationship can understand if you want to know about a person then we have to have relationship with that person so thus bhagavad gita is the science of god and the infinitesimal living entities who are part and parcels of god their relationship so a person has to have he must have a relationship then one can understand this mystery otherwise if there is no devotion if there is no relationship a person can become well versed in memorizing all the vedas he can argue philosophically but he will not be able to get the mystery of the secret अर्जुन उवाच अपरंभवतो जन्म परम जन्म विवस्वत कथमेतजानीया प्रोक्तवानी अर्जुन सेड द सन गॉड विवस्वानी सीनियर बाय बर्थ टू यू हाउ एम आई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन द बिगनिंग यू इंस्ट्रक्टेड दिस साइंस टू हिम so this is very interesting question krishna explains i spoke this to sun god now sun planet is very old so how old would be the predominating deity controller of sun so arjuna and krishna were contemporaries they were friends and also they were cousins and arjuna is telling how to understand that you spoke to sun god it is just like if any person to details now i am speaking to you this knowledge which i spoke to abraham lincoln or which i spoke to alexander so one may ask oh alexander came long ago and how come you were living that time same question arjuna is asking that we are contemporaries krishna param janma vivaspata vivaswan the sun god is very very old so how could you speak knowledge to him now krishna gives how is it possible that krishna has spoken this knowledge to sun god श्री भगवाच बहूनी मे व्यतीता जन्मा तव चाजुन तान्यहम वेद सर्वाणी नम वेथ पर ब्लेसिड लॉर्ड सेड मेनी मेनी बर्थ्स बोथ यू एंड आई हैव पास्ट आई कैन रिमेम्बर ऑल ऑफ देम but you cannot o subduer of the enemy this is the difference between jiva the infinitesimal spark small living entity all of us and god we keep on changing our bodies like dresses we have seen in the second chapter but as soon as we change the body we forget everything of the past life as we enter into a dream body we forget what is happening with this body situation of this body and when we come out of the dream we forget uh, what has happened to the dream in the dream if you wake up in the middle sometimes we do remember in a similar fashion with the change of bodies we keep on forgetting all our relationships so every life is compared to a dream dream it appears to be real we are talking to people who appear to be real but everything dissolves when we wake up similarly now we are talking to some people we may become very rich affluent or we may remain poor 
and not very well known but it does not matter because all the, this thing is going to vanish as soon as we leave this body thus this life is just like a dream so this body exists this temporary covering upon us but in effect it is just like a dream a reality which is temporary as soon as we give up body everything is forgotten in previous life we had parents children relatives friends enemies we have forgotten all of them we were criticized we were blasphemed we have forgotten all of it but krishna does not forget because he does not change the body as we have discussed dehi deha vibhedoyam neshvare vidyate kvachit there is no difference between the body and soul of krishna krishna retains the same body thus he does not forget so it is not that krishna was an ordinary human being as some people tell and uh, he was praised so much that people started believing he is god no here he is explaining the position he had perfect knowledge of spiritual life long long ago and he spoke that knowledge to vivaswan who is millions of years elder to arjuna so thus krishna now begins to reveal his personality who is krishna actually he has given some hints in the previous chapters now again very clearly he'll explain don't think i am an ordinary personality who is of the same age as you and taken birth along with you ajopi sannavyatma bhutanam ishvaro pi san prakritim swamadhishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the lord of all the sentient beings I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form So Krishna gives unique features of his personality The first word Krishna uses here is aja aja means I am unborn unborn takes birth this is explained about krishna in the prayers of queen kunti and in various places throughout the vedic literatures so people are confused why krishna appears then that krishna explains uh, in the next two verses some people tell krishna has appeared in order to relieve the burden of the miscreants others tell he appeared to fulfill the wishes of his parents vasudev and devki who wanted to have god as their child other they tell he was simply pleased with the yadu dynasty who were great devotees in order to glorify the family krishna appeared over there so like this various people give various reasons for krishna's appearance but the most important thing to understand is krishna does not take birth krishna is aja krishna is unborn and avyayatma another word which is important here is krishna's body does not perish so krishna is having body which is eternal there is no birth and there is no death bhutana amishvaro pi san bhutana means the living entities or anything which is there in the material world all the material ingredients and krishna is telling ishvara everybody is ishvara we are ishvara means controller we can control this body we can control few people around us but here krishna is telling i am the controller of bhuta naam of all the created beings and the matter existing in this world i am the lord of all matter and the conditioned living entities here in this world prakritim swam adishthaya sambhavami atma maya then how do we understand that krishna took birth we all know he appeared in a prison house of kansa and he appeared from the womb of devaki that is why krishna tells here we will see one who understands the nature of my birth and activities he will become liberated it is a great science we have studied the science of birth of common living entities like us male and female gametes fuse and emulsification happens embryo develops and then we know the sciences very nicely x chromosome y chromosome and so many things we have defined and this is how we take birth this is a science birth is a science 
Similarly, Krishna's birth is also great science. If we understand this science, it does not have much impact in our life. Anyway, male and female will be attracted to each other. Births will keep on happening. But if we understand the science of appearance of Krishna, there will be no more miserable birth for us. We will be liberated in our spiritual life. So this science is very important to be understood, and this science is explained in Shrimad Bhagavatam. Once we finish Bhagavad Gita, we should aspire to reach Shrimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita is A B C D of spiritual life. and bhagavatam is post graduate study so in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned how krishna took birth krishna appeared in the heart of vasudev from the heart of vasudev krishna got transferred to the heart of devaki from there krishna entered the womb of devaki and then he came out in his four handed form narayan form having conch shell club discs all the ornaments dress in his body very nice helmet with grown up hairs in complete beauty and opulence because krishna wanted to show them that uh, if he appeared in two handed form they would have thought oh another ordinary baby has appeared like she have appeared before you know krishna told i have come in this form because you prayed to me in this four handed form the see i am god i am having four hands and just to satisfy your desires i have appeared now and then dev ki request you please come in two handed form as an ordinary child so this is how krishna took birth it was not by any biological process but it was a spiritual process and we also have heard that krishna uh, also died how do we understand that the word used here is avyayatma so this is a drama just like we see on the theater drama happens and a person appears to be dead he is only acting he is lying still on the stage because it is a part of his or her role in a similar fashion krishna has created so many bodies krishna is a cause of maintenance of the bodies and krishna destroys also so many bodies so he can create and leave one more body what is the loss for krishna how is it difficult so krishna leaves one body which appears like the form of krishna in this world and people think oh krishna is dead no krishna is not dead he has left a form which appears exactly like his spiritual form to be foolish so krishna is very very kind as we will see krishna tells ye yathamam prapadyante as people surrender unto me as they approach me so do i reciprocate so some people who want to become atheists they do not want to believe in god krishna creates such a situation that they have firm belief no krishna is not god see he also died and those who want to understand the science of krishna then krishna reveals that science also so if you want to become atheist krishna will give us logic how to become atheist if you want to understand god again krishna will guide krishna is a loving father who simply satisfies whatever desires we have but the important point is which desire is beneficial for us that also we need to understand from krishna and if we desire that then we will be happy so krishna is ajaha krishna is avyayatma krishna is eternal just like ordinary yogis also sometimes they can just become visible and they become invisible so when an ordinary yogi can do that why krishna yogeshwara cannot do that so krishna does not take birth krishna appears thus we call appearance day of krishna or disappearance day we don't call birth and death now second line is also very important where krishna mentions prakritim swam adhishtaya so there are two segments in the existence purusha and prakriti purusha means the enjoyer prakriti means the enjoyed purusha means the energetic and prakriti means the energy energy is controlled by the enjoyer for his pleasure so krishna has got broadly speaking two categories of energies prakriti antarang prakriti internal potency and external potency so here krishna is telling prakritim swam adhishthaya although this material world is separated energy of krishna and krishna does not directly uh, see the events here he has appointed various demigods and the topmost controlling deity is durga of this material world where the living entities who want to compete with god who want to enjoy independent of god they are given residence here 
but other living entities who simply want to serve god in loving relationship for them there is another existence that is called sanatan dharma or vaikuntha dharma the kingdom of god and there krishna maintains them in their own internal potency how do we understand internal and external just like cow's blood is there that is internal energy of cow and same blood is transformed into milk and the milk comes out of cow so that milk is also energy of cow but it is separated now in a similar fashion everything is energy of krishna and when certain portion of energy is separated from krishna where krishna is not visible for the living entities who want to enjoy independently that is called external potency of krishna so all of us have taken these forms which are created by external potency durga but krishna is explaining although i appear in this world my appearance is not like ordinary living entities i do not take any form created by external potency but i exhibit myself in my internal potency my personal energy that is called prakritim swam atmamaya ya maya again means energy atmamaya means my internal energy i appear by my internal energy we appear in this world we are also spirit souls but we appear by external energy this uh, form is made of external energy and if this form we leave then we become invisible as spirit souls again we take another form but when krishna comes here krishna's form is not made up of matter krishna's form is made up of spirit there is no difference between krishna and krishna's form it is complete spirit that is what krishna explains here because i do not take any material bodies there is no question of birth and death for me my form is completely made up of spirit now when we ask why krishna appears krishna is the supreme controller he is controlling everyone what is the need of god to appear in this world that krishna answers now yada yada hi dharmasya ग्लानिर्भवति भारता अभ्युत्थानम धर्मस्य तदात्मानम सृजाम्यहम व्हेनेवर एंड वेरेवर देयर इज अ डिक्लाइन इन रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस ओ डिसेंडेंट ऑफ भरत एंड अ प्रीडोमिनेंट राइज ऑफ इ रिलीजन एट दैट टाइम आई डिसेंड माय सेल्फ परित्राणाय साधूना विनाशाय च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापनार्थाय संभवामि युगे युगे इन ऑर्डर टू डिलीवर द पायस एंड टू एनाइलेट द मिसक्रिएंट्स एज वेल एज टू रीएस्टैब्लिश द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रिलीजन आई एडवेंट माय सेल्फ मिलेनियम after millennium so krishna is explaining the reason for his appearance krishna explains dharma sansthapanarthaye sambhavami yuge yuge yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata whenever there is decline in the religious practice in the dharma i advent myself to reestablish the principles of dharma so people want to understand everything from bhagavad gita they want to understand how to increase productivity they want to understand management skills some people understand chemistry and what not from bhagavad gita but they don't want to understand from bhagavad gita the reason why krishna spoke this gita and krishna spoke this gita to explain to us dharma what is this dharma dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam the scientific codes given to us so that we can come back revive our spiritual position we can come back to spiritual status that is called dharma now we are hallucinating that i am the body and then we are getting carried away by the desires of the body which are not my desires if i don't fulfill i am frustrated if i fulfill still there is frustration because i am different from the body there is no satisfaction so unless person realizes i am not the body person will keep on laughing crying aspiring in this hallucination so to give this most important knowledge as a person in dream is convinced he is the body of dream similarly we are convinced that we are the body but krishna explains you are not the body why you are taking birth and dying understand this 
and follow this dharma in your life so whenever there is decline in such religious practice krishna comes here and unfortunately many people in our country they take advantage of the simplicity of the people and the piety of the people people here they have natural tendency of hearing about god believing in god so every other person has started claiming i am also incarnation i am incarnation i am that god i am krishna i have come again as they say india is a factory of producing gods <laughs> in factory they produce in bulk so what is produced in bulk in india so we may be lagging behind in uh, electronics and other gadgets but we don't lag behind in most important produce and that is god we produce god only directly so this is a great cheating every other person is claiming i am god so we have to understand the scriptures unfortunately because there is no knowledge of the scriptures so people believe also so in order to understand who is god we should go to the scriptures scriptures define who is god when god is going to appear lord has got a scheduled time to appear he does not appear he can appear just like that but he still follows the vedic injunctions he is free to come but still he has a fixed time to come and when krishna would appear that is already described krishna appears in the dwapar yuga of 27th mahayuga of the 7th manu there are 14 manus in one kalpa one day of brahma in this way very precise date is given at this time krishna is going to appear similarly lord buddha is another incarnation and if you read shrimad bhagavatam which was written 5000 years ago shrimad bhagavatam is predicting buddha naam nanjana suto ki kateshu bhavishyati a person by the buddha will appear in this uh, gaya province anjana suta his mother's name will be anjana and like this very beautiful description is there muhyanti sura dvisham he will uh, bewilder the atheistic people from the path of vedas because people were killing animals viciously and they were quoting vedic authority in vedas that is so vedas don't recommend to kill animals but people misunderstood it so that is why the only solution was to make them atheist disbeliever of veda so that they can stop this animal killing thus krishna had to come first he comes to establish the vedas and then he comes to again remove vedic authority so all these are various wonderful activities of krishna and then there is prediction of chatanya mahaprabhu पौर्णमासम फागुन से फागुनी रक्ष योगता एग्जैक्ट डेट इज ऑल्सो मेन्शन ऑन दिस डे ऑफ द मंथ इन दिस सीजन लॉर्ड चैतन्य विल अपियर मायापुरे नवद्वीपे स्वर्ण नदी तीरम आस्थाया ही विल अपियर इन अ प्लेस विच इज मायापुर नवद्वीप एंड ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द रिवर गैंजेस शचि गर्भे पुरंदरात हिज मदर्स नेम विल बी शचि father's name will be purandar mishra so mother's name is mentioned father's name is mentioned on the bank of ganges navadweep on this day of this month everything is very beautifully mentioned bhakti yoga pradanaya lokas anugrahaya cha out of great mercy for people he will spread bhakti yoga sanyas roopa masthaya krishna chaitanya namadhrik he will take sanyas and after sanyas his name would be krishna chaitanya how beautifully in great detail it is mentioned in the vedas this is called vedic knowledge perfect explanation of past and perfect prediction of future also so god's appearance father's name of god mother's name of god the place of appearance activities everything is very beautifully and exactly defined in the vedas so if anybody tells i am god we should ask vedic reference otherwise we cannot believe on anybody and apart from this they have some special symbols on the soles of their feet so there are uh, very unique signs like fish flag and uh, conch like this so many symbols are there on the feet of krishna or the incarnations so if anybody claims i am incarnation you please check his soles are there some special signs all these nice vedic descriptions are there and then they should perform some extraordinary activity Krishna lifted mountain Govardhan Krishna danced on the hood of very huge snake which was having many many hoods so can you dance on the hood of a simple python no and you are claiming that you are god can you lift even a small stone 
of 50 kgs and krishna lifted such a big mountain like this so many extraordinary activities krishna did lord ramchandra did what have you done so we should not get carried away by such claim of incarnations we should understand from the vedas what are the incarnations what is their father's name mother's name then there will be no confusion and no cheating and unfortunately these so called incarnations they give the teachings which are contradictory to the instructions in bhagavad gita they take advantage because nobody reads gita now let me speak anything so krishna does not tell i spoke some knowledge to vivaswan now it is revised edited and enlarged edition i am speaking to you no knowledge is always perfect same knowledge krishna tells sa evayam maya te adhya now i am going to speak to you because the original knowledge got lost so interpretations came up even during arjuna's time bhagavad gita was present but wrong interpretations came up so krishna wanted to reestablish so that is why krishna is telling today original meaning i am going to establish again by speaking it to you so we should not get cheated we should read the vedas bhagavad gita then we will understand who is god who is incarnation जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं यो वेति तत्व त्यक्वादेहम पुनर्जन्म नैति मेति सोर्जुन दिस इज वॉट वी डिस्कस कृष्ण एक्सप्लेन्स वन हु नोज अ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेचर ऑफ माय अपीयरेंस एंड एक्टिविटीज डज नॉट अपॉन लिविंग द बॉडी टेक इज बर्थ अगेन इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड but attains my eternal abode o arjuna so divya means transcendental as we discussed krishna does not come by material biological process but he appears by transcendental mechanism which means divya janm karm chame divyam our activities are strictly controlled by rajoguna satvaguna tamaguna there are three energies which control everything whatever is happening in this material world but krishna is not controlled by the three energies krishna is divya means beyond the three energies completely spiritual so krishna's activities are not controlled by nature krishna's activities are completely conducted in his own energy spiritual energy janma and karma both एवं योवेति तत्वता इफ अ पर्सन साइंटिफिकली तत्वता इन ट्रुथ इज एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड देन त्यक्वा देहम आफ्टर लिविंग दिस बॉडी पुनर्जन्म नायति देर इज नो मोर रिपीटेड बर्थ ओ सो डज इट मीन इट इज सुसाइडल टू अंडरस्टैंड द साइंस ऑफ कृष्णा इज बर्थ एंड एक्टिविटीज आई विल नॉट एग्जिस्ट एंजॉय एनी मोर नो कृष्णा इज टेलिंग त्यक्वा जन्म त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नायति ही डज नॉट टेक एनी मोर बर्थ बट ma meti he comes to me comes to live with me so the spirit soul as long as it is present in this body it develops a material form upon itself just like when we go to some other planet which is not favorable for our life sustenance then we take up a space suit in a similar fashion the living entity which is completely spiritual if it is not in the spiritual atmosphere vaikuntha sanatan dham if it is there in the material world it takes up this external dress but when it is established in the spiritual place where krishna lives then it manifests into a spiritual form without any external dress so krishna tells mam eti no don't think you will die all your senses will be there you can see you can talk you can walk you can laugh but all these activities will be conducted in your spiritual body which you develop when mam eti when you come to me so next question can be how we can understand or oh, let me understand then i have studied so much of science let me understand the divya science transcendental science also so that i can stop this repeated birth and death enjoy my permanent life with krishna so how we can do that krishna explains gives a hint vitaraga bhaya krodha manmaya mam upashrita बहवो ज्ञान तपसा ऊता भाव मीन्स नेचर स्वभाव मीन्स मनसोन नेचर मद भाव मीन्स कृष्णाज नेचर 
so one attains krishna's nature krishna's body is sachidananda full of all knowledge full of eternity there is no death and full of bliss we also attain a body which is eternal having complete knowledge and bliss and madbhava means krishna's spiritual abode which is of the same nature as that of krishna which is eternal which is not destroyed full of knowledge and bliss so madbhava magata means we attain the spiritual nature we attain body of krishna's nature and madbhavam also means bhava means emotional love that is a perfection of spiritual life so how one can attain krishna's abode or love for krishna it is one and the same thing only those people who develop this very strong love for krishna they transfer themselves to the abode of krishna so how this platform is attained krishna's planet or love for krishna vitaraga bhaya krodha when has to become free from rag bhay and krodha rag means attachment so we are very much attached to this material world and in this attachment as a child if he is very much attached to play sports or games he will not be interested in studies if he is very much interested in virtual reality he might take less interest in reality in a similar fashion if we are very much attached to this material world it is not possible for us to take interest in spiritual life so one has to become free from the material attachment rag so some people are there who are disgusted with material life after so many attempts to enjoy they understand there is only frustration in that what we get there is no satisfaction even though i am perfectly successful person as per the definition of this world but that success does not satisfy me then they become fearful of this material existence and then they don't want to continue they want moksha moksha means they want to merge into the spiritual energy of krishna so one has to become free from this fear also if a person has to go to krishna so if you want to merge into the energy of krishna or krishna's body krishna can appear can accept that and okay you come and merge as a small spark in the spiritual energy but that position will not satisfy us because we are part and parcel of krishna children of krishna we have the same nature as that of krishna krishna has given us senses because we have tendency of enjoying our senses but the problem is we are enjoying in this material world example in the vedas given us if a person is sick now if you tell a sick person uh, to eat food he will vomit he has no taste for food he cannot digest so and if you tell let us go and play football he cannot play he cannot even walk he is always lying in the bed so to a sick man if you tell him if you become fit then we will run around in the field we'll play we'll do sporting and we will eat so many nice things for him uh, running around means miserable activity he cannot do that eating means very bitter he feels like puking out so it is no 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 then i don't want to become fit i have to eat no eating in sickness is miserable but eating in a healthy life is very desirable similarly existence is not bad but existence in material world is full of frustration dissatisfaction and anxieties but some people who are not having knowledge of spiritual abode kingdom of god they think this material world is all in all everywhere there is birth and death just like if a person is born in hiroshima nagasaki where there is so much of uh, nuclear radiation every person would be born crippled and some people who are born diseased like the uh, most famous scientist of our times he attempted many suicides because of some disease which he acquired if a person thinks oh birth here means disease i don't want to live don't want to no you are born in a wrong place so we should not understand every planet has got same life as we have on this planet there are many planets vedas describe where living standard is much better than that of earth planet and there are planets where life itself is eternal where there is no problem at all so we should not desire simply merging into jyoti brahma jyoti or moksha spiritual life is beyond moksha that is why it is told bhakti moksha laghut krit moksha means simply coming out of jail freedom but unless a person goes and meets with his family and starts positive life then a person may feel oh in jail at least i had few friends let me go back again to the jail 
So thus, moksha will not satisfy us. Bhakti, loving service of Krishna, moksha laghut krit. It makes moksha insignificant. Mukti, mukuli tanjalir sevate asman. So, uh, for the devotees, mukti, it's standing with folded hands. Please accept me in your service. But bhakta devotee is already liberated. He is not at all affected by any energy's disturbance of this material world. So mukti is always ready with folded hands to. Uh, it is praying to devotee please accept me in your service but devotee does not uh, bother he is already liberated so one should be free from material attachment one should be free from existence of personality and one should be free from krodha anger also some people get completely bewildered by different philosophies what is right this philosophy is correct that philosophy is correct this philosophy tells world is coming from a person this philosophy is telling world is coming from energy this philosophy is telling x y z and they get so totally confused they tell nobody knows anything and everything is zero everything is void there is no purpose there is no controller and such people either they become voidist or these people they take to intoxicants and they become very tamasic so one should avoid all these things one should avoid attachment to material world one should avoid fear of spiritual life one should avoid anger resulting from confusion in understanding what is reality of life when a person is free from rag bhaya krodha attachment fear and anger then a person can understand knowledge bahavo gyan tapasa puta mad bhava magata so how a person can become free from these things man maya ma mupashritaha by taking shelter of krishna man maya man maya means mat maya mat means me maya means full of if something is swarna maya means it is covered in gold mat maya means a person is completely absorbed in krishna so when a person is completely absorbed in krishna and ma mupashritaha when one takes shelter of krishna bahavo gyan tapasa puta then one becomes purified by virtue of gyan and tapasa knowledge and austerity so knowledge is very important when a person has knowledge what is the aim of this life then a person automatically takes up all the discomforts which are called tapaha tapasya human life is meant for tapasya the scriptures mention voluntarily acceptance of discomforts we need to have such tapasya for any material achievement also voluntarily accepting of discomfort is very important so scientific discomforts have to be taken for advancement in the knowledge of spiritual life so when people have spiritual knowledge and they do tapasya when they are completely absorbed in krishna and they take shelter of krishna then they become free from राग भया एंड क्रोधा एंड देन दे आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द साइंस ऑफ बर्थ एंड एक्टिविटीज ऑफ कृष्णा एंड दे आर एबल टू गो टू कृष्णा ये यथा माम प्रपद्यंते भजाम्य हम मम वर्तमानुवर्तन्ते मनुष्या पार्थ सर्वशः ऑल ऑफ देम एज दे सरेंडर अन टू मी आई रिवॉर्ड अकॉर्डिंगली एवरी वन फॉलोज माय पाथ इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट्स ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा एवरीबडी हैज टू डू प्रपद्यंते सरेंडर टू कृष्णा but in which way a person is surrendering that defines the reciprocation of krishna and the result that the living entity is going to attain there are some people who directly surrender to krishna they are called spiritualists and some people indirectly surrender to krishna they are called materialist what is the meaning of this direct and indirect surrender just like most of us we are law abiding citizens we directly follow the instructions rules and regulations of government those people who disobey they are put into jail in jail also they have to surrender to government only but such surrender is not very pleasant and it restricts their enjoyment and freedom 
So everyone has to surrender to God. If we don't follow the laws of Lord very nicely, then we are given birth in this material world, and then birth, death, old age, disease, hard work, anxiety, lamentation, all these things follow us, and our life becomes very very miserable. So in jail also there are some pleasures. In jail also people play some sports. They play cricket. They play badminton. They get sometimes some newspapers. Sometimes there is feast also in jail. And if a person thinks, oh, this life is very nice, then he's foolish. He does not know what does he deserve. In a similar fashion, if somebody is satisfied with whatever little happiness he gets in this world full of miseries, that is not intelligence. But still, ye ya thamam prapadyante. As a person, if a person wants to remain in material world, I guide him. Okay, you remain in material world. And if a person wants to advance in spiritual life, then again I guide. But everyone, mam vartamanu vartante. Everyone follows my path. Everyone follows the dictates of Krishna, and everybody is approaching Krishna only. Materialist does not know that I want Krishna, and the spiritualist know what I want is actually Krishna in my life. Now among the spiritualists also there are three categories. There are jnanis, yogis, and bhaktas. So they are attracted to different aspects of the absolute truth. Vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj jnanam advayam. They are all called tatva vidha, the knowers of absolute truth. They are not attracted by the false presentation of material world. They are attracted towards truth. But the truth is understood in three phases. Which are these three phases? They are called Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. There is no difference at all. It is Advaya Gyan. It is one and the same thing, Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. But it depends upon the perspective, the outlook of the transcendentalist. The example given in the shastras is that of mountain. If we see mountain from a distance, it appears hazy like a cloud. We are seeing mountain only, and if you ask what is mountain like, you will tell oh, it is just like a cloud. This is called Brahm aspect of Krishna. Krishna is spread everywhere in the form of his energy, just like the sun is spread everywhere in the form of sunlight. But if a person thinks sun means only light, that is ignorance. Sun means sun globe, and the light which is emanating, it is also part of sun, but still sun planet is different. One cannot tell sun means only sunlight. Sunlight is also sun, but sun is not just sunlight. In a similar fashion, the cloud-like appearance of mountain, he is seeing mountain only, but that is not the complete vision of the mountain. Then, the yogis they want to realize the personality of Godhead's form, which is present in all the hearts. They want to realize. The presence of God within the heart. Just like we can uh, realize the presence of sun, if we go out, if we are just looking from the window, we might see only sunlight. If we little go out, we might see sun in the sky. And uh, although sun has not come to our place, but still we can see sun from our place. In a similar fashion, although the God is situated far, far uh, away in His own abode, still God. Is reflected. He is present in all of our hearts in this material world. So when a person is able to realize the presence of God in the heart, it is like approaching closer to the mountain. A person can see clear boundary of the mountains, and uh, a person can see some trees over there. And when a person advances further, then he is able to see. Oh, there are so many species. There is so much life here. There are animals. There are human beings. There are societies. There are huts, houses. And in this way, he realizes the exact understanding of the mountain. So, all the three cases, the description of mountain is correct. Mountain is also like a cloud from a distance. Mountain is having some clear boundary, uh, and mountain is also having so many living entities. All these descriptions are correct. In a similar fashion, God is present in our heart. That is correct. God is present everywhere as in energy. That is correct, but the perfect understanding of God is that this God who is reflected in our hearts and who is present everywhere, these aspects of God are dependent upon His personality aspect, personal aspect, and that is called Bhagwan. 
person who is full of six opulences. So if a person wants to get merged into the Jyoti of Krishna, Krishna will guide accordingly. Tam tathay bhajam meham. If a person wants to realize the presence of Krishna within the heart, wants to merge into the body of Krishna, Krishna will sanction that also. And if somebody wants to become a devotee, engage in personal loving relationship with Krishna, Krishna will guide him accordingly. Whatever we desire, Krishna reciprocates. But we need to know what is best desire for us. That Krishna has revealed in the past and Krishna will even more directly and clearly explain as the chapters progress. Kaṅśata karmanaṁ siddhim yajanta iha devatāha kshipram himānuṣe loke siddhir bhavati karma jā Men in this world desire success in fruitive activities and therefore they worship the demigods. Quickly of course men get results from the fruitive work in this world. So people want immediate solution. I am sick, please put a wet towel on my head. You may get immediate relief. And if you take medicine, take the pain of approaching a doctor, then you will get permanent relief. But people don't want to follow the permanent solution. So thus they approach Devatas. And Krishna is telling here, Shipram Himanushe Loke Siddhir. They get immediate result if you worship any Devi Devata here, demigods, goddesses, you get quick results. So thus people desist following Krishna consciousness because the results, permanent results may take more time and they want immediate results. Thus Krishna is telling mainly people, they approach demigods here for quick fulfillment of their desires. Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam Guna karma vibhag shaha Tasya kartaram apimam Vidhi akartaram avyayam According to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them, the four divisions of human society were created by me. And although I am the creator of the system, you should know that I am yet the non doer being unchangeable. Democracy was conceived by somebody, communism was conceived by somebody, capitalism was conceived by somebody. Who has conceived this Varnashrama? Chatur Varnyam. Who has conceived Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra? Why these divisions are there in the society? One may ask. And uh, various ideologies, various yoga systems, they have their origins in some sages or the incarnations of Lord. Lord Kapila explained the system of Sankhya Yoga. Later, another imposter Kapila propounded similar philosophy. Then Yoga Sutras are given by Patanjali. There is Karma Mimansa by Gemini. There is uh, Vedanta philosophy by Vedavyas. There are various Nyaya logic uh, teachers also. And they are led by Kanad and Gautam. But who has created this philosophy, this way of living of Varnashrama system, which is practiced by so many people and the remnants of that perverted form of that in the form of caste system is still prevalent today. Who has created this system? Why nobody is claiming that I have created? Why in history we don't find anything? Yes, we will not find because it is coming from God, from the beginning of creation. Chatur Varnyam Maya Srishtam. So what is the basis? The basis, the aim is understanding the purpose of this existence. The purpose is Asatoma Satgamaya, Tamsoma Jyotirgamaya. Satvagun, Rajagun and Tamagun. These three energies as we discuss control all of us. Those living entities who are predominantly in Tamoguna, mode of ignorance, are called Shudras. Those who are having mix of Rajoguna and Tamoguna, they are called Vaishya or productive class. Shudra means working class. Then those who are having predominantly mode of passion, 
Rajoguna they are called Kshatriyas the warrior or administrative class and those who are in Satvaguna they are called Brahmanas the priestly class or the educators so everybody is encouraged to become brahmana because brahma janati iti brahmana spiritual realization is the aim of life and unless a person becomes brahmana he becomes very satvik there is no question of coming to spiritual platform and there is no question of understanding god but it takes a long time usually so over many many lifetimes when a person follows the rules and regulations nicely gradually from shudra they can uh, eventually get the body of a brahmana if somebody serious they can execute in the same life also and they are encouraged to do so but may not be easy so this caste system what we see today this is not the varnashrama system as we have discussed before also krishna has mentioned clearly gun karma vibhagashah as per the qualities and as per actions if anybody now also we see in society divisions are there divisions are required somebody's engineer doctor somebody is a defense personnel bases their qualification and their actions similarly if a person is having qualifications of mind control sense control always trustful always clean very forgiving having great knowledge of the vedas such a person is called brahmana if a person is having great chivalrous skills administrative skills then such a person is called a kshatriya some people who have got uh, the tendency to produce food grains and do business productive class make money they are called vaishyas some people who are simply satisfied doing the job they are called shudras so divisions are basis qualities and actions so it is unfortunate perverted system what we see today it was never basis hereditary caste it was basis guna and karma qualities and actions and as per these varnas they are supposed to follow the ashramas the shudra does not have much qualification so for him only grahastha ashram is recommended vaishya is more qualified for him brahmacharya ashram is also required vaishya should go to schools and take education shudras are not interested in taking education and if at all they take they may misuse the education thus schools are not meant for shudras just like now it is happening people are shudras and they take education they commit big big blunders and scams and the whole humanity suffers so if a shudra is given education disaster he will create big scams and all these things will happen so shudra just uh, they are allowed to have grahastha ashram no education vaishya uh, business class mercantile community they go to schools gurukul and then they are allowed to go till grahastha ashram kshatriya they are allowed to go and recommended to go till vanaprastha ashram and only brahmana is allowed to take sanyas perfect renunciation detachment from material world others even though they get little dissatisfied with material world renunciation is not allowed because the nature of the body will not allow them to continue like that so thus it is a very very scientific system for gradual promotion to that of gross ignorance to platform of complete knowledge and eventually developing love for god namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spriha iti mam yo bhijanati karma bhir na sabadhyate there is no work that affects me nor do i aspire for the fruits of action one who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruitive reactions of work so one should not fall for some criticism of krishna that krishna did so much of violence uh, as some people some philosophies they tell that krishna yes he was a good man we will worship him once he becomes purified now krishna is suffering for his misdeeds in hell once he comes out then we will worship him again so he was made to suffer this punishment because he was the cause of this great battle of kurukshetra so these are ignorant people we have to understand here krishna declares namam karmani limpanti there is no work that affects me nor do i aspire for the fruits of the activities and one who knows that krishna is not at all affected by any activities he also does not get affected by activities he becomes liberated 
इति माम यो भी जानाति कर्म भिर न सब अध्यते ही इज ऑल्सो नॉट बाउंड बाय एनी एक्शन एंड कर्म ही इज लिबरेटेड एनी बडी यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड कृष्ण इज लिबरेटेड ही ऑल्सो विल बिकम लिबरेटेड कर्म पूर्वरपी मुक्षु कुरु कर्म तस्मा पूर्व पूर्वतर कृत ऑल द लिबरेटेड सोल्स इन एंशियंट टाइम्स एक्टेड विद दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड सो अटेन लिबरेशन देर फोर एज द एंशियंट्स यू शुड परफॉर्म योर ड्यूटी इन दिस डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस किम कर्म किम कर्मेति कवियोप्यत्र मोहिता तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्ष्यामी यज ज्ञावा मोक्ष से शुभात इवन द इंटेलिजेंट आर बिवल्डर्ड इन डिटमाइनिंग व्हाट इज एक्शन एंड व्हाट इज इन एक्शन नाउ आई शैल एक्सप्लेन टू यू व्हाट एक्शन इज नोइंग व्हिच यू शैल बी लिबरेटेड फ्रॉम ऑल सिंस कर्मणो हि बोधव्य बोधव्य विकर्मण अकर्मण बोधव्य गहना कर्मणो गति द इंट्रिकसीज ऑफ एक्शन आर वेरी हार्ड टू अंडरस्टैंड देर फोर वन शुड नो प्रॉपरली वॉट एक्शन इज वॉट फबिड इन एक्शन इज एंड वॉट इन एक्शन इज सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कृष्ण इज एक्सप्लेनिंग कर्मणो ही अपि बोधव्यम बोधव्यम च विकर्मण देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ एक्शन कर्मा मीन्स एक्टिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्क्रिप्चुरल इंजंक्शन विकर्मा मीन्स ब्रेकिंग द स्क्रिप्चुरल इंजंक्शन एक्टिंग विम्जिकली जस्ट लाइक नाउ गवर्नमेंट हैज सो मेनी रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन इफ यू ब्रेक दम दैट इज कॉल्ड सिन क्राइम दैट टेक्निकली एज पर वेदिक नॉलेज इज कॉल्ड विकर्मा and then there is third category of action which is called akarma akarma means activity on spiritual platform which does not even the person is acting but it will not result in material reaction it will bring spiritual results karmanya karma yav pashyed akarmani cha karmayah sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta kritsna karma krit So unfortunately, people do not know this. Krishna is telling it is very complex to understand. Gahana karma no gati hi. What is karma? What is akarma? People do not know that uh, if somebody jumps the speed limit, he will be fine for it. But it is his duty to know what is the speed limit on this road. In a similar fashion, there are various laws because we do not know. We break the laws and we suffer. breaking the laws of nature is the only cause of our all our sufferings so krishna tells it is very important to know what is karma what is vikarma and most important it is to understand what is akarma akarma means inaction and here very beautiful shloka this is krishna mentions one who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged in all sorts of activities so krishna explains who is the person who is actually liberated one who can see in action in action so the materialist may be performing so many activities but a wise person a transcendentalist understands it is actually inaction inaction means this activity is not going to have any result if a person works very hard to make a sand castle that is waste of time because that castle is not going to remain when strong wave will come that will be washed away and all that effort is null and void finished in a similar fashion everybody is working very hard taking great stress tension anxiety and as soon as they leave the body their name fame education family members everybody is gone so all those activities so much hard work for caring for the family members seeing that they are always satisfied always happy it is useless waste of time if we do not take them to spiritual emancipation because they will again suffer they will die in the next life they will suffer 
so you worked so hard to take care, take care of few people your near and dear ones and yourself we will also suffer if we come again in this material world our families will suffer name fame education everything is gone so thus it is called inaction a spiritualist sees no worth in material activities performed for temporary sense enjoyment is it not useless waste of time because of lack of knowledge of this eternal aspect of ourselves we are engaged in this inaction so krishna tells we have to see inaction in action people are very very active one should see just like monkeys are very active jumping from one tree to another dogs are active scavenging from this dustbin to another no worthy activity and a devotee a spiritualist also can be doing activity and his activities also are not to be seen any activity they are also called inaction why because they don't produce any material reaction so it is as good as not acting at all because a devotee does all the activities only under direction of krishna his activity is on spiritual platform conducted by spiritual energy although devotee may also be doing a business earning money just like arjuna is also acting like a warrior of rajaguna mode of passion fighting so that he can rule the kingdom but arjuna is not conducted by material energy but directly by krishna's instruction spiritual energy so thus although arjuna is doing activity apparently in the mode of passion killing fighting wars but actually he will not get any reaction of the mode of passion so thus this is called seeing inaction in action at the same time a wise man also sees action in inaction sometimes a materialist does not act just like arjuna did not want to act did not want to fight but there is action in this inaction what is action as krishna explained inaction is sin by not doing your activity you are doing breach of the laws of nature and you are creating material punishment for yourself thus because you are creating a material reaction suffering inactivity is also considered activity because it is producing material result and sometimes a devotee can also be inactive devotee can be simply chanting entire day he can be simply worshiping the deity or meditating upon the form of krishna apparently he is not doing anything but he is absorbed in samadhi krishna service so even though devotee is not acting one should see that this is real activity because he is making spiritual advancement simply sitting and observing the form of krishna in the temple or within the heart thinking about krishna reading bhagavad gita contemplating upon krishna's forms activities or simply chanting and hearing his names 24 hours a day some devotees do that and one can tell oh he is inactive sitting entire day doing nothing no he is doing real activity because he is advancing he is creating his spiritual life so this is the vision action in inaction and seeing inaction in action one who sees like this he is a wise man so one should learn to see in this way यसे सर्वे समारंभा काम संकल्प वर्जिता ज्ञानाग्निदग्ध कर्माण तम आहु पंडित बुधा सो कृष्ण गिव्स फर्दर डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ वन हु इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल द एक्शन एंड रिएक्शन ऑफ दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड लिबरेटेड पर्सनैलिटी वन इज अंडरस्टूड टू बी इन फुल नॉलेज हु इज एवरी एक्ट इज डिवाइड ऑफ डिजायर फॉर सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन He is said by sages to be a worker whose fruitive action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. He does not do any activity for sense gratification, kama sankalp varjita. He does all the activities only for the pleasure of Krishna's senses. We do all activities for our sense enjoyment. So thus we are conditioned living entities. Liberated means he will only desire Krishna's enjoyment, kama sankalp varjita. त्यक्वा कर्म फलासंगम नित्यतृप्तो निराश्रय कर्मण्यभि प्रवृत्तोपि नैव किंचित करोति सह अबैंडनिंग ऑल अटैचमेंट टू द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ हिज एक्टिविटीज एवर सैटिस्फाइड एंड इंडिपेंडेंट ही परफॉर्म्स नो फ्रूटिव एक्शन ऑल दो एंगेज्ड इन ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ अंडरटेकिंग्स 
karma phala sangam again krishna is repeating many times over and over karma phal asangam man should not be attached to the results of one's activities because they should be offered in sacrifice for the pleasure of krishna we are very much attached we just are result oriented we want to enjoy the result this is wrong this is not the right activity described by krishna one should be detached from the results to offer it to krishna nitya tripta always satisfied we are taught to always remain dissatisfied we think when we are dissatisfied then we will make material advancement and that is something very good that is in action krishna described in previous verse so one should be nitya tripta one should always be satisfied in all circumstances this is the art that we have to learn and nirashraya one should be completely independent so in vedic culture anybody who takes education they they were nirashraya they were not taking shelter of anybody else for maintenance only those people who were not going to schools they would undertake jobs so that is why it is told today's education system it is following the footsteps of dogs a dog if it is not having a master its life is very miserable people throw stones anybody just chases it for no reason and he does not get food although all the species get food dog's destiny is so that unless he gets a master it is very difficult it will always cry that is why they howl in the night because they are very hungry any time you give food to the street dog they are always eager to take it so unless they have master dog's life is very miserable similarly today's education system makes us like dogs unfortunately that is what the vedas are telling so after uh, clearing all the big examinations if a person does not get job then their life is useless all education is useless but vedic education means anybody who has passed out from vedic school they will never take up jobs the first class pass outs are brahmanas brahmana means patan patan yajan yajan he is so much nitya tripta so much satisfied so much dependent on god so much senses are controlled that he does not want to take any money even for tomorrow he just needs that day's maintenance and uh, then kshatriyas they are also not taking up any jobs brahmana will simply educate free of cost and whatever arms the students will bring he will be satisfied with that and if there is excess he will give charity he does not take any money for education so he is not doing any job kshatri also does not do any job they give protection administration and they collect taxes vaishyas do not do any jobs they will cultivate their own field whatever they require they will produce in the field they are also independent only shudras they do jobs they are dependent on other living entities so education means ya vidya sa vimuktaye that which liberates you that is education what is this education that you are very eager to take up jobs human life is meant for liberation always remaining satisfied becoming independent these are the features of transcendentalists nirashiryat chittatma tyakta sarva parigrahah shariram kevalam karma kurvan apnoti kilbisham such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life thus working he is not affected by sinful reactions so very important word used here is shariram kevalam karma nirashir he does not want to enjoy the results of activities and he is uh, having perfect control of chittatma mind and senses and shariram kevalam karma he lives works only to keep the body and soul together shariram kevalam karma and actually if we go for even gross material enjoyment any more than keeping body and soul together it only results in misery the example given is that of salt salt is required a bit of it a pinch of it to make the meal tasty now if somebody applies logic 
Oh, if a pinch of salt makes the dish so tasty, let me put entire jar of salt into it and the dish will become much, much more tastier. That is foolishness. That is not logic. So people think, oh, I have uh, just smoked one cigarette. Let me smoke some more and I'll be happy. I drank just a peg. Let me have little more. I'll be more happy. I've had little sex. If I have unlimited sex, I'll be unlimitedly happy. This is as foolish as thinking. If a pinch of salt makes food so tasty, let me put entire jar of salt. So sense gratification, any more than a pinch of it, which is required for keeping body and soul together, it brings only misery in one's life. It brings addiction to our life. The thirst for sense enjoyment always keeps on increasing as we have discussed and the person becomes frustrated. So this is very important. Please understand Thus, a wise person lives only for keeping body and soul together. And do you find people in today's civilization who work just for keeping body and soul together? Entire civilization is lusty and greedy. Where is the question of satisfaction when the heart is full of lust and greed? These are the real problems of life. All the other problems are the expansions of lust and greed, the result of lusty and greedy activity. So there is no question of less food. There is no question of overpopulation. These are foolishness of ignorant souls. We are so much lusty to drink tea, coffee and smoke marijuana and so many things. If we can control our senses, just keep body and soul. Will the soul leave the body if we don't drink tea and coffee? Then why don't we grow cash crops? So much land is there which is occupied by growing weeds, by growing uh, other cash crops, tea, coffee, etc. And grains can be cultivated in that. And there would be no food problem at all. But no, we want to enjoy. And thus in all this artificial produce, then we tell there is no land for cultivating food. So actually the real problems of life are only lust and greed. All the problems are the results of such lusty activities. So Shariram, we should present this ideal in the society. So if we scientifically follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita, we will be able to come to that platform where we work only for keeping body and soul together. Tyakta Sarva Parigraha And uh, there would be more result from our activity, but Parigraha, one is free from all the possessions. One understands everything belongs to Krishna. So just one maintains body and soul together and offers the results to Krishna. Yadrichalab Santushto Dvandvati to Vimatsaraha Samasiddhava Siddhaucha Kritva Pina Nibadhyate He who is satisfied with gain which comes of its own accord, who is free from duality and does not envy, who is steady both in success and failure, is never entangled, although performing actions. Important word used here is Dvandva Tito Yadrichhalab Santushto One is satisfied with whatever comes, whatever gains one gets of its own accord. We are not satisfied with that. We want more and more. Why? Because we are in Dvandva. We think something is good, another thing is bad. So heat is good, cold is bad. Or cold is good, heat is bad. One is free from this. Profit is good, loss is bad. So for spiritual advancement, both things are good. If one gets profit, one uses for Krishna. If one gets loss, one gets mental or physical miseries. Then these miseries, miseries are also very important. Miseries purify the heart. And uh, as we discussed, it brings one to the platform of spiritual knowledge, brings detachment from this material world. So miseries are also important for purification of heart. Lust and greed goes away in the miseries. So thus, one should understand what is the purpose of this life. The purpose of this life is getting liberation from this material entanglement. So if you get profit, you use for Krishna. If you get loss, if there is any physical mental misery, that is anyway purification. So why a person should take anxiety for profit and loss? That is Krishna's intention here. So remain satisfied with the gains which come of its own accord as per destiny. And Vimatsaraha. A transcendentalist is free from matsaraha, means enviousness. 
today whole society is based on enviousness and that is what results in competition suppose there is only one bread left in the house and uh, two brothers they want to have it will they fight for it if there is actually love between the brothers one would sacrifice oh you please take i am not hungry you please have it if the child wants to be fed and mother is also hungry mother will choose to remain hungry to satiate the hunger of the child because mother is not envious of the child so thus there is no competition no fight for resources when there is love but now our heart burns if our friends or relatives they advance more than us so just to maintain this status quo in the society there is so much of pressure mainly pressure stress and anxiety is only because of this enviousness others are progressing more than me i also have to work hard i am not able to produce result oh, if you really love them you should try to let them perform better than you but no there is no love there is envy <clears throat> so a pure devotee a transcendentalist he is free from envy sama siddha va siddha ucha thus he is equipoised in success and failure so he does not get disturbed others have gone more than me i have failed no they are all part and parcels of krishna if they are happy i am satisfied गत संगस्य मुक्तस्य चेतसा कर्मा समग्रम प्रविलीयते द वर्क ऑफ अ मैन हु इज अनअटैच टू द मोड्स ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर एंड हु इज फुली सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज मर्जेस एंटायरली इन टू ट्रांसेंडेंस ब्रह्मापणम ब्रह्म हवेर ब्रह्मनौ ब्रह्मणत ब्रह्म तेन गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म सधिना अ पर्सन हू इज फुली अब्सॉर्ब इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस इज श्योर टू अटेन द स्पिरिचुअल किंगडम बिकॉज ऑफ हिस्स फुल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टू स्पिरिचुअल एक्टिविटीज इन विच द कंजर्मेशन इज एब्सोल्यूट एंड दैट विच इज ऑफर्ड इज ऑफ द सेम स्पिरिचुअल नेचर here krishna is giving the sum and substance of krishna consciousness brahmarpanam brahma havir brahmagnau brahmana hutam so krishna has explained work should be done only for sacrifice when you sacrifice there is ahuti there is offering there is havi uh, there is butter to be offered there is agnau agni fire in which the offering has to be made so when a person is always absorbed in krishna ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना समाधि मीन्स वेन द कॉन्शियसनेस इज कम्प्लीटली फिक्स्ड वेन अ पर्सन इज कम्प्लीटली कृष्णा कॉन्शियस देन ऑल इज एक्टिविटीज इज ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ ऑफरिंग एंड द रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट यज्ञ एवरी थिंग इज कम्प्लीटली स्पिरिचुअल दिस काइंड ऑफ यज्ञ इज एक्सपेक्टेड ऑफ अर्जुना मन मया माम उपाश्रिता वेन अ पर्सन इज टेकन शेल्टर ऑफ कृष्णा इज एब्सॉर्ब इन थॉट्स ऑफ कृष्णा then any action that he does and uh, the result of that activity the performer of that activity everything is brahm everything is completely spiritual but if a person is not completely absorbed in krishna then even though he may do yagya his result may not be spiritual and what is that krishna explains daivam meva pare yagyam योगी न परुपासते ब्रह्मापरे यज्ञ यज्ञ नोपजुवती सम योगी परफेक्टली वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स बाय ऑफरिंग डिफरेंट सैक्रिफाइसेस टू देम एंड सम ऑफ देम ऑफर सैक्रिफाइसेस इन द फायर ऑफ द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म now various kinds of yagyas krishna has established you should do work only for yagya only for sacrifice and there are various kinds of sacrifices mentioned as per the desires and the capacity of the individual living entities some of them some yogis they offer the yagya to the devatas demigods others offer yagya in the supreme brahm 
So here the worship power of demigods and the impersonalists are explained. Offering yourself in the fire of supreme Brahma means a person loses his identity. That is the aim of the impersonalist. He does not want to exist anymore. He just wants to merge into the total existence, Brahma Jyoti. So Brahm is considered the fire and individual identity is considered the offering. One loses one's individual identity. One does not lose actually, but one remains there as a small particle of atom. But the sensual activities are stopped, so in that sense it is losing one's identity. Shrotra dinindriyanyanye sanyamagnishujuhvati shabda dinvishayananya indriyagnishujuhvati some of them sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of controlled mind and others sacrifice the objects of the senses such as the sound in the fire of sacrifice. So Shravanam Kirtanam, the process is explained here. If one hears the Vedic mantras very nicely, this is also sacrifice. Uh, you could have heard so many things, your attention could have gone to so many places, but this is called sacrifice. Similarly, you could have spoken so many things, produce so many results, but when you chant the names of God, this is also considered sacrifice, sacrifice of sound, sacrifice of hearing. These are various yajnas. Sarvani indriya karmani pran karmani chapare atma sanyama yoga agnav juhvati jnana deepite those who are interested in self-realization in terms of mind and sense control offer the functions of all the senses as well as the vital force, breath, as oblations into the fire of the controlled mind. So here the yoga system of Patanjali is explained. How all the sensual activities are stopped and a person tries to merge in the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Dravya Yajna Stapo Yajna Yoga Yajna Statha Pare Swadhyaya Jnana Yajna Scha Yataya Samshita Brata There are others who enlightened by Sacrificing their material possessions in severe austerities, they strict vows and practice the yoga of eightfold mysticism, and others study the Vedas for the advancement of transcendental knowledge. Dravya Yajna, Yoga Yajna, Swadhyaya Yajna, Tapo Yajna, various Yajnas are explained here. Dravya Yajna means general charitable activities, opening education institutes, schools, hospitals, dormitories or offering the possessions in the altar of fire sacrifice. Offering of material possessions is called Dravya Agya. Dravya means material substance, riches, opulence, wealth. Then there is Tapo Yagya. Some people take voluntarily hardships, austerities like following Chaturmasya when it rains in the four months. Many people, it is recommended in the Vedas that they, you should not shave and many people follow it. They just don't use their hands for eating. They take food directly from the floor and don't eat anything for sense gratification and many strict vows, penances they take for promotion to heavenly planets. There are others who are doing Swadhyaya Yajna, who are engaged in studying of the scriptures. That is also yajna sacrifice. So, like this, there are various kinds of sacrifices. Apane juhvati pranam prane panam tatha pare prana pana gati rudva prana yam parayana apare niyatahara. Pranan Praneshu Juhvati And there are even others who are inclined to the process of breath restraint to remain in trance and they practice stopping the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last 
remain in trance stopping all breathing some of them curtailing the eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice so here the pranayam process is recommended which is done in the beginning of hatha yoga ashtanga yoga sarve pyete yagya vido yagya kshapita kalmasha yagya shishtamrita bhujo yanti brahm sanatanam all these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reaction and having tasted the nectar of the remnants of such sacrifice they go to the supreme eternal atmosphere the very important word used here is yagya vido one who knows the meaning of the sacrifice then they go to eternal atmosphere so if one is doing any kind of activity without knowing the meaning behind it it will not fetch the desired result so thus the knowledge is very very important even a person who is doing ashtanga yoga although it is not recommended for kali yoga but lord kapil explains swadhyay is very important element one must have knowledge in knowledge when a person does yagya one knows the meaning behind all these sacrifices he will go to eternal atmosphere others they have to wait unless they come to platform of knowledge nayam lokos रीजन we are opening centers of excellence in top institutes of our country for happiness happiness is a subject being introduced in schools people want to figure out how to become happy krishna has explained here very simple one who does not do sacrifice he cannot be happy in this life or next sacrifice is must for happiness evam bahu vidha yagya vitata brahmano mukhe कर्म जान विधितान सर्वान एवं ज्ञातवा विमोक्ष से ऑल दीज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सैक्रीफाइजेज आर अप्रूव बाय द वेदास एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर बॉर्न ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वर्क नोइंग देम एज सच यू विल बिकम लिबरेटेड श्रेयान द्रव्य मयाद यज्ञ ज्ञान यज्ञ परंत सर्व कर्माखिल पार्थ ज्ञाने परिसमाप्यते ओ चेस्टाइजर ऑफ द एनिमी द सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ नॉलेज इज ग्रेटर देन द सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ मटेरियल पोजेशंस ओ सन ऑफ प्रथा आफ्टर ऑल द सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ वर्क कल्मिनेट्स इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज सो हियर इट इज वेरी क्लियर कृष्णा इज टेलिंग मेनी पीपल आर एनैमर्ड बाय द गॉर्जियस वैदिक सेरेमनीज Oh yes today i participated in yagya it was beautiful chanting of so many mantras and people were putting so many things into fire and it was divine but much more divine than that is krishna is telling very clearly here gyan yagya parantapa shreyan better than dravya yagya sacrificing the material possessions on the altar of fire is gyan yagya sacrifice for cultivating knowledge thus this bhagavad gita which we are discussing here it is more much more powerful yagya in terms of lord krishna so so many yagyas we can set in but whose life has changed by setting in such yagyas but if we hear sincerely the message of god in bhagavad gita bhagavatam and other scriptures then our life changes for good so all the sacrifice of material possessions charity and all ultimately leads one to or if properly done should lead one to the platform of knowledge so please do not underestimate the reading of scriptures and discussion as ordinary thing it is a yagya and more powerful yagya the result of all sacrifice is to reach platform of knowledge
तद्विधि प्रणिपाते नश्न न सेवया उपदेश्य ते ज्ञान ज्ञानी नस्तत्वर्शि Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. This is very very important verse. Krishna has told sacrifice of knowledge is better than that of material possessions. No sacrifice of knowledge please don't get confused i have to sacrifice give up my knowledge no sacrifice of knowledge means sacrifice done to get knowledge so sacrifice done to get knowledge one can get knowledge either by hearing or by reading or by discussing all these are sacrifices of knowledge it is greater than sacrifice of giving up your wealth and how does a person get this knowledge i will get this knowledge simply by uh, reading or any formal procedure has to be followed so here three step formula is given so please do not think simply by reading one will understand this for this one needs to approach tatvadarshi and how one has to approach tatvadarshi tadviddhi to know the science of absolute truth one has to first of all be very very humble pranipatena prakrasht rupena nipat that means when a person falls like rod before spiritual master this is the symbolic representation of being humble that i am completely surrendered whatever you tell i will follow so this humility is required some people they challenge the spiritual master that is not the way here so humility lord jesus also told kingdom of god is meant for meek and humble so one has to be very very humble and Sevaya, one has to render service. If we approach a saintly person, first inquiry should not be directly any spiritual question. First inquiry ideally should be, how can I render service to you, Sevaya? This was the etiquette. Whenever even a king would come to meet the sages, first he will ask for any person, can you please tell me how can I serve you? Please engage me in your service and do seva. And by doing seva, we become qualified to receive. and assimilate that knowledge otherwise even if the transcendental knowledge is spoken without seva we will not be able to digest or realize understand that so seva is very very important it is told ata shri krishna naam adi na bhavet grahayam indriyay shri krishna naam adi the name form qualities of lord krishna are divyam transcendental na grahayam indriyai by our senses by our mind by our mind we can neither see hear nor can understand about krishna sevan mukhe hi jivvadav but if a person engages in service of krishna which begins with tongue chanting his names uh, speaking his signs then swayam ev suratyadah lord himself becomes so pleased that he manifests his knowledge his form and a person is able to see hear and understand krishna so seva is very important So every word has to be noted very very carefully scrutinizingly. Prani paten pari prashnen sevaya. Chapter four verse number thirty four. Please mark it very carefully. In this way we will be able to understand Bhagavad Gita. We should approach a guru, a person who knows this knowledge, and be very very humble. And we have to render service, and then we don't just have to always remain humble and keep on rendering service without any inquiry. ultimately we have to we approach guru to get knowledge so pari prashnena inquiry is also important one should be eager to understand knowledge but in eagerness one should not ask absurd questions one should not become impudent and one should not uh, try to simply ask without doing any seva no so blind faith is not recommended pari prashnena is very important some people tell no uh, scriptures are dogmatic they are not at all dogmatic here you see pari prashnena inquiry this word is used again after speaking entire bhagavad gita to arjuna krishna will tell vimrishya tad asheshena you completely deliberate upon it what message i have spoken to you and then yate chasi tata kuru then whatever you desire you do so spiritual life is not a brainwash it is not a dogma 
in actual spiritual life you are encouraged to ask questions just like arjuna is asking here and krishna is replying rather all the vedic knowledge is basically the discussion between the spiritual master and disciple in different time in different places different planets different circumstances it's all discussion so inquiry is very important blind faith and absurd inquiries both are rejected here one should inquire and one should render service be humble then if a person follows three steps of submission seva and inquiry then tatva darshina those who have seen the truth they will reveal this knowledge to you so please try to follow these three steps yaj kyatva na punar moham evam yasyasi pandava yena bhutanya sheshani द्रक्ष्यात्मो मई सो वॉट इज दिस नॉलेज विश तत्वदर्शी विल गिव एंड वेन यू हैव लर्न दस लर्न द ट्रूथ यू विल नो दैट ऑल लिविंग बींग्स आर बट पार्ट ऑफ मी एंड दैट दे आर इन मी एंड आर माइन यज ज्ञातवा न पुनर्मोहम इफ अ पर्सन गेट इज दिस नॉलेज देन ही कैन नॉट फॉल बैक इन टू इल्यूजन What is that knowledge? When we understand, Drakshyasi Atmani Athomai. All the living entities are situated on Krishna. They are always connected to Krishna, and our uh, Krishna tells Athomai and our mind they belong to me. So one should have this knowledge of spiritual life. Just understanding, I am not the body is not sufficient. One should understand that we are all part and parcels of Krishna. This is very important. leaf is part and parcel of tree if a leaf demands direct water can the leaf ever be nourished no so practically we have to apply in our life instead of planning our direct enjoyment we should plan how to make krishna happy and then we will see we are happy and the people who are connected to us they are also happy so this is the relationship between us and krishna we are part and parcel of krishna we are situated on the energy of krishna and we are always connected to krishna in illusion i am thinking god does not exist or god is separate i am separate just like a leaf is always connected to the tree leaf is part and parcel of tree in a similar fashion we are part and parcel of krishna one has to come to this knowledge api chedasi pape bhya sarve bhya pap kritamaha ज्ञान प्लवे नजिनम संतरिष्यसी इवन इफ यू आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी द मोस्ट सिंफुल ऑफ ऑल सिनर्स वेन यू आर सिचुएटेड इन द बोट ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज यू विल बी एबल टू क्रॉस ओवर द ओशन ऑफ मिजरीज सो वेन अ पर्सन हैज नॉलेज देन यू कैन सॉल्व मिजरीज ऑफ लाइफ इफ यू डो नॉट हैव नॉलेज वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू डो नॉट नो साइंस डॉग डज नॉट स्टडी साइंस his ancestors were suffering from the same problem from which he is suffering today he cannot make a house dwelling for himself he cannot make a kitchen for cooking for himself but we can do because we know the sciences but unless we understand science of god there won't be perfect solution of problems of life we'll be shifting problem or creating more problems so knowledge is important when we have transcendental knowledge this knowledge that all the living entities are parts and parcels of god when we realize All miseries are solved. Yathay dhansi sam siddho gnir bhasma saat kuru teer juna jnana agni sarv karmani bhasma saat kuru te tatha. As the blazing fire turns firewood to ashes, Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes all reactions to material activities. नहीं ज्ञान सदृश पवित्र इह विद्य तत्स्वयं योग संसिद्ध कालेनात्म विंदती इन दिस वर्ल्ड देर इज नथिंग सो सब्लाइम एंड प्योर एस ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज सच नॉलेज इज द मेच्योर फ्रूट ऑफ ऑल मिस्टिसिजम एंड वन हुज अचीव दिस एंजॉय द सेल्फ विद इन हिमसेल्फ इन ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ टाइम एज यू वेक अ फ्रॉम अ ड्रीम ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ ड्रीम आर इमीडिएटली रिजॉल्व thus by this transcendental knowledge which is revealed by spiritual master from within the heart then immediately we understand i am not the body 
then no problems of body affect me and if i am able to revive my relationship with krishna as one thinks of one's beloved heart is full of happiness when the relationship with krishna its memory is revived man is always rejoicing love of god within himself this situation is explained in this verse shraddha van labhate gyanam tatpara sanyatendriya gyanam labha param shantim achirena digachati a faithful man who is absorbed in transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace so here the word used here very important the first word is shraddhavan a person who is faithful he only gets knowledge how by controlling the senses who is absorbed in transcendental knowledge he attains supreme spiritual peace so sense control is very important all these various yagyas which are described here all are meant to control yagya control the senses control the senses and hear about krishna control the senses speak about krishna control senses and offer the resources for sense enjoyment in charity control your senses and cultivate knowledge control your senses hold your breath sit in one place stop all the activities of sense enjoyment so all the yagyas are meant for sense control so a person who is faithful in the scriptures who controls the senses he very quickly is able to attain peace but one who is not faithful his destiny is very dark that krishna explains here agyas cha shraddha dhanas cha sanshayatma vinashyati nayam lokosti na paro na sukham sanshayatmanah but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain god consciousness for the doubting soul there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next so krishna is telling agyaha those who are ignorant because of ignorance we have doubt if a person is sick he will always be doubtful about the taste of food because everything is bitter for a sick man so in a similar fashion those who are sick all of us with bodily concept of life thinking i am this body we are always doubtful about the existence of spirit existence of supreme spirit we are doubtful about so many things because of this disease of bodily concept so those who always remain doubtful krishna is telling nayam loko nasti paro na sukham for him there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next such a person always lives in misery person is telling come sit on this bus i will rescue you from this danger no you will kidnap me you will take my money what will happen if a person doubts on a genuine person who is willing to rescue then what can be done so krishna is god he is going to rescue us giving all happiness but if we doubt on this knowledge then krishna tells now we will suffer all the laws of nature are mentioned if we doubt we don't follow we'll suffer now and in the future also we will suffer so krishna tells how to then come out of this doubt that solution also krishna is giving yoga sanyasta karmanam gyana sanchinna sanshayam atmavantam na karmani nibadnanti dhananjaya therefore one who has renounced the fruits of his action whose doubts are destroyed by transcendental knowledge and who is situated firmly in the self is not bound by works o conqueror of the riches tasma dagyana sambhutam ritstham gyana sinatmanah chitvainam sanshayam yogam atishto tishta bharata therefore the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge armed with yoga o bharat stand and fight so doubts can be destroyed by transcendental knowledge and how to get transcendental knowledge verse number 34 rani paten pari prashnen sevaya as if we have doubts uh, doubts are natural if we try to study any subject we approach a teacher to solve doubts isn't it 
when it's beyond our capacity to understand so we have to approach a teacher so doubts are natural any subject we study we get doubts and how do we come out of it we approach a teacher in a similar fashion unless we are eager to approach a teacher then doubts will always remain so in order to come out of this doubt and solve the miseries of this life and the next it is important that we approach a teacher and if we are very very eager krishna will guide from the heart krishna will guide us if you want to become atheist and if you want to understand it makes some sense let me try to understand is more this little shraddha if we have and if you develop eagerness let me find an expert spiritual master who can guide me then krishna will guide from the heart but one should be sincere without any material motive to get spiritual knowledge then krishna will guide to right spiritual master and then we have to follow simple rules and regulations if a person is sick in order to come out of doubt about the taste of food one has to follow the advice of doctor then he can taste food or oh, this is sour this is sweet this is tasty this is not cooked nicely then he can tell the exact taste of the dishes similarly when we follow the instructions of spiritual master and engage in service of krishna so engaging in service as it is mentioned here in this verse taking shelter of krishna and chanting the names of krishna by this faith is established krishna reveals himself doubts are destroyed so one should learn the art of serving krishna and chanting his names under the guidance of spiritual master then when a person is not having any doubts a person is on the liberated platform then even though a person is acting like a warrior as arjuna is supposed to do he will not be entangled in karma so the conclusion of this chapter is we are all entangled here in this material world because of the tendency to act the same tendency to act can make us liberated from all the entanglement of activities example given is just like if one is suffering from intake of excess milk then the same milk taken in another transformation of curd or yogurt can help one relieve the indigestion caused by milk only so milk only taken in another format removes the sufferings created by the milk so the actions only directed by the spiritual master can help one get relief from the material actions done in the past life or in this life and this scientific way of performing actions under guidance of spiritual master for the pleasure of krishna are called yagya so arjuna is told don't think by not acting you will become free from karma but you have to act for yagya for sacrifice for the pleasure of krishna then same actions will become your cause of liberation actions bind us actions liberate us so one has to know this science very nicely what is action which is meant for liberation a karma what is vikarma acting against spiritual injunctions what is karma fruitive activities so this is very beautifully explained by lord krishna here so the aim is ultimately to be established in a karma do the actions which do not bring any material reactions so this description again seems to be confusing arjuna and he puts forth another question for more clarity and what is that we will see in the next chapter thank you so much for hearing hari krishna हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे टुडे वी विल डिस्कस चैप्टर फाइव कर्म योगा एक्शन इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of worldwide hari krishna movement so there is a great mystery behind this yoga process as we have been discussing there are many terms which appear in different formats there is karma there is vikarma there is akarma there is karmi there is karma yoga so karma is very different from karma yoga there is gyani there is sankhya sankhya yoga and there is overlap between the yogas 
So Arjuna seems to be getting confused here. Because in the second chapter, Sankhya Yoga was explained the analytical study of the world. And after that, Lord Krishna explained Buddhi Yoga or Karma Yoga, action in Krishna consciousness. In the third chapter, it was told, Atmaratir Evasyat. One who is self satisfied for him, there is no need to work. And then it was explained because the results of all the actions culminates in transcendental knowledge. And at the end of fourth chapter, after explaining the glories of transcendental knowledge, Lord Krishna again recommended Arjuna to work, to fight. So Arjuna is getting confused. The result of all work, sacrificing the results of work, is knowledge. And uh, explaining the glories of knowledge, again you are telling me to fight, how to understand this. So this chapter is very nice. Lord Krishna explains the difference and at the same time uniqueness in the process of Sankhya and Karma Yoga. Lord Krishna also describes in this chapter the peace formula. All of us are looking for peace. But our peace is into pieces. We have no clue how to get that thing. So let us understand from the words of the Supreme Personality Himself. If we apply these simple principles, we will get perfect peace in our life. Let us try to hear carefully. Arjuna Uvacha Sanyasam Karmanam Krishna Punar yogam cha shansasi Yachreya etayorekam Tanme bruhi sunishchitam Arjuna said, O Krishna, first of all you ask me to renounce work and then again you recommend work with devotion. Now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial? So renouncing work is more beneficial or working with devotion, karma yogam ja shansasi, which of the two is more beneficial? Arjuna asks. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Sanyasa Karma Yoga Cha Nishreya Sakaravubhav Tayostu Karma Sanyasad Karma Yoga Vishishyate the Blessed Lord said, The renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation, but of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of works. Geya sanitya sanyasi yo nadveshti nakankshati nirdvan vohi mahabaho sukham bandhat pramuchyate one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced. Such a person, liberated from all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated, O mighty armed Arjuna. Sankhya Yoga Prithagbala Pravadanti na Pandita Ekam only the ignorant speak of karma yoga and devotional service as being different from the analytical study of the material world. Sankhya Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both. Yas Sankhya if prapyate sthanam tad yoga irapi gamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha yaf pashyati sa pashyati. One who knows that the position reached by means of renunciation can also be attained by works in devotional service and who therefore sees that the path of works and the path of renunciation are one, sees things as they are. So yoga is one ladder that 
Yoga ladder has got various rungs. Lord Krishna will explain that in the twelfth chapter of this book, Bhagavad Gita. In karma yoga also, there are two categories. Karma means acting as per the instructions of the Vedas. We all want to enjoy, but if we act as per the rules and regulations of the Vedas, then we can enjoy without breaking the laws of nature, like a civilized person is supposed to do. and when a person is dissatisfied after enjoying all the results of activities then he further reads the vedas and he becomes a yogi he understands not by enjoying the results but by sacrificing the results of my work i will get that peace for which i am always hankering then he starts giving up the results of activities initially because uh, he has been a materialist a materialist cannot understand god or atma tatva self being different from the body so he uh, remains in bodily concept of life and he thinks benefit of body is benefit of soul so he becomes a philanthropist and he starts using his money for general purpose opening schools colleges and welfare works for the welfare of body and in this way by giving up the results of activities one comes to the platform of knowledge sanity and then a person uh, is able to understand the science of self the science of supreme self the relation between the two and this knowledge gives him realization that human life is just meant to realize that i am not the body that is a platform of peace then he gives up the results of all his activities and becomes a sanyasi then when he further cultivates the knowledge after cultivating knowledge for a very long time one is able to and this long time is actually spanning across many births bahu naam janma naam ante this research work is not easy just see so many scientists have come and gone and we hardly know about the planet which is next to us so how we can understand the information not just of all the planets of our solar system not just those of the universe but the creator of universe so krishna tells in bhagavad gita yes if you continue your research bahu naam janma naam ante after many many births you will be able to understand knowledge of myself the supreme personality of god it and once a person comes to that platform then he engages himself so he has known oh i am not the body i am part and parcel of god just like a leaf is part and parcel of tree so let me now water the root of the tree then i will be satisfied then again he engages himself his senses in the service of supreme lord this is also karma yoga but this is higher form of karma yoga so this karma yoga where a person does not have much knowledge then one person elevates himself to platform of knowledge and then when one acts himself in full knowledge even though he is acting he is not na lipyate entangled by the laws of karma so the sarjuna is getting confused i have to give up action or i have to pick up action so there are two kinds of activities one performed without knowledge one performed in full knowledge in between lies knowledge so just taking sanyas and following the process of gyana empirical philosophy is called sankhya sankhya means analyzing the material world and understanding how it is illusory it is false false in the sense it exists as we have discussed but our conception is wrong if i am seeing a dog before me that form exists but the person is not dog that is a soul same as i am in this human form of life that is just the dress of a dog so understanding that the soul is dog that is illusion so a person in this way analyzes that this material world is illusory and then he comes to understand what is reality this is called sankhya the process of gyan finding the root of the tree and when he understands finding the that this is the root of the tree i am part and parcel of god just like the leaf is part and parcel of tree the only way of my satisfaction is watering the root serving the god then he engages himself in loving service of god so sankhya also leads one to loving service of god eventually just like the four kumaras they were on liberated platform and they went to vaikuntha loka 
and even Shukdev Goswami, he was also on liberated platform. And when he heard Srimad Bhagavatam, so when they hear these liberated souls about Krishna or when they see the form of Krishna, then they immediately get attracted and engage themselves in the service of Krishna. And there is another class of devotees who from the very beginning engage themselves in the service of Krishna. And the knowledge is automatically attained. Thus Krishna is telling, Yas Sankhyai Prapyate Sthanam Tad Yogai Rapi Gamyate Ekham Sankhyam Cha Yogam Cha The situation which is attained by Sankhya, attaining knowledge, the same situation can be attained by Yoga also. So those people who are in knowledge, Ekam Sankhyam Cha Yogam Cha They tell Sankhya and Yoga they are, they are the same path. Because after Sankhya, one has to come to the point of yoga. It is the same path. One is more advanced position. But the same goal is attained. You are following the path of Sankhya that ends in yoga and then the object is same. Loving devotional service of Krishna. So those who are fortunate, they are able to directly come in contact with pure devotee and they engage directly in yoga process. What Krishna is telling Arjuna. Those who are not so fortunate, they analyze very nicely. As some people when we tell them, you please chant as it is written in Bhagavad Gita in the Shastras, follow this process. They tell who has seen Shastras, what is this Gita, they are not able to develop faith. Then okay, they are encouraged to do research. And after many many births of research, they will come to this conclusion. Just like already scientists have done research, now we can take advantage of that or again start doing research from the basics. So if somebody has done research, we apply it in our life and we quickly develop so many means of technology. So that Krishna is telling here, one process is finding the root, another is watering the root. If a person waters the root, if we serve Krishna, then automatically we understand, we feel nourishment, I understand, oh yes, I am part and parcel of Krishna. Because as soon as I engage myself in service of Krishna, I get unlimited satisfaction. I was hankering for this satisfaction always. So immediately there is realization that I am always connected to Krishna. As soon as I serve Krishna, I get satisfaction. As soon as you put water on the root, the leaf becomes nourished. So the knowledge automatically comes, I am part and parcel of Krishna, I am not the body. So Krishna tells anyone who applies himself perfectly to either of these paths achieves the results of both. So now the next question can be, so if uh, that is the case, then which process should I follow? That Krishna answers in the following verse. Sanyasastu Mahabaho Dukham Aptum Ayogataha Yoga Yukto Munir Brahma Nachirena Di Gachati Unless one is engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, mere renunciation of activities cannot make one happy. The sages purified by works of devotion achieve the Supreme without delay. So Krishna here again he uses the word tu, tu means but. Krishna told these processes they are the same path. Those who are not wise they tell this is different and that is different. The same goal will be achieved. But Krishna is telling tu but sanyasas tu mahabaho dukkham aptum ayogata. If a person is simply a renouncer, mere renunciation of activities will not give him freedom from miseries cannot make one happy. Whereas, Yoga Yukto Munir Brahma, a person who is engaged in the service of Lord, he gets happiness, positive happiness in the progressive march of devotional service. So if you simply renounce, then that path is very troublesome. So there are two kinds of sannyasis, impersonalists and Vaishnava sannyasis, the devotees of the Lord. So impersonalists, they analyze Vedanta Sutra and the philosophy of uh, absolute truth, for them it becomes very dry, simply philosophizing. Whereas uh, other class of sannyasis who are actually buddhi yogis or karma yogis or bhakti yogis, these are the same names for devotional service, they engage themselves according to Pancharatriki Vidhi and they engage in very nice uh, archana of the Lord offering various items with great love to the Lord, cooking for the Lord, dressing the Lord, singing for the Lord, carrying out the orders of Lord and all these activities give so much of satisfaction. Ultimately, we are hankering for this satisfaction. 
why a person spends so much of money which he has earned very nicely on the family members does not enjoy directly because it is not the sense object it is that loving reciprocation that we want that satisfies our heart what to speak of family members people keep pets more so in the western countries where families are not together when the dog comes and wags its tail and licks your cheek you feel great happiness there is reciprocation so just like there is some rasa pleasure which is coming by serving other people similarly the same resources when we use for god there is immediately reciprocation and it is this reciprocation for god which is missing in the life of the follower of sankhya who has simply renounced but has not engaged himself in, in the service of god so thus krishna is telling to arjuna warning although the paths are the same but sanyas takes a very long time Whereas for devotee, the word used here is na chiren adigachati. Chira means very long time. Na chira chirena adigachati means not very long time. In a very short time. So this is the difference between the paths. A karm yogi attains God in a very short time, and a sank yogi, simple empirical philosopher, jnani, chiren adigachati. He will take a very long time, and he will not be able to feel happiness also in the path. योग युक्त विशुद्धात्मा विजितात्मा जितेन्द्रिय सर्वूतात्मूता न लिप्यते वन हु वर्क्स इन डिवोशन हु इज अ प्योर सोल एंड हु कंट्रोल्स हिज माइंड एंड सेंसेस इज डियर टू एवरी वन एंड एवरी वन इज डियर टू हिम दो ऑलवेज वर्किंग सच अ मैन इज नेवर इन important words used here are vijitatma jitendriya one who has controlled his mind and senses perfectly so krishna has described the process of yoga that karma yoga is better than sankhya yoga now krishna is telling what is the situation of this karma yogi so that arjuna does not confuse a karma yogi with an ordinary karmi ordinary fruit worker so krishna describes no please understand his consciousness external actions could be the same but there is gulf of difference in the consciousness and what is that first of all ordinary people they work because their mind and senses are not under control mind tells give me this thing senses demand something and they work very hard to achieve it whereas devotee karma yogi is vijitatma jitendriya his mind and senses are controlled so in order to advance in spiritual life control of mind and senses is very important and a person thinks oh uh the spiritual life makes me aloof and the family members when they sometimes understand oh uh our member family person is studying bhagavad gita following this process oh l- let us stop him or her because then they will become uh, uh, indifferent to us but here different word is used please notice it carefully सर्वभूतात्मा भूतात्मा इट मीन्स ही इज डियर टू एवरी वन एंड एवरी वन इज डियर टू हिम सो इट इज नॉट अ फैक्ट दट आफ्टर कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस अ पर्सन विल बिकम इनडिफरेंट नो ही इज डियर टू एवरी वन एंड एवरी वन इज डियर टू हिम राधर द लाइफ ऑफ अ डिवोटी अ कर्म योगी इज सिंपली टू वर्क फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द सफरिंग लिविंग एंटिटीज एंड नथिंग एल्स ही हेज नो अदर पर्पज so he feels so much more for the living entities rather than being indifferent a renouncer a person who is uh, sankhya yogi he may become indifferent is illusion let me remain away but a uh, devotee understands the real cause of suffering and works very hard to relieve the living entities of their suffering so thus shila prabhupada explains it is not that we will start hating or will become indifferent to our family members no if we actually follow this process then we will increase our love for our family members for the society for the nation for all the living entities and all the species so this is the path of universal brotherhood because you are engaged in the service of krishna and we understand everybody is part and parcel of krishna If I love a person I cannot hit his finger I have to love his finger also take care of finger also protect finger as well thus a living entity understands uh, that all of them are part and parcels of Krishna 
and because he loves krishna he loves everyone his love or her love increases so every living entity is very dear to him and he is also dear to other living entities why because he acts as servant to all of them we become not dear to anybody when we start to act as master now everyone uh, is very 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 eager to lord over husband wants to lord over wife wife wants to lord over husband parents on children children or parents or in this way there is competition over who will become greater lord and this lording over tendency my family should work for me my society community subordinate boss should work for my satisfaction people don't think of giving satisfaction to others that is why when we take initiation or formal acceptance in the spiritual order of life when we become qualified to understand spiritual knowledge accept the spiritual master then we are given the name uh, das das means servant so when somebody acts in a very humble way in a servant attitude then automatically there is no chance of committing an offense to the other person so that is why such a person is dear to everyone so whole society is looking for this how i can be dear to everyone how everyone can be dear to me this is the process by executing this process of karma yoga yogi has this consciousness and kurvan apina lipyate such a person even though he is acting he does not get entangled in laws of karma नव किंचित करोमीति युक्तो मन्ये तत्वेत पश्यन शृण्वंस पृशन जिघ्रन अश्न गच्छन स्वपंश्वसन प्रलपन विसृजन घृणन उन्मिशन निमिशन्नपी इंद्रियानिंद्रियाथेशु वर्तंत धारयन अ पर्सन इन द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस Although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping and breathing, always knows within himself that he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, opening or closing his eyes, he always knows that only material senses are engaged with their objects and that he is aloof from them. So pure devotee performs all his activities only for the service of krishna thus he offers all the activities of his of the senses to krishna and he knows krishna is in control so my senses are acting engaging in the sense objects as per the control of krishna i am not doing i am not acting brahmanyadhay karmani sangam tyaktva karoti yah lipyate na sapapena padma patram mivambasa one who performs his duty without attachment surrendering the results unto the supreme god is not affected by sinful action as a lotus leaf is untouched by water kaye na man sa buddhya kevalai rindriyai rapi yoginah karma kuruvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye the yogis abandoning attachment act with body mind intelligence and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification so one may ask what is the reason for his action for his service whatever he is doing after knowledge again a person is engaged in service so the purpose is purification the ultimate purpose is to get the love of godhead but a person cannot feel love of god the positive pleasure unlimited bliss in the service of lord unless the senses are purified mind body is purified just like a sick man cannot taste food unless the body is purified of the virus so this process can be attained either by perfect material attachment stopping all the material activities and thus attaining liberation after many many births such a liberated person when he comes in contact with krishna or krishna's pure devotee he immediately gets attracted because he is free from contamination and a better and quick process is 
when a person engages mind body and senses in the service of krishna as it is mentioned here kaye na manasa buddhya kevalaye indriyai rapi so when kaye na body manasa mind buddhya means intelligence with his intelligence he is thinking how to serve krishna with his mind he is always thinking about krishna while engaged in service of krishna senses are engaged in the service of krishna so just like an iron rod in fire when kept for some time continuously it starts acting like fire so when mind intelligence senses everything is absorbed in the service of supreme lord then supreme lord is completely spiritual so our mind body senses also become spiritualized and once the senses mind body are spiritualized free from material contamination then in such purified stage a person can attain unlimited pleasure in the service of krishna for which we are always thank so thus krishna is mentioning what is the purpose of a yogi who is acting in full knowledge the purpose is only for the purpose of purification atma shuddhaye yukta karma phalam tyaktva shantim apnoti naishthikim ayukta kama karena pale sakto nibadhyate the steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the result of all activities to me whereas a person who is not in union with the divine who is greedy for the fruits of his labor becomes entangled shantim apnoti naishthikim shanti when we sleep then also we get shanti we get peace but again when we get up then all the problems of the world they strike our head and we become disturbed you take intoxication drugs for a while we get relief we get shanti definitely but we want permanent shanti nashtiki fixed up shanti how to get that permanent peace here krishna is telling yuktah you engage in my service and karma phalam tyaktva give up the results of your activities so uh, sometimes especially those who are new they ask so practically prabhu please explain how do we offer the results to krishna okay arjuna was in front of krishna arjuna was knowing krishna's desires and he was knowing how to work for krishna and how to offer the results to krishna but how do we do that how do we yukta how do we engage in service of krishna how do we offer the results that is why krishna tells in the fourth chapter tad vidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya engage yourself in the sevaya service of tatpadarshina that is my service just like viceroy would come from england and he would get all the respects that are due to a king and he would receive many gifts but he will not use any of those things in his personal enjoyment he will take back and offer it to the king or queen whether we put letter in the post office or in the letter box it will reach the destination in a similar fashion if we are very qualified like arjuna brahma kumaras we can take instructions directly from krishna understand what is krishna service and engage in service and offer the results to krishna or we can find out who is krishna's representative who is carrying out krishna's orders here that is pure devotee of krishna a guru and what is krishna's work krishna service that krishna has explained dharma sansthapanarthay sambhavami yuge yuge to give this knowledge to others to take living entities out of the suffering that is my work so if we find anybody who is spreading this knowledge of bhagavad gita of dharma to others very sincerely repeating the instructions of krishna and helping all the living entities come out of their miseries in their service in such an establishment we can do seva and we can offer the results of our activities and when we do that what is the result shanti maapnoti naishtikim then we get not temporary shanti of sleep or intoxication then we are always shant we are always very peaceful so firmly lord krishna is telling you please step on this first level of spiritual platform first pedestal and that is karma phalam tyaktva please give up the results of your activities life does not become very very blissful by accumulating the resources or increasing the sense enjoyment it acts the other way around 
So, Shariram Kevalam Karma, only for keeping body and soul together one should work and excess if we get the results, Yatvatma Shuddhaye. It should be given for the service of Krishna and then self purification happens. Sarva Karmani Manasa Sanyaste Sukham Vashi Navadvare Pure Dehi Naiva Kurvan Nakarayan when the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working nor causing the work to be done. This material body is called city of nine gates. Why nine gates? Because there are nine holes in this body. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, mouth, genitals and anus, nine gates. So in this city, the soul is there and the Supreme Lord is also there in the heart. So when we identify ourselves with the body, then we suffer from the miseries which are coming to body. Body gets old, body dies, body faces criticism or other things. And if we think I am the body, we get affected by such miseries. And when I identify myself with the Lord sitting in the heart, or I am part and parcel of Supreme Lord, I am not connected to this body at all, then I become as free as the Lord. The Supreme Lord has entered the heart of all living entities, including the heart of a pig who is sitting there in a filthy drain. But is Lord getting affected by the filth of the drain? No, the Lord is transcendental. So this is the secret of living happily in the city of nine gates. Nobody can be happy in the city of nine gates. Always some turmoil is there, physical, mental. But this is the secret. When we identify ourselves with the Lord, I am not this body and mind. I am part and parcel of Supreme Spirit. Then even though within this body, Sukham Vashi, happiness comes under his control. We are hankering for happiness. What is the situation of such a realized person? Vashi, happiness comes under his control. Na kartritvam na karmani lokasya srijati prabhu na karma phala sanyogam svabhavastu pravartate The embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. Same thing is being mentioned, Prakrite Kriya Manani, what we understood in second chapter, that material nature is doing everything. Embodied soul thinks I am doing, but what we are doing? Now we are in this human body, now we are acting basis the modes we have acquired. We are very tamasic, we will be forced to sleep. We are very rajasic, we will be forced to do hard work and we will be attracted to sense pleasure. We are sattvic, we will be sense controlled. The same soul from this human body gets transferred to a dog body. We will be helplessly chasing bones. The same soul gets transferred to swan body. We will be chasing the waters. The same soul gets transferred to some other body, bird body. We will be hopping from one tree to another. We are forced to find food to eat. We are forced to eat certain kind of foodstuffs. Pig is forced to eat stool, helplessly getting attracted. Pig may think I am using my free will. No, we can see pig is forced. Animals have no freedom. They are automatically attracted to certain kind of food, certain kind of life. And human being also, unless he utilizes the injunctions of the Vedas, Shastra still Dvipad Pashu. We are like animals on two legs. We are also helpless. So if we want actually freedom in life, we have to take advantage of these wonderful instructions which are given in the scriptures. Otherwise, we will also don't we feel helpless at times? The materialists do feel helpless almost all the time. Why? Because they don't take advantage of coming out of the control of material energy. So thus it is being told here that the living entity is not inducing anybody to act nor causing the actions to be done, helplessly being dragged by the modes of material nature. In lower species, one is completely helpless. In human form, we have some freedom. If you use Shastras, that freedom can be increased. And then we can become completely freed from the laws of nature. Nadatte kasya chitpapam 
न चुकृत विभु अज्ञान नवृत ज्ञान तेन मुह्यंति जंतव नॉर डज द सुप्रीम स्पिरिट अज्यूम एनी वन सिंफुल और पायस एक्टिविटीज एम्बॉडिड बींग्स हाउ एवर आर बिविल्डर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ द इग्नोरेंस विच कवर्स द रियल नॉलेज सो वन मे टेल ओ इफ आई एम हेल्पलेस देन इन सच हेल्पलेसनेस इफ आई कमिट सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज देन लॉर्ड गॉड शुड बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल बिकॉज मटीरियल एनर्जी इज कंट्रोल बाय गॉड and under the control of material energy i am doing sinful actions or good actions so lord should be responsible why i am being punished so here that is why krishna is clarifying na datte kasya chit papam supreme lord does not assume the responsibility how do we understand it is just like a judge may give punishment to somebody very great strict punishment to somebody or he may also give compensation to somebody some relief so it is not that judge is partial although everything is happening under control of judge by the sanction of judge in a similar fashion everything is happening under the sanction of supreme lord but he does not create activities so then what is the reason for suffering of the living entity sinful actions whatever living entity is doing that krishna explains agyane navritam gyanam this ignorance which covers the living entities living entity helplessly he then acts and does sinful activity and suffers so that is why one should be very very cautious to keep oneself always in knowledge not to fall in ignorance just like if a person is now very sane but if he chooses to drink or take any form of intoxication then he becomes mad then in drunken state people even forget Uh, who is mother who is daughter and all kinds of uh, unlawful incidents do happen sinful actions then a person suffers crimes happen under intoxication and when a person comes into knowledge he cries at times so the same thing happens when the living entity comes in contact with ignorance then he is helpless then he does not know or she does not know what is going to happen so that is why our senses our mind intelligence when they are always engaged in the thoughts and service of the supreme lord then it is like iron rod in fire it does not behave like iron but like fire emits heat and light so we also always remain in knowledge in shuddha satpaguna when we maintain constant touch with krishna gyane na tu tad agyanam yesham nashitam atmanah tesham aditya vajgyanam prakashayati tatparam when however one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nescience is destroyed then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the day time so spiritual knowledge is not very tough one simply needs to elevate oneself to spiritual energy shuddha sattva guna just like it is not very difficult to understand how education is important for a career to sustain oneself but a child is so foolish it is not able to understand sometimes when the parents force him he thinks oh these parents they don't care about me they are cruel they are forcing me so a child is not able to understand because of the mode of ignorance a person who is heavily intoxicated how much ever he may want to perceive the world as it is he cannot in a similar fashion spiritual knowledge is common sense it is very simple everything is so clear but bewilderment happens krishna told it is because of agyane navritam the covering of agyan of the mode of ignorance otherwise it is very simple as sun comes up in the day time we can see everything there is ditch this is clean road this is animal there is snake this is tree this is clear path everything is clear tad buddhayas tad atmanas तन्निष्ठास्तत्परायण गुनरावृत्ति ज्ञान निर्धूत कलमशा वेन वंस इंटेलिजेंस माइंड फेथ एंड रिफ्यूज आर ऑल फिक्स इन द सुप्रीम देन वन बिकम्स फुली क्लेंस ऑफ मिस गिविंग्स थ्रू कंप्लीट नॉलेज एंड दस प्रोसीड स्ट्रेट ऑन द पाथ ऑफ लिबरेशन विद्या विनय संपन्ने ब्राह्मणे गविहस्तिनी 
शुनि चाके पंडिता समदर्शिन The humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana a cow an elephant a dog and a dog eater so this is universal vision we all want to have platform of equality and actually this is great foolishness equality is not possible if you tell man you become pregnant from tomorrow is it possible you breastfeed the child from tomorrow is it possible no so as per one's body and one's psychology every person has to behave differently and different respect should be given to them shastras don't tell give equal uh, respect to everybody respect should be given to everybody that is fact you cannot tell you give you treat equally the prime minister as well as an ordinary street cleaner but you cannot insult a street cleaner respect should be given to him also the simile given is just like in our body we cannot tell hand is not important let me take out your hand or you cannot even take out a finger so proper care protection respect is given to all the limbs of the body but still we cannot tell all are of equal importance without finger hand or leg we can survive but without head we cannot survive so head is most important thus the brahmanas or self realized souls are the most important people in the society and they should be given maximum respect then administrative class then mercantile class then working class but respect should be given to everybody now when you tell equal equal then there is fight suppose there are uh, two ceos in a company you find two best companies of the world having best ceos and put them together in one company what will happen that company will collapse because one has to be ceo having maximum respect in the company his order should be followed other should follow their order then in the sequence the company functions nicely now everyone wants equal rights and they want to fight so this equality is not the vedic culture vedic culture tells equality is there equal respect is there on spiritual platform so here this is the vision of a self realized soul a yogi whether one sees a very learned brahmana or one sees cow dog or a dog eater he sees everyone on an equal level behavior will be different it does not mean i embrace a dog dog will bite me now because that soul is in ignorance thinking that it is dog or it is snake that may bite me and harm me but my vision is equal i do not think i am seeing a dog i am seeing a snake no that is also spirit soul this is also spirit soul as per their modes of nature their association they have picked up different dresses only so this is the vision of us so if you want actual equality in society we want equal respect for everyone this vision is very important that they are not dresses they are the spirit souls but as long as we are having these dresses we have to have due behavior and due formal dealings with different people brahmana externally we have to show more respect and kshatriya externally we have to show little res- less respect and these things will happen but equality is possible on spiritual platform इहतर्जित सर्गो ये साम्ये स्थित मन निर्दोषम हि सम ब्रह्म तस्मा ब्रह्मणि ते स्थिता दोज हूज माइंड आर एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन सेमनेस एंड एक्वेनिमिटी हैव ऑलरेडी कॉन्कर्ड द कंडीशन ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ दे आर फ्लॉलेस लाइक ब्रह्म एंड दस दे आर ऑलरेडी सिचुएटेड इन ब्रह्म न प्रेत प्रिय प्राप्य नो द्विजे प्राप्य चा प्रिय स्थिरबुद्धिसमूढ़ो ब्रह्म विद्रह्मणि स्थित अ पर्सन हु नीदर रिजॉइसिस अपॉन अचीविंग समथिंग प्लेजेंट नॉर लिमेंट्स अपॉन ऑप्टेनिंग समथिंग अनप्लेजेंट हु इज सेल्फ इंटेलिजेंट अनबिविल्डर्ड एंड हू नोज द साइंस ऑफ गॉड इज टू बी अंडरस्टूड एज ऑलरेडी सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस so if we want to attain the platform of liberation this equanimity is very very important not rejoicing upon gaining something pleasant not and neither lamenting upon gaining something unpleasant always equally poised 
always undisturbed in any situation bahya sparsheshva saktatma vindatyatmaniyat sukham sa brahma yoga yuktatma sukham akshaya mashnute such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure or external objects but is always in trance enjoying the pleasure within in this way the self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme so there are varieties of pleasure lord shabdev tells nayam deho deh bhajam niloke kashtan kaman arhate vid bhujam ye he tells my dear children he was instructing his sons please do not spend this human form of life this dress human dress is very valuable do not spend it for getting pleasures which animals are also getting vid bhujam ye so animals they enjoy in now in materialistic society sex pleasure is the greatest pleasure but animals enjoy so much of sex in a day pigeon within an hour enjoys many times sex we'll get tired we don't have that capacity also so human body is meant for self realization so animal bodies they have so much of sense enjoyment but is that sense enjoyment solving their problems of life after sex problem remains the same rather sex may give birth to many more problems so he's telling you please don't waste your human energy efforts in getting the pleasures which animals also get that is very low grade pleasure your action should be only for again he uses the same word he tells actions are meant for shuddhiyed yasmad brahma sokyam tonantam shuddhiyed for self purification purification of existence why should i purify myself because when you purify yourself you experience great pleasure there are different grades of pleasure we all know that as uh, sometimes the young people are misguided their friends they tell them come on today we will show you new pleasure and they take them to drugs and when you take drugs it is definitely very high pleasure but such a high pleasure gives lot of difficulties physical mental social and all but definitely it is a very high form of pleasure so there is one high form of pleasure which does not create any resultant difficult or miserable by products and that is called brahma sukh that is spiritual happiness so this instruction is given in bhagavad gita this is what all the acharya saints lord krishna wants us as human why you are acting as a miser just going for sense pleasure which animals also do you enjoy this great pleasure no and that pleasure yamuna chari many devotees have told this verse of yamuna chari is very famous yad avadhi mam chet krishna padar vinde nam nam rasa dhamani yudyatam rantum asi tad avadhi vatanari sangame smarimane bhavati mukha vikar sushtu nishtivanam cha so because he was a king he had enjoyed great pleasures before with women sex pleasure kings enjoy a lot but now he became pure devotee renounced everything so he is telling mama chet krishna padar vende when i think of lotus feet of krishna i am getting near pleasures this shloka we discussed previously also but this is practical example so simply by thinking of lotus feet of krishna within my heart this internal pleasure is so great when i think of the sex pleasure my mouth curls in distaste so just see this is called the pleasure of yoga simply by thinking of lotus feet of krishna of course this stage needs some practice under guidance of spiritual master but a person can sit down in any place simply think of lotus feet of krishna or chant his names and merge in unlimited happiness so that is what krishna tells here in this way self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme why would the great kings king is having all the wealth in the world why they would leave this was the culture the kings would leave the kingdom and go to jungle they would retire as rishabh dev is going parishit maharaj went yudhishthir maharaj went everybody goes dhritarashtra went why somebody is going to jungle in retirement today people want to enjoy because they know they understand that what is that greatest pleasure of life 
and thus for this greatest pleasure they leave all such mundane pleasures and such an advanced prat person after some practice can sit down anywhere simply chant and hear the names of god think about the past times forms of god or he can engage in active service also explain about god to others preach to others sing and dance uh, in the service of lord he gets unlimited internal happiness but prabhu i am satisfied with this uh, uh, sense enjoyment only so krishna tells this another important shloka very scientific shloka please let us see nicely carefully ये ही संस्पर्श जा भोगा दुख यो नय एवते आद्यवंत कौंते न तेषु रमते बुध एन इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन डज नॉट टेक पार्ट इन द सोर्स ऑफ मिजरी विच आर ड्यू टू कॉन्टैक्ट विद द मटीरियल सेंसेस ओ सन ऑफ कुंती सच प्लेजर्स हैव अ बिगनिंग एंड एन एंड एंड सो द वाइज मैन डज नॉट डिलाइट इन दैन so an intelligent man does not take part in sense enjoyment how wrong is the education today who tells us you work very hard so that you can enjoy your senses work hard party harder this partying harder is making our life more and more hard and hardest krishna is telling the creator of the world yehi sansparsh ja bhoga bhoga means pleasure sparsh when the senses contact the sense objects there is generation of immediate pleasure nice food stuff falls on the tongue pleasure genital touch pleasure i have watched some videos pleasure and we aim for this pleasure in life but krishna is telling dukha yonaya yoni means birth dukha means misery it gives rise to misery and we have discussed in so many ways how this gives rise to misery again we will discuss the uh, example because we have to hear again and again so that firmly we realize this concept so it is just like intoxication intoxication is not just of uh, cigarette alcohol or some powders any kind of sense enjoyment is called intoxication it is addiction so when a person who is intoxicating he thinks he is enjoying life that is fact but such enjoyment comes at a cost of great misery later thus the whole world knows addiction is bad but actually we see all of us are addicted what is addiction addiction means you don't need that thing but once you start using it you cannot live without it so we were not born hankering for the sense objects but something is missing in our life so we started enjoying sense objects now we cannot do without it but enjoying those objects does not give us any special pleasure as uh, the famous ceo steve jobs told money does not make me happy on his deathbed he told it is another thing i am used to so either money or people they don't give us any special pleasure the love of our life we would have married them or we would be living with them so uh, but still the miseries of life are there and many times they are the source of all the miseries in our life but we cannot do without them I was not born hankering to get addicted to football match or cricket match but now I cannot do without it. Thus we can see that we are addicted. All kind of sense enjoyment is addiction. So Krishna is telling an intelligent person who can understand this simple sense he does not take part in material enjoyment. Material enjoyment is source of all misery. He takes part in ramante yogino anante unlimited happiness which is not temporary. शक्नोति शक्नोतिहैवोढ़ प्राक्षरीर विमोक्षण काम क्रोधोद्भव वेगम संयुक्त सुखी नर बिफोर गिविंग अप दिस प्रेजेंट बॉडी इफ वन इज एबल टू टॉलरेट द अर्जेस ऑफ द मटीरियल सेंसेस एंड चेक द फोर्स ऑफ डिजायर एंड एंगर ही इज अ योगी एंड इज हैप्पी इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो आई विल रिपीट दिस प्लीज हियर केयरफुली before giving up this present body so death is the exam human life is meant for a preparation to reach immortality unlimited bliss and knowledge so before that exam before giving up this present body if one is able to one tolerate the urges of the material senses 
Do you think success means if I don't need to tolerate so much money I have, power, influence I have, whatever my senses demand, I should be able to command it, achieve it? But God is telling no. First of all, one should be able to tolerate the urges of the material senses. Second, check the force of desire. So it is not that by achieving desire we become happy, but by checking the force of desire and anger. He is a yogi and is happy in this world. So just see how wrong is our concept of happiness. We think if I am able to fulfill all my desires, if I am able to fulfill my urges, act on my urges, I'll be happy. Krishna is telling no. If you are able to tolerate the urges, if you are able to stop the force of desire, then you are happy in this world. This position has to be attained before you give up the body. Otherwise, there is another body. So please uh, understand these words and hear with great faith and attention. These are the words of God, the person who is having perfect knowledge. Yonta sukho antararamas Tathantar jyotirevayaha Sayogi brahma nirvanam Brahma bhuto digachati One whose happiness is within, who is active within, who rejoices within and is illumined within, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately he attains the Supreme. Labante Brahma Nirvanam Rishayakshina Kalmashah Chinnadvaidhayatatmanaha Sarva Bhuta Hiterata One who is beyond duality and doubt, whose mind is engaged within, who is always busy working, for the welfare of all sentient beings and who is free from all sins achieves liberation in the Supreme. So important instruction here is who attains liberation in the Supreme, who is beyond duality and doubt. One who is doubtful, he cannot be liberated. And how we can be doubtful, why doubt happens? We understood it is because of ignorance, tamoguna, sinful activities. When we do sins, break the laws of nature, we get covered by ignorance and confusions come in our life. So a person who is free from all the sins, he will have no doubt about spiritual life. That is why following four regulative principles Shastra tell is very important. Sriya Suna Dyuti Pana Yatra Dharmas Yatra Papa Chaturvidha Many places scriptures mention including Mahabharat, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no meat eating. These regulative principles are very important to be followed to come to knowledge. So sense control, especially following these four principles is very, very important. Then there will be no doubt. Everything will be clear. So if you are doubtful, we have to see, am I breaking these four regulative principles? Am I sinful? Am I so much hankering after sense enjoyment? Then we should be patient. We should not try to understand everything in one day. Just like a child, how much ever he may try to understand, cannot understand higher things. So we have to wait for our consciousness to grow and not get disturbed if we are not able to understand the concepts of spiritual life. When your mind and senses are under firm control, then you can expect doubts will go away. And then another important thing which is mentioned here is Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. He should be engaged in the welfare of all living entities. So a Sankhyaite and analyzer of the material world, he will not be interested in welfare, he will go in the Himalaya somewhere or in the ashram, he will be analyzing. But a person who is karma yogi, he will be working for the welfare of all the living entities. And what is this welfare? Welfare does not mean on the physical level. So such welfare activities are rec recommended for less intelligent people. But a person who is wise, he knows, I may take care of the body now, that is good definitely. But that is anyway happening as per the laws of nature. The birth of the body, the maintenance of the body and the destruction. Body will take birth, it will be maintained, it will be destroyed by the control of nature under God. So if I don't maintain, some other person will maintain. In womb of mother, nobody can render help to child. How child is being maintained? So when he comes out of the womb, God only is maintaining. In illusion, I may think, oh, I am opening hospitals so people are surviving. 
I am giving charity for the poor. That is why they are being fed, given clothes. But Krishna tells, "Ahankar vi murhatma." Person who is specially foolish, he will think, "I am the doer. I am taking care of anyone. God is taking care. God is giving you this brain. You are acting as instrument. If you don't act, some other person will act." So please remember, just like a child is taken care in the womb. nobody can help when the child comes out of womb the arrangement is there by supreme lord only we should not think i am the doer but those who are always selfish thinking about personal enjoyment they are encouraged to do such good activities but the real welfare work is not saving the dress of drowning man but saving the drowning man saving the spirit soul so that he does not take more miserable future dresses so that is the act of spiritual enlightenment thus distributing this knowledge is the greatest welfare activity and a karma yogi is engaged in such work so this work distribution of this knowledge if you are realize you can go and speak or you can simply distribute these literatures to others this is the greatest welfare activity kam krodh vimukta naam yati naam yat chet saam अभि तो ब्रह्म निर्वाण वर्तते विदितात्मना दोज हु आर फ्री फ्रॉम एंग एंड ऑल मटीरियल डिजायर्स हु आर सेल्फ रियलाइज सेल्फ डिसिप्लिन एंड कॉन्स्टेंटली इन डिवरिंग फॉर परफेक्शन आर अश्योर्ड ऑफ लिबरेशन इन द सुप्रीम इन द वेरी नियर फ्यूचर प्लीज मार्क द वर्ड्स अगेन अगेन सो बिकॉज दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन शुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम एंगर एंड मटीरियल डिजायर्स सो गॉड इज नॉट पार्शियल to anybody our spiritual advancement completely depends on us material happiness and distress is fixed in life people in illusion think if i work hard i'll be more happy that is not possible ye niyavan yatha dharmo dharma veha samihita sa eva tat phalan bhungte tatha tavad amutravai as we act in this life the results for next life destiny is fixed so as per our actions of previous life as soon as we take birth here our happiness and distress becomes fixed so that is why if material happiness distress in, is fixed so let me now work for my spiritual happiness and material happiness anyway does not give pleasure it is another side of distress so here it is being mentioned one should become free from anger and all material desires again krishna repeats become free so in spiritual life there is no destiny the more we put efforts in controlling our anger in curbing our material desires the more we make advancement who are self realized self disciplined great discipline is required for spiritual life also so that is why the scripture still sa guru mein abhi gachet abhi gachet means you must go for winning a medal in olympics you completely surrender to guru your coach how much more is more important to surrender to a guru who will take you to platform of liberation immortality so life should be great here krishna has mentioned self disciplined it is very very important spiritual life has to be executed in a military discipline for this expert spiritual master is required so such a person constantly endeavoring for perfection when we endeavor for perfection there would be fall downs there would be struggles but constant hard work should be there constant endeavor when a person is doing such activity he is assured of liberation in near future So Krishna has described the position of a person who is liberated in the supreme now he will describe the process called ashtang yoga to attain that position what is this process krishna gives a brief introduction in the next chapter he will give more details about this process sparshan kritva bahir bahyan chakshush chaivantare bhruvo प्राणपानौसमचारिण यतेन्द्रिय मनोबुद्धिमुनिर्मोक्षपरायण विगतेच्छा भय क्रोधो यदा मुक्त सह शटिंग आउट ऑल एक्सटर्नल सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स कीपिंग द आईज एंड विजन कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड बिटवीन द टू आईब्रोज सस्पेंडिंग the inward and outward breaths within the nostrils thus controlling the mind senses and intelligence the transcendentalist becomes free from desire 
fear and anger one who is always in this state is certainly liberated so controlling the senses by controlling your breath this is a process of pranayam which is a part of ashtanga yoga so there are different ways of controlling anger and desires so as we understood that desires are because of this body the pig has certain desire crow has certain desire we have different desires we are influenced by the body this body has certain mechanism when we are sleeping we will not have desires of the senses and uh, even though the body is paining we will not feel the pain because there is some connection which has been cut the pain is not reaching us so in a similar fashion there is a way by which we can control mechanically understanding the design of this yantra we can act in certain way by which anger and desires can fear can be kept away and that happens by ashtang yoga sitting in one place firm place going to jungle we will see details in the next chapter and uh, not closing the eyes completely that will make a person fall asleep that is why today the people who meditate with closed eyes they sleep that is not recommended by krishna half closed fully if you open then sense objects may distract us so keep it half closed focus on the tip of the nose control the breath suspend the net breath in the nostrils and in this way we will be free from fear anger and desires this is very scientific way and then you can attain the supreme but this process is very difficult and not possible for all krishna is recommending to arjuna so that arjuna can reject it so it is an instruction to all of us when 5000 years ago arjuna could not follow what is the possible for weak entities like us in kali yoga who are not trained in strict brahmacharya भोक्ता यज्ञ तपसाकमहेशर सुहृद सर्वूता शांति रक्षति द सीज इज नोइंग मी एज द अल्टिमेट पर्पज ऑफ ऑल सैक्रिफाइसिस एंड ऑस्टेरिटीज द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल प्लैनेट्स इन डेमी गॉड्स एंड द बेनिफैक्टर एंड वेल विशर ऑफ ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज attain peace from the pangs of material miseries so when the anger is gone from the body fear is gone from the body and desires material desires are also gone from the body then a person can understand supreme lord and what is that understanding bhoktaram yagya tapasam so far krishna has told give up the results of your give up the results of your work in between he gave hints that your senses should be engaged in my service to offer it to me now clearly krishna is telling bhoktaram yagya tapasam you understand that i am the enjoyer of all the sacrifices offered through the devtas or offered directly to me in knowledge but ultimately i am the beneficiary sarva lok maheshwaram i am the controller of all the planets entire universe and suridam sarva bhuta naam i am the best well wisher of everyone gyatva maam so such a yogi only when we are free from all the urges anger fear and desires we can understand this otherwise as long as we are controlled by the material urges we cannot understand about god shantim rachati when a person understands this then he gets shanti this is peace formula so we have to understand krishna is a supreme enjoyer we should work for his enjoyment what will happen if we work for his enjoyment he is sarvalok maheshwaram he is a controller of entire universe not a blade of grass moves without his permission so if the controller of entire universe is pleased with my service everything is under his control how there can be any disturbance in my life oh but that is autocratic krishna wants me to force so krishna is telling no so rhythm so rhythm means he is our best well wisher our eternal relative just like the parents are telling child in a similar fashion krishna is telling so rhythm i am not autocratic ruler parents are not autocratic they are best well wishers of children similarly krishna is telling so rhythm i am your best well wisher so when a person understands this knowledge so he engages only in the loving service of krishna and then shantim rachati then he attains peace so this process can be attained by sankhya analyzing the world 
can be attained by ashtang yoga going sitting in the jungle himalayas and meditating on krishna within the heart and can very easily be realized by directly doing karma yoga or buddhi yoga engaging in the service of krishna that krishna will explain very nicely we will see in the next chapter. so in this chapter we saw uh, krishna has clarified yes knowledge is important and acting in devotional service is also important and both of them are one path only in illusion we think that they are different still the path of karma yoga is better because very soon it does not take many many births even is sincere in one birth one can attain god achirena adigachati and this path is full of bliss full of pleasure controlling senses could be very difficult one may wonder how to control anger how to do this thing it becomes very easy for a karma yogi because he is always enjoying the pleasure of meditating upon krishna there is no time for him to think about anything else people have praised me given honor to me criticized me given me dishonor my senses are happy in distress he is not at all bothered because he is always absorbed in meditation upon lotus feet of krishna on the holy name of krishna so thus uh, when a person engages in service then there is pleasure in the life there is no time to become angry nobody can disturb him there is no other desire because he is satisfied by virtue of his service uh, loving service to krishna so this becomes very very easy and it is practical also when we engage in service of krishna we will see automatically all the senses become gradually silent it becomes very easy the self control so krishna is telling this process is more important then he explained the situation of yogi yogi is always on platform of equanimity unless equanimity is there it is not possible to understand god one should work for the welfare of other living entities real welfare is to bring them to spiritual platform immortality so that they don't have to accept these temporary dresses and to attain that supreme platform this process of ashtang yoga krishna has given brief and the details whether that should be followed or not will be explained in the next chapter thank you so much for hearing hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna 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 hare hare हरे रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सिक्स चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता विच इज सांख्य योगा द सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद आर स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर एंड द फाउंडर एंड आचार्य ऑफ वर्ल्ड वाइड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट In the previous chapter Arjuna got perplexed and he was trying to understand Krishna please explain me who is better A sanyasi is better because you are telling me to give up all these fruity works or the position of a yogi is better who is working for Krishna So Krishna explained both the processes they are one path only one is finding the root another is watering the root a renouncer will attain the same end and a karma yogi will also attain the same end but one process is very long a renouncer who is gyan yogi will take many many births because he is doing research based his own limited intelligence and senses whereas a karma yogi or a bhakti yogi he engages himself in the service of krishna and then krishna being pleased with him the supreme personality of godhead he reveals himself and this process is na chirena digachati krishna explained it is very quick so a wise man should follow the direct path the quickest path rather than following the long serpentine route but nevertheless both the processes will lead to the same result here lord krishna is further explaining the superiority of karma yoga श्री भगवाच अनाश्रिता कर्म फल कार्य कर्म कौति यसन्यासी चोगी चाग्निर्न चाक्रिय 
the blessed lord said one who is unattached to the fruits of his work and works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life and he is a true mystic not he who lights no fire and performs no work so here krishna is explaining who is a true renouncer and a true yogi sa sanyasi cha yogi cha so some sanyasis they stop performing dagni hotra sacrifices which every householder is supposed to perform the fire sacrifice because a sanyasi is considered to be liberated there is no more obligation to do such yagyas but unless the heart is purified simply stopping the yagyas and assuming you have become liberated this is not recommended attitude so krishna is telling he is not actual sanyasi who stops giving up uh the who stops doing the sacrifice and who thinks i am a liberated man similarly a yogi may not be doing any activity sitting in one place but better than both of them the actual yogi the actual sanyasi is the person which is beautifully explained here in the first line anashritah karma phalam karyam karma karoti yah one who does not work to enjoy the results of his activities he is a real sanyasi because in other two cases a gyani he is also actually looking for the result of his activities although he has given up materialistic activities but still his activity of gaining salvation has got little self interest he wants his personal peace of moksha when the soul gets moksha liberation then there is immense peace brahmananda so that peace that self interest is still there in this activity of renunciation similarly a yogi may desire mystic power or may desire merging in the body of krishna so those who are followers of eightfold yoga system usually they do it for the mystic powers ashtanga yoga or hatha yoga but some of them they are advanced and they understand god has got a form which is present in the heart but even though they understand god has got a form they want to merge in that form unless they advance to the real stage and they become bhakti yogis so the yogi who is actually able to see krishna within the heart he becomes a devotee he gets attracted by the beauty of krishna other yogis they simply imagine the form of krishna within the heart present as vishnu murti the four handed form and imagining the form in the heart they try to perfect their yoga system such devotees usually try to merge in the body of krishna so there is also self interest either i want mystical powers ashta siddhis or i want to merge in the body of krishna but a bhakti yogi or a karma yogi he does not have any selfish desires who just wants to sacrifice all the activities the results of the activities for krishna thus this is called real sanyas this is what chaitanya mahaprabhu told na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadish kamaye mam janmani janmani shware bhavata bhaktir ahetuki tvai na dhanam i do not want dhan i don't want any money then chaitanya mahaprabhu says i don't want followers also na sundarim i don't want very beautiful wife for myself then what do you want you want moksha you don't want any of these material opulences no mam janmani janmanishwari i don't even want liberation this is called the topmost sanyas the topmost yogi he has no self interest other yogi sanyasis they have this self interest i want moksha i want liberation but an actual yogi krishna is explaining here he is real yogi sa sanyasi cha yogi cha he is a renouncer he is a yogi who has no self interest at all whose interest is simply janmani janmanishware bhavata bhaktir ahetu ki tvai whose interest is only in serving god you want to you want me to have births here life after life then let me have it but please engage me in your service or you want to give me liberation want to call me to the spiritual abode of yours that is also fine but please engage me in your service pleasure of lord service of the lord is the only desire 
and such a person is true yogi anashrita karma phalam karyam karma karoti ya he does the activities but he is not attached to the results because he offers them to krishna so very beautiful definition of sanyasi and yogi is given here then krishna explains yam sanyasam ite prahur yogam tam vidhi pandava nahi asanyast sankalpo yogi bhavati kashchana what is called renunciation is the same as yoga or linking one self with the supreme for no one can become yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification so it is not the object of sense gratification which has to be renounced but the desire for enjoying the object the example given is that of a cashier a cashier need not give up the money and need not enjoy the money for his personal interest both are illegal if a cashier tells i don't want money take it away i will not accept no it is your duty you have been given the job of cashier so that you can accept money for the proprietor of the bank and when the cashier uses the money for the proprietor of the bank his bonding with the proprietor becomes strong this is called yoga this is called karma yoga or bhakti yoga you work very nicely you collect all the money and offer it to the proprietor so giving up money is illegal and if the cashier thinks so oh, let me enjoy all the money for my benefit that is also legal that also one cannot do so sanyasis those who give up their household and materialistic pursuits they go to jungle and himalayas and they try to practice yoga they are also not properly situated that is better than a materialist but they have to advance further why they are not properly situated because they are thinking my house or my village does not belong to me but the jungle or himalayas belong to me i can live there no sir how can you renounce and further renunciation is possible when something belongs to you so it never belonged to me i am a tenant here i have been given birth in this body my body stays in some house or place as appointed by god and for the assigned time i will continue my activities then i will be forced to live forced to leave that place so thus i am a tenant here it is not my place so where is the question of renouncing that is why the real sanyas is anasaktasya vishayan yatharham upayunjataha nirbandhe krishna sambandhe yuktam vairagyam uchyate the right vairagya sanyas or renunciation is without getting attached to the objects of the senses in whichever situation you are you use the objects of senses around you the people around you in the service of krishna connect them back to krishna because everything belongs to krishna this is called yuktam vairagya that is this is perfect this is real vairagya or renunciation just like a cashier is completely renounced he is not thinking i will enjoy one penny he will collect millions and deposit everything in the bank coffers with the proprietor so this is called actual vairagya so this is very important point enjoying is illegal and giving up also is illegal but using everything that god has given in the service of god this is the perfect course of action which is being recommended to arjuna here you have been given the ability to fight you have the training now you fight but fight for my satisfaction as per my direction this is perfect yoga this makes the relationship between the living entity and the supreme god proprietor very strong and this strong relationship connection is called yoga the topmost yoga arurukshor muner yogam karma karanam uchyate yoga rudhasya tasyaiva shamah karanam uchyate for one who is a neophyte in the eightfold yoga system work is said to be the means and for one who has already attained to yoga cessation of all material activities is said to be the means so now here in this chapter krishna will explain the ashtanga yoga process which has got eight elements yam niyam asan pranayam dharana dhyan pratyahar samadhi so these eight elements when practiced 
under the guidance of a proper spiritual master that is called ashtanga yoga not only practicing some breathing exercise a segment of pranayam and some bodily exercises which are called asanas these are but two elements of the eight which are supposed to be practiced to attain yogic perfection so actually nobody should call oneself a yog guru because whatever this yoga system we see they are only teaching us for physical benefits mainly so yoga is not for physical but for transcending the limits of the physique to go to spiritual platform and any person who is perfectly practiced in this art of ashtanga yoga he must have ashta siddhis also which are those ashta siddhis anima mahima laghima one can become smaller than the smallest nobody can lock him anywhere this is a siddhi and uh, even the britishers have in their records they would capture a person in the jail and then next day he would be out so many times they try to capture that sadhu but then he would be out we were not able to understand like this many instances are there this call anima siddhi similarly shukdev goswami liberated personality the son of vedavyas he was able to stay in the womb of his mother for uh, 16 years how is it possible so it is possible liberated personalities do have such siddhis then laghima person can be can become very light one can walk on water or one can walk on sunbeams such things are possible then mahima one person person can become very huge so whatever the descriptions of demons we see in the krishna leela very huge uh, bird or snake or horse we think it is mythology no it is not mythology it is a fact those people were great yogis yogis can change the form even now we can change the form isn't it uh, although not much now we are successful just in changing the gender male can become female and vice versa similarly entire body also can be changed so by gross process uh, we are accomplishing this thing but by subtle processes also it was possible and that is a yog siddhi you can change take any desired form kama vasaita prakamya prapti whatever is there in the universe any planet you can just extend your hand and get it and uh, you can control ishitva vashitva other people's minds so like this eight siddhis are supposed to be in possession of a perfect yogi but nobody has even one of these siddhis these days so what we are understanding today in the name of ashtanga yoga is only pranayam and asanas which are meant to keep the body and mind fit body should be fit mind should be peaceful because only with peaceful mind person can focus on the super soul present within the heart which is the aim of yoga so the aim is forgotten just physical fitness is going on so here krishna is telling there are two stages in this ashtang yoga practice aruruksha and yoga arudha aruruksha means in the beginning stage work is said to be the means so asan pranayam these are various works you have to uh, spread your hands and legs twist and turn yourself breathe in breathe out and yama niyam before that even practicing the physical postures and breathing exercises do's and don'ts are very important which we will see krishna will explain and people don't know that and don't follow that these do's and don'ts also are very tough so after yama and niyama you do asan and pranayam so these are called fruitive activities work is involved and after this on advanced stage shamah karanam uchyate cessation of work is said to be the means then you stop all work and meditate on supreme lord within the heart yada hi nendriyartheshu na karma svanu sajjate sarva sankalp sanyasi yoga rudhasta dochyate a person is said to have attained to yoga when having renounced all material desires he neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruitive activities yoga rudas tadochyate so how do we understand that a person has reached advanced stage of yoga realization so here it is mentioned yada hi na indriyartheshu he does not indulge in enjoyment of senses today people are doing asanas and pranayam so that they can enjoy senses more body is fit to eat more and there is loss of belly fat and then there is increase in sexual power 
this is not the purpose the purpose is to completely regulate stop the activities of enjoying the material senses and na karmasv anushajyate stop the fruitive activities also either a person is working hard to get the objects of sense enjoyment or one is indulged in sense enjoyment this is life of a materialist and yogi means he has stopped both these activities he is neither engaged in enjoying his own senses nor he is working to get the objects of sense enjoyment then we can understand that a person has reached advanced stage of yoga uddhare datmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet atmaiv hi atmano bandhur atmaiv ripuratmanah a man must elevate himself by his own mind not degrade himself the mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well in the vedas in mahabharat this body is compared to a chariot in chariot there are horses so the horses are compared to the senses we have got five senses so our body chariot of body has got five horses eyes ears nose because of these senses only we are able to move around and do the activities so chariot cannot move around without horses senses are horses how the horses are controlled by reins so which are the reins in this body that is the mind mind is controlling the senses so if the senses are horses then the reins are compared to mind now who controls the mind that is called intelligence faculty of discrimination so charioteer is called intelligence and who is the rider or passenger that is the soul so we are the passenger in this chariot and we are supposed to give direction to the intelligence intelligence you please take me in this direction an intelligence controlling the reins he directs the horses you take me in this way that so if a person has not trained mind very nicely then the senses will go loose and the person will have a very horrible ride that is what is happening with us instead of we directing the mind and intelligence to control the senses we are taking the direction from the senses horses are running wildly wherever they find grass or eatables and then we are having a very horrible ride and suffering so vedic culture trains a person to regulate the senses very nicely by strengthening the controller of the chariot the intelligence so with intelligence or mind here it is mentioned one must elevate himself and not degrade himself so one who has controlled the mind the mind is friend but one who has not been able to control the mind mind will serve as enemy so that krishna explains further in the next verse bandhuratmatmanastasya yenatmaiv atmana jitah anatmanastu shatrutve vartet atmaiv shatruvat for him who has conquered the mind the mind is the best of the friends but for one who has failed to do so his very mind will be the greatest enemy so one who has conquered the mind he is able to control the mind very nicely then mind is best friend and if one has not been if one is taking the dictates from the mind then it is very dangerous situation mind becomes one's enemy what is enemy enemy means a person who takes away your riches who plunders you who captures you or finally who comes and kills you and actually all these things are happening to us just because of mind the mind makes us believe that i am this body and enjoyment of body is my enjoyment and thus mind plunders away all the money that we earn in our life for temporary sense enjoyment which anyway never satisfies us it is very temporary and the desire to enjoy always keeps on increasing in this way mind plunders away all our money in temporary sense enjoyment so thus uncontrolled mind is enemy it is plundering you and then the enemy can capture you to do slavery and that is what mind does to us mind makes us believe you are the body this life is only life you should be famous 
we should maintain and show status in society and thus mind makes us slog very hard day and night not understanding that i am not the body i am spirit soul i am eternal why am i working for something temporary i should work something on the eternal platform for permanent results but mind creates illusion and makes us work very very hard day in and day out and everything that we attain it is left with the body here so mind puts us to slavery and then finally mind creates so many material desires because of which we have to take so many bodies life after life and undergo so many births and deaths thus uncontrolled mind is the cause of death so the death and the concomitant other problems diseases old age working very hard stress anxiety everything is being given to us because of uncontrolled mind who is acting as our enemy so this is very important we are trying to control missiles cruise missiles satellites space vehicles but we do not know how to control the mind so krishna is telling your mind is the biggest enemy if it is uncontrolled and it is the best friend if it is controlled so controlling of mind this training is very very important this is called shamaha mind control which was taught to the brahmacharis in the gurukul in the vedic school now in the school our children are uh, you know they encourage okay you let your senses loose parents think if i give whatever my child desires that would be the benefit of the child no it is the reverse the more you teach them a simple way of living regulation of senses the more they are able to advance in knowledge and they are able to make the best use of mind as their best friend so i request that we practice this very important element in the yoga process which is called controlling the mind so there are two ways of doing it that krishna will explain further so please uh, try to hear carefully what krishna is advising arjuna will ask krishna it is not possible for me mind is very difficult to be controlled then krishna recommends two things which are those two things please stay put we will discuss जितात्मन प्रशात परमात्मा सहिता शीतोष्णा सुख दुखेशु तथा मनापमान पवन हु हेज कॉन्कर्ड द माइंड द सुपर सोल इज ऑलरेडी रीच्ड फॉर ही हेज अटेन ट्रैंक्विलिटी टू सच अ मैन हैप्पीनेस एंड डिस्ट्रेस हीट एंड कोल्ड ऑनर एंड डिसऑनर आर ऑल द सेम one who has conquered the mind super soul that is the purpose of this eightfold yoga system which is described here it is already reached because mind is our driver it is taking us everywhere either in repeated births and deaths or to the spiritual kingdom so if you sit in a nice vehicle whose driver is very controlled then you are assumed to have reached the destination as soon as you board the flight train or bus you become relaxed okay now i'm sitting it's just a matter of time i have reached my destination in a similar fashion krishna is telling super soul is already reached for one who has controlled the mind simply if you are able to do this then our perfection is assured just a matter of time and to such a person who has controlled the mind he is always very tranquil for tranquility we need not make any external adjustments just control the mind and then heat and cold honor and dishonor it's all the same ज्ञान विज्ञान तृप्तात्मा कूटस्थो विजितेन्द्रिय युक्त इच्यते योगी समलोष्ट्राश्म कांचन अ पर्सन इज सेट टू बी स्टैब्लिश्ड इन सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड इज कॉल अ योगी और मिस्टिक वेन ही इज फुली सैटिस्फाइड बाय वर्च्यू ऑफ अक्वायर्ड नॉलेज एंड रियलाइजेशन सच अ पर्सन इज सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस एंड इज सेल्फ कंट्रोल्ड he sees everything whether it be pebbles stones or gold as the same so krishna is explaining the progress in the ladder of yoga first of all one has to control the mind unless the mind is controlled there is no question of coming to the platform of gyan or knowledge even theoretical pos- knowledge is not possible to understand so control the mind then we will be able to understand logics but just understanding logics theory is not important unless it is put to 
practical which is called vigyan that is called realization a person we know fire is hot fire is hot but touching and experiencing the heat that is called vigyan realization so just repeating i am not the body is not sufficient one should be able to realize that i am not the body that is called vigyan and act on the platform of spirit soul so here it is explained gyan vigyan triptatma kutastho vijitendriya a person is said to be perfect yogi when samaloshtrashma kanchana when he sees stones pebbles and gold all on the same level oh really stone pebbles and gold i will see everything as one yes this is called advanced stage of yoga now we are indifferent towards stones and pebbles and gold is something we aspire for very valuable but when we are a yogi perfect yogi these things will be same for us why it will be same for us because uh, just like when a person is full he has eaten sufficiently in a feast even if you give him something he likes or he does not like both things are on the same platform he does not care for any more eating because he is completely full and satisfied so a yogi here it is explained gyan vigyan triptatma he is completely satisfied by the virtue of acquired theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge gyan and vigyan vigyan means self realization so when a person actually realizes the spiritual knowledge he becomes completely satisfied tript tript means satisfied self satisfied and then vijitendriya he is able to control his senses if you are full you have eaten sufficiently controlling tongue and belly is very easy you cannot take any more so such a yogi who is satisfied for him controlling the senses becomes very easy in the initial stages it is tough so we need to reach this platform where we are completely satisfied then a yogi advances further what is that level surin mitra ryudasina madhyastha dvesh bandhushu sadushvapi cha papeshu sama buddhir vishishyate a person is said to be still further advanced when he regards all the honest well wisher friends and enemies the envious the pious the sinner and those who are indifferent and impartial with an equal mind so in the previous verse we saw he sees no difference between the matter now he does not see difference even though there is apparent difference in the behavior of living entities around him somebody will act as a friend somebody will act as enemy somebody will praise somebody will criticize somebody would be honest well wisher he sees no difference at all why because he perfectly realizes this world is just like a drama nato natya dharo yatha so everybody is acting although they are not conscious they think oh this is reality but no nature is forcing us to act in certain way the spirit soul is same in the body of elephant that we saw shuni chaiva shapake cha pandita samadarshina pandita means learned person he does not make any difference here is a cow here is dog here is dog eater here is brahman chandal he does not make any difference because he sees these are only dresses so material nature makes us believe that i am this dress and the soul is behaving like dog cat fish tortoise human being man woman all because of hallucination but a person knows this just a temporary dramatic platform people are acting as per their dresses so somebody praises just like in drama two people are acting as enemies but as soon as the drama is over they are friends or even on stage they don't have any animosity in the heart they understand that we both are acting so in this way yogi realizes everybody simply acting under the control of material nature so nobody takes the dealings in a drama seriously so he regards everyone as equal same spirit soul the differences are because of all these external coverings so this is even more advanced stage thus in honor in uh, blame criticism he is always equally poised tranquil not disturbed at all whether i become rich or i remain poor it does not matter he just wants to shariram kevalam karma maintain his body whether a person becomes rich in drama or poor in drama ultimately it's a drama temporary platform we are completely different from temporary opulence or scarcity of this world yogi yunjita satatam 
आत्मानं रहसी स्थित एकाकीयत चित्तात्मा निराशीर परिग्रह अ ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट शुड ऑलवेज ट्राई टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट इज माइंड ऑन द सुप्रीम सेल्फ ही शुड लिव अलोन इन अ सेक्लूडेड प्लेस एंड शुड ऑलवेज केयरफुली कंट्रोल हिज माइंड ही शुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम द डिजायर्स एंड फीलिंग्स ऑफ पॉजिटिवनेस now krishna is explaining the do's and don'ts of this yoga system so before one even begins to practice this eight fold yoga system if at all we want to make our life perfect then we have to practice these do's and don'ts which are those do's and don'ts first of all a person should be a parigraha having no feelings of possessiveness one should be thoroughly convinced the house that i have property that i have people that i have do not belong to me everything belongs to god and nirashir nirashir means free from all desires having no material desires and then very important word is atmanam rahasi sthitah ekaki one should live ekaki alone rahasi means in a secluded place so one is supposed to live alone in a secluded place so now we see many many people they are practicing uh, these asanas and pranayams in community they call it group program or group uh, sadhana kriya all these things they are not recommended here so bhagavad gita patanjali yoga sutra these are the most authorized uh, descriptions of practicing this yoga so this is a preliminary qualification perfection is not attained by doing it in group the yogi should do it alone in a secluded place and before that one has to attain freedom from all feelings of possessiveness and material desires next one one is supposed to do shuchau deshe pratishthapya sthiram asana matmanah nati uchritam nati neecham chaila jinakushottaram tatra ekagram manah kritva yat chittendriya kriya उपवेश्यासने युंज्याद योगम आत्मा विशुद्धये फर्दर वेरी डिफिकल्ट रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस शुचा उद्देश्य प्रतिष्ठाप्य स्थिरम मासन मात्मनः टू प्रैक्टिस योगा वन शुड गो टू अ सेक्लूडेड प्लेस एंड शुड ले कुशा ग्रास ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड देन कवर इट विद अ डियर स्किन एंड अ सॉफ्ट क्लॉथ द सीट शुड नीदर बी टू हाई नॉट टू लो and should be situated in a sacred place the yogi should then sit on it very firmly and should practice yoga by controlling the mind and the senses purifying the heart and fixing the mind on one point first of all shucha udeshe pratishthapya person go should go to shuchi means clean clean means place with is satvik it cannot be practiced in cities and villages which are in mode of passion when has to go to satvik that means jungles and mountains natural places so it is very difficult who is willing to go to jungle or mountains but this is the first prerequisite before explaining anything krishna tells this you control your material desires you finish the feelings of possessiveness and you leave everything and you go to a secluded place and then sthiram asanam atmanah you sit down in uh, a firm pose so initially various asanas and postures a person is supposed to do and finally one has to just sit in one place and close all the activities of the senses shana shana uparamed no senses should be indulged in activities and a person is expected not to sleep not to eat and not to drink also for many many years person has to keep on sitting like this so sometimes that is why the flesh is eaten away by the insects because you have to sit for many many years hundreds and thousands of years also sometimes there are ant hills and there are examples like hiranyakashipu was doing this tapasya the flesh was eaten away by the insects or many yogis the ants made hill on their bodies so very severe tapasya so without shaking without worrying person should fix his intelligence uh, his mind on one point so if a person is not having positive knowledge of god 
and out of love person is always thinking of krishna then this mechanical way of material detachment or fixing mind on krishna that is recommended so it's very tough again krishna is telling secluded sacred place secluded sacred place now also if you go to the places uh haridwar rishikesh and upwards you will find yogi sitting there but they don't do in group if at all they are doing they do not know some yoga societies are sprung up but that is not as per the instructions given in sankhi yoga in this chapter either by uh lord krishna who is explaining to arjuna or kapil muni who explained the same process to devahuti alone you have to go and you don't uh get carried away by oh what will happen who will take care of me person should be completely dependent upon god one should not fear or oh, some snake may come tiger may come even if tiger is coming you cannot look towards the tiger you keep on staring at the tip of nose as krishna mentions here samam kaya shirogrivam dharayan nachalam sthirah samprekshanasikagram swam dishascha navalokayan प्रशातात्मा विगत ब्रह्मचारी व्रते स्थित मन संयम्य मच्चि युक्त आसीत मत्पर वन शुड होल वंस बॉडी नेक एंड हेड इन स्ट्रेट लाइन नॉट इन अ लूज पॉस्चर एंड आई शुड बी हाफ क्लोज हियर इट इज मेन्शंड and stare steadily at the tip of the nose sam preksha nasikagram swam it is not mentioned you close your eyes completely with your eyes you should stare at the tip of the nose so if you open your eyes completely you may get distracted by the motion of various objects and if you close completely then you may fall asleep so uh, in many yoga societies they are telling close the eyes completely and most of them they fall asleep and they think oh yes i am feeling such great peace but this peace is not the result of any yoga or meditation it is because we had fallen asleep so completely closing the eyes is not recommended eyes are half closed staring at the tip of nose and prashant atma vigat bhir person should be completely devoid of fear and because they have strong faith in god god is there in the heart of all the living entities so god will protect me if he wants to protect and if he wants to finish this body then he can finish it so a person is fearless so sitting in a jungle there are no lights nobody to help you no protection alone you have to keep on sitting so many wild animals but a person should be fearless and brahmachari vrate sthitah following brahmacharya is very important <clears throat> now unfortunately some people are diluting the meaning also of the brahmacharya brahmacharya they are telling simply you discuss about spiritual life about brahma that is called brahmacharya no the definition of brahmacharya is given by various sages it is uh, uh, like sage yagyavalkya says karmana manasa vacha sarva avastha tu sarvada sarvatra maithunya parityago brahmacharyam prachakshate karmana manasa vacha means in actions in mind and in speech sarva avastha su in all situations all circumstances at all times सर्वत्र मैथुन्य परित्यागो वन शुड गिव अप सेक्स लाइफ दैट इज कॉल्ड ब्रह्मचर्य सो इफ अ पर्सन वॉन्ट्स टू इंडल्ज इन सेक्स लाइफ सॉरी सर इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो इन ज्ञान स्कूल एंड इन अष्टांग योग स्कूल इट इज स्ट्रिक्ट नो वन कैन नॉट इंडल्ज इन सेक्स लाइफ एट ऑल बट इन द भक्ति स्कूल सेक्स लाइफ इज अलाउड दैट ऑल्सो कृष्णा विल एक्सप्लेन in the 10th chapter so sex life is allowed for the grahasthas but as per the regulative principles uh, not for simply carnal enjoyment but for bringing a good soul an advanced spiritual soul in this world so that he can help himself and others in attaining the goal of life so for this proper rules and regulations are there governing the sex life also so such a person is admitted a regulated householder in the bhakti school because bhakti school is very very powerful because there is so much pleasure tripta atma a person is so much satisfied in engaging in service of krishna that he is able to automatically come out of the clutches of sens- sensual pleasures even though he is living in the household affairs 
but in other schools because there is no pleasure of acting in service of krishna you are simply cultivating knowledge impersonal knowledge or you are sitting somewhere and trying to mechanically and artificially control the senses by not looking at anything by not eating anything by not interacting with anybody and mechanically controlling the airs within the body thus pacifying the mind mechanical process you are doing but bhakti is spontaneous process when you engage in service of krishna krishna gives knowledge from the heart there is attraction so much pleasure in such activity that automatically person gives up lower pleasures of sense enjoyment so such sex life is allowed in the bhakti school that also under regulation for producing good children but otherwise in other schools it is strict no first of all before following the process of gyan yoga or ashtanga yoga you give up your family life and sex life you come to jungle himalayas mountains and there you sit alone without any fear eyes half closed body neck head in straight line and in this way you learn to meditate focus mind on one point and further it is mentioned mana sanyamya now mind should be controlled not so that it should be focused on candle light or sun moon or simply our breath ultimately so that mat chittah krishna has mentioned here one should meditate upon me mat chittah consciousness should be fixed on me direct word is used here but nobody tells this that that you meditate on krishna so by controlling the mind mat chittah yukta asit mat paraha mat paraha means krishna should be made the goal of life the goal of life is not to get some powers or to awaken your kundalini and do some magical feats for gaining public attention ultimately whatever you attain that will be lost once we leave the body so sensible person who understands yoga also knows the purpose of yoga and the purpose is mat paraha going to krishna should be made the ultimate aim of life युंजन सदात्मा योगी नियतमान सह शांति निर्वाण परमा मत्संस्था अधिगछति दस प्रैक्टिसिंग कंट्रोल ऑफ द बॉडी माइंड एंड एक्टिविटीज द मिस्टिक ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट अटेन्स टू द किंगडम ऑफ गॉड और द अबोर्ड ऑफ कृष्णा बाय सेशन ऑफ मटीरियल एग्जिस्टेंस सो दिस वर्ड मत संस्थाम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर संस्था मीन्स इस्टैब्लिशमेंट सो कृष्णा हैज गॉट हिज ओन इस्टैब्लिशमेंट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वी आर डिस्कस इन द बिगिनिंग ऑफ भगवद गीता ऑल्सो गॉड द एब्जुलट ट्रूथ इज रियलाइज इन थ्री डिफरेंट अंडरस्टैंडिंग थ्री डिफरेंट फेजेस दैट इज एक्सप्लेन इन श्रीमद भागवतम वदंती तत् तत्विद तत्व यज ज्ञानम अद्वयम ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्द्यते द सेम अल्टीमेट ट्रुथ रियलिटी फ्रॉम होम एवरीथिंग इज एमिनेटिंग इज मेंटेन्ड बाय एंड ही ओनली क्रिएट सिस्टमेटिक डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड हु इज ही द सुप्रीम ट्रुथ ही इज अंडरस्टूड इन थ्री फेजेस ब्रह्म परमात्मा एंड भगवान व्हिच आर नॉन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन अनदर द एग्जांपल गिवन इज दैट ऑफ मिल्क इन द शास्त्रास somebody will tell what is milk oh milk is something white if he simply uses his visual sensation to see milk he can only understand it is white and uh, when a person is able to touch he will tell oh it is liquid when a person is able to taste he will describe the taste of milk also so in this way the same milk is perceived in different way depending from which sense we are approaching milk if we approach milk from eyes we will tell it is white if we approach closing the eyes we simply touch the milk we will tell oh milk is liquid and if we taste it we will describe the taste of the milk so the same milk is having different perceptions depends through which sense we are approaching the milk but what is milk if we tell milk is only liquid that is not the perfect understanding of milk if we tell milk is only white that is also not perfect understanding milk is a substance milk in a similar fashion the absolute truth is a personality he is a person unless the origin has got a form has got various qualities of uh, having the tendency to eat having tendency to cut jokes having tendency to socialize how shall we in the creation develop such qualities the child is a person because father is person 
these qualities are passed down in the generations so there is no possibility of a drop having any quality which is not present in the ocean there is no possibility the ocean is having everything that a drop is having plus many more things which a drop is not having so god or the origin of this world should have everything that we have and many things which we do not have so this is simple to understand something is eternal from which everything is coming out now that thing as some people assume it is simply an energy when they approach through the process of gyana so yes supreme god is also energy because there is no difference between the energy and energetic just like sun and sunlight there is no difference sunlight cannot exist without sun or sun cannot exist sun glow cannot exist without its light both are together one unit only in that sense there is no difference between god and his energy but still there is difference so if absolute truth is simply energy then why so many forms man woman and we want to socialize we want to eat this eating tendency enjoying tendency playing tendency socializing tendency how it is coming in us because it is present in the absolute truth so this is very this personal understanding is very important because of lack of impersonal understanding simply talking energy 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 and forgetting the energetic people have become disinterested in spiritual life oh what will i do by spiritual perfection it appears kind of suicide that you have to go and mix in some energy at least even though there is misery here there is some pleasure i laugh, laugh talk walk with people but no spiritual life is also full of personal interaction spiritual life is also there is a spiritual world just like here the civilization is different in jungle civilization could be different in uh, rich countries the comforts of life civilization language is different similarly in the spiritual abode where the bodies are completely made up of spirit where the supreme person lives there is also civilization and krishna is telling here mat sanstham to that establishment or my abode my kingdom adigachati the yogi attains that place this is the purpose of yoga if a yogi is not having knowledge of abode of krishna then he may transfer himself to any other planet which is which is having better comforts of life those are described in the vedas but if he has perfect knowledge he does not desire to go to any place which is temporary within this material universe he simply tries to go to mad sansthan adigachati krishna's abode so it is not fantasy if we are hearing for the first time you need to deliberate upon it uh, so we have to understand if you do not have guidance about a place then we follow a map we follow the books if somebody tells us that this is a population of this place this is the culture of that place we cannot go and see that we read it from the books similarly we read from the vedic literatures what is the situation of the place which is completely made up of spirit where god lives so one should try to do research on bona fide book directly going and doing research about different countries may not be possible for everyone if we are advanced yogi we can fly in there using siddhis and we can go and practically see the spiritual world but that may not be possible for everyone so other normal people just like we read the books and we understand that this is the technology they have gone to this place and they have found like that we hear but research should be done on the authoritative book in a similar fashion we should read carefully that vedas this is fantasy mythology or reality and if we have a careful reading under proper guidance we understand that it is perfect fact it is written and approved by people who have dedicated their life just to find truth and nothing else they would live in jungles just do research about truth and others who are fortunate they understand truth in the guru parampara coming from god himself that is vedic knowledge natyashnatastu yogosti na chay kantam anashnatah na chati swapna shilasya jagrato naiva charjuna there is no possibility of once becoming a yogi or arjuna if one eats too much or eats too little sleeps too much or does not sleep enough now krishna is mentioning further regulations do's and don'ts in yoga there is no possibility of doing yoga if one eats too much or too little 
that is why and further another understanding is what is too much eating not just quantity but also variety it is not required to kill animals if we simply want to maintain our body and soul together for the purpose of attaining doing yoga so eating animals is also called excess eating or overeating unnecessary we should not cause harm to living entities who are highly conscious if somebody cuts our hand we feel pain we are giving pain to them also if we kill the calf cow keeps on crying always feels very bad just like a mother loses a child they also have feelings so why to give so much unnecessary trouble to other living entities simply for satisfying the taste which can be satisfied by a uh, very healthy consumption of natural food in which killing is not involved so if you want to practice yoga such regulation is very important na ashna tashtu yoga asti a person cannot do yoga if he overeats if he eats more quantity or more variety which is not required just to keep body and soul together and if he eat less then also it is not possible if somebody eats less than it is told in the ayurveda they will get tuberculosis and if they eat more then they will get diabetes so regulation in eating is important and regulation in sleep is also important yes we have to minimize our eating and sleeping but not artificially but gradually the more we advance in the process of spiritual life the more realization awakens i am not the body the desires of the body gradually mitigate but artificially it should not be done as much as the body requires we should fulfill to that extent so that is why it is being recommended in the vedas one should eat at fixed times the fixed amount the amount recommended for yogi is 50% should be filled with solid food suppose you eat chapatis or bread and you are full by eating six chapatis then you eat three that is called 50% solid and 25% should be filled with liquid we can have some liquid in our food or we can have water and then 25% should be left for air circulation in this way we will be able to keep our body free from all the diseases and if our diet is controlled then we need not practice any gymnastics or other things shila prabhupad explains we will be fit simply by controlling the diet so so many other exercises asanas pranayams are mentioned for people who cannot digest their food so if we are regulation if we have regulation in controlling our tongue then a person can maintain very good health simply we have to eat on time sleep on time get up on time by controlling our tongue and having a very regulated disciplined life anybody can maintain his health very nicely but this regulation is important further lord krishna explains four kinds of regulations in order to mitigate all stress of life using yoga krishna explains yukta hara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapnav bodhasya yogo bhavati dukha ha he who is temperate in his habits of eating sleeping working and recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system so any yoga we are following even we are following bhakti yoga we are chanting the names of god sometimes the devotees miss this part that we have to have regulation great discipline in our life if we want even material happiness we need to have great discipline in our life if we are disciplined in all our activities of eating sleeping making mating talking then we'll be happy material miseries will not touch us so krishna mentions specially four kinds of regulations and they are yukt ahar ahar means diet what krishna has mentioned in the previous verse it is very important and among the diet also what kind of diet we should take that we discussed in 13th verse of third chapter what is that krishna mentions bhunjante te tvagham papa ye pachanti atma karanat yagya shishta shina santo vachyante sarva kil vishay one should eat only food which is offered to krishna that becomes spiritualized in its effect and then the force of material nature prakritim cha hato jasam it does not affect us it keeps on reducing the more we take prasadam so the food which is offered to krishna under the guidance of spiritual master or which is offered in the yagya now in kali yuga it is not possible that food becomes spiritually surcharged and by taking that food a person remains away from the influence of material energy 
and one is able to think of god always so first of all one should take only prasadam if one wants to advance in spiritual life and another regulation the scriptures mention in eating is doing fasting that is also very important for spiritual advancement of life and also for keeping the body fit fasting is very important especially twice in a month a person is supposed to fast that is the 11th day of waxing and waning moon which is technically called ekadashi so on two ekadashis the 11 days of the fortnight person is supposed to fast minimum and then there are various other days of appearance uh, of god disappearance also of various spiritual masters as guided by the scriptures we are supposed to perform this this fasting is very important for spiritual growth and for controlling the senses if we control our tongue then all other senses automatically come under control if we fast other senses don't agitate us much then yukta vihar the recreation or the process of producing progeny procreation should also be regulated that is called yukta vihar and then yukta cheshtasya karmasu so after regulating your recreation procreation next thing is karmasu one should not work very hard work also should be regulated people think if i work very hard then i can increase my opulence in life this is a wrong understanding as it happens in our jobs also once we have got a designation our salary is fixed till next appraisal now if you perform very nicely in the next appraisal uh, we'll have more salary it will be increased similarly it is told in the vedas as per the activities what we are doing now in this life our future opulence is getting decided so as soon as we take birth our opulence is fixed as per destiny now what is the meaning of fixed just like our salary is fixed in our office we have to at least attend the office but even if you work very hard for that year it will not be changed it's not possible so for this life we cannot change it even though we work very very hard and how we increase our opulence by following the path of religion that is why the scriptures mention dharma arth kaam and moksha if you want to have arth more wealth in your life you have to follow dharma first of all otherwise without following dharma we may appear to be accumulating more wealth one person can see direct correlation i work more over time i get extra money but no that money will not stay with us we are destined to enjoy a certain amount of opulence if we accumulate more money either the disease will take it away or some legal fees will take it away or the thieves will take it away or our other members of family will enjoy but we personally will not be able to enjoy our opulence is fixed so that is why person should not work very hard krishna has mentioned here yukta karmasu anyway what you are going to get by regulated work so in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned maximum 8 hours a person should spend in his vocational duties job business whatever you are doing then balance time should be spent for spiritual activity this is called regulation if somebody sleeps okay destiny means it will happen automatically so veda still no nahi suptasya singhasya pravishanti mukhe magra tiger is sleeping and thinking i am powerful rabbit will enter my mouth it is not going to happen so sleeping is not recommended neither slogging is recommended regulated work maximum 8 hours then destiny will unfold its course so regulation in eating regulation in recreation regulation in endeavor and yukta swapna avabodhasya yogo bhavati dukkha sleeping also has to be regulated what is regulated sleeping so that body is refreshed so again we can engage itself in the service of krishna so for a healthy person 6 hours of sleep is sufficient we should not sleep more than 6 hours if we are requiring more sleep in our current situation that means we are very heavily influenced by the modes of ignorance tamoguna so we should try to minimize gradually by regulating our diet and our work we will be able to do it so it should be brought to not more than 6 hours at night and we should sleep early and get up early in the morning getting up in brahm muhurta brahm muhurta muhurta is a period of around 48 minutes and brahm muhurta begins 90 minutes before sunrise so that muhurta we are expected to get up and practice 
uh, our spiritual practices in that time and the most important spiritual practice for this age kali yuga as lord krishna has and will recommend is chanting of his holy names so this should be performed in the brahm muhurta when we get up and that is good for our health as well and anything if we read books scriptures at that time it will be five times more effective so initially we may feel sleepy because the body has not been trained nicely but we have to train for spiritual advancement and to keep away even material diseases so sleep early and get up early in the morning in the brahm muhurta time and if required maximum 1 hour should be spent in the day time for sleep not more than that otherwise these are sciences otherwise again we'll come under the mode of ignorance sometimes we may wonder i am even though i have taken 2 hours of rest in the day time or 3 hours more rest still i am feeling lazy i drag myself because we have been uh, under the influence of tamaguna a tamasic person will feel always always a tamasic person will feel always lazy and uh, heaviness will be there enthusiasm will not be there so do not sleep more than 1 hour in the day time that is optional so in this way one should regulate these four activities ahar vihar cheshta and swapna yada viniyatam chittam atmanne vavatishthate निस्पृह सर्व कामेभ्यो युक्ता इत्युच्यते तदा व्हेन द योगी बाय प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा डिसिप्लिन्स हिज मेंटल एक्टिविटीज एंड बिकम सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस डिवॉइड ऑफ ऑल मटेरियल डिजायर्स ही इज सेड टू हैव अटेंड योगा सो दिस इज द पर्पस ऑफ योगा अल्टीमेटली वन शुड बी रीचिंग अ प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर ही इज डिवॉइड ऑफ ऑल मटेरियल डिजायर्स यथा दीपो निवातस्थो नेंगते सोपमा स्मृता योगिनो यत चित्तस्य युञ्जतो योगमात्मनः एज अ लैंप इन अ विंडलेस प्लेस डज नॉट वेवर सो द ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट हुज माइंड इज कंट्रोल्ड रिमेंस ऑलवेज स्टडी इन हिज मेडिटेशन ऑन द ट्रांसेंडेंट सेल्फ यत्रो परमते चित्तम निरुद्धम योग सेवया यत्र चैवात्मनात्मानं पश्यन्नात्मनि तुष्यति सुखम् आत्यंतिकम् यत्तत् बुद्धि ग्राह्यम् अतिन्द्रियम् वेत्ति यत्र न चैवायम् स्थितश्चलति तत्वतः यम् लब्ध्वा च परम लाभं मन्यते नाधिकं ततः यस्मिन् स्थितो न दुःखेन गुरुणापि विचाल्यते तं विद्या दुःख संयोग वियोगं योग संगीतम द स्टेज ऑफ परफेक्शन इज कॉल्ड ट्रांस और समाधि व्हेन वंस माइंड इज कंप्लीटली रिस्ट्रेंड फ्रॉम मटेरियल मेंटल एक्टिविटीज बाय प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा दिस इज कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय वंस एबिलिटी टू सी द सेल्फ बाय द प्योर माइंड and to relish and rejoice in the self in that joyous state one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness and enjoys himself through transcendental senses established thus one never departs from the truth and upon gaining this he thinks there is no greater gain being situated in such a position one is never shaken even in the midst of greatest difficulty This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. So this is the solution. It is not by economic development, gaining more degrees or having more followers in the society. We think that will make us happy now. The solution for all the miseries arising from material contact is coming to the platform of samadhi. Samadhi means complete absorption in God. so god is present in our heart in the vishnu murti four armed form and person with his purified mind if there is dust on the mirror we cannot see our form so mind is compared to mirror when the mirror is clean we can see ourselves in a similar fashion when the mind is cleansed so for cleaning the mind here the process of ashtanga yoga is recommended you practice pranayam and yam niyam asan dharana dhyan pratyahar stop the activities of the senses then finally the mind is cleansed 
and with this clean mind we can see who am i and we can see the super self also who is god seated within the heart and when a person without any deviation is able to see god within the heart then that is called perfect samadhi so in this also as we discussed there are two stages the ashtanga yogis and the dhyan yogis who are able to see the parmatma form by visualizing the description is given in uh, the sankh yoga explained by lord kapila in shrimad bhagavatam and uh, his clothes his helmet earrings club disc conch shell everything the description of his form is there so reading that form yogi visualizes that in the heart so if they are simply visualizing that form they may go and merge in that form that is also not the perfection but by concentrating visualizing that form eventually some of them very rarely are able to see krishna within the heart actually see so one is visualizing that god is present god's form and in another instance god personally manifests himself within the heart so when god being pleased by the yogi manifests himself within the heart then it is no longer visualization or imagination one practically sees with purified mind and such people become bhakti yogis they develop strong love and affection for god and they transfer themselves to the kingdom of god so this is the stage of samadhi when a person is completely attracted by the form of krishna and the mind and all the senses also become purified then he is enjoying spiritual happiness with all his purified senses and then he is able to get freedom from all the miseries nothing in the world can disturb him yasme sthito na dukhe na guru na api vichalyate then even greatest miseries can happen to them the yogi will not be disturbed at all and uh, bhakti yogi reaches this stage easily he need not go and sit there in the jungle he simply engages in the service of krishna and krishna being happy with his service becomes visible in the heart so even bhakti yogi is doing any activity walking talking everywhere he is always able to see krishna within the heart and even there are greatest difficulties in life the example is of haridas thakur who was being beaten very badly or uh, a prostitute was sent to attract haridas thakur who was a very young man Haridas Thakur is a person who attained this platform who exhibited to the world simply by chanting the holy names he is called Namachari he appeared 500 years ago so he was simply chanting the holy names he showed to the world that see this is the process for kali yuga simply by chanting you can attain this platform that is why all the bona fide religions of the world they tell please chant the names of god so by chanting he became so advanced that he was beyond all the biological needs of sleeping mating eating practically 24 hours he was just chanting sometimes he would sleep for half hour half an hour or one hour not more than that so some envious people they sent very beautiful prostitute to entice him but he was not at all disturbed the other prostitute also by his mercy so such mercy is not possible in this ashtanga yoga you have to practice on the dint of your strength but in bhakti yoga it is a process of personal mercy either god or any person who is dear to god if he is merciful immediately person can become elevated so this prostitute she was simply sitting there and haridas thakur told please come tomorrow tomorrow i will satisfy you she was thinking oh i am uh, i think i am able to attract him but she was not knowing the mind of this great sage so he was knowing simply by hearing my chanting she will become purified so she came for three nights and third night she fell at the feet of haridas thakur and she herself started chanting practically 24 hours a day surpassing all the needs of body so this is the very sublime process of bhakti yoga of the chanting of names of krishna so such a situation was exhibited even by bhishma dev who was lying on the bed of pharaohs those of you who are aware of the great battle of kurukshetra so this bhagavad gita is a very small segment of that mahabharat once the battle starts then arjuna shoots so many arrows on bhishma and then he is lying on the bed of arrows but he is undisturbed he is speaking great knowledge so we have seen practical instance of such personalities who have exhibited this samadhi that even though body is completely practically destroyed but they are in bliss so this is what we are supposed to do what we are doing indulging in some videos audio some mundane temporary enjoyment no human life is meant to attain this pleasure 
यस्मिन स्थितो न दुखे न गुरु नापि विचाल्यते इवन द ग्रेटेस्ट मिजरी डज नॉट डिस्टर्ब सनिश्चयेन योक्तव्यो योगो निर्विण्ण चेतसा संकल्प प्रभवान कामास त्यक्वा सर्वान शेषतः मनसैवेन्द्रियग्रामं विनियम्य समन्ततः वन शुड एंगेज वन सेल्फ इन द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ योगा विथ अनडिविएटिंग डिटर्मिनेशन एंड फेथ वन शुड अबैंडन विदाउट एक्सेप्शन all material desires born of false ego and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind so sense control is very important over and over again lord krishna is telling one should control all the senses on all the sides by the mind and without exception all material desires have to be given up and one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with undeviating determination and faith so material world is so designed not to let us advance in spiritual life so once we start following this process so many impediments may come so person has to be very very determined if success is not attained immediately or there are fall downs which will be there in the beginning as a child learns to walk it falls down but child should not become uh, completely devastated i will never be able to walk no there is a stage so it will be difficult in the beginning we may commit mistakes but we have to stand up and with determination we have to again pursue the process of yoga shanai shanai ruparamed buddhya dhriti grahitaya atma sanstham manah kritva na kinchit api chintayed gradually step by step with full conviction one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else yato yato nischalati manas chanchalam asthiram tatastato niyam yaitad atmanyeva vasham nayet from whatever and wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self prashant manasam hienam yoginam sukham uttamam upayati shant rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham the yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest happiness by virtue of his identity with brahm he is liberated his mind is peaceful his passions are quieted and he is freed from sin so if we have broken some laws of nature we have to suffer for that so we have discussed this before we are discussing again please do not think any immediate cause the people around us the political or financial situation or the weather conditions are responsible for our suffering we are responsible for our suffering we have broken laws of nature and the people the situation they are merely instruments of our suffering we are suffering because of our sins of this and previous lives now what is the solution how to come out of it so entire material world's design is so that living entity realizes i can be satisfied only in the service of god so if somebody engages in the service of god gets fixed up then he is relieved of all the sinful activities so this is the solution of solving all the problems of life and that krishna explains here how to get freedom from sins akalmasham upayati shant rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham when the mind is fixed upon me so you may ask in this shloka upon me is not mentioned why we are telling upon me translation it is mentioned so this is the value of the translation of the acharyas who know the entire bhagavad gita we have seen in the previous verses no if you remember mat chittah mat paraha i should be the ultimate goal the consciousness should be fixed upon me and further also krishna will tell mind should be fixed upon me so in order to help us understand what should be the situation of mind it has been added in the translation yunjan evam sadatmanam yogi vigat kalmashah sukhena brahm sansparsham 
Atyantam Sukham Ashnute Steady in the self, being freed from all material contamination, the yogi achieves the highest perfectional stage of happiness in touch with the Supreme Consciousness. So by touching the Supreme Consciousness, when the tongue touches nice edible items, delicious items, we get pleasure. When the soul touches the Supreme Self, there is generation of highest pleasure, unlimited pleasure for which we are hankering. Sarvabhutastham atmanam sarvabhutani chatmani ikshate yoga yuktatma sarvatra samadarshanah A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized man sees me everywhere. Yo maam pasyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pasyati tasya ham na pranashyami satcha me na pranashyati For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. So this is the perfection of yoga. One who sees Krishna everywhere and everything in Krishna. Now, how is it possible? Either everything can be in somebody or somebody can be in a thing. How both things are possible? Yes, so all these contradictions are perfectly adjusted in the personality of God. There is nothing impossible in His personality. That is what Krishna did. Krishna opened His mouth to Yashoda when His friends were accusing that He has eaten mud. Mother Yashoda wanted to know because mud is not good uh, for child's health. Krishna told, no, you can see, verify, I'll open my mouth. So when Krishna opened the mouth, then Mother Yashoda could see all the universes in the mouth of Krishna. And she could even see herself and Krishna within Krishna's mouth. So what is this thing? Krishna is within the universe or universe is within Krishna? So these are the mystical opulences of the Supreme Personality of God. So a yogi sees Krishna everywhere and everything in Krishna. An example is given, it is just like mother out of her great fondness and love for her child. When the child is away, mother sees anything which is in connection with the child. Either the clothes of the child or maybe the water bottle of the child. Mother's heart becomes full of pleasure. Loving affection is revived. Now, because limited number of things are in connection with child, the heart is not always full of love. But because everything is coming from God in this world, so yogi knows nothing is existing independent of God. So that is why an actual yogi Premanjana Charitta Bhakti Vilochanena Santa Sadaya Viridayeshu Vilokayanti So an actual yogi whose eyes are tinged with the salve of love of God he is able to see Krishna everywhere, just like mother sees her child everywhere in the child's belongings. Because the whole world belongs to God, the yogi is always completely full of love and thus enjoying great bliss wherever whatever he sees around him. He sees God everywhere. This is the perfection of consciousness. Sarva Bhuta Sthitam Yomam Bhajatte Katva Masthitaha Sarvatha Vartmanopi Sayogi Mai Vartate The yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one, worships me and remains always in me in all circumstances. So, yogi should know that Krishna is only present as the super soul, they are one. So this is also a very important point. So Krishna has got many many forms. Advaita machita manadim ananta rupam. Even a yogi who is expert in Ashtanga yoga process, they can expand themselves up to eight or nine forms. So God can expand himself into unlimited forms. And one such expansion is the Paramatma expansion by which Krishna expands himself and is situated in the hearts of all of us. And thus he is guiding us. We had some desires in previous life. 
So by his arrangement, nature has given us this body. And Krishna from the heart inspires us. You wanted some enjoyment in previous life. Now you please have it. But he also guides what kind of enjoyment is good and bad. But if you don't listen, then Krishna sanctions. Okay, you wanted to enjoy. Now you enjoy. And when you suffer after this, then you will realize that I should have followed Krishna's advice, which he has given in the Gita. So this is important. The yogi who knows that I and the super soul within all creatures are one. He then worships me. One who understands this Paramatma within my heart, he is Krishna, the Supreme Personality. He starts worshipping Krishna. And he reaches the culmination of the Yoga Ladder. Atma upamyena sarvatra samam pashyati yorjuna Sukham vayadiva dukham sayogi paramo mataha He is a perfect yogi who by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings, both in their happiness and distress, O Arjuna. So one is able to understand that everybody is spirit soul like me, so he unnecessarily does not give anybody pain. Because he understands that pain is not good. When somebody cuts my hand, I feel pain. Why should I be so insensitive that simply for satisfying my tongue, I should harm other living entities? So people are having great positions in society, they have various degrees in their name, they might be thought leaders, they might be educators, they might be leaders of society, but if they are causing harm to other living entities, then even basic sense, is it not missing? This does not need any education, this is basic sense, somebody cuts my hand, I feel pain, how can I cut somebody's hand or throat? My family members feel bad if I am killed. Their families, animals also have sentiments. They also feel very bad if their family member is killed. So how can I do that? Commit such atrocities simply for satisfying my tongue? So if such basic sense is missing, then how I can expect to have any knowledge of life? So thus those people who are causing harm to other living entities and animals, we cannot expect any knowledge from them because basic sanity is missing in life. So thus yuktahara viharasya regulation food very important. So this sense yogi develops very easily because he understands what is happiness and distress. He works very hard to relieve the other living entities of their distress. Even though you try your level best to keep the body fit, it will not remain fit. Diseases will come. We cannot remain disease free. Death will come and we'll pick up another body in next life. So that is why real welfare activity is giving spiritual knowledge. That is why once the Bhagavad Gita finishes, Krishna explains. Krishna will explain that yogi is very dear to him and that so many other people are dear to him. But the dearest person to God, who is he? That Krishna will explain at the end of last chapter, 18th chapter. He tells, Nachatasmat manusheshu kaschin me priya kritamaha. Nobody is dear to me than the person who gives this confidential secret knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to others. So thus, if we want to become dear to God, if we become dear to God, then we are happy materially and spiritually both. All the spiritual knowledge is revealed and materially also we are very nicely taken care. So how do we become dear to God? If we also understand and spread this message to others. So I request all of you, we are suffering only because of lack of this knowledge. So please realize, take all our help and please spread this word around. This is the best philanthropic activity. Arjuna uvacha yoyam yogastvaya proktaha samyena madhu sudana etasyaham na pasyami chanchalatvasthitim sthira Arjuna said, O Madhusudana, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me. For the mind is restless and unsteady. So Krishna recommended this yoga system so that Arjuna can explain Krishna I cannot follow. So all of us should take the learning when Arjuna could not follow 5000 years ago who was trained as a brahmachari in Gurukul then how can we do it in modern age where mind body is very weak and mind is always disturbed, so many allurements are there, our senses are not controlled, mind is disturbed, not possible. 
so arjuna is telling it is impractical not even tough krishna is being told your system is impractical what you have told madhusudana because mind is restless and unsteady krishna is telling control the mind control the mind and control the senses with the control mind mind is very difficult to control arjuna is telling chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadridham tasya ham nigraham manye vayor vasudushkaram for the mind is restless turbulent obstinate and very strong o krishna and to subdue it is it seems to me more difficult than controlling the wind so arjuna is telling i can control the wind arjuna's had very great knowledge of using mystic weapons by which water earth wind could be controlled but he is telling difficult than to control the wind is to control the mind wind nobody can control but arjuna is telling i can control wind but i cannot control mind so lord krishna let us see what he replies okay arjuna leave controlling mind no he is telling it is possible shri bhagavan vacha asanchayam mahabaho mano durnigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate here krishna gives solution how one can control the mind the blessed lord said o mighty armed son of kunti it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind but it is possible by constant practice and by detachment so two things are required why mind goes in the past because we are attached or we were attached to certain things and why it goes in the future again because of attachment we are worried about something which may or may not happen in future so one has to practice detachment and this detachment automatically comes when a person performs the process of yoga so one has to uh, cultivate this knowledge that this world is temporary i am not this body and by cultivating knowledge one has to practice yoga system by practicing yoga system krishna has told here constant practice is required so this yoga system is very difficult ashtanga yoga what is recommended here so in kali yuga the process to achieve the same result control of mind is cheto darpana marjanam bhavan mahadavagni nirvapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam sankirtan is recommended chanting and hearing the names of god by this the dust from the mirror of mind is cleansed and one can see one self in the supreme self and what is our relationship with the supreme self so this constant practice is required that is why krishna tells in the ninth chapter satatam kirtayanto maam this kirtan has to be done satatam always constantly so 24 hours it is very simple we are now fond of scientific perspective of the things science means making experiments so let us have experiment in our life just please try to chant throughout the day the names of krishna and then you see the result and there is one specific combination which is mentioned in kali santran upanishad in various other scriptures brahmand puran in various places and that is hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare iti shodashak nam nam kali kalmash nashnam these 16 words destroy kali all the effects of this millennium which is called kali yuga nahatah partar upaye better solution than this sarva vedeshu dishyate could not be found by searching throughout the vedas so all these processes which are mentioned here they are bona fide gyan yoga or ashtang yoga or drav yagya basic karma yoga all these things are there but then it is not practical karma yoga acting in krishna consciousness bhakti yoga these are the practical things for this age of kali yuga and the same result can be attained which was attained by doing this rigor in previous ages but one has to do it constantly krishna is telling by constant practice and detachment we have to even if we are doing constant practice detachment will follow automatically but it will take long time so if you do both things don't eat that thing which increases disease eat that thing which cures disease take medicines nicely prescription and proscription if we follow both we get quick relief from disease so this chanting is so powerful automatically detachment will come but may take long time if you want quick results quick control of mind practice detachment 
anything which is entangling you in this material world so try to practice detachment keep it away and at the same time constant practice of this sankirtan should be there under the guidance of a spiritual master so krishna has agreed it is undoubtedly very difficult but it is possible it is not impossible it is possible by constant practice detachment असंयतात्मनायोगो दुष्प्राप इति मे मति वश्यात्मना तो यतता शक्यो वाप्तुम उपायत पवन हुज माइंड इज अनब्रिडल्ड सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन इज डिफिकल्ट वर्क बट ही हुज माइंड इज कंट्रोल्ड एंड हुज ट्राइज बाय राइट मीन्स इज अश्योर्ड ऑफ सक्सेस दैट इज माई ओपिनियन So Krishna is telling, "Do not think, Arjuna, you will attain self-realization without controlling the mind. It is difficult, but you have to do it, and then you have to have the right means also. Then self-realization is possible." Arjuna uvacha ayati shraddha yope to yoga chalitama na saha aprapi yoga samsiddhim kamgatim Krishna gachati. So Arjuna seems to be afraid that this process is tough and mind can cheat me any time. So what will happen to me if I am not able to perfect this? Arjuna said, "What is the destination of the man of faith who does not persevere, who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization but who later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism?" So this question many can ask that I could not enjoy either this world because i left the sense objects for attaining spiritual perfection nor could i attain spiritual perfection i could not persevere on the path so what is the result kachinno bhaya vibhrashtash chinna bhram iva nashyati apratishtho mahabaho vimudo brahmana pathi o mighty arm krishna does not such a man being deviated from the path of transcendence perish like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere etan me sanshayam krishna chetum arhasya sheshatah vad anya sanshayasyasya cheta na yupapadyate this is my doubt o krishna and i ask you to dispel it completely but for yourself No one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Parth Naiveha Namutra Vinashas Tasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyan Krit Kashchit Durgatim Tat Gachati The blessed lord said Son of Pritha a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world one who does good my friend is never overcome by evil prapya punya kritam lokan ushitva shashvati samah shuchi nam shri matam gehe yog bhrashto bhi jayate the unsuccessful yogi after many many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy so even a small endeavor on this path saves a person from degradation into the animal species and if a person sincerely follows then one is assured of very good birth either on heavenly planets he will go there and there are many many planets where living standards are very high life span is very long the effect of old age diseases are very very minimal so even materially there is no loss because you have controlled the senses here you wanted to follow yoga but you could not don't worry you go there and enjoy many many more times for a very very long span of life or you take birth in a rich aristocratic family now there is one more advanced stage If a person is not very advanced then this will happen a person will go to heavenly planets then he will take birth in a aristocratic family or a pure family where again he can continue spiritual life but a special birth is given to advanced yogis and what is that 
अथवा योगी नामेवा कुले भवति धीमताम एतद्धी दुर्लभतरम लोके जन्म यदि दृशम और इट टेक्स इज बर्थ इन अ फैमिली ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट हु आर श्योरली ग्रेट इन विजडम वेरीली सच अ बर्थ इज रेयर इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो दिस बर्थ इज रेयर फ्रॉम बर्थ यू आर देयर इन द फैमिली ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिस्ट ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट हु आर ग्रेट डिवोटीज एंड हैव परफेक्ट विजडम ऑफ कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस एंड सच पीपल हु टेक बर्थ इन ग्रेट फैमिलीज बिकम स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर्स वेरी एडवांस डिवोटीज दिस इज मेन्ट फॉर वेरी हाईली एलिवेटेड सोल्स बट इवन इफ यू आर नॉट हाईली एलिवेटेड पर्सन कैन गो टू हेवनली प्लानट्स एंड हैव अ बर्थ इन रिच फैमिली और वेरी लर्नड प्योर फैमिली सो दैट ही डज नॉट हैव टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड फॉर अटेनिंग मटीरियल रिसोर्सेज ही कैन सेव इज टाइम मनी इज देयर और हिज सेंसेज आर कंट्रोल फ्रॉम बर्थ ट्रेनिंग इज वेरी नाइस सो ऑल सच फैसिलिटीज आर ऑफर कृष्ण इज टेलिंग सो मटीरियली देर इज नो लॉस यू एंजॉय वेरी नाइसली ऑन डिफरेंट प्लानट्स एंड देन स्पिरिचुअली ऑल्सो देर इज नो लॉस फैसिलिटी इज देयर फ्रॉम द बर्थ तत्र तम बुद्धि संयोगम लभते पौर्व देहिकम यतते च ततो भूय संसिद्ध कुरु नंदना ऑन टेकिंग सच अ बर्थ ही अगेन रिवाइव द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ हिस्स प्रीवियस लाइफ एंड ही ट्राइज टू मेक फर्दर प्रोग्रेस इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव कंप्लीट सक्सेस ओ सन ऑफ गुरु पूर्वाभ्यास न ते नैव रियते ही अवशोपि सह जिज्ञासुर अपियोगस्य शब्द ब्रह्माति वर्तते बाय वर्च्यू ऑफ द डिवाइन कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ हिस प्रीवियस लाइफ यू ऑटोमैटिकली बिकम्स अट्रैक्टेड टू द योगिक प्रिंसिपल्स इवन विदाउट सीकिंग देम सच एन इंक्विजिटिव ट्रांसेंडेंटलिस्ट स्ट्राइविंग फॉर योगा स्टैंड्स ऑलवेज अबव द रिचुअलिस्टिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स so as we saw the scriptures mainly contain karma kanda fruitive activities because materialist wants material enjoyment and small portion upanishads introduce him to the spiritual life so a yogi he is not attracted by this fruitive activities portion of the vedas and automatically he is attracted to higher yogic principles by virtue of previous life so krishna is telling do not worry arjuna Materially, life is comfortable. Even if you are not successful, you get a good birth, and automatically attraction will be there for yogic principles. So you can continue even in next life. Prayatnat yatmanas tu yogi samshuddha kil bishaha anek janm samsiddhas tato yati param gatim. But when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress being washed of all contaminations then ultimately after many many births of practice he attains the supreme goal So it is not easy sometimes we become impatient i am not able to understand god there is confusion so many theories are there we are very small please understand and ant can it understand about our mathematics and sciences our governance systems no it is and body does not support such processing of intelligence so we are willing to understand about god who is creator of so many planets and so many universes not possible so it takes many many births of practice of yoga so is telling arjuna do not worry it is a long journey after many many births one will and if one endeavors very hard constant practice also takes many many births so this is very gradual process a person does uh, dravya yagya does charity philanthropy the beginning of karma yoga then a person is able to de- develop some sanity one cultivates the vedic knowledge of the upanishads of the soul then further a person advances to the stage of dhyana yoga starts meditating then for many many births one has to practice this and then one attains krishna consciousness knowledge of god it is very difficult and a very long process but another short process krishna is telling here which is very practical and what is that tapas vibhyo dhiko yogi gyane bhyo pi mato dhikah karme bhyascha dhiko yogi tasmad yogi bhava arjuna a yogi is greater than the ascetic greater than the empiricist 
and greater than the fruitive worker. Therefore, Arjuna, in all circumstances, be a yogi. So these are various categories of people in this world: karmi, jnani, tapasvi, and yogi. Karmi means majority fruitive workers. Rather, they should be called vikarmis. Karmi also uh, follows the injunctions of the Vedas to enjoy material sense gratification. Now, people are vikarmis. They want to enjoy the senses without abiding by the laws. Thus, there is great harassment by the nature, and there is so much stress and anxiety in the lives of people. So, karmi who enjoys, who works very hard to enjoy the sense objects in this world, and when he is dissatisfied because he is following the rules and regulations of the Vedas. He has developed firm faith in the Veda. I did this thing, I attained the result, but I am not satisfied. Let us see what Vedas have to offer further. Then he goes to become jnani. Then he understands, oh, I am not the body, so I am not satisfied. And then one starts taking discomforts in life, tapasya, because by tapasya he understands I will be able to purify my senses and mind, and I will understand who am I. But greater than all of them is yogi. Who directly engages in the service of God? Now, yogis could be of various kinds: Gyan yogi, Dhyan yogi, Karm yogi, Bhakti yogi. All of them, uh, their aim is to get connected with God. So, yogi is topmost among all of them. But which kind of yogi is best? Because there are various kinds of yogis. That Krishna explains in this final verse of this chapter, which is very important. Yogi nam api sarvesham. मद्गतेनात्म श्रद्धावान् भजते यो मेयुक्त तमो मत एंड ऑफ ऑल योगीज ही हु ऑलवेज अबाइड्स इन मी विद ग्रेट फेथ वर्शिपिंग मी इन ट्रांसेंडेंटल लविंग सर्विस इज मोस्ट इंटीमेटली यूनाइटेड विथ मी इन योगा and is the highest of all so krishna has declared now yogi naam api sarvesham first of all he told arjun please become yogi working to enjoy the result of your activity that is foolishness it is abominable work krishna has declared in previous chapters gyani is a very new fight on spiritual perfection and so is tapasvi become yogi now among various kinds of yogis yogi naam api sarvesham Mad gate na antaratmana, who is always meditating upon me within his heart, shraddhavan with great faith and love, bhajate bhajdhatu in Sanskrit means to render service. Yo ma ma means me unto me. He is thinking of me antaratmana within his heart, and he is engaged in bhajate in my service. Same yukta tamo mataha. He is the best yogi. because arjun expressed this is impractical for me i am a worldly man i am a fighter warrior i have to rule kingdom deal with politics and diplomacy and i have my queens my children in my palace so how is it possible for me to go to jungle and do all these things so krishna to encourage arjun i told don't worry you are already on the highest platform of yoga because among all the yogis the person who always meditates upon me within his heart and engages in my service he is the best so this is called the sublime process of bhakti yoga so now in the first 6 chapters krishna has explained the process of karma yoga and now krishna will explain in the next 6 chapters the most important knowledge of bhakti yoga directly understanding bhakti yoga may not be possible for everyone thus krishna has gradually built up the philosophy and explained this yoga ladder and gradual progression to explain how bhakti yoga is most simple at the same time top most highest and most sublime but the process is why it is so rare that people don't take to it because it is only possible to execute this by the mercy of a pure devotee of krishna who is expert in bhakti yoga and finding such a person who is pure devotee of krishna is very very rare so if somebody is fortunate to come in contact with pure devotee then one can immediately advance in this most perfect form of yoga system so krishna has concluded this chapter very beautifully explaining uh, that a person who is yogi 
he is actually sanyasi because he is perfectly renounced from any desire even of moksha or liberation from this planet or merging in the body of krishna his only desire even if krishna gives me more and more births just to engage in his service in his loving service that's his only desire so a yogi is actually renouncer he is actual gyani and krishna explained this most difficult process which is not practical in this age we cannot follow brahmacharya first of all brahmacharya means yagya valki has explained complete cessation of sex life in mind also in speech also and of course on the bodily physical platform so uh, sex desire should not come even in the mind is it possible in today's civilization where you have all the sexual content on your phones most downloadable content not possible very difficult for ordinary people but still brahmacharya is important but in other processes in this yoga process first you have to become brahmachari first you have to go to jungle leave your family and then you practice yoga but in the process of bhakti yoga or the karma yoga it is the same thing the perfection of karma yoga is bhakti yoga when a person does activities as told by krishna so that is feasible you can offer the results of activities to krishna and when you are advanced we do activities as per directed by krishna so in this way the karma yoga or bhakti yoga is the possible and recommended process here yogi naam api sarvesham so this is what krishna recommends to arjuna tasma sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmar yudhyacha therefore always think of me within your heart and you fight this is the best way of doing yoga so sometimes people get confused oh see krishna has rejected other processes he described the yoga process gyan studying the vedas dhyan and finally he told you do your duty very nicely and so let us do our job and business nicely and automatically that is the process of spiritual advancement no simply doing our duties is not uh, yoga but always thinking of krishna within the heart and doing the duty as directed by krishna and offering the results of our duties to krishna that is recommended yes that is perfection and that is practical for everyone so we all can do this so i request all of you we all can start practicing this thing if we cannot do activities as directed by krishna whatever activities we are doing wherever we are situated we can start offering the results of activities to krishna to spread this mission of krishna to spread this knowledge to others so that others can be benefited and get freedom from unlimited miseries of birth death old age and disease and while we are carrying out our duties we should always try to think of krishna within the heart and that is possible in this stage by a chanting of krishna's names and especially hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare now the most important chapters of bhagavad gita are about to begin so please join us for next chapter thank you so much for hearing hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama राम राम हरे हरे चैप्टर सेवन नॉलेज ऑफ दी एब्सुलूट श्री भगवान उवाच मई आसक्त मना पार्थ योग युंजन्मदाश्रय असंशय समग्रम yatha gyasya sita trinu now here o son of pritha arjuna how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me with mind attached to me you can know me in full free from doubt we saw previously lord krishna gave a clue to arjuna what is that science that you have to understand in order to become freed from the clutches of birth and death which is the primary goal of all the spiritualists and that lord krishna told is the subject matter of god he explained janm karm chame divyam evam yo veti tatvatah my birth and my activities are transcendental they are divine they don't follow the laws 
of this nature evam yoveti tatvatah but a person who is able to understand the signs of my birth and my activities tyaktva deham punar janma nayeti mameti swarjana after leaving this body he does not take any more such miserable material bodies but he comes back to me and he lives his eternal spiritual life in a spiritual form but the question is how to understand the birth and activities the signs of krishna the so lord krishna explained various processes different rungs of the yoga ladder karma yoga gyan yoga dhyan yoga but none of these processes enable a living entity to understand krishna in perfection that is why lord krishna is explaining here now hear from me me shrinu the process by which you can understand me asanshayam without any doubt others may always be doubtful they will not have clear idea but if you follow this process asanshayam all the doubts about god's existence his activities will be cleared samagram samagram means in completion so what is the process these words are very important mai asakt mana partha mai asakt mana mind attached to me mad ashraya in full consciousness of me yogam yunjan by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me in complete surrenderance to me and your mind should be attached to me in this way you should engage in my service yogam yunjan this is the only way of knowing krishna in completion that is why the great stalwart son and disciple of maharshi vedvyas the author of mahabharat this bhagavad gita he spoke this very nice verse about knowing absolute truth he was a personality liberated from birth and shukde goswami says yadangri abhidhyan samadhi dhautaya dhiyanu pashyanti hi tatvam atmanah vadanti ye tat kavayo yatharucham same mukundo bhagavan prasidtam he tells yad angri angri means the lotus feet abhidhyan samadhi dhautaya samadhi means intense meditation deep absorption on the angri lotus feet of krishna at every second this is called krishna consciousness yad angri abhidhyan samadhi dhautaya so when a person is in trance in samadhi every second he is able to think of lotus feet of krishna within the heart angri specifically it is mentioned the meditation on the form of krishna should not begin by directly looking at his lotus face or hands arms belly or any other limbs of the body our only problem is that we want to compete with god given a chance we want to take the position of lord we want to become god of the world so here that is why we want to become master of all that we survey we want to dominate over the other living entities and this creates all the problems in this world every person is trying to lord over other person and the solution is trying to become servant that is what chaitanya mahaprabhu told gopi bhartuf pat kamalayor das das dasanu dasah i am the servant of the servant of the servant of maintainer of gopis so becoming servant and not master is the solution to all the problems of life servant of servant of servant of krishna any way we are servant after all education if you do not find job then our education is useless so we have to serve a person who can give us money for our maintenance we have to if we are businessmen no i am not serving anybody no we have to serve our customers everybody is engaged in some or the other service if we become servant not directly servant one should be very humble servant of servant of servant of servant of god then that is success of life in that stage a person can be very very peaceful and understand the signs of god and now even in corporates people are realizing that is why they have coined this word servant leaders the leaders should think i am servant so actually whatever we may try we may 
present and invent various models but the right model of leading a happy way of life and eventually understanding god going back to god is having a servant attitude as it is mentioned in the vedas so that is why we should start meditating from the lotus feet of krishna and when a person is always thinking of the lotus feet of krishna and 24 hours one is able to continue such meditation then one can gradually move up and focus on other limbs of krishna so those who are always able to have this meditation vadanti he tat kavayo yatha rucham kavaya means learned persons they give so many opinions about absolute truth but only a person who is absorbed in such trance he only is able to understand janati tatvan bhagwan mahimyo only such a person can understand the tatva the absolute truth see the absolute truth in trance and the same thing krishna is explaining here mai asakt manaf partha mai should be completely attached to me and in full consciousness of me you should engage in yoga practice engage in my service offer the results of your activities so how does mind become focused in that way on krishna this is a great mystical science there are nine ways of executing it shravanam kirtanam vishnu ho smaranam pad sevanam archanam mandanam dasyam sakhyam atmanivedanam so one has to learn this science under the guidance of a very expert spiritual master but the first and the foremost of all these nine processes is shravanam that means hearing hearing is very important that is why lord krishna explains to arjuna here tat shrinu now hear about this process gyanam te ham sa vigyanam idam vakshyami asheshatah यज्ञ्वानेह भूयो न्यज्ञातव्यम अवशिष्यते आई शेल नॉट डिक्लेयर अन टू यू इन फुल दिस नॉलेज बोथ फिनोमिनल एंड नोमिनल बाय नोइंग विच देर शेल रिमेन नथिंग फर्दर टू बी नोन सो ऑल द इंटेलिजेंट पीपल हु आर हियरिंग दिस आई रिक्वेस्ट टू प्लीज नोट दिस वर्ड्स वेरी केयरफुली there are two kinds of knowledge one is called gyanam another is vigyanam knowledge of phenomenal world and that of noumenal world what is this phenomena and noumena phenomena we all know are observations the world as we observe it so these are the terms which are used in philosophy especially by immanuel kant who told there are two aspects of existence the one that we perceive and another which actually is and both may not always be the same for example we see water in the desert that is phenomena our eyes give us knowledge that it is water we are seeing water this is called gyanam but what is vigyanam scientific knowledge or what is actually happening that is described as total internal reflection of light actually there is nothing but simply reflection of light in the air and what we see is water similarly we have to understand all the knowledge that we are perceiving we are receiving through our senses and mind this point we have discussed we are discussing again because it's very very important to know this so our senses are just like small window in our room through that window only we can perceive what is there outside our house if somebody tells us please describe your city we can only tell but we have to describe it sitting within our room then we can only tell what our window is showing we can never tell about the actual and complete nature of the city and from that window if we see mirage then whatever we see we are seeing that is also illusion in a similar fashion are these senses they are just like windows into the existence for a blind person forms or colors may not exist for a person who has no touch sensation he may never be able to experience anything any touch ever for a person who is not having sensation to taste for him taste does not exist if all the senses stop working a person is not able to see not able to hear not able to touch 
then for such a person the world does not exist but this is not fact the world is existing with all its beauty and different touch sensations different fragrances different tastes different colors beauty but the senses are not working so just like a person within the room should not be over confident of his opinions what he is perceiving through the window at best that is limited view of the world and at worst everything is illusion from his window only mirage is being seen so even that is false so thus one can never know the nature of noumenal world what is actually happening what is science science means knowing things as it is but current science also bases its research on the knowledge acquired from these windows these senses so we can always tell what we are perceiving the real nature of the things we shall never know <clears throat> so how to understand the real nature of the things so the real nature of the things we shall never know so how do we tell the real nature of the things there is only one way to know it only when the creator gives the knowledge. see i have manufactured your body your mind and senses and in this way you are perceiving the world but this is the actual reality of the world how i have created it there is no other way of knowing it and unless a person comes to the platform of knowledge where is the question of happiness an animal dies chasing the water in the desert never gets the water similarly we are dying chasing the ever escaping happiness in this world but we never get it the situation is not much different animal does not question what is truth whether that is water actually in the desert or not similarly we also if we don't question whether there is happiness in this world or not in this petty materialism we will also keep on dying repeatedly without attaining that happiness which actually satisfies my heart for this actual knowledge of truth is important what exists and what does not exist what is happiness and what is illusory happiness so now krishna will explain the knowledge of the phenomenal world this material world as we see around us and that of the spiritual world the thing which sustains this material world manushya naam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye यतामी सिद्धा कश्चिन मां वेति तत्वत आउट ऑफ मेनी थाउजेंड्स अमंग मेन वन मे इन देवर फॉर परफेक्शन एंड ऑफ दोज हुव अचीव परफेक्शन हार्डली वन नोज मी इन ट्रुथ मनुष्य नाम सहस्रेशो सो यूजली पीपल ऑल्सो हैव इंटेलिजेंस लाइक दैट ऑफ एनिमल्स जस्ट सैटिस्फाई द सेंसेस एंड डोंट बॉदर अबाउट ट्रुथ ignorance is bliss immediate satisfaction is accepted for long term misery so krishna is mentioning manushya naam sahasreshu out of thousands and thousands of men kashchit one person may try siddhaye to make one's life perfect perfect means understanding that i am not this body i am spirit soul this is the first step of spiritual perfection realizing one's existence different from the body very few people out of thousands of men endeavor for this path and out of many many people who may try to walk this path kashchit yatati siddhaye very few will become perfect will be able to come to this platform of realization that i am not this body and yatatam api siddhanam of all those siddhas perfected beings kashchin veti mam tatvatah hardly one knows me in truth so knowing krishna is so difficult first of all knowing our existence different from body is difficult and among thousands of such people who have realized this hardly one knows krishna in truth so thus unless we take help of this knowledge where krishna himself is describing his glories it is impossible to understand him and thus it is impossible to stop this process of birth and death so let us see what is the knowledge of krishna from the words of lord krishna himself
भूमिरापो नलो वायु हम मनो बुद्धिवचा अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृतिरष्टधा Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. All together, these eight comprise my separated material energies. So, this verse is subject matter of great scientific research. We analyze the world in terms of matter and energy. Now, of course, modern science is coming to conclusion that everything is but energy. So Vedic sciences always describe the whole world as simply made up of energies. And of course, the energetic who is controlling all these energies. So there are various numerous energies of Krishna. Broadly they can be classified as external and internal energy. What is this external? Just like cow is there. Cow gives milk and the milk is separated from cow. So milk is also energy of cow. is coming from cow but now it is separate that is called external to cow but the same milk when it is present in cow's body in the form of uh, cow's blood then that is internal energy of cow in a similar fashion everything whatever is there in this world there is nothing beyond krishna and his energies but there are energies which are directly connected to krishna they are called internal energies and there is energy which is separated from krishna that is called external energy or bhinna prakriti that is explained here this external energy manifests itself into eight forms which are these forms bhumi rapo nalo vayu kham mano buddhi re vacha earth air water fire ether mind intelligence and false ego the universe is made up of these eight fundamental energies and even the atom is made up of these eight energies we think oh uh, the water is there when hydrogen and oxygen combine together then a molecule is called water but no it is not that uh, only when there is a molecule it is called water water is present within each and every atom it is not that fire Uh, when two gases combine together oxidation process produces fire fire is present within every atom also and fortunately modern science has discovered this fire within the atom and that is called nuclear energy similarly science may advance one day to understand how there is even water within the atom even earth within the atom even air within the atom the vedas upanishads explain as is the macro so is the micro पूर्णस्य पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेव अवशिष्यते एवरीथिंग इज कंप्लीट यूनिट एंड ऑल द कंप्लीट एनर्जीज आर प्रेजेंट सो यूनिवर्स इज आल्सो फुल ऑफ ऑल द एनर्जीज सो एन एटम इज कंसीडर्ड अ सैंपल यूनिवर्स द सेम मैकेनिज्म व्हिच ड्राइव्स अ यूनिवर्स ड्राइव्स आवर बॉडी आवर बॉडीज आर आल्सो सैंपल यूनिवर्स एंड इवन एन एटम इज आल्सो अ सैंपल यूनिवर्स द सेम इंजीनियरिंग इज प्रेजेंट जस्ट लाइक वी सी अ स्मॉल मस्किटो आल्सो mosquito is also doing all the things which we are doing same metabolism mosquito is also eating what to speak of mosquito small insects same thing that also eats that also defends itself even a cell cell also eats has metabolism grows produces by products it protects itself defense mechanism everything is same as is the macro so is the micro so isn't it wonderful the same mechanism of eating metabolism growth defense is present in the small body who has put small nuclear plants within small bugs and small insects which are the size of a small dot and even in microbes who is that engineer who is so tiny who has gone inside and designed this wonderful mechanisms this is the wonderful creation of krishna so these eight energies comprise of our universe external energies so this body that we have this is composed of five which we are seeing perceiving earth air water fire and sky when death happens then this gross body is left behind but the soul is carried in the subtle body to the next gross body we have got two bodies here just like we can have a waistcoat and then a coat or a shirt and overshirt we have the coat 
Similarly, we have got two dresses. One is subtle, another is gross. The gross dress is changed at the time of death, but the subtle dress it carries one from one gross body to another gross body. That is why many times people, especially children, are able to remember their past lives. If you do some research, there are enough case studies now. So why a person is able to remember the past life because the body is changed? It means the memory is not stored somewhere in the brain. The brain is just a via media, but it is stored in the mind, and the mind carries us to next body. Mind, intelligence, false ego. It carries a person to the next body. And only when a person is liberated, then a person drops the subtle body also, and the soul goes on to the spiritual world. But as long as soul is in the material world, mind, intelligence, and false ego always carries. It is always accompanying the soul. In different unlimited gross bodies. Apare amitastvanyam prakritim vidhi me param jiva bhutam mahabaho yaye dam dharyate jagat. Besides this inferior nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is a superior energy of mind. which are all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe here lord krishna clearly describes the living entity being completely different energy from matter material energies apareyam itastu anyam anyam means it is different and apareyam apareyam means para means superior apara means inferior energy so apareyam itastu anyam so this material energies are inferior there is another energy which is superior and what is that jeev bhuta mahabaho that is the living entity which sustains the universe the material energy cannot act cannot do anything unless the living entity takes some action so because of us we are sustaining and manipulating the matter of this universe so thus with the help of lord krishna we have to understand that this consciousness that we see in this body is not the manifestation of some combination of matter krishna is telling please understand the nominal world from me what is the science it may appear to you that the matter when combined in certain configuration gives rise to consciousness but that is not fact just like heat and light is symptom of fire consciousness is the symptom of another energy which is internal energy which is always in connection with me and that is the living entity now what is the source one may ask from where all these energies are coming that lord krishna describes in this verse etad yoni ni bhutani sarvani tyupdharaya aham kritsnasya jagatah prabhavah pralayas tatha of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world know for certain that i am both its origin and dissolution so krishna is the source of all not just spiritual energies but even material energy mattaf parataram nanyat kinchid asti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani gana eva O conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me, as pearls are strung on a thread. The very important verse Krishna is telling: How not energy but energetic is absolute truth. Krishna is telling: Mattaf partaram na anyat. There is no truth beyond me. we are very expert at analyzing doing the root cause analysis as we know there was bubonic plague in europe and as people say almost 40% to 60% of the population succumbed to this and they died and what accelerated the death was actually our own research work so some people the intellectuals they wanted to figure out what is this disease spreading overnight and who is carrying this disease and then they understood actually this disease is being carried by the cats so then they killed all the cats that they could find 
and eventually they realized actually it was not coming from cats but from the rats and when they killed the cats all the cats there were no cats to kill the rats and thus the disease spread even more widely so if you do imperfect research work this is how we can harm our own self if a thief thinks oh this policeman is a cause of my misery my persecution if i kill this policeman i may do any amount of robbery nobody will arrest me it appears to be very logical but it is greatest foolishness he'll be punished even more if he does that or if he thinks no not policeman actually this advocate he argues against me i am suffering because of not him the judge he always writes sentence against me let me kill the judge only this is illusion ultimately there are some laws and the king has established the laws we have to understand who is the ultimate cause the ultimate cause unless a person understands this that is why bhagavatam tells etavad ev jigyasam tatva jigyasu natmanah one should do research up to the point of the ultimate cause if we stop at the intermediate cause rather than helping it will create disaster in our life that is what is happening in the world today because of lack of the knowledge of absolute truth we are thinking lack of money is the cause of my suffering bad governance is the cause of my suffering lacking some skills is the cause of my suffering bad people or family members are the cause of my suffering these are not facts the fact is i do not know absolute truth i have broken some laws of nature in ignorance of the truth and because of my breaking the laws of nature these are simply instruments of my suffering just like the judge is an instrument the executor is an instrument the advocate or the policeman is an instrument in the suffering of a thief so that is why the analysis should be done up to the ultimate cause e tava see bhagavatam is so logical why we are not reading all these scriptures ंगमन बींग्स फॉर माई फूड from where human being is getting this bread can i not have the same technology and manufacture my own bread he will not think and keep on suffering remain hungry and keep on howling the entire night so we also immediately we go for immediate gratification and we are not bothered why am i dying what is this creation why am i getting old why so many diseases we are breaking some laws of nature and we are breaking the laws of nature because we are forgetful of god when we are forgetful of our relationship with god that loving relationship which gives us the eternal satisfaction in absence of it we hanker for sense gratification we fall under illusion and break the laws and thus suffer so here very kindly krishna is explaining mat taf partaram nanyad arjuna there is no truth beyond me this body is made up of eight energies these eight energies are coming from three modes of nature that krishna will explain further we will discuss these three modes of nature are coming from mahat tatva mahat tatva is coming from brahm brahmano hi pratishtaham krishna will explain in bhagavad gita and mattah parataram na anya beyond me there is nothing there is no truth do not think krishna is also coming from somewhere mattah parataram na anya kinchid asti dhananjaya i am the end result of all research janmadi asya yatah Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ved Vyas has described this in the beginning of Shrimad Bhagavatam I offer my respects to Vasudev the son of Vasudev and Devaki Lord Shri Krishna who is absolute truth Janmadi Asya Yatah he is the source of creation maintenance and annihilation of the entire existence but then why we are not able to see him that Krishna explains Sutre Manigada Eva we see a very beautiful pearl necklace we see beautiful pearls but we don't see the thread that is invisible in the necklace in a similar fashion krishna is telling i am sustaining everything but just like the thread of a pearl i am invisible so krishna through his energies which are all pervading he sustains everything as parmatma he enters within every atom but he remains invisible like the thread 
we should not depend upon eyes which only describe us the phenomena but we should understand the noumena as explained by the creator himself raso ham apsu konteya prabhasmi shashi surya yo pranava sarva vedeshu shabd khe porusham rishu o son of kunti i am the taste of water the light of the sun and the moon the syllable om in the vedic mantras i am the sound in ether and ability in man punyo gandha prithivyam cha tejas chasmi vibhavasau jivanam sarva bhuteshu tapas chasmi tapas vishu i am the original fragrance of the earth and i am the heat in the fire i am the life of all that lives and i am the penances of all ascetics bijam mam sarva bhutanam vidhi partha sanatanam buddhir buddhimatam asmi tejas tejas vinamaham o son of pritha know that i am the original seed of all existences the intelligence of the intelligent and the prowess of all powerful men balam balavatam chaham kamaraga vivarjitam dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamosmi bhartarshabha i am the strength of the strong devoid of passion and desire i am sex life which is not contrary to religious principles o lord of the bharatas arjuna so krishna is further describing his glories raso ham apsu konteya prabha asmi shashi surya yo ho i am the taste of water apsu i am the light of the sun and the moon how do we understand this fact now krishna explained he is a person nothing is beyond his personality energies are controlled by him and now krishna is telling i am the taste i am the light so krishna is energy or krishna is a person so many people when they read these shlokas they get confused i am the intelligence of the intelligent i am the strength of the strong so it means krishna is energy basically all the energy of this world you can uh, give him a name krishna but no this is not fact this has to be carefully understood so there are two classes of transcendentalists or spiritualists impersonalists and personalists impersonalists tell that the absolute truth is energy personalists explain no he is a person an impersonalist perceives krishna's presence in this way as a taste in water as the light of the sun and the moon as the intelligence of an intelligent man as the strength of a strong man and a personalist also thanks the lord for creating this taste in water he does not forget that personality actually there is no difference between personalists and impersonalists if they understand absolute truth perfectly they don't fight over these different features of the absolute truth both are features of the same absolute truth krishna and thus both personalism and impersonalism have been adjusted very nicely in the philosophy of achintya bhed abhed tatva if we just tell advaita is fact it is ultimate reality that is also not the perfect description of absolute truth if we tell dvaita we are completely different from god that is also not the perfect understanding of truth we are simultaneously one and different from god this is called achintya bhed abhed tatva the example is just like the sun and the sunlight the sun is different from the sunlight as well as the sun is same as sunlight there is never a day when there is sunlight without sun it has no existence nor is it possible that sun is there without its light the sun and sunlight are one unit in that sense there is no difference between the energies and energetic thus krishna is telling the taste is also my energy the intelligence which i have given that is also my energy 
and because there is no difference between me and my energy just like there is no difference between sun and the light of the sun so i am telling i am the intelligence i am the taste i am the beauty i am the splendor of the sun and the moon because there is no difference between me and my energy this is the proper understanding of the absolute truth at the same time sunlight cannot be called sun sunlight is touching my hand it does not mean i am touching the sun globe sun planet so this is the perfect understanding of god i am the same substance as that of god god is also satchidananda pure spirit soul i am also satchidananda but i am infinitesimal just like a drop of water and the ocean of water both are same substance h2o but there is difference in magnitude similarly we are one in quality with god but different in quantity this is called achintya bhed abhed tatva and it is the perfect understanding of absolute truths ye chayva satvika bhava rajasastam saschaye matta eveti tan vidhi natmaham teshu te mai all states of being be they of goodness passion or ignorance are manifested by my energy i am in one sense everything but i am independent i am not under the modes of this material nature tribhir gun mayir bhavair ebhis sarvam idam jagat mohitam na bhi janati mame bhyav param avyayam deluded by the three modes goodness passion and ignorance the whole world does not know me who am above the modes and inexhaustible so these eight energies which krishna has described as we are discussing are made up of three primary energies they are called the modes of nature called gunas in sanskrit guna means quality goodness passion and ignorance and guna also means rog sanskrit is so beautiful so sanskrit is telling these qualities goodness passion and ignorance are also the ropes that are keeping you bound in this material world how they are keeping us bound if you understand a simple example if a person is ignorant of the rules of traffic then one is bound to suffer he will jump the signal meet with an accident or there would be some fine imposition he'll uh, breach the speed limits and any so many other things he may not have permits license so that is called mode of ignorance if the mode of ignorance is affecting us we will be suffering so much and if you are conducted by mode of passion passion means so many material desires to enjoy a person who is passionate he might be knowing traffic laws very nicely but the desire to enjoy forces him to drive very fast and jump the speed limits or jump the traffic signal and he also or otherwise meets with an accident or fine so because of mode of passion even though a person is having some sense he is better than the person who is ignorant completely but still because of the sense desires that person is called half mad he is not able to control and act on the same platform thus if you want to have platform of sanity our senses should be completely controlled we should not have material desires and that is a platform of goodness so when a person is having goodness he is not having lust and greed very peaceful he knows the laws he will drive very nicely peacefully in the traffic he will not meet with an accident no imposition of any fine but the important point to know is why is there this car with me and where do i have to go what is my ultimate destination if the person goodness also keeps on driving very happily does not reach destination that is failure of entire driving effort and the process so the most important reason for which we have an automobile is to reach our destination and fulfill our purpose but if a person is simply in goodness it means he has knowledge but he is very happily driving now because he is happy he thinks i know everything i need not know anything i need not inquire about the goal such is the situation of the brahmanas brahmanas are very peaceful because their senses are controlled and they think now because i am peaceful i have all knowledge there is nothing beyond brahma nothing beyond this impersonal energy 
they don't uh, understand what is the goal of this life and what to speak of people who are driven by passion so many material desires they keep on suffering because of uncontrolled mind and senses and what to speak of people who are like animals or animals who are completely in ignorance who do not know anything about this world so deluded by these three modes all the people are bereft of my understanding mohitam they are illusioned na abhijanati they do not know me mam ebhya param avyayam who am above these modes so krishna's body krishna's form is not made up of these three energies our bodies are made up of these three energies just like the director of the movie you will not find on the screen he is sitting beyond he is the director similarly the director of these three modes you will not find him in this world which is made up of three modes you will find him beyond in a different world which is called the spiritual world devi hesha gunamai mam maya duratyaya mam evaye prapadyante maya me tam tarantite this divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it so the material energy is imposing punishments upon us and material energy is simply an instrument we in ignorance or passion break the laws of nature so the reaction comes to us in the form of material suffering now without abiding by the laws of the government or the laws of uh, krishna the supreme personality we don't want to read the scriptures don't want to understand what is right and what is wrong simply by our research work we want to control matter krishna is telling it will be utter failure and that is what is happening with us we are working very very hard to become happy but only distress is increasing this proves this statement mam maya duratyaya my material energy is very difficult to overcome so material energy is work- working under direction of krishna so just like a thief if he wants to arm twist the policeman he will not be successful police is a mighty force you may defeat one policeman 10 more or 100 will come army will come to arrest you that is the arrangement of king similarly arrangement of krishna is very perfect if we break laws of nature simply by doing some arm twisting of the material nature oh this uh, sun is very hot i will have air conditioners different problem will come global warming will happen the entire planet will be burnt up so we will not be able to avoid miseries in our life to avoid miseries krishna tells the solution is mam evye prapadyante if you surrender unto me maya metam tarantite you cross over this material energy maya also means illusion you will cross over this illusion only when you surrender unto me then you can cross over this illusion and see the truth then you can become perfectly happy you will not be disturbed by material energy anymore but four kinds of people are not able to surrender to krishna which are these four kinds whether we fall in one of these categories let us explore namam duskriti no mudha prapadyante naradhama mayaya parita gnana asuram bhava mashrita those miscreants who are grossly foolish lowest among mankind whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me so some people will always keep on suffering in this world they will not be able to surrender unto krishna first category is mudha mudha means an as an as carries lot of load traditionally the washerman would pile up loads of clothes on the back of an as and as will very dutifully carry the loads of clothes just for a morsel of grass and as is not able to think why am i working so hard the same path that i tread every day on either side i have lot of grass i can just go there roam and eat as much as i want but this sense does not awaken in as that is why as is called an as mudha foolish he will work so hard thinking if i do not work so hard then i will not be able to eat and maintain myself grass can only come from washerman 
otherwise i will starve this is ignorance similarly those people who work very hard to enjoy all the results of their activities they do not want to offer the results of their work partake a part of their results with god they are called moodhas such people often tell oh i do not have time to understand bhagavad gita so many people who give such reasons because they are so busy to produce more and more results they want to enjoy everything for themselves and they always complain of lack of time such hard working people they cannot surrender to krishna second category is namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradhama nar adham lowest of the mankind so those people who are not advanced in civilization not advanced in social regulations economic development or religion they are called uncivilized people the tribals and even though a person is very advanced socially or economically but not advanced in terms of religion they are also called naradhama this is a version of the vedas they are telling dharme nahi na pashu bhi samana ahar nidra bhay maithunam evaja eating mating sleeping defending these are common pillars between men and animals the difference is dharma the instructions given by god if a person does not follow dharma then he is animal animal is helplessly controlled by the laws of nature next life is fixed what it is going to become and if a person does not follow dharma he or she will also be helplessly always they will be helpless in their lives will be controlled by the laws of nature and thus naradhama because they are completely helpless like animals these people also will not be able to surrender to krishna so thus following religion and having a civilized life regulated life is very important third category is maya ya aparit gyana so these people have knowledge intelligence but their intelligence is stolen away by the illusory energy of krishna these class of people are very very learned very intelligent very scholarly and they would write commentaries also on bhagavad gita but because they are mis- miscreants dushkritina they are sinful their intelligence is taken away just like the person who is very uh who is a miscreant who creates trouble madmen they are given tranquilizers they become ignorant of the reality because if they are conscious of the reality they will create trouble for others and for themselves so they are put into illusion you sleep so thus maya because these people are miscreants dushkritina they are breaking the laws of nature by their sinful activities they are also their intelligence is taken away and they are also put into bewilderment and they cannot surrender to krishna and the last category is asuram bhavam ashrita who are proclaimed atheists some people openly declare i don't believe in god i don't uh, follow all these things they obviously cannot surrender so these people because they are dushkritina they are not able to surrender to krishna so having a life free from all the sins not breaking laws of nature is very important to surrender to krishna and there are four classes of people who are able to surrender who are these people that krishna explains next चतुर्विधावजन्ते माम जना सुकृतिनो अर्जुना आर्तो जिज्ञासुरर्थार्थी ज्ञानी च भरतर्षभा ओ बेस्ट अमंग द भारतास फोर काइंड्स ऑफ पायस मेन रेंडर डिवोशनल सर्विस अनटू मी द डिस्ट्रेस्ड द डिजायरर ऑफ वेल्थ द इंक्विजिटिव एंड ही हु इज सर्चिंग फॉर द नॉलेज ऑफ द एब्सोल्यूट so sukriti is very important to come to god the illusory energy of krishna goddess durga maya devi does not allow miscreants criminals to approach god they will create but disturbance so those people who have pious backgrounds who follow the laws of nature the religion they are called sukritina and these people sometimes when they are arth arth means they are in distress they surrender unto god and also second category is artharthi when we are desirous of material achievements give me success material wealth success in some examination or a good job or good life partner these people also go to god approach god 
when we are hungry oh god give us our daily bread so those people who are in distress those people who have material desires if they are sukritina they approach god surrender to god but these two categories are not very mature they may deviate from the path of god realization at any time when they become little happy or the material desires are fulfilled or if they are frustrated they may go away but next two categories they are important they stick to this process next third category is jigyasu some people they become frustrated from these material affairs who oh, have got success also sometimes i have not got success also but the satisfaction is not there there is frustration in life so in this frustration they become inquisitive so let me understand what is this bhagavad gita who is god what is this world what is real happiness so these inquis- inquisitive souls also if they are sukritina they surrender unto god and the most advanced category is gyani philosopher one who is searching after absolute truths they also surrender to तेषां ज्ञानी नित्ययुक्ता एक भक्तिर विशिष्यते प्रियो हि ज्ञानी नो अत्यर्थम अहम् सच्चा मम प्रियः ऑफ दीस द वाइज वन हु इज इन फुल नॉलेज इन यूनियन विद मी थ्रू प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस इज द बेस्ट फॉर आई एम वेरी डियर टू हिम एंड ही इज डियर टू मी उदारा सर्व एवैते ज्ञानीत्वात्म मे मत आस्थित सही युक्तात्मा मेवानुत्तम गति ऑल दीज डिवोटीज आर अनडाउटेडली मैग्नैनिम सोल्स बट ही हु इज सिचुएटेड इन नॉलेज ऑफ मी आई कंसिडर वेरीली टू डवेल इन मी बींग एंगेज इन माई ट्रांसेंडेंटल सर्विस ही अटेन्स मी Here Krishna is telling all these are magnanimous souls anybody who is approaching Krishna for any reason but among them the person who has knowledge of Krishna and in this way one engages in the service of Krishna he is most dear to Krishna so thus it is important that we execute devotional service if without knowledge also we are engaged in devotional service we are chanting his names hearing about him engage in his service thinking of him carrying out the orders worshiping and the lord's form and all these uh, navadha bhakti we are engaged in but without knowledge then that situation is not very advanced but a person who knows the knowledge of krishna and in knowledge he engages in service krishna is telling he is most dear to me that person never deviates from the path of truth he gets special protection of krishna so when the yoga process devotional service is executed in knowledge advancement is very very swift thus we should be very enthusiastic to get the knowledge from the scriptures like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam upanishads and all the other wonderful vedic literature bahu naam janm naam ante gyan van maam prapadyate vasudevas sarvam iti samahatma sudurlabhah so it is not easy to come to this point now krishna is not telling here a gyani is very dear to me no not a gyani a gyani does not know about krishna here krishna explains bahu naam janma naam ante gyanavan maam prapadyante after many many births a gyani a person who is seeking knowledge he surrenders unto me so out of many many gyanis after research work of many many lifetimes वासुदेव सर्वमिति देर इज नथिंग बट वासुदेव पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ वासुदेव एंड एनर्जीज कमिंग आउट ऑफ वासुदेव देर इज नथिंग एल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम वासुदेव एंड इज एनर्जीज इन दिस वर्ल्ड सम महात्मा सच अ ग्रेट सोल सुधुर्लभ इज वेरी वेरी रेयर सच अ ज्ञान इज बींग प्रेज्ड हियर हु हैज अंडरस्टूड दैट वासुदेव इज एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ एंड दस ई सरेंडर सन टू कृष्णा हु एंगेजेस चतुर्विधा भजन ते माम भजन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट one who is doing bhajan bhajan means engaging in service of krishna usually we understand bhajan means chanting and singing for krishna yes these are the beginning process of bhajan but bhajan means any kind of activity in which senses are engaged in the service of krishna 
So engaging in service of Krishna is important. Bhajan te maam. But a person who does bhajan in knowledge, he is most dear to Krishna. But such a platform is to be attained after many many births of research work. Bahu naam janma naam ante. But if one is fortunate, he can directly receive this knowledge from Krishna and thus shorten this research work of many many births. Either you research and find out the answers, or you understand from the Creator Himself. The second process is very quick and perfect. And this process is being recommended here in the Bhagavad Gita. May Shri No Krishna is telling to Arjuna, please hear from me. Now Krishna has described the wise person surrenders unto Krishna. Some people who are not wise, who do not surrender, their situation is explained here. Those whose minds are distorted by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. So many people tell that you can worship any form, any Devi, Devata, any demigod or goddesses. The result would be the same. Here Krishna is telling, no, these people do not even read Bhagavad Gita, it seems. Because in Bhagavad Gita it is mentioned, Anya Devataha, those people, Prapadyante, those who surrender to other Devata, demigods or goddesses, Ritagyana, their intelligence also has been stolen away by Kama, by their lusty desires. Usually, if we analyze why people approach various demigods and goddesses, especially in India, uh, people are, you know, you'll find varieties of worship. And some people think, oh, Indians means they will worship. Or those people who follow Sanatan Dharma, they have many gods. God is not one for them, no, God is always one. But God also has many, many ministers who support him in carrying out the universal affairs. And they have been given unique charges, the department of controlling fire, air, the supplies of grains. So like this, there are various demigods for it. So when we have various desires, like those people who want to become very learned, they surrender unto and worship God as Saraswati. Those people who want to get material opulences, they surrender unto Lord Shiva or uh, Goddess Durga. Those who want beautiful wife, they go to Goddess Uma or Brahma, like these descriptions are there. So you approach particular demigod, if you want to have nice benefits, you want good health, you worship sun god. Like this, different kinds of worships are given. So people surrender to other devatas when there is some material desire in the mind. But Krishna is telling, Kama is taista rita jnana. Their intelligence is stolen away. These people are not considered very wise. And as per their own natures, as per our nature, we are certain. Just like a small child desires chocolate, then he can go to a chocolate shop. Child is not intelligent. Similarly, as per the nature of their body, they have some particular desires. And thus they are directed to various demigods. यो यो याम याम तनुम भक्तः श्रद्धयार्चितुम इच्छति तस्य तस्याचलाम श्रद्धाम काम एव विद धाम्यहम तो दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट आई एम इन एवरीवन्स हार्ट एज अ सुपर सोल एज सून एज वन डिजायर्स टू वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स आई मेक हिज फेथ स्टडी सो दैट ही कैन डिवोट हिमसेल्फ टू सम पर्टिकुलर डीटी द कृष्ण इज टेलिंग How do people get faith in some demigods? Because God is so kind. If we have material desires, He is sitting in our heart as super soul Paramatma. He directs us to particular devata and makes our faith very steady. So faith or faithlessness both come from Krishna. If you want to become forgetful of God and want to enjoy this material world, Krishna will create faithlessness in him. And if we are determined i want to know what is truth what is this creation what is purpose then krishna will inspire faith and right direction from the heart so krishna is telling 
I only make their faith steady in other devatas. Devatas do not have this capacity to instill this faith and give directions. Sataya shraddhaya yuktas tasya radhanam ihate labhate cha tatah kaman mayaiva vihitan hitan. Endowed with such a faith, he seeks favor of a particular demigod and obtains his desires. But in actuality, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. So such a person is able to attain what he wants by worshipping a particular demigod. But Krishna is telling actually, I am only giving, he does not know this. They are ministers. Actually, king is supplying everything through his ministers, through the subjects. Thus, it is Krishna's arrangement only. So whenever there is any supply, it may come through uh, any vendor, it may come through parents, it may come through our pets. Whatever is coming to us, any help, any supply, actually, God is doing that, either through men, animals or demigods. Antavattu phalam tesham tad bhavati alpamedhasam Devan Devaya Joyanti Madhbhaktayanti Mamapi Men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods. But my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. So thus people are not reading Bhagavad Gita. They tell you worship any Devi and Devata, you will attain the same result. Any form you worship. This is not fact. Krishna is telling, no, the result is different. Devan Devi Ajoyanti. Because ultimately, such commentators have no faith either in Krishna or on the demigods. No, the demigods do exist. There are various planets and there are various people who are in charge, controllers of the planet, and they are called demigods. And they are existing. The descriptions are given in the Vedas. So those people who have no such proper faith, they tell oh, all these forms are imaginary. As per your desire, you can imagine any form. But Krishna is telling different results are attained. Devan, Dev, Yajo, Yanti. Those people who worship Devtas, they go to Devtas, to their planet. And those people who worship me, they come to my planet. And again Krishna is telling, those people who worship other Devtas, please read the word of the first line, last word, Alpamedhasam. Medhasa means intelligence, brain substance, alpa means less, they are less intelligent. Why? Because antavattu phalam tesham, the result is subject to be destroyed. Antavat, it is temporary. So we are eternal. Why we should work very hard for something temporary? There are two options for you. You can get permanent money or you can get temporary money. Now it is only foolishness to aspire for temporary money. You become very rich by worshipping some devta, you become learned by worshipping Saraswati and then you forget all your wisdom, leave all your money and you move on. Now it does not make any sense to a person who knows that he is eternal. So if we are eternal, we should seek only eternal returns. So Krishna tells, they are foolish. These demigods are also temporary. You can also become that demigod whom you are worshipping. These are posts. Just like any person can become prime minister, finance minister, defense minister, home minister by proper qualifications. So you yourself can become these demigods. But even that is not desirable because all these are temporary positions. Because we are eternal, we should work so that we come to our eternal platform. What is the use if we attain everything and lose everything? This is not intelligence. So any person who has read even the translations of Bhagavad Gita, he will not have this understanding, worship any form, any demigod and goddess, you will attain the same result. No. Worshippers of other demigods and goddesses are considered less intelligent. Avyaktam vyakti maapannam manyate mama buddhayaha param bhavam majananto mama vyayam anuttamam Unintelligent men who know me not think that I have assumed this form and personality due to their small knowledge they do not know my higher nature, which is changeless and supreme. Again, very important understanding. So Krishna has described the worshippers of demigods as less intelligent. 
and impersonalists also are described as less intelligent here abuddhaya buddhaya means intelligent that is how the word buddha has come abuddhaya means less intelligent or who is not intelligent so people who are telling a vyaktam unmanifest vyaktim apannam has taken a form of a vyakti abuddhaya he is less intelligent so all those people who are telling that impersonal energy has taken the form of krishna and this energy takes various forms you can worship any form they are less intelligent krishna is telling param bhavam bhavam is nature ajananto they do not know my supreme nature superior nature the nature of my body and your body is completely different the word used here is mama avyayam avyayam means my body is imperishable my body is not destroyed by the influence of time it is completely spiritual in nature so those people who do not know the nature of krishna's body they think krishna also has accepted a material body we should not surrender to krishna but to the impersonal within krishna these are all not proper understandings please read carefully if you know basic even hindi we can understand uh, or tamil or other languages very simple avyaktam vyaktim apannam avyakt is unmanifest vyakti means person apannam has assumed this form manyate maam those people who think of me they are abuddhaya less intelligent avyayam my body is imperishable there is no vyaya it does not perish so very simple understand very simple understanding i will repeat so very simple understanding it is so we should read these instructions very carefully scrutinizingly and thus everything will be clear in spiritual life नाहम प्रकाश सर्वस्य योग माया समावृत मूढ़ोयम नाभिजानाति लोको मामजम अव्ययम आई एम नेवर मैनिफेस्ट टू द फूलिश एंड अनइंटेलिजेंट फॉर देम आई एम कवर्ड बाय माय इटर्नल क्रिएटिव पोटेंसी योग माया एंड सो द डिल्यूडेड वर्ल्ड नोज मी नॉट हु एम अनबोर्न एंड इनफैलिबल loko maam ajam avyayam so here krishna is telling again please understand avyayam avyayam i do not die i do not leave my body there is no difference between my body and soul it is eternal this form is eternal and ajam i do not take birth so repeatedly krishna is telling the superior nature of his personality he does not take birth he does not die he is an eternal personality but Mudha, foolish people are not able to understand. Krishna tells why yoga maya samavrita ha. I am covered by my energy. Just like if there is lot of light on the stage, we are not able to see the performer. Or when there is lot of light on the performer, performer is not able to see the audience. So similarly, Krishna has got. multifarious energy is emanating from him and one of them is yoga maya which covers krishna from the foolish and ignorant people and thus they are not able to understand vedaham samatitani vartmananani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani maam tu vedana kashchana O oh, Arjuna, as the supreme personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. So here, Krishna is telling again the different nature of his personality. He is different from ordinary living entities. No ordinary person can know one's past, present, what is happening. or the future life but krishna knows all these things but krishna is telling maam tu vedana kashchana me no one knows ichha dvesha samutthena dvandva mohena bharata sarva bhutani sammoham sarge yanti parantapa o sign of bharat arjuna o conqueror of the foe 
all living entities are born into delusion overcome by the dualities of desire and hate ichha dvesha samutthena dvandva mohena bharata so people are overcome by the dualities of desire and hate original duality is we desire to become one with god and we hate to serve god this is the beginning of one's conditional life of material existence all of us who are there in trapped in these bodies in the material world we are envious of god that is why when it is described here we are servants of god we are subordinates we sometimes rebel what kind of god is krishna he is telling us to serve him but we don't rebel when a nice company gives us a job offer we are willing to become servants of any other person of this mundane material world simply for some money and we share on social media see i have got this nice job are what you are you are going to become servant of that person but here i am very happy similarly we are serving our family members we serve our parents always we give them all respects do we rebel oh, why we should give you respect you should give me respect do we tell our uh, father father you should touch my feet i will not fall at your feet no we do not do that we give all respect so there is respect when there is love but when there is envy then we ask on why i should give you respect why i should serve you no as a child would naturally like to serve the parents as employee wants to serve the employer and there is enjoyment for both in a similar fashion we have to understand there is a loving relationship between us and god he is our eternal parent so the servitorship of lord is not like servitorship in this material world it is like we serve our loving relatives people who love us the most this is service which is very very delightful to the heart so we should not be envious but when we are envious we hate serving god and we desire to become god one with god then our illusory condition begins and then we are caught with secondary desires and hates then we are into this world of duality here we make difference between honor and dishonor heat and cold like and dislike actually heat and cold is the same here in this material world honor and dishonor are the same pleasure and pain are also the same but if a person is lost in the bodily concept of life he or she will not be able to understand that pleasure and pain are the same these differences are only felt because of this illusory conception of this body yesham tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvandva moha nirmukta bhajante mam dridvrata persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life who sinful actions are completely eradicated and who are freed from the duality of delusion engage themselves in my service with determination so this is important krishna tells everybody is born into delusion but yesham tu ant gatam papam those who are able to get freed from all the sinful reactions of the past ant gatam papam jananam punya karmanam and they are avowedly engaged only in pious activities in previous lives and in this life when the sinful actions are completely stopped te dvandva moha nirmukta they become freed from all dualities and confusion bhajante mam dridvrata such a person can bhajante engage in my bhajan my service with dridvrata so any person who is not doing bhajan of krishna they may be gyanis philosophers or yogis we have to understand they are not yet freed from the sinful reactions of the previous lives otherwise with dridavrata with great determination they will be doing bhajan as it is mentioned here so a person who is doing bhajan he is considered the most pure of more purer than uh, an anastang yogi more purer than a gyan yogi more purer than a karmi but important uh, word used here is dvand moha nirmukta the confusions the dualities will be nullified only when we are freed from the sinful actions so we should be very eager to understand 
कर्मणो ही अपि बोधव्यम बोधव्यम च विकर्मण वॉट इज सिंफुल एंड वॉट इज पायस वॉट इज राइट एंड वॉट इज रॉन्ग एंड इवन दो वी नो वॉट इज रॉन्ग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी डू नॉट नो द शास्त्रास आर एक्सप्लेनिंग एट लीस्ट डोंट कमिट दीज फोर काइंड ऑफ सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज विच आर द पिलर्स ऑफ ऑल अदर सेंस विच आर दीज Striya suna dyuti pana yatra papas chatur vidha the vedas describe these are the four great papas adharma sinful activities killing other living entities or meat eating that is called suna this is the biggest sin a person who is giving so much harm to other living entities cannot understand god will suffer life after life dyuti gambling pana intoxication and illicit sex these are the pillars of sinful life unfortunately we have made them pillars of our enjoyment but we see where is enjoyment in the long term there is only suffering if we are following these four principles very nicely no meat eating no animal killing no intoxication no gambling no illicit sex automatically we'll become happy in our lives and in that happy jolly mood we execute the principles mentioned in this book then we will realize god without any failure and then there will be no dualities in life heat and cold pain and pleasure will be undisturbed by all of them so this is very advanced stage but it is shown by great many spiritualists like prahlad maharaj prahlad maharaj was given poison but poison did not affect him and he was uh, kept in middle of so many snakes he was thrown from the mountain cliff he was made to sit among the hail storms nothing affected him heat and cold is all the same this very advanced stage the changes of matter is not affecting at all but this bhakti yoga process is so so wonderful that even a neophyte a beginner can experience such a platform so usually we think pleasure is good and pain is not good but actually both are same if a person is not having knowledge of krishna then pain is bad if a person gets pain and the person is dushkritina he'll become atheist god is giving me pain god is bad man so he'll become atheist either he will tell there is no god or he'll become more envious of god thus pain is bad for a person who is having no knowledge of god who is dushkritina sinful and pleasure is also bad for such a person because such a person will simply enjoy the pleasures and he will think who cares about god what is the need of having god in life when i am when i am having so much of pleasure i will repeat and the pleasure is also bad because if a person is having material pleasures he will think what is the need of god anyway life is happy let me enjoy and then he does not know in the long term there would be miseries birth death old age disease for this temporary immediate gratification person will have to undergo the pain and pleasure both are impediments in ultimate happiness if the person is dushkriti the pleasure and pain both are same and if the person knows absolute truth then again pain and pleasure are both the same if the person is having objects of sense enjoyment he uses them in the service of krishna wealth used in the service of krishna power in the society used to make people devotees of krishna spread this knowledge influence used to spread this knowledge good kind family members uh, he takes their help to engage in the service of krishna engages them in the service of krishna so material pleasures are good they help him in spiritual advancement and if pains are there then it uses it if the pain is there if there are physical maladies diseases he uses it to get detachment from this world he realizes this material world is miserable and he realizes the ephemeral nature of this material world he purifies himself his consciousness the pains are also very good and they help a person get detached from this material world and it is an impetus for spiritual advancement the pain is also good it purifies one's intelligence so thus in krishna consciousness pain is also good and pleasure is also good so honor and dishonor both are good if somebody respects you then you give them this knowledge they will take it up if people disrespect you then it's okay remain detached from materialists and focus on krishna consciousness so devotee always remains free he is not working very hard to maintain social prestige if it comes it is okay if it goes that is also welcome does not matter so thus devotee is always undisturbed whether honor is coming dishonor is coming 
पेन इज कमिंग प्लेजर इज कमिंग ही नोज बोथ आर गुड फॉर माई स्पिरिचुअल एडवांसमेंट तो इफ वी आर इवन लिटिल बिट एडवांस इन दिस नॉलेज वी शुड नॉट वेस्ट टाइम टैकलिंग दिस मटीरियल पेन्स एंड प्लेजर्स वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड द आर्ट ऑफ यूजिंग बोथ पेन्स एंड प्लेजर्स इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा दस ऑलवेज रिमेन अलूफ एंड दस बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम डुअलिटी दस जस्ट इमेजिन भक्ति होगा इज सो वंडरफुल इन एडवांस एज एनी वे हीट एंड कोल्ड नेक्टर एंड पॉइजन इज ऑल सेम इट इज ऑल नेक्टर फॉर अ डिवोटी विश्वम पूर्णम सुखाए थे होल वर्ल्ड इज फुल ऑफ हैप्पीनेस बट इवन इन द बिगिनिंग डिवोटी इज अनफेक्टेड बाई दीज डिटीज so this very extraordinary consciousness is offered to a bhakti yogi jara maran mokshaya maam aashritya yatanti te te brahm tad vidu kritsnam adhyatmam karma chakhilam intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service they are actually brahm because they entirely know everything about transcendental and fruitive activities sadhi bhuta di daivam maam sadhi yagyam cha ye viduhu prayan kale pi chamam te vidur yukta chet saha those who know me as a supreme lord as the governing principle of the material manifestation who know me as the one underlying all the demigods and as the one sustaining all sacrifices can with steadfast mind understand and know me even at the time of death so everyone has intelligence intelligence begins from how i can become happy how i can get resources for my happiness and beyond petty materialism of arm twisting the material nature inventing ways to lord over nature when people are advanced they are able to understand adi bhutam adi devam the principles of underlying uh, the management of the universal affairs the demigods and thus they understand oh actually by worshiping demigods i can be actually uh, opulent in material resources and they start worshiping demigods that is better intelligence but more advanced intelligence is when a person thinks why this arrangement is there that if i desire something one demigod has been given charge of fulfilling my desires why somebody has planned to fulfill my desires why do i have these desires in the first place who has created these desires within me and who has created this arrangement of fulfillment of the desires who is the ultimate designer and what is the purpose behind this design when a person reaches this level of inquiry that is perfection of human intelligence and then it is told here when a person understands adi bhutam adi devam maam that i am the underlying principle of all material manifestation the entire material uh, mat- i will repeat the entire material arrangement that we see around us there is man and there is woman they both complement each other and thus by reproduction the world population automatically it is sustained the ecosystem is sustained we need oxygen then the plants are giving us oxygen and plants need carbon dioxide we are giving carbon dioxide to them nice symbiotic arrangement is there the child is nourished very nicely in the womb of the mother and such wonderful arrangement who has done adi bhutam i am the person who is doing this wonderful laws of gravitation thermodynamics and quantum mechanics who is the person behind all of these arrangements and laws when a person understands krishna is behind all these wonderful material arrangements and laws when he understands he is the sustainer of all these demigods when a person knows that krishna is the ultimate object of all sacrifices i do yagya and my necessities are fulfilled krishna is sustaining this wonderful cycle of yagya krishna is the sustaining principle of everything in this existence then such a person surrenders to krishna and he can know krishna even at the time of death and thus he attains krishna in the next life without fail so this is the beginning of this most profound process of bhakti yoga 
and the conclusion of this chapter is concentration of the mind upon krishna maya sakta mana partha this is the way to understand krishna now how this path can be traversed and more details and science about this process krishna will explain in the coming chapters so now the most important segment of bhagavad gita has begun so please do not miss hearing the forthcoming chapters thank you so much for staying so long with us hearing seven chapters very soon we'll be discussing chapter number 8 hope to see you always chanting hari krishna maha mantra that is the way of keeping away all the sinful tendencies and always maintaining spiritual consciousness so please always chant hari krishna and be happy see you soon again hari krishna हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हाउ टू मेक मनी हाउ टू मेक फ्रेंड्स हाउ टू मेक मसल्स सो मेनी हाउ टूज पीपल आस्क बट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन नो बडी आस्क एंड दैट इज how to die art of living is important but more important is to know the art of dying what is the right situation right consciousness at the time of death and what is the supreme destination to be achieved this very important question will be answered by lord krishna in this chapter 8 attaining the supreme this session is dedicated to his divine grace ac bhakti vedant swami prabhupad our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of the worldwide hari krishna movement let us see verse number 1 arjuna uvacha kim tad brahma kim adhyatmam kim karma purushottama adibhutam cha kim proktam adhi daivam kim uchyate arjuna inquired O oh my lord o supreme person what is brahm what is the self what are fruitive activities what is this material manifestation and what are the demigods please explain this to me lord krishna explained in the previous chapter jara marana mokshaya mam ashritya yatanti ye te brahm tad vidhu kritsnam अध्यात्म कर्म चाखिल ये शाम तो अंतगत पापम जनना पुण्यकर्मण दोस् पीपल हू हैव फिनिश्ड ऑल देयर एम्पायस रिएक्शंस एंड आर एंगेज इन माय डिवोशनल सर्विस हैविंग टेकन कंप्लीट शेल्टर ऑफ मी दे आर इंडेवरिंग टू गेट फ्रीडम फ्रॉम द प्रोसेस ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ दे आर ब्रह्म अध्यात्म कर्म चाखिल ते विदु दे कंप्लीटली नो अबाउट अध्यात्म एंड कर्म so these technical terms arjuna is asking here they are called brahm what is the meaning of this brahm they know everything about adhyatma and karma what is this adhyatma and what is karma same question he is continuing in the second verse also adhiyagya katham kotra dehe smin madhusudana prayan kale cha katham How does this Lord of Sacrifice live in the body, and in which part does he live, O Madhusudana? And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? What is this Lord of Sacrifice, Adhiyagya? How does he live in this body? This term also Lord Krishna mentioned. Sadi bo tadi daiva maam sadi yagyam chaye vedu. So what is this adhi yagya, the Lord of Sacrifice, who sustains all the sacrifices, and it is known that He lives in our body. So where does He live? How does He live? These important technical questions Arjuna is asking, and he is asking, at the time of death, how will it be possible for us to know you? Because the body and mind situation could be very, very chaotic. 
it's a very troublesome time and at the time of death the entire life is preparation for death one should be able to remember krishna why that we will see in the coming verses so how is it possible for an ordinary person because we are very much disturbed it is very painful the time of death to remember krishna shri bhagavan vacha aksharam brahm paramam स्वभावोध्यात्मुच्यते भूतभावोद्भवको विसर्ग कर्म संयता द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड द इंडिस्ट्रक्टिबल ट्रांसेंडेंटल लिविंग एंटिटी इज कॉल्ड ब्रह्म एंड इज इटर्नल नेचर इज कॉल्ड द सेल्फ एक्शन पर्टेनिंग टू द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ दीज मटीरियल बॉडीज इज कॉल्ड कर्मा और फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज Aksharam Brahma Paramam. Shara means that which is destructible. Akshara means something which is indestructible. Everything we see in the material world around us, it is destroyed. Our bodies are destroyed. Houses are destroyed. Any substance matter, it eventually gets destroyed. Entire matter is subject to destruction. But something which is not destroyed ever, that is called Brahm. And what is that? That is spirit soul. and we think usually in our materialistic education we have been trained to think this life is all in all you enjoy and thus people are under great stress to enjoy because there is no time they have to do so much of work and then they are getting old and then they are double uh, in double whammy what to do should i work or should i enjoy and i am not enjoyed enough i am going to die if they have some failure in life they get completely disturbed if they get any physical problems they get very much disturbed this one life i have and i have got this chronic disease in my body i met with an accident i could not crack good examinations i could not have sufficient recognition in the society i could not have good family members and what not as soon as a person understands brahma bhuta i am not the body i am brahm aham brahmasmi then he becomes completely undisturbed then he knows this life is just like a dream a temporary situation i am eternal i am brahm so self should not be identified with body that i am fit i am unfit i am white i am black neither with the mind i am intelligent i am dull these are all identifications of gross and subtle body as we have seen in the previous chapter So here Arjuna is asking, what is adhyatma? What is self? So Krishna is telling, swabhavo adhyatma uchyate. The nature of the Brahm is actually self. The nature of body is not self. The nature of mind is not self. The nature of Brahm is the self. What is the nature of that Brahm? That spiritual substance. Every substance has got some nature. So the nature of that Brahm is satchit ananda. Brahm is eternal. Brahm is full of knowledge. and ananda brahm is full of bliss so simply if i am able to understand that i am brahm different from the body i become completely self realized then our life is satchidananda we no longer take birth there is no ignorance there is all knowledge and life is always bliss bhut bhavod bhava karo visargah karam karma sangyatah what is karma bhut bhava udbhava karah that action which produces material bodies is called karma so we are very fond of doing karma but we do not understand this karma is the cause of all problems it is creating more bodies so simply action does not define that activity as karma but any action so krishna has not told any action is called karma the action which produces material bodies that is called karma भूत भाव उद्भव कर कर्म संगत सो दैट इज वाई पर्सन शुड बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल इट इज टोल्ड इन द शास्त्रास इन श्रीमद भागवतम इलेवेंथ कैंटो नाइन चैप्टर वर्ष नंबर ट्वेंटी वन इट इज मैंशंड लब्ध्वा सुदुर्लभम इदम बहुसंभवान्ते मनुष्यमर्थदम अनीमी धीर तूर्णम यतेत न पतेत अनुमृत्यु यावन निश्रेयसाय विषय खलु सर्वत सुदुर्लभम दुर्लभ मीन्स रेर सुदुर्लभ मीन्स वेरी वेरी रेर 
this human form of life is a rare chance just like the student studies for an entire year and then when he's sitting in the interview or getting a decent job that is the most crucial time at that time if he is unconscious of his duty then entire education is waste so whatever he has studied for so many years it is just so that he can perform at the time of interview and this human form of life is that opportunity is very very rare so many lifetimes we have had but this human form is very rare there are जल जा नव लक्षाणी स्थावर लक्ष विंशति नाइन लैक स्पीशीज ऑफ वॉटर नव लक्षाणी लक्ष विंशति ट्वेंटी लैक स्पीशीज आर देयर विच आर स्थावर विच आर इमूवेबल लाइक ट्रीज एंड प्लांट्स प्रीमियो रुद्र सांख्य कय इलेवन लैक स्पीशीज आर दोज ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स पक्षी नाम दश लक्षणम टेन लैक स्पीशीज आर देयर ऑफ द बर्ड्स हु एज काउंटेड गॉड एज क्रिएटेड ऑल द स्पीशीज सो ही एज गिवन द काउंट इन द वे दास so these many species are there in the universe and human form of life is very rare so once we have got this we should prepare very nicely what is the final moment in this human form of time that is death so here also if we want to get a position then our abilities are tested now nobody can open our heart and check our consciousness and brain how much capacity a person has got so that is why they have some gross arrangement you write down Uh, on a piece of paper so ultimately they need to check our subtle body is this person intelligent or not but they cannot read and see intelligence ordinary beings do not have such capacity so that is why they have iq test and logical ability test reasoning tests and then they have interviews in this way they want to figure out is this person honest is this person committed is this person having interpersonal skills and so many qualities of the subtle body they want to check ultimately they want to have a person of suitable attitude suitable consciousness and nature being the potency of krishna need not take such artificial external tests nature directly tests our consciousness consciousness at the time of death if you are having good consciousness your mind and senses are controlled body is controlled you will be given higher bodies in which there are greater powers invested with you If a person who is corrupt is given powers he will create chaos in the society so nature will not give nature tests at the time of death the consciousness urdhva gachanti satvastha if we have cultivated satva guna in our life that means avowedly being truthful mind and senses are under control simple living and high thinking arjavam forgiveness tolerance titiksha all these qualities are there gyanam vigyanam person has scientific knowledge knowledge of the spirit soul then such people are called satvik and urdhva gachanti they are promoted to higher planetary systems where the life span is very long there are lot many more comforts as we have on this planet and we are invested with insurmountable great powers of this material universe so this nature tests our consciousness and if we lead our life the way most of the civilization is leading ahar nidra bhay mathunam evacha everybody is working very very hard why we are working hard so that i can have sex this is the first choice if we tell people do not have sex in your life they will not be able to survive very very difficult to control then eating i want to eat nice arrangement for tongue satisfaction belly satisfaction and then measures for defense ahar nidra and then nice place to sleep nice big house i want to have animals also are working hard running here and there for these four pillars only so there is no difference between man and animals if both are working for this four pillars of life ahar nidra bhay mathu bhay mevacha so that is why in this verse in bhagavatam it is being mentioned vishaya khalu sarvatasya at human life do not waste for sense enjoyment that is available in all the species of life dog also enjoy so much of sex openly on the street without any marriage so if you want to enjoy sex pleasure human life is not fit how much you can enjoy body gets tired so many other restrictions are there social restrictions physical restrictions animals they have many times in an hour some birds and other species so if you want to have sex you go and take an animal body but human form of life is to develop your consciousness 
प्योरीफाई योर एग्जिस्टेंस सो दैट यू कैन एन्जॉय सच हैप्पीनेस विच एनिमल्स कैन नॉट ड्रीम ऑफ कैन नॉट एन्जॉय दैट इज कॉल्ड ब्रह्म सुख स्पिरिचुअल हैप्पीनेस एंड देर इज नो मोर एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ दीज मिजरेबल बॉडीज वॉट इज दिस बॉडी दिस बॉडी सिंपली फुल ऑफ मिजरीज we invest so much of our time energy in loving some people around us and their death is sure we are never going to meet them ever again is such a life very happy condition to live we get so much of knowledge and wealth all that is lost diseases are bound to come death is bound to come so it is full of misery the intelligent person who has knowledge should take the guidance of scriptures and understand i am eternal there is no need to take these material bodies temporary bodies so i want to revive my spiritual body and that will be tested basis our consciousness at the time of death so we should not do karmas if we do karma fruitive activity we want to enjoy some material results then our consciousness will be to enjoy the material nature and thus nature will give another material body but we should do akarma actions directly under the direction of krishna supreme personality of godhead or his representative the spiritual master such actions do not produce any results so this can be simply done by taking shelter of spiritual master and knowing what is the direction of god given in the scriptures and if we lead life according to that understanding lord's mission in this world participate in that mission in our own capacity as educated and businessman as a homemaker or in whatever capacity but in any capacity we should participate in the mission of the lord as per the direction we should add then such activities are called akarma and the whole life if you do very strictly akarma then there is no more material body so arjuna has asked very nice question what is this karma and krishna has answered all those activities which produce material bodies they are called karma so you should be careful not to do karma otherwise more bodies adibhutam sharo bhava पुरुशाधिदत अज्ञोहमेवात्र देहे देहभृतां वरा फिजिकल नेचर इज नोन टू बी एंडलेसली म्यूटेबल द यूनिवर्स इज अ कॉस्मिक फॉर्म ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड एंड आई एम दैट लॉर्ड रिप्रेजेंटेड एज द सुपर सोल डिंग इन द हार्ट ऑफ एवरी एम्बॉडिड बींग वॉट इज अधिभूतम दिस मटीरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन which is always changing that is called adibhutam so the energy which does not change that is called brahm and the energy which is always changing ever changing that is called adibhuta material nature then what is adi devatam so this is also very important to understand as we discuss in previous chapter as is the macro so is the micro universe is a complete unit in itself and so are all of our bodies our bodies are also sample universe the same principles apply same arrangement is there and even an atom is also sample universe the same arrangement is there within the atom the four principles of eating mating sleeping defending are present even within the atom shila prabhupada explains so just as our body has got so many cells and every cell is a living entity we all know that cell has got life and cell does all the functions that we do cell takes birth cell grows produces by products and defends itself and there is dwindling and ultimately vanishes it is destroyed so these six changes wherever soul is present all those bodies will undergo birth growth by production maintenance dwindling and vanishing so so many cells are present in the body every cell has got a spirit soul unless spirit soul is present matter cannot show these changes growth by products destruction dwindling so unless soul is present in the cell the cell cannot show these six changes birth growth maintenance dwindling vanishing producing by products so just like so many cells are there and every cell is conscious about what is happening to itself but anybody pricks any cell or tissue of my body i become conscious immediately so i am able to sense any thing which is happening to all the cells of the body but one cell may not be knowing what is happening to the cell next to it in a similar fashion just like the cells are part and parcel of my body there are so many souls in this body 
but the body is able to sustain itself because of the presence of primary soul the living entity which is there in the heart which is conscious of the entire body when that soul moves out of the heart then the body will not be able to maintain itself and all those cells also also will be destroyed automatically similar is the case with us and the universe which are like we are like small cells in the universal body this entire universe is also a body just like we have got this body now and this body is called adi devatam which is called the universal form of the lord we take these small forms and the god also when he enters this material universe the universe takes certain shape just like when the soul enters the semen of the father then uh, under certain suitable combination of the chemicals those chemicals evolve into a body similarly if the supreme soul god has taken he has entered in this bubble of the universe the universe develops into the form that we see around us mountains rivers valleys and so many other species of life trees they all develop because of the presence of one unique form of the lord lord takes three primary incarnations which are called purusha avataras in this material world generally we think uh, lord vishnu is only one but vedas tell no uh, be, uh, one because in this material universe demigods are able to approach just one of the vishnu forms other two vishnu forms are very rare to be seen by the living entities so vedas mention vishnu stu trini rupani purushakhyani atho viduhu vishnu stu trini rupani there are three forms of vishnu ekam tu mahata srishti the first vishnu mahavishnu or karano dakshai vishnu creates the cosmic intelligence the original substance from which this entire world is created this world is nothing but transformation of intelligence we want to create artificial intelligence krishna already has done that that artificial intelligence is called mahat tatva and that transforms itself into so many substances three modes of nature uh, are there they agitate then the mahat tatva and then we see the five gross elements three subtle elements and then everything develops later so that mahat tatva is created by mahavishnu and then within this material world mahat tatva is just like a cloud just like the earth is covered by the cloud and because of the cloud we are not able to see the sun because of this covering of this mahat tatva we are not able to understand the existence of spiritual world which is full of evolutions and light this is the universal geography explained geography telling in crude terms the universal situation existence is explained in the vedas so this material world which is 1/4 of the total creation where repeated birth and death happens in 3/4 portion which is called tripada vibhuti in the vedas there is no repeated birth and death life is eternal over there so in this 1/4 of the creation which is called ekapada vibhuti repeated birth and death happens and here when mahavishnu enters this world he produces many many universes from his bodies and all these universes are like anda like eggs dvitiyam tu andasthansitam the second form of vishnu enters in all these egg shaped universes if at all science advances we do not know how science science will advance so much because we are very small and insignificant we don't know even our solar system very nicely so if we analyze go outside the universe we will be able to perceive the shape which is like that of egg dvitiyam tu andasthansitam so in this egg the lord enters in the form of garbhodakshai vishnu second vishnu and then from the navel of garbhodakshai vishnu a lotus flower emanates and in the stem of the lotus flower so many universes are manifest and you would have seen in the pictures if you visit or in some of the carvings in the ancient indian temples you will see lord brahma is manifest on top of the lotus so in the stem of the lotus all the planets are existing whatever planets we see around us they are existing in the stem now this may appear to be uh, some fantasy but actually it is not so when we carefully read make an analysis research work into this work we will understand all those sages who have dedicated their life just to find truth who reject this material world as false even though it appears to be real to the majority they have uh, accepted that this is fact so if we do research we'll be able to understand and it as fact also there is umbilical cord isn't it that is connected uh, 
from the navel of the mother to the navel of the child the umbilical cord is the way through which the child receives nourishment so similar structure is there from the navel of mahavishnu uh, you can call it a cord or a lotus flower it is actually the way that is described but the same thing which happens here with the humans also in that uh, on top of that flower there is existence of lord brahma and thus within those stems so many planetary systems are manifest and so many living entities are living on those planets and tritiyam atma bhutastham tani gyatva vimuchyate the third vishnu form is called shirodakshai vishnu he lives on a special planet shir sagar here in this material world shweta dweep planet and this third vishnu shirodakshai vishnu atma bhutastham he enters the heart of all the living entities and into each and every atom and the third form of vishnu enters in the heart of all the living entities and into each and every atom as is the micro so is the macro lord vishnu enters in the universe he enters into an atom also and sustains it same principles are there everywhere and tani gyatva vimuchyate if you are able to actually realize and understand these three vishnus three purusha avataras existing in this material world such a person becomes liberated so in this way the lord enters in this material world so when lord uh, krishna in the form of lord vishnu enters in this material universe the form which the universe takes it is called adhi devatam and all the demigods all the devatas are part and parcel of this universal body just like so many cells and so many worms in our intestine we have so many worms bacteria they are all part and parcel of this body similarly all the devatas they are part and parcel of this universal body now although this universe is in the form of an egg but those meditators those uh, spiritualists who are neophytes who have just begun their process of meditation who cannot understand the lord who is present in the heart as super soul that meditation is actually recommended yogi rid dhyana gamyam the actual yogis they meditate upon this form within the heart but it is not easy to understand sometimes people may reject or oh, it is fantasy some people may tell who has seen if you are advanced you can see just like scientists can see microorganisms or the macro celestial bodies by telescopes layman cannot see so if we are able to advance in this learning in our consciousness we will realize so when the yogi is able, he searches the super soul within the heart he is able to see then he uh, advances in his meditation but those who are not able to conceive then uh, they take this universal body itself as god so this is easy to understand that this universe also is developing this body develops because of presence of spirit soul the universe is manifesting so many forms because of presence of supreme spirit soul so they meditate upon this universe whenever they see trees they think oh these trees are hairs on the body of universal form of lord so they imagine this universe as a person and uh, the higher planetary systems they are considered the head of the universal form lower planetary systems are considered the feet of this universal form in this way anything that they see around when they see mountains they consider them as the bones of the universal form in this way they try to meditate upon this uh, universal form of god which is not exactly spiritual but also it is transcendental because lord himself has manifested this form so those who cannot meditate upon the completely spiritual parmatma form who cannot understand or conceive for them such meditation is recommended at least you go beyond the bodily concept and try to meditate in some way or the other just like uh, when there is cavalcade of the president president may not be seen but by seeing the presidential bodyguards and the special car in which he travels one can understand there is president so even though we cannot perceive the actual form of god but by seeing the universe we can understand oh god is present it is indirect way of contemplating upon god and that is recommended for the neophytes so this is called adhi devatam the sum total of all living gods the universal form and that is called purushah adhi yagyo aham evatra and then krishna is telling i am that lord of the sacrifice and i am living in the heart of all the embodied living entities अंत काले च मेवा स्मरन मुक्वा कलेवरम यया सम्भाव 
yati nasti atra sanshaya and whoever at the time of death quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature of this there is no doubt yam yam va pe smaran bhavam yajatyante kalevaram tam tam evaiti kaunteya sada tad bhav bhavitah whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body that state he will attain without fail so as we were discussing this human form of life is a preparation for death just imagine a child who has worked very hard to go into a good university and is completely unaware of the exam he has to face and he wastes his entire time in university for nothing the university also offers various programs for recreation various sporting facilities various cultural events and so many other things so that the student can study very nicely similarly all the material comforts are offered by the material nature so that we prepare very nicely for this ultimate examination and if the student gets lost enjoying the other facilities which are meant to support this education the final exam the placements then all his entry his hard work to come into that college is wasted similarly we are wasting this human form of life if we are not preparing for death every moment we should be conscious that is why it is told in bhagavatam tunam yatet na patet anumrityu yavan with great haste just like a sincere student with great haste would like to finish the syllabus but in our case we should have even greater haste because we do not know when the final exam will be asked will be that test would be surprise test any day any time it can happen ahani ahani bhutani gachhanti yamalayam so what preparation has to be done this is the preparation a suitable consciousness so that we can have the best body in the next life even a small atom does not appear by chance we very clearly can define those people who know this science if these two atoms combine come together then if temperature and pressure is this this molecule will be produced if they meet under different conditions the output would be different in a similar fashion when man and woman come together this is the consciousness certain kind of child will be produced the child will be man or woman also depends upon the consciousness of man or woman who are mating whether girl child will come or boy child will come it depends upon the parents their consciousness what would be the characteristics the features the qualities of the newborn baby also depends upon the consciousness of the parents that is why in the vedas there is garbhadhan sanskar their consciousness is purified so that suitable souls are brought here so it's a great science how to bring a healthy child in body in mind it is a great science and training is given to the parents a ceremony is there priest is called purification of consciousness is there it's not a secret affair it's declared openly that now parents are going to conceive a child this proper date and time for that there are times when if mating happens demoniac souls will come who are very lusty greedy and disturbed so this is a great science an atom is not produced by chance so this wonderful machine will happen to appear by chance no unfortunately there is no department where such sciences are discussed this education was given in the gurukul system so we have to train our consciousness now the question can be okay i can become devata so which kind of body should i have what should i do that description is given just like now also the description is given we know if you work like this you prepare like this study these subjects then you will end up as a police officer and these are the comforts these are the powers of police officer if you want to enjoy like that prepare like this or oh, you want administrative services then different thing in a different way you have to prepare you want uh, to work as a scientist then you have to prepare differently you want to go into academia you have to prepare differently so depending on what kind of life we want to live enjoy different preparation is there so just like now we hear from the books or from authorized sources and we prepare accordingly similarly different species 
different planets the life there is mentioned in the vedas and the yogis they prepare accordingly and get those bodies but the intelligent person should ask which is the best body just like people ask which is the best job i want to have that so that krishna is telling here so do not think of this thing or that thing at the time of death ant kale chama meva smaran muktva kalevaram smaran means remembrance ant kale means anta means end kala means time at the final time of departure from this body if you are thinking of me yaf prayati mad bhavam you will attain body of my nature what is the nature of krishna's body satchid ananda full of knowledge eternity and bliss we will get a similar body if we meditate on krishna at the time of death why because krishna explains the formula how we can get next body this this is a great secret that is why krishna tells now i am going to tell you important secret knowledge yam yam va api smaran bhavam tyajat ante kalevaram whatever a person thinks at the time of ante kalevar kalevar means this body tyajati means when we leave this body whatever is our consciousness tam tam evaiti kontya o kunti putra arjuna sada tad bhav a body of similar nature you will attain so if a person has been very lusty and those activities at the time of death entire life passes as a, fl- as a flash so if a person thinks of those lusty activities he will get a body in which he can act very lustily but all those bodies animal species are full of suffering entire life animal is very fearful and any time there is impending death and it is very very trouble some situation so whatever person has done during entire life death is a flashback of all those things and similar body a person is able to get in the next life but if a person does not know this is not very careful even one may be doing very nicely just like bharat maharaj after whom this planet entire planet was called bharat varsha now this small country is called bharat varsha or india so bharat maharaj was very advanced spiritualist he renounced at the age of 24 years and he was highly advanced he reached the 8th level of spiritual life bhava stage and he was about to make his life perfect but he somehow became attached to a deer and he was young he could not have uh he would have thought that i will continue to live for some more time but it so happened one day the deer did not come back to his hut and then he became very afraid other animals would have consumed the deer he went out running madly for the deer it became very dark he started running and madly looking for the deer and somehow he tripped off and he landed up in a very deep trench and finally he lost his life and when he was about to leave his body he was absorbed in the thoughts of deer and the deer came and stood next to him so because he was absorbed in the thought of deer he became a deer in his next life but because he was advanced devotee by mercy of krishna he was able to have memory of his previous life such people are called jati smara who are able to remember their previous lives so then he could understand i did a great mistake in my previous life now i don't want to have any attachment of this material world if i think of anything material person people place things if we imagine then uh, our next birth will be centered around them if we think of some house we are attached to a house if there is good karma we'll take birth as human in that house or if karma is bad we'll take birth as cockroach or insect in that house in that way it is very dangerous so bharat maharaj knowing this law he was very careful he did not live with his dear community he went near the hermitages of the great sages he was taking the remnants of food items left by them prasadam because there is this is a great secret the remnants of great sages pure devotees that is uh, very very powerful for spiritual advancement so he was just taking that prasadam and then he started doing fasting and he left his dear body then he took again birth as jad bharat uh, he took birth in a very nice brahmin family cultured family but he was knowing his past two births so he was very careful now i don't want to entangle myself in this material world so if i show i am intelligent then again they will entangle me in regular material affairs so he started behaving like a mad person that is called jad jad bharat mad bharat so you give him one instruction he will do just the opposite so thus people started neglecting him so we think if people neglect it it is not good but for spiritualists 
yes unless you want to preach in the society and spread this knowledge neglect is very very good if nobody cares for us then we can very nicely think of krishna always engage in krishna's service and at the time of death if we think of krishna then we get a body like krishna so this is very important and this we should always keep in mind the consciousness of krishna the thoughts of krishna that is why it is told in the vedas we all want to gain something here in this life what is the biggest gain that a person can have labh labh means gain etavan sankhya yoga abhyam swadharma parinishthaya janm labh para punsam ante narayana smriti the user manual of our life is telling us you follow any path some people tell if you follow gyan you will attain this brahmananda this pleasure some people tell you follow this yoga ashtanga then you will get mystical powers asht siddhis and some people tell something else so vedas are telling you follow any path you follow sankhya you follow yoga or swadharma parinishthaya you follow your own prescribed duties in the social uh, status of life janm labha para punsam but the greatest benefit we should which you should aim for i'll repeat but the greatest benefit which you should aim for by engaging in any path you want to follow is ante narayana smriti at the time of death narayan smriti remembrance of lord narayan or lord krishna because this is the secret at the time of death if you think of krishna you go to krishna and you get a body like krishna then there is no more death bird disease and all that tasma sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha mai arpit mano buddhir ma me vaishyasya sanshaya therefore arjuna you should always think of me in the form of krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me you will attain me without doubt so here krishna is giving now conclusion to arjuna arjuna i have told uh, what should be the consciousness at the time of death so thereby rest assured the best way for you is to always think of me at all times because death can happen any time especially you are in war any moment you can be killed tasma sarveshu kaleshu and the same situation is with all of us not arjuna we also can be killed at any time therefore krishna is telling sarveshu kaleshu at all times mam anusmara you think of me and if you simply sit and think of krishna then arjun may tell krishna then why you are telling me to fight then let me just think of you and let me sit in one place in my chariot or wherever you are in your temple or personally with you i will just see you and keep on thinking of you no it is not possible even though we may be looking at somebody but our consciousness may not be absorbed so in order to have krishna in our consciousness we cannot capture krishna by such artificial means i will keep on looking at you krishna and then uh, no such artificial means will not work what we have to do is we have to please krishna by our hard work in the mission of krishna so krishna has a mission paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma sansthapanarthaya to spread this knowledge of bhagavad gita to save the devotees and to kill the demons so we have to do these activities to serve the devotees uh, and to uh, now demons of course we cannot kill ordinary people of course so demonic tendencies but it can be killed that is a way of killing demons in kali yuga kill their demonic tendencies how dharma sansthapana arth i by spreading this knowledge so when we engage in such work like arjuna then thinking of krishna will be possible because krishna will become visible just like krishna becomes visible to his devotees externally he becomes visible in the heart and always one is able to think of krishna this is the actual way of thinking everything is under control of krishna if krishna is pleased he will automatically become visible in the heart therefore arjuna is being told not just to think of krishna but think as well as fight so both things have to be done we have to be very very eager to think sarveshu kaleshu at all times at the same time yudhya cha we have to do our prescribed duty we have got martial spirit then very nice you take occupation of fighting 
बट वाइल फाइटिंग ऑलवेज कीप ऑन थिंकिंग ऑफ कृष्णा मई अर्पित मनो बुद्धिर एंड योर माइंड एंड इंटेलिजेंस शुड बी ऑफर टू मी इन माइंड यू शुड थिंक ऑफ द फॉर्म एज इट इज मैनिफेस्ट बिफोर यू द कृष्णा फॉर्म एंड बुद्धि इंटेलिजेंस शुड ऑल्सो बी यूज बिकॉज यू आर थिंकिंग हाउ टू सर्व कृष्णा सो यू हैव टू प्लान हाउ टू शूट द एरोज हाउ टू प्लान माई फैलिंग स्ट्रैटेजी हाउ टू अटैक द एनिमी हाउ टू डिफेंड माई सेल्फ इन दिस वे इंटेलिजेंस इज यूज इन द सर्विस ऑफ कृष्णा सो माइंड शुड बी एब्जॉर्ब इन कृष्णा इंटेलिजेंस शुड बी एब्जॉर्ब इन कृष्णा सर्विस इन दिस वे माम ए वैश्यसी माम एवा सर्टनली डेफिनेटली एशियसी यू विल अटेन मी असंशय विदाउट फेल सो दिस इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंस्ट्रक्शन दिस इज द कंक्लूजन विद कृष्ण विल अगेन रिपीट टू अर्जुना ही हैज रिपीटेड प्रीवियसली ऑल्सो देर फॉर फाइट देर फॉर फाइट अर्च अर्जुना इज आस्किंग वाई कृष्ण वाई शुड आई फाइट वाई नॉट दिस प्रोसेस वाई नॉट दैट प्रोसेस सो नाउ कृष्ण इज गिविंग हिम द आंसर्स सो दिस इज द इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस वी शुड ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ कृष्णा and uh, we should carry out our duties and offer the results to krishna now this thinking of krishna simply by imagining is also difficult so what we have to do is that krishna will explain further in the ninth chapter next chapter satatam kirtayantu maam always keep on chanting by name shravanam kirtanam vishnoho smaranam the smaran of krishna is possible by shravan and kirtan so always chanting by incessant chanting of the names that is why in kali yuga it is told krite ya dhyayato vishnum ultimately we have to reach to the stage of smaran remembrance of krishna so that was done by meditation in satyuga leave all the duties and go to jungle and meditate but this was not possible in practical even for arjuna who came at the end of dwapar yuga this is practice of satyuga just sitting and simply meditating In Treta Yoga, such meditation was achieved by doing yagya as Treta Yam Yajito Makhaye. Dwapar Yoga, it was attained by worshiping the deity in the temple. Kali Yoga, it is attained by Kalau Tad Hari Kirtana. The same result, constant absorption in the thoughts of Krishna, is attained by Hari Kirtana, Kirtan chanting the names of Hari. So, thus, what we have to do is develop this practice. Just like people have this habit, people are bathroom singers. They are taking bath and they are singing. they are driving and they are singing they are walking and they are singing same habit we have to develop and we are sitting in front of our computer just see if you can chant and you can work also at the same time while you are driving you are working you are exercising you are doing any activity whenever tongue is free we are eating in between the morsels tongue is free try to chant keep on chanting vibrating krishna's name satatam throughout the day it is simple practice and we ourselves will perceive the results so why not try it so let us experiment this try to think of krishna as far as possible we have so many temples nice forms of krishna are there in the temple but try to do that by chanting the names of krishna chant and here focus on the vibration automatically those forms will be manifest then krishna mentions in the next verse abhyas yoga yukte na chetasa nanya gamina परमं पुरुषं दिव्यं याति पार्थानुचित ही हू मेडिटेट्स ऑन द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हिज माइंड कॉन्स्टेंटली एंगेज इन रिमेंबरिंग मी अनडिविएटेड फ्रॉम द पाथ ही ओ पार्थ अर्जुना इज श्योर टू रीच मी तो कृष्ण इज टेलिंग हियर नाउ दिस इज द सम एंड सब्सटेंस ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ याति पार्थ अनुचिंतयन चिंतयन मीन्स रिमेंबरेंस ऑफ कृष्णा अनुचिंतयन मीन्स कॉन्स्टेंट रिमेंबरेंस ऑफ कृष्णा हिज माइंड कॉन्स्टेंटली एंगेज इन रिमेंबरिंग मी अनडिविएटेड फ्रॉम द पाथ इज श्योर टू रीच मी चेतसा नान्य गामिना चेतसा मीन्स कॉन्शियसनेस इज नेवर डिविएटेड इट इज नॉट गोइंग एनी वेर एल्स नाउ समबडी मे आस्क हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल and uh, but uh, one boy he told me recently yes prabhu i realize this instruction of krishna which he tells petasa nanya gamina mind should not go at all this i realize when i had a break up in my life so when the girl whom i was loving and then it appeared then we will uh, never be together and then whatever activity i am doing i am cleaning my house i am cooking i am doing my work i am not able to take her out of my mind even for a moment so then i realized if it is possible for 
the ordinary person in this material world it is possible for krishna also so training is required strong attachment is required and when we sacrifice work hard for krishna then such attraction attachment for krishna is bestowed upon us by the spiritual master and when such attachment is invoked in the heart then this is possible chetasa na anyagamina so just like uh, when krishna left vrindavan usually we meditate uh, we sit down and do yoga so that we can remember krishna so somebody found gopis also sitting and meditating yeah so gopis are also doing this yoga sitting and meditating in the heart so they asked why you are meditating so they told oh this krishna he has gone away we are not able to forget him so to forget krishna we are meditating so this is the most advanced level of spiritual life for ordinary people remembering krishna is struggle for the advanced devotees like the gopis the best devotees the most advanced spiritualists forgetting krishna is a struggle they cannot forget krishna so this is possible when strong attachment for krishna is invoked in the heart but this is what has to be attained parth anuchintayan that is why vedas tell so many rules and regulations so many so much training we have to undergo all this training all these do's and don'ts which become very bothersome at times and people ask what is the purpose behind this uh, ritual that ritual so the vedas explain what is the purpose smartavyam satatam vishnu vismartavyo na jatu chit constant remembrance of krishna satatam vismartavyo na jat never forget krishna always remember krishna sarve vidhi nishedasyu etayo revakin karah all the vidhi and nished do's and don'ts are ev kinkara kinkar means servant they are servant of this principle all the do's and don'ts of the vedas are servant of this principle always remember krishna smartavyam satatam vishnu vismartav you never forget krishna because this is a preparation for death at the time of death i should be able to consciously constantly think of krishna because mind body could be in great pain that time also we should not forget that could be sudden any time so that is why constant remembrance should be there so whenever there is any confusion in life what should i do what should i not do which job should i pick up which business should i pick up where should i live which place should i choose this should be the criteria all the rules and regulations are kinkara subservient they are servants of this principle always remember krishna and never forget krishna next important word is purusham purusham divyam yati so supreme lord is not energy he is purush purush means a person personality yati he attains this supreme person who is divyam of course not like us having flesh body bones mucus and these nasty stuffs in the body his body is completely spiritual but the absolute truth is purush repeatedly krishna is telling purush 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 this explanation that absolute truth is simply an energy has created disinterest in spiritual life who wants to merge with energy no i want to have interaction with people laugh joke and hang around with eat with them and enjoy life with them yes that is possible with supreme lord he is a person that is why reading this bhagavad gita is very important to realize that supreme absolute truth is a person not simply some energy now another question can be asked here why krishna is speaking in third person he who meditates on the supreme personality of godhead chetasa nane gamina paramam purusham yati his mind constantly engaged in thinking of the supreme person undeviated from the path why this third person krishna is telling because krishna is quoting uh, it is not that it appears when you read some verses of the bhagavad gita so therefore surrender to the supreme person this is most important as if krishna is somewhere else and supreme person is some other person third person no it is happening because krishna is also quoting the vedic authorities so thus krishna wants to establish nobody should speak any knowledge without the vedic authorities they are the user manual any other knowledge is once understanding of the world which may or may not be fact so perfect knowledge is given only in the vedas so therefore krishna is quoting authorities here and in many other places so you'll find such third person shlokas where krishna is telling so now you surrender unto that person 
So do not think that that person we have to surrender not to Krishna because Krishna has told antakale cha maam eva smaran mukta kalevaram one who thinks about me and leaves body is sure to attain me. So Krishna has mentioned death also you think of me you attain me but why Krishna is telling you think of the supreme person he is quoting the Vedic authority the shlokas just like a lawyer quotes from the law books similarly Krishna is explaining to Arjuna this is the version of Vedic authorities also one should think of the supreme person same thing i am telling here now so think of me i am the supreme person and this thinking is possible by constantly chanting of hari krishna mahamantra kavim puranam anushasitaram anoraniyansam anusmaredyah sarvasya dhataram achintya rupam आदित्य वर्णम तमस पर वन शुड मेडिटेट अपॉन द सुप्रीम पर्सन एज द वन हु नोज एवरी थिंग एज ही हु इज द ओल्डेस्ट हु इज अ कंट्रोलर हु इज स्मॉलर देन द स्मॉलेस्ट हु इज द मेंटेनर ऑफ एवरी थिंग हु इज बियॉन्ड ऑल मटीरियल कंसेप्शन हु इज इनकनसीवेबल एंड हु इज ऑलवेज अ पर्सन इज ल्यूमिनस लाइक द सन एंड बींग ट्रांसेंडेंटल इज बियॉन्ड दिस मटीरियल नेचर so how we have to meditate upon krishna not as somebody who also was a person but more powerful a great king no kavim puranam as one who knows everything who is omniscient he knows everything past present and future and puranam not the person who appeared 5000 years ago and then he also died puranam the oldest person because all the human beings non human beings all the entities and matter is coming from him so in this way one has to think of krishna in proper knowledge this is also very important if we think of krishna in improper knowledge the proper result may not be attained so one has to think of krishna now krishna is telling further so one metal okay yes so i will think and i have understood no you have to think of krishna in full knowledge of krishna what is knowledge kavim he is knowing everything puranam he is the oldest person do not mistake him as someone who appeared 5000 years ago who is merely messenger not messenger he is supreme personality himself all messengers are sent by him when he comes he also gives messages as uh, uh, as a past time anushasitaram anushasitaram is controller anoraniyansam anusmaredyah one who is the smaller than the smallest सर्वस्य धातारम एटम इज स्मॉलेस्ट विद इन द एटम ऑल्सो लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंटर्स सर्वस्य धातारम अचिंत्य रूपम ही इज द मेंटेनर ऑफ एवरीबडी वी सी देयर इज नाइस मेंटेनेंस हैपनिंग द ऑफस्प्रिंग्स आर मेंटेन्ड इन द एग इन द वूम हाउ दे आर बीइंग मेंटेन इट्स अ ग्रेट मिस्टिकल मशीनरी हाउ द बॉडी इज डेवलपिंग विद इन द एग इजंट इट सो अमेजिंग परफेक्ट अरेंजमेंट इज देयर the wings the tummy the all the veins arteries everything will develop automatically in the ovary or in the egg such a wonderful arrangement automatic arrangement so who has set up this automation who is maintaining who is giving intelligence to bird go and sit on the egg so that hatching can take place birth can take place. all this wonderful arrangement this maintenance is done by the supreme person himself and very important word is achintya rupam so in vedas the supreme personality is called arupam also and he is called divya rupam or achintya rupam also and sometimes within the same verse you'll find both kinds of addresses as it is mentioned i think in gajendra pairs arupayor rupaya nam aashcharya karmane arupaya ururupaya both words are used the supreme personality is called arupa who has got no form who is invisible and ururupaya ururupaya means he has got many many forms so how do we understand arupam he is having no forms and ururupaya he has got many many forms yes so both are possible because it is taken from the in which context we have to understand this thing is being spoken for example if you want to uh, tell a small child about water if he speaks english you have to tell do you need water then he will tell yes if you tell him do you need jala 
or do you need vari you need ambu which are the sanskrit names for water he may not understand you have to speak in the language in which he or she understands ghosts we call invisible why invisible because we are not able to see you tell what is uh, ghost define a ghost ghost means somebody who is invisible but then to he may act and he has got existence no we are not able to see for us they may be invisible but for others many species they are visible so it depends upon the context in which the reference is being made so for ordinary mundane people like us god is invisible the spirit substance is invisible so that is why he is called arupam he is having uh, no form and he is having but a real form if god is having no form then how so many forms will exist so that is why here it is being called achintya rupam he has got a rupa but it is achintya it is inconceivable for example if somebody ask you what is the taste of stool and you will tell oh nasty but the same question you ask you ask a pig how is stool he will tell oh tasty so pig is nasty or tasty depend depends upon what is the context if you have to uh, tell a pig to do some work you will tell i will give you something very tasty stool and he will agree but the same stool for us it is very nasty both of us are having different uh experiencing different features or different taste in the same substance so stool is nasty or tasty depends upon the context upon the reference so whether god is visible or invisible depends upon the context so when explanation of god is given in the context of materialists he is addressed as arupam invisible and when he is addressed in the context of liberated souls actual absolute existence he is called achintya rupam or divya rupam so that word is used here achintya rupam your form is you are having a form but that is inconceivable we cannot conceive that form with this brain and then further it is explained aditya varnam and that form which is inconceivable which our material minds cannot conceive of that is aditya varnam that is effulgent so much light like sun is coming out of that form so very clearly we can see shloka after shloka the stress is being given to the personality of god he is purusham chetasa nanya gamina purusham divyam he is a person and that person is achintya rupam he is having inconceivable form and he is maintaining everyone he is kavim he is knowing everything he is the oldest and he is aditya varnam he is effulgent lot of light is coming out of his body प्रयाण काले मनसा चलेना भक्त्या युक्तो योग बलेन चैवा ब्रुवोर मध्ये प्राणम आवेश्य सम्यक सतम परम पुरुषम उपैति दिव्यम वन हु एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ फिक्सेस हिज लाइफ एयर बिटवीन द आईब्रोज एंड इन फुल डिवोशन एंगेजेस हिमसेल्फ इन रिमेंबरिंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड विल सर्टेनली अटेन टू द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड so now here krishna is defining the general process of such remembrance at the time of death so general people they have to move in this gradual process they have to do karma kanda then karma yogi gyan yogi then uh, dhyan yogi and after dhyan yogi they have to become bhakti yogi so ordinary uh, person has to follow this process yoga bale na chaiva by the strength of this yoga practice ब्रुवोर मध्य प्राणम आवेश सम्यक द प्राण वायु हैज टू बी ब्रॉट हियर इन बिटवीन द आईब्रोज फिक्सिंग इज लाइफ एयर बिटवीन द आईब्रोज एंड इन फुल डिवोशन बट डिवोशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट आफ्टर ध्यान योगा दिस मेडिटेशन बट फुल डिवोशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो आफ्टर ध्यान योगा यू हैव लर्न हाउ टू मेडिटेट नाउ यू डिवेलप लविंग सर्विस फॉर द सुप्रीम पर्सन इन दिस लविंग एटीट्यूड इन भक्तिया भक्तिया युक्तो unless a person is having this loving devotional attitude then dhyan yoga will not be fruitful we'll go to any other planet we can go even to spiritual world but we will gain impersonal liberation we'll be floating there as a spiritual spark but paramam purusham yati if we have to attain the association of the personality of godhead then here it is mentioned clearly bhaktiya yukto 
Jnani only or a simple yogi will not be able to do that. A yogi, when he is bhaktiya yukto, when he becomes advanced, so much advanced that he becomes bhaktiya yukto, engaged in devotional service, then satam param purusham upayati divyam. Again, it is mentioned param purusham, purusham, person, 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 supreme person, upayati divyam. He attains in that divya means spiritual transcendental place or kingdom. So general process Krishna will describe in next two, three verses which people have to follow and then the easy and the most suitable process also Krishna will describe. So what is the general process? This one, raising the life hair, fixing in between the eyebrows. Yadaksharam ved vido vadanti vishanti yad yatayo vitaraga yad ichchantu brahmacharyam charanti tatte padam sangrahena pravakshye Persons learned in the Vedas, who utter Omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order, enter into Brahm. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. Sarvadvarani sanyamya mano ridi nirudhya cha murdhya dhayatmanafranam asthito yoga dharanam the yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head when establishes himself in yoga. So this is called Pratyahar. One has to stop seeing the external beauties, external forms and see the beauty of the Lord within the heart. One has to stop hearing all the external sounds and one has to hear the omkara from within and pulling the senses within this called pratyahar then a person is able to advance to the stage of samadhi o mitte kaksharam brahma vyaharan ma manusmaran yav prayati tyajan deham sayati paramam gatim after being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable om the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. So Om is impersonal representation of Krishna. So the understanding of personality of Godhead requires very advanced stature in spiritual life. So those who are not able to understand the person of God then for them, the name Krishna is name of a person who appeared 5000 years ago. They take more interest in chanting Om, but still they have to think of the personality of Godhead. Uh, this Bhakti is important, but they think that this person, uh, this form is uh, not to be ultimately attained. It is also an imaginative form, a temporary form, which is made up of Maya, material energy. Just like all of us pick up temporary forms, this Krishna's form is also temporary, it is made up of material energy. But still, they have to meditate upon the form of Krishna if they want to have any substantial achievement. A tinge of bhakti is required everywhere, whether a person wants to simply do Ashtang Yoga, merge in the body of Krishna, go to Brahma Jyoti, attain whatever. This tinge of bhakti is required. But when a person is having pure bhakti, then he does not go for some impersonal liberation, but goes to have a personal form for himself, and he sees personally Supreme Lord face to face. So such persons, they chant Om and uh, then they go and merge either in the Brahma Jyoti or in the body of Krishna. But if they are able to understand this Om is nothing but Krishna only, his impersonal representation. And in this way, they are able to think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, understanding this form is not illusory, made up of material energy that is completely spiritual. Then they are also able to attain the spiritual kingdom. So thus it is completely a matter of consciousness. Two yogis are sitting, both are chanting Om, leaving their bodies, but it depends upon consciousness. Both may be thinking of Krishna. One is thinking of Krishna as some temporary form, another is thinking of Krishna as an eternal Satchidananda form. The end results are different. Ananya cheta satatam yomam smarati nitya shaha tasyaham sulabhav partha Nitya yuktasya yoginaha. 
For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Pritha, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. So here, unalloyed pure devotional service is being explained. The, in the previous verses, these paths impersonalists also can take. They can also sit, put the pranavayu in between the eyebrows and raise the soul to the top of the head and then uh, go for the spiritual atmosphere. They may attain impersonal liberation also. But here, pure devotional path is recommended. Ananya cheta satatam, one who remembers me without deviation, satat means constantly. Maam smarati nitya shaha, mind is absorbed in me, consciousness is absorbed in me. Tasyaham, aham means I, tasya to them. Sulabha, sulabha means very easily attainable. The previous process we saw, it's not easy. Going in the mountains and doing Ashtang Yoga, Arjuna rejected. Uh, so Arjuna may ask that Krishna, why you are again telling this to me? I just told I cannot do this. So Krishna is telling no. So this is the principle. Ordinarily, if a person has no proper attachment for me, then you have to control your senses, do this artificial mechanical process so that the mind and body do not get pulled away by the material nature. So bring it in a state of equilibrium, no disturbance. But the devotees who are Nitya Yukta Se Yoginaha, those yogis who are always engaged in my service, constantly absorbed in thoughts of me, for them I am easily attainable. They need not bother about this uh, external arrangements. Mamupetya punarjanma dukkhalayama shashvatam napnuvanti mahatmanaha samsiddhim paramam gataah After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. Important word used in this verse is Dukkhalayam Ashashvatam Why we are so much engaged day in and out? Because we think if I work in this fashion I will become happy I will get Sukha But the Supreme Creator has put a label on this world in this creation and that label is Krishna has mentioned here Dukkhalayam Ashashvatam This place is Dukkhalay Alay means abode and Dukkha means misery This place is abode of miseries Now if we go to mental asylum and we want to find a sane person there that is not the nice place we will be frustrated Similarly if we want happiness here in this world we will only meet with more and more frustration because this place is Dukhalayam. Always there will be misery in this place. And that is why we have realized in our life, the whole world, they are now having uh, departments of consciousness. This is the course most enrolled and in some of the Ivy League colleges. People want to understand, now we have studied enough of technology and other subjects. Now please teach us how do we become happy. Happiness course, curriculums are there in many good schools now. People want to explore. So Krishna is telling, rest assured, you will never be happy in this world because this world is Dukkhalayam, it is full of miseries. You may tell, no, I am very happy, I am situated, not uh, it's why you are so pessimistic. We are not pessimistic. Uh, you might be happy for some time, but Krishna is telling, Ashashvatam, that situation is temporary. That so-called happiness is also illusory what we are feeling but even if one is satisfied in that Krishna is telling Ashashvatam we all know that is temporary by force of time this situation will go away. So we have to understand in this material world there is only misery. So if we are planning after some time I will be happy no. The solution is to move away from this material world Asatoma Sadgamaya to the spiritual world transport ourselves human life is meant for tapasya. And if one is very sincere, one meets a pure devotee, even in this life, one can, even though the body is visible in this material dimension, person will be completely undisturbed if we are situated on spiritual dimension. This training we need to acquire as soon as possible. If we want to become happy now before death in this life. So for a devotee, Vishwam Purnam Sukhayate. For him, entire world is full of happiness because even though the body appears to be present in this visible dimensions, 
the soul the person proper is always absorbed on spiritual plane so if we are also able to transport ourselves to the spiritual plane we will not be conscious of this physical miseries around us so how to elevate ourselves to the spiritual plane even while living within this body this is the art which is called krishna consciousness so this we need to learn so they are called great souls who know this art mahatma who are the mahatma they attain some siddhi the top most perfection of life and such people na aap nuvanti they don't come back to this material world which is full of repeated birth and death mam upetya because they have attained me those people who attain personal association of krishna they don't return to this material world abram bhuvana loka punar avarti norjuna mam upetya tu konteya punar janma na vidyate from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery where in repeated birth and death take place but one who attains to my abode o son of kunti never takes birth again so here there are various planets and now the technologists are willing to go to moon planet but krishna is telling please do not aspire for that a brahm bhuvana lokan what to speak of moon there is a planet on which uh, there is no gross body itself that is called brahm loka there is only subtle body mind intelligence fall and false ego no misery is created by this these gross elements but there also death is there punaravarti no arjuna even if you live there once your punya is exhausted you have to come back again to this planet so any planet you go of this universe death will be there old age will be there disease will be there and birth will be there so work hard to reach spiritual planets krishna is telling ma mupetya come to me come to my planet don't aspire for any place in this material universe now krishna is telling the situation of topmost planet of the universe which is uh, almost like spiritual world life span is huge trillions of years people live over there in that planet miseries are almost very very less but from there also if people don't cultivate krishna consciousness they have to come down again sahasra yug paryantam ahar yad brahmano viduhu ratim yug sahasrantam teho ratra vido jana by human calculation A thousand ages taken together is the duration of Brahma's one day, and such also is the duration of his night. So we talk of relativity and time dilation, and this thing is mentioned here. So the difference of time is explained on different planets. The time is also different. It is being explained here. Sahasriyuk pariyantam ahar yad Brahmano viduhu. If a person spends one day over there in brahma loka who is uh, uh, this brahma his planet is called brahma loka the engineer of this universe he is called lord brahma so if you go and live there on his planet then one day you spend there equals 1000 yugas here the yuga in which we are living that is called kali yuga only 5000 years have been counted Oh, like twenty-seven thousand years are balance. Then, twice is Dwapar Yuga, thrice is Treta Yuga, four times is Krit Yuga or Sat Yuga, and these four yugas combined together, forty-three lakhs twenty thousand years. That makes one Divya Yuga. So, forty-three lakhs twenty thousand years into one thousand Sahasra Yuga. This is equal to one day of Brahma. So, we can just count. Forty-three lakh twenty thousand years into one thousand years. That is equal to one day spent in Brahma, in Brahma Loka. And equal is the time of night. One thousand Divya Yugas is the duration of one night of Brahma Loka. So how huge is the day? So one moment you spend in Brahma Loka, one year would have passed on this planet. And this is mentioned in Bhagavatam. when brahma kidnapped krishna's cows and calves uh, and his other coward friends just for a moment he went to keep them and then he looks back 
and then one year has passed on this earthly planet so all these wonderful things uh, are explained time is a real energy and the time is different on different planets avyakta advyakta ya sarva ha prabhavantya haragame ratri agame praliyante tatraiva vyakt sangyake when brahma's day is manifest this multitude of living entities comes into being and at the arrival of brahma's night they are all annihilated so now krishna is describing gyanam the knowledge of phenomenal world the so multitudes of living entities that we see around us they are manifest prabhavati ahar agame ahar means day time and when brahma's night arrives they are all dissolved and destruction happens in this universe in these repeated cycles of creation and destruction living entities are manifest in the day of brahma for 1000 divya yugas and for 1000 divya yugas there is annihilation भूतग्राम से भूवा भूवा प्रलीयते रात्रियागमे वश पार्थ प्रभवतरागमे अगेन एंड अगेन द डे कम्स एंड दिस होस्ट ऑफ बीइंग्स इज एक्टिव एंड अगेन द नाइट फॉल्स ओ पार्थ एंड दे आर हेल्पलेसली डिजॉल्व परस्तस्मा तो भावोन्यो व्यक्तो व्यक्ता सनातन यु भूतेषु नश्यत्सु न विनश्यति येट देर इज अनादर नेचर विच इज इटर्नल एंड इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल टू दिस मैनिफेस्टेड एंड अनमेनिफेस्टेड मैटर इट इज सुप्रीम एंड इज नेवर अनाइलेटेड वेन ऑल इन दिस वर्ल्ड इज अनाइलेटेड दैट पार्ट रिमेन्स एज इट इज this is the nominal world so this is great revelation krishna is telling para tasmat now krishna has explained the situation of this material world in the day of brahma creation happens at night annihilation helplessly all the living entities are dissolved para means beyond tasmat means from this bhava means nature anya means different there is a different nature a different existence which is beyond the boundaries of all these multitudes of universes vyakto vyakta sanatanah so some portion of this material universe is manifest that we see and some portion is unmanifest what the scientists might be considering as dark energy now so krishna is telling it is unmanifest but beyond this manifest and unmanifested zones of the material world vyakta and avyakta there is different nature and that is sanatanah yasa sarveshu bhuteshu it is a supreme and is never annihilated when all in this world is annihilated that part remains as it is so this is a great revelation there is a place which is not destroyed because time energy has no influence in that sphere so people do not know so this is a great subject matter so great many scientists have come and they have gone so let us save time and uh, let us not die in ignorance of this knowledge and let us try to have a sincere study of the vedas bhagavad gita so that we can understand these wonderful explanations given here so if you go to that place then even though this material world is being created and destroyed that part of the existence it is eternal it is satatam अव्यक्तोक्षर इतुक्तस्तम आहु पर गति प्राप्य न निवर्तंते तम पर दैट सुप्रीम अबोर्ड इज कॉल अनमेनिफेस्टेड एंड इनफेलेबल एंड इट इज द सुप्रीम डेस्टिनेशन वेन वन गोज देर ही नेवर कम्स बैक दैट इज माई सुप्रीम अबोर्ड तो हियर कृष्ण इज टेलिंग that place is called unmanifest akshara that place is never destroyed and it is not manifest to us conditioned souls iti uktaha it is said why it is said like that because all of us are conditioned souls here spirit is unmanifest so that world is called unmanifest there is a world people know that but it is called by different names people call it avyakta people call it akshara 
तम आहु परमाम गतिम गति मीन्स डेस्टिनेशन परमाम गति मीन्स दैट इज अ सुप्रीम डेस्टिनेशन सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एम्बार्क ऑन अ जर्नी एट द टाइम ऑफ डेथ फॉर अ बेटर हैबिटेशन द बेस्ट डेस्टिनेशन इज दैट अबोर्ड वेर कृष्णा लिव्स पर्सनली यद गत्वा ना निवर्तनते वंस यू गो देर यू डोंट कम बैक अगेन टू दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड सो कृष्णा इज चेलिंग इवन यू हैव very long long life span in brahma loka the life span is 311 trillion years so if you have such a long life span still after that you have to come down it may appear very long but from the point of view of eternity that is like a flash so in the universal time scale so many brahmas are coming and dying they are just like the bubbles coming on the surface of an ocean and disappearing so such a long life span is nothing on an eternal scale and we are eternal so ultimately we have to come back to the miserable life forms so to avoid that krishna tells go to a place from where there is no return to repeated birth and death and tat dham dham means the place the abode that is my abode that is my planet tat dhamam paramam mama mama means my i also live on a planet and that is my planet so krishna is present everywhere by his expansions and krishna is eternally permanently present in his own abode purushasya parav partha bhaktya labhyastva nanyaya yasyantasthani bhutani yena sarvam idam tatam the supreme personality of godhead who is greater than all is attainable by unalloyed devotion although he is present in his abode he is all pervading and everything is situated within him now krishna is telling again do not consider me as a limited person i have a dham i live there in my dham no purusha sa para partha bhaktya labhyastu ananya again it is being mentioned krishna wants to enforce person 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 god is a person but paraha don't think him as an ordinary person so these two words are used para purusha param purusha or divyam purusha so god is also a purush but he is param he is divyam he is transcendental he is spiritual and that supreme person is attained by bhaktiya to ananyaya unalloyed devotion we do bhakti but that bhakti is mixed sometimes with karma oh let me do bhakti so that i can have some material benefit good job good business good uh, spouse or good children or whatever some material desire is there or the desire is there to become one with the supreme to attain moksha this is also selfish desire i want peace god you remain at your place i will remain at my place remain absorbed in brahma jyoti but when a person does not want anything for himself or herself and simply desire satisfaction of krishna that is called ananya bhakti I do not want anything you want to give me pain you you give it you want pleasure that also I will accept I simply want to give pleasure to you this is called ananya bhakti and if anybody shows this attitude to god will not god be pleased will god not reciprocate why we want to reciprocate because this feeling is present in god also and if god wants to reciprocate then who can stop the blessings and benedictions life is successful so only such people are able to attain that person krishna is telling who have ananya bhakti others also may go to spiritual atmosphere they may float as a particle of light as people tell we have to merge in the light that is fact but that is not very nice living that is like spiritual suicide your spiritual body did not develop and you remain just in a floating state i exist suppose you exist and all your senses are shut down then uh, it may be peaceful for some time you don't see the person who disturbs you hunger will not disturb you and all these things but how long we want enjoyment so thus that stage is not recommended in the vedas because we are spirit souls we are active we cannot stay satisfied for very long time even in that situation so attainment of personality of god it is required his association and spiritual activities are recommended but person will reveal himself only when he sees ananya bhakti your love and krishna is telling now do not think of me as an ordinary man yasyanta sthani bhutani yena sarvam idam tatam 
ऑल दो आई एम प्रेजेंट इन माई अबोर्ड आई एम ऑल पर वेडिंग आई एम एवरी वेयर दिस इज गॉड इन कंसीवेबल फॉर्म ऑल दो द फॉर्म इज प्रेजेंट एट वन प्लेस येट गॉड इज प्रेजेंट बाईज एनर्जीज एवरी वेयर एंड ऑल द एनर्जीज आर सिचुएटेड इन हिम so one should not think of this uh, when uh, we encounter it for the first time we may consider it as fantasy but please always bear this concept in the mind these vedas are approved by which kind of audience who has sacrificed all the real appearing pleasures of this world as illusory great kings great sages powerful sages who can manifest anything and everything they have left everything in search of truth and such people have approved the vedas so an ordinary person cannot observe the quarks mesons neutrons electrons protons he believes on the authority of scientist so when we talk of vishnu who has entered within the atom we also believe on the authority of such spiritual scientists we do not know the black holes and so huge that they can devour many big planets so we also should believe on a very big personality from whom the various planets and universes are coming out so for the micro and macro we depend upon material scientists just like now we are doing we can depend also on the spiritual scientists who have dedicated their life to find truth and uh, this knowledge comes without any change modern scientific theory is a change after some time sometimes they will tell solar system has got nine planets then they will they will tell pluto does not belong to our solar system they will tell sun is 15 million miles uh, million years i'll repeat they will tell sun is 15 million miles away then they will tell 93 million miles away the theory keeps on changing but the vedic theory does not change because it is coming from god so please i request these concepts may be new but uh, if we do research if we have a systematic study then we'll be thoroughly convinced by all these concepts so please try to spend time and then everything will be revealed gradually it's a scientific study krishna is telling when has to spend time when has to have proper guidance so this is real just like we have moon it is solid substance just like this planet moon we have got another planet many many planets which are made up of spirit it is easy to understand no just like we have body which is completely made up of water and there is life fishes and so many species are there in the water there is life similarly within the earth so many germs microbes snakes they live there is life within the earth so just like there is life within the earth there are water bodies they sustain life there is fiery body sun there also life is there similarly there is a spiritual body also spiritual planet and life exists on spiritual planet also and that is the actual life which is eternal on spiritual planets yatra kale tvanavrittim आवृत्ति चोगिन प्रयातया तम कालम वक्ष्या भरतर्षभ द बेस्ट ऑफ द भारतास आई शेल नाउ एक्सप्लेन टू यू द डिफरेंट टाइम्स एट विच पासिंग अवे फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड वन डज और डज नॉट कम बैक नाउ वेन अ योगी इज प्लानिंग टू लीव द बॉडी दैट हैज टू बी डन ऑल्सो एट अ प्रॉपर टाइम वॉट इज दट प्रॉपर टाइम दैट कृष्णा इज गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन नाउ अग्निर्ज्योतिर्ह शुक्ल षण्मायण त्र प्रयात गति ब्रह्म ब्रह्म विदो जना दो सुनो द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म पास अवे फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ड्यूरिंग द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द फायरी गॉड इन द लाइट एट एन ऑस्पिशियस मोमेंट ड्यूरिंग द फोर्थ नाइट ऑफ द मून एंड द सिक्स मंथ्स वेन द सन ट्रेवल्स इन द नॉर्थ धूमो रात्रिस्तथा कृष्ण षण्मासा दक्षिणायन त्र चांद्रम संज्योतिर्योगी प्राप्य निवर्तते द मिस्टिक हू पास अवे फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड ड्यूरिंग द स्मोक द नाइट द मूनलेस फोर्थ नाइट और इन द सिक्स मंथ्स वेन द सन पास टू द साउथ और हू रीच इज द मून प्लैनेट अगेन कम्स बैक सो डायरेक्टली कृष्ण इज टेलिंग डोंट एस्पायर फॉर मून प्लैनेट बिकॉज यू विल कम बैक शुक्ल कृष्णे गति ह्येते जगत शाश्वते मते एकया यात्यना वृत्तिम अन्यया वर्तते पुनः अकॉर्डिंग टू द वेदास देर आर टू वेज ऑफ पासिंग फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड वन इन लाइट एंड वन इन डार्कनेस व्हेन 
one passes in light he does not come back but when one passes in darkness he returns so these are various uh, times there is proper passage of the soul which is arranged by various uh demigods of this universe so those people who want liberation the fire moon sun they provide suitable path for liberation so if the soul leaves the body at suitable time either by preparation the yogis prepare they know all these descriptions are there in the vedas they wait for that moment the number of breaths that we will take is fixed not the years actually so thus by the process of pranayam they are able to elongate their breathing cycle and just at the proper time they will finish their breathing cycles and they will leave so either by practice or by accident also somebody can die at that time but that time the path is open for liberation so that soul will, will attain liberation and at the other time when it is darkness in the moonless fortnight and these times when a person passes away then he will come back he will have to return to this world but krishna is telling नयते श्रुति पार्थ जानन योगी मुह्यति कश्चन तस्मा सर्वेशु कालेशु योग युक्तो भवार्जुन द डिबोटीज हु नो दीस टू पाथ्स ओ अर्जुन आर नेवर बिविल्डर्ड देयरफॉर बी ऑलवेज फिक्स्ड इन डिवोशन सो कृष्णा इज टेलिंग बट अ योगी हु नोस वेल अबाउट दीस टू पाथ्स ही इज नॉट डिस्टर्बड because yogi bhakti yogi is always absorbed in thoughts of krishna whenever he leaves the body yam yam vaapi smaran bhavam at the time of death also he'll be thinking of krishna but the yogi a devotee bhakti yogi who knows these two paths he is not at all disturbed uh, not bewildered by these two paths does not wait for an auspicious moment his entire life is auspicious because every moment he or she is thinking of krishna so in this way when we meditate always on krishna in bhakti yoga whenever we leave body in day night or whichever time success is assured therefore krishna is telling always be fixed in devotion tasma sarveshu kaleshu yog yukto bhavarjuna always be fixed in devotion then krishna concludes this chapter by this important knowledge vedeshu yagyeshu tapassu chaiva daneshu yat punya phalam pradishtam at योगी परम स्थानम सुप्रीम अबोर्ड Vedeshu yagyeshu tapasu chaiva these are different grades of activities in which a person is educated as we have uh, kindergarten primary level high school senior secondary so initially vedeshu in the gurukul first of all develop knowledge read the vedas what is this world who am i what is the aim of life what is ultimate destination how to attain that so vedic studies done by the brahmacharis vedeshu yagyeshu then when a person if it is required they enter household life in household life the performance of yagya is the prime duty because householder engages in fruitive activities for personal enjoyment this enjoyment is allowed only by doing yagyas so whether a person is reading the vedas as a brahmachari or he is engaged in yagyas dana charity a householder is known by his charity charity is the most important work for a householder for spiritual advancement and then when a person moves away from household life a person need not always uh, he is not recommended to stay in high school one has to move to higher secondary level so when has to move out of the household life and then become vanprastha husband and wife can spend time in jungle or in holy places or live around a temple this is why retirement was taken now people retire to enjoy material life whatever assets they have built no retirement is meant for austerity tapasya now enjoyment is over human life is meant for ante narayana smriti now practice tapasya so that material forces don't make our mind mad mind is control so that it can focus on krishna so van prastha life husband and wife are meant to execute rigorous tapasya voluntarily accepting discomforts 
and uh, various mystical powers a person develops by doing tapasya but one should not get carried away so one should uh, not think if i follow this process of yoga then i'll miss the mystic powers of doing various tapasya i will miss the material comforts which we get by doing yagya i will miss knowledge of liberation which we get by reading the vedas no it is mentioned here yat punya phalam pradishtam whatever a person gets by studying vedas doing yagya doing tapasya everything is attained in one stroke atyeti tat sarvam idam viditva yogi param sthanam upayati chadyam he attains everything a person who is engaged in devotional service and at the end he comes to me comes to my supreme abode my supreme planet so this easy process of krishna consciousness is being recommended here so uh, till here krishna has explained the bhakti yoga everything now krishna is explaining in relation to bhakti yoga even if you are gyani even if you are ashtang yogi you have to come to the point of bhaktiya labhyas tu ananya ya ananya bhakti and now krishna will explain the most secret knowledge the direct process of ananya bhakti in this there is no need to go to mountain to sit over there and to perform all these things these few hints which krishna gave in between this is a simple path now krishna will elaborate this simple path and the top most at the same time in the ninth chapter which is called raj vidya the most confidential knowledge so shila prabhupad was asked which is which chapter do you like the most in bhagavad gita and shila prabhupad told chapter 9 the most confidential knowledge so what is this most confidential knowledge the top most secret do not miss it very soon we'll be discussing in next session thank you so much for hearing till now hari krishna हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे द साइंस ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग सेस दैट वी विल गिव यू प्रोटेक्शन फ्रॉम द एक्सट्रीम वेदर हॉट ह्यूमिड रेन्स एट्सेट्रा The science of mechanical engineering says we will ease your miseries of transport and travel. Similarly medical science says we will protect you from all the miseries inflicted by the diseases. But no science says that if you get this knowledge apply this knowledge you will be freed from all the miseries of existence. But this is that knowledge. That is why it is called Raj Vidya. the most confidential knowledge so let us start without delay chapter number 9 of the bhagavad gita the most confidential knowledge this session is dedicated to his divine grace ac bhakti vidyan swami prabhupad our spiritual master and the founder and acharya of worldwide hari krishna movement let us see verse number 1 shri bhagavan vacha इदम तो ते गुह्यतम प्रवक्ष्यामसूय ज्ञानम विज्ञान सहित यज्ञावा मोक्ष से शुभा द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड सेड माई डियर अर्जुना बिकॉज यू आर नेवर एनवीएस ऑफ मी आई शैल इम्पार्ट टू यू दिस मोस्ट सीक्रेट विजडम नोइंग विच यू शैल बी रिलीव ऑफ द मिजरीज ऑफ मटीरियल एग्जिस्ट so krishna is telling knowing this knowledge which is realized knowledge gyanam vigyan sahitam not just theory but realized you will be freed from all the miseries of material existence so important word which is used here is anasuyave anasuyave means non envious this is the qualification of arjuna this krishna has been mentioning over and over again bhakto asi me sakha cheti you are my devotee so arjuna is a devotee friend of krishna and arjuna is non envious of krishna so this qualification is very difficult to have bhakti yoga is easy and it 
gives one the highest platform as the topmost rung of devotional service but usually people take to it in a very very gradual slow process that is why we saw in the previous chapters krishna mentions manushya naam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye so many people ask this question that krishna is telling sulabham tasya ham sulabhav partha nitya yukta se yoginah for a bhakti yogi is always engaged in my service i am very easily attainable bhavami na chirat partha mai aavesh chit he will not take a long time in this material world very quickly i am the swift deliverer then why don't people take to this bhakti yoga why krishna is telling manushya naam sahasreshu kashchit yatati siddhaye out of thousands and thousands of men one may endeavor for perfection out of thousands who have perfected their lives one can know me in truth no it is very difficult because of this qualification anasuya ve because hardly we find a person who is non envious of krishna everybody in this material world we are all envious we have so many problems in life and you see the origin of these problems is envy why we have to work so hard we work what is the problem basically we have some desires here those desires are not fulfilled things don't go according to our plan and then we get stressed out and what are our plans to uh, uh, just show off to others maintain status quo in society that is why everybody is working so hard and then you have loans and then you are not able to pay the loans and uh, uh, education and then not proper success showing off your wealth showing off your marks showing off whatever so entire hard work tremendous pressure is because i want to show off compete with others this competition has made life very troublesome even for the children now so why this competition is there in the society because we are envious we cannot see anybody going and progressing more than us going forward either we want to pull them or we want to go ahead work very hard so if you love a person will you compete with that person will a mother compete with the child for limited resources there is only one bread available in the house and both are hungry mother will go hungry and will tell child you please eat no i don't have any hunger she would not compete if there is any problem there is uh, uh, any attack in the house mother will not tell uh, no you don't come to my room uh, you face the attack these days we you know uh, we are not one nation tells you don't come to us it is your problem you take care it means there is no love there is envy will mother tell a child oh you take care there is attack in the house no mother will come forward try to protect the child so this is called love when a person sees let other person enjoy let him or her advance more and let me remain humbly satisfied in my position let me wear old clothes and let my children have very nice clothes this is the attitude of parents or mother because there is love of course that love is also not pure so there is so much of envy in the society we tell there should be love and love humans love animals and this thing but then ultimately we see this society is based on envy only in society of envy there is competition there is no competition between people when there is love and why what is the root cause of this envy envy of god because we are envious of god we want to replace god that is what we all are doing we want to become stronger than the strongest wiser than the wisest if there is possibility richer than the richest the most beautiful most handsome we want to become the best and the best situation position is of god so we want to go to that position that is why in spiritual life it is being told das das dasanu dasa servant of the servant of the servant of the servant that is why we address each other as prabhu prabhu means you are master i am your servant this is the attitude we cultivate in spiritual life and people do not know it is this attitude of being servant that is the source of great bliss and it is a great platform for spiritual advancement so when we love god then we love everybody because we recognize everybody is part and parcel of lord and then there is no cause of envy and the person is very peaceful he is not at all disturbed and another envy is we understand that god has arranged everything if i have broken some laws of nature i have to be suffered uh, nobody can escape if somebody has committed a crime 
but if he wants to somehow escape the laws then punishment will be more severe and more rigorous similarly as per the actions we have done in previous life bhagavatam mentions ye na yavan yatha dharmo dharma veha samihitah as per the dharma and adharma we have done in previous life sa eva tat phalam bhungte the result becomes fixed for the future lives it's simple now i commit crime in future i suffer same law applies here also in this life and future life our happiness and distress is the result of the karma that we perform and because the aim as we have been discussing in bhagavad gita is to gain freedom from the miseries of birth and death to go back to godhead god has designed this world in such a way that you cannot change it by mere hard work so our happiness and distress for this life is fixed so that we can save time for spiritual advancement and tolerate that happiness and distress so that is why we should just work in a regulated way and what is regulated way our spiritual practices are not to be compromised spiritual rules and regulations some uh, prescribed uh, hours we have to spend every day for spiritual life they should not be compromised just to work hard for improving our material or economic position that cannot be improved by hard work that is fixed as per the actions of previous life so now we are working very hard this is another sign of envy god you have made some laws but no i will work hard and change my destiny so sometimes consciously sometimes unconsciously but the root seed the cause is there it is coming because of this seed of envy within the heart so we have to come out of this envy so that is why the position of devotee is tatte nukampam susamikshmano bhunjan ev atmakritam vipakam usually when people come under stress they tell oh god i worship you so much and why there is stress in my life and either they are uh, disturbed with god disgusted with god sometimes they become atheist also god does not listen sometimes they change their religion or let me go to god of another religion not understanding the same person is addressed by different names in different religion or sometimes they become atheist like that so this is envy but when misery comes in the life of devotee tatte anukampa devotee feels great happiness that he has firm conviction not a blade of grass moves without sanction of the supreme personality of godhead so if anything is happening in my life this is sanctioned by god so parents will not sanction anything which is not for the betterment of the children so if god has sanctioned misery for me then that is good for myself that we should understand if the child is uh, indulge in some wrong habits sometimes parents may chastise and they may even slap at times why because there is love for the child when the child grows up he realizes why oh, i was smoking a cigarette and my parents chastised me so uh, i got protected he is very thankful very grateful in a similar fashion these miseries they help us to get purification of heart and develop detachment from this material world seek spiritual advancement of life the reality beyond this illusory world so thus a devotee always is very very grateful even in miseries he has firm faith in god he is not envious at all so miseries or happiness he is always grateful ridavag vapur bir vidadan namaste and from his heart from his speech he is always thankful to god thank you god so much either for happiness or distress in my life this is a platform of non enviousness he does not work very hard to defeat others and show off to others he understands everybody's part and parcel of god you go ahead step on my head and go ahead if there is happiness for yourself does not matter so he simply engaged in the pleasure of god his pleasure is not to defeat or put others down this is called non envy but this can happen only when we are non envious of god when we love god then actually we love our family members actually we love the people around us and we love humans non humans everybody this is the platform of real love and non enviousness and the qualification to understand this raj so let us move ahead with the second verse raj vidya raj guhyam pavitram idam uttamam pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukham kartum avyayam This knowledge is the king of education the most secret of all secrets 
it is the purest knowledge and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization it is a perfection of religion it is everlasting and it is joyfully performed so very important words first of all it is told raj vidya raj guhyam raja means king so this knowledge is the king of all knowledge whatever education you have material or spiritual the king is being discussed here the king of all knowledge the most secret of all secrets at the same time it is a greatest secret raj guhyam so krishna has used this word many times guhya tamam this is the greatest secret the knowledge which was discussed in the initial chapters of bhagavad gita second and so forth they describe guhyam confidential knowledge and that is the knowledge of brahm i am spirit soul different from the body it is very difficult just like a person in dream it is confidential knowledge for him that all these miseries no tiger is chasing you you wake up it all appears very real similarly for us all this life which is temporary appears to be real i am man woman i am this body i am dog i am cat so this is confidential knowledge you are eternal you do not die you will continue you were existing before you accepted this body so a person can see everything outside this body but nothing within the body and we are the spirit soul within the body so this is called confidential knowledge next level of knowledge in chapter number 7 and 8 it was in relation to devotional service that is called more confidential knowledge and the most confidential knowledge the pure devotional service it is described in this chapter so it is called raj guhyam pavitram idam uttamam it is the purest knowledge what is the meaning of purity in all the other fields of knowledge there is impurity there is contamination of lower modes of nature mode of passion and mode of ignorance so knowledge was mentioned uh, how various people they read the vedas in order to get material benefits of life karma kanda portion so that knowledge is not purest there is mix of ignorance person thinks i am this body and uh, the satisfaction of body will satisfy me this is real happiness so such people follow the karma kanda portion of the vedas means ritualistic ceremonies they give charity so that they can become rich in next life they open educational institutions so that they can become vastly learned or they worship various demigods so that they can have material facilities in this life so this is this knowledge is there it is fact if you do this you will get such results but it is not pure knowledge because there is contamination of mode of ignorance you are thinking you are the body satisfying body you will be happy then there is more advanced knowledge you are not the body you are spirit soul but that knowledge is also not sufficient the knowledge of the upanishads and uh, because still a person thinks i am one with god although that one means just like the drop of water is same as the ocean both are water in a same fashion i am similar in substance to god but there is great difference in the magnitude this a person is not able to understand so again there is ignorance person starts thinking by reading upanishads at times that i am god you are that tatva masi is the version of the vedas you are that means you are not matter you are brahma you are spirit soul but it does not mean that you are god you are supreme spirit soul that is why in the vedas in the upanishads it is also mentioned that you are different and god is different nityo nitya naam chetanas chetana naam there is one consciousness and there are plural many consciousnesses there is one eternal consciousness there are many eternals ekah yo bahunam vidhati kaman that one supreme personality supreme consciousness par brahm how it is different from plural unlimited consciousnesses because this one consciousness supreme consciousness fulfills the desires of all infinitesimal consciousnesses so thus this difference is also given in the vedas but it is very confidential so there is a tinge of ignorance in this knowledge also and a person starts thinking that i am god but this knowledge is purest you understand you are spirit soul different from body and just knowing this is not sufficient you have to know you are a spirit soul what is your actual designation now you are thinking you are man woman identifying with some name but you have a real identity you have a form what is your real form what is your real relationship with god how to act in that relationship 
this is called perfect knowledge pure knowledge it gives direct perception of the self by realization in other process there is no direct perception but here if you follow krishna consciousness then you can perceive god one may not be able to see god unless one is completely purified just like fire cannot be seen at times but one can feel the fire oh heat is coming there must be fire somewhere so in a similar fashion even though one may not be able to see god but if we chant and hear hari krishna maha mantra very nicely or the subject matter of bhagavatam very nicely we will be able to perceive the presence of god just like a person is blind he may not be able to see other people but he can touch other people and perceive their presence he may smell uh, amazing fragrance of the flowers and in this way one can perceive the presence of flowers even though one is blind so one may not be able to see god but one will be able to perceive the presence of god that is a special prerogative of those who follow this raj vidya pavitram idam uttamam pratyaksh avagamam dharmyam so it is not that you have to remain in blind faith you will be able to perceive thus faith becomes very strong and oh so it offers perception of god it offers perception of spirit soul and it is the topmost knowledge so it would be very very difficult to perform just for gaining confidential knowledge i am not the body the sages have to do lot of tapasya lot of yoga we saw shucha udeshe pratishthapya you have to sit alone and go to jungle and do lot of fasting stop your eating and sleeping so this must be even more rigorous but no that is why it is mentioned here susukham kartum avyayam it is very very pleasant to perform susukham very pleasant to perform and thus we can see this process is so nice so what we do as soon as we get up in the morning in this process of krishna consciousness our day starts with singing and dancing chanting the names of god and that is so pleasurable activity initially it may not be so pleasant just like the person who is having fever the best of the dishes may taste bitter jaundice patient find sugar candy also bitter but if he takes sugar candy that is a medicine he will find that it is very very sweet and even in the initial stages also simply if we hear with rapt attention we will never find it boring it will be refreshing always so as soon as we get up we sing and dance it is so joyful singing and dancing who does not like and singing and dancing uh, if you get tired then you take prasadam very tasty dishes you offer to krishna and then you honor you eat that prasadam nice tasty palatable food stuffs and then you discuss this is such wonderful philosophy isn't it that is why we are all listening now it is a food for the intelligence for the mind it is so so kham kar tum abhyayam you get tired uh, then you can read if you get tired reading then you can sing and dance you can go and preach it is such a wonderful thing now i am not a very great scholar it does not matter you can clean the floor of krishna uh, i just know how to do menial services uh, you are very fond of cooking cook nice dishes for krishna i know the art of sewing i am not very advanced in technology it does not matter you can just uh, make nice dresses for krishna oh i am great technologist very nice develop nice apps for spreading krishna consciousness i am great manager organize the distribution of literatures like bhagavad gita so thus everybody can be engaged the way they want to be engaged this is the beauty of this process your devotional service so this is very easy to perform and uh, it is uh, very very pleasant to perform susukham kartum avyayam it is a topmost knowledge it is purest knowledge it gives perception of spiritual life practical realization can happen the only qualification is anasuya we we have to become non envious ashraddhana purusha dharmasyasya parantapa aprapya mam nivartante mrityu sansar vartmani those who are not faithful on the path of devotional service cannot attain me o conqueror of foes but return to birth and death in this material world but some people who are not able to put faith in this process ashraddha dhana purusha so because you have not seen god and so many doubts can happen that is natural we are infinite essential atomic spirit soul we want to understand infinite spirit just to understand the science of these bones teeth within our mouth you have to study 4 5 years 
and then you become uh, a dentist and you study 6 7 years you become ophthalmologist and you have just knowledge of the small organ called eye that is also very limited and you want to understand knowledge about everything who has the source of everything the supreme creator so one is bound to get confused so those who get carried away by such confusion are not able to put faith on this process then mrityu sansar vartmani aprapya mam nivartante they are not able to attain me so those people who first want to do complete research and then they want to follow krishna consciousness for them the process is bahunam janmana mante gyan man mam prapadyante they want to first do discovery and once they are fully convinced by doing this discovery by their senses when they have understood perfectly got convinced yes krishna is supreme personality he is creator he is the origin he is in the heart of everybody his energies are only spread everywhere when they get convinced thoroughly then only i will start worshiping krishna chanting the names of krishna engaging in his worship then that will take a very very long time but if a person is little wise follows buddhi yoga yoga of intelligence he sees that all those great authorities who have dedicated their lives to find truth they are telling me that this is right so why do i uh, suffer for so many lifetimes of birth and death so these people who have dedicated their life to find truth they are telling it is fact and those people who follow this path they get the result so and there is no loss what is the loss in chanting the names of god what is the loss in reading spending time discovering the wonderful knowledge in these books and what is the loss anyway i have to eat food if i keep in front of krishna i eat what is the loss so let me try let me experiment so those people who are able to follow in little good faith then they advance but those no i first want to discover everything they take many many lifetimes so initially it is but natural that we will have doubts we have doubts in any field of knowledge but we should understand our faith is actually deceptive in this material world the faith is also the result we will discuss the science beautiful it is mentioned in bhagavad gita in the coming chapters how the faith is also the result of field of activity for example a moth because of ignorance is convinced if i go approach closer to fire i will be very happy but the moth loses its life this is called faith in ignorance a person is convinced oh if i get this man or woman my life would become successful and sometimes they are able to get the love of their life but in a couple of days or months they realize uh, actually my love of life has become the distress of my life why this happens we were convinced materialists are convinced if i get money i will be happy or if i get this position in society i'll be happy not noticing those people who have these positions are they happy in their life so this is called actually blind faith pashyana pina pashyati i am seeing those people who have acquired this are not happy where is the cause of possibility of my happiness in acquiring these things so thus we have to understand the faith that we have is the result of the senses and the mind that i have got the senses of moth and his brain mind is convincing him you jump into fire go closer to fire you will be happy and the mind cheats us people uh, get cheated by their mind thinking this man or woman will make you happy but it does not make they get cheated this position in society will make you happy mind and senses convince them but then so we have to understand our faith depends upon our mind and senses if a person is blind he cannot put faith whether the person standing in front of me is beautiful or not he can never put faith because eyes don't allow to have faith similarly a person who is sick he cannot put faith this dish is palatable or not because the tongue gives only bitter taste whatever he eats so our faith depends upon our senses and mind our body that is why we have to understand real faith on substance on reality is acquired by people who are completely beyond the clutches of this body who are liberated souls that is why we have to see who is the liberated person and what are his convictions about life we should try to follow that person those liberated people so we have to understand this point very carefully 
so initial stages in spiritual life because we are very small and this body is completely under control of material nature we may get distracted and lose faith but we have to understand what is the value of our faith a child is having faith if i play my entire life i would be happy it does not realize the importance of education the tribals were having faith the sun is dying every evening and the new sun takes birth every morning does it make any sense so we should not depend upon our faith and our perceptions our faith simply depends upon the body that is it not sensible it is it is very sensible common sense so faith should be upon the knowledge given in the user manual the vedas vedic literatures or the faith should be upon the liberated personalities who are not getting affected by the material nature now we are completely affected by material nature that is why it is told in updesh amrita vacho vegam manasa krodha vegam jivva vegam udropastha vegam any person who is able to control the urges of the body we have urge to talk we cannot be silent manasa vegam mind there is urge to think of this thing that thing lusty thoughts angry thoughts we cannot control so manasa vegam krodha vegam jivva vegam tongue wants to taste many things palatable even though i am diseased i know this is wrong i still end up eating that jivva vegam udaropast vegam the veg of belly fill it more and the veg of reproductive organs very strong so one who is able to control these vegas one who is not affected by the forces of material nature sarvam apimam prithvim sa shishyat such a person can make disciples all over the world so one has to find a person who is free from the clutches from the modes of material nature but what is our education system become more and more controlled by material nature more and more conditioned vedic education means remain satisfied in every situation control your mind control your senses get free from the clutches of material energy now we are more dependent now i am creating more addictions in my life i wanted 5 lakh rupees earlier now i cannot sustain without 20 lakhs i cannot sustain without 1 crore or 100 crores if i make 50 crore profit i am under great stress 50 crore is not satisfying is that liberation or conditioning we have become more dependent on uh, money earlier i was dependent on 5 lakh rupees i am dependent on 50 crore rupees in my life so now earlier i was satisfied but now i have people i cannot live without those people so what is this liberation or dependence now if that person is not with me i get very much disturbed so in this way we are creating more and more if i cannot eat that thing every day i cannot have a cup of coffee every day i cannot have beer every other day i become disturbed i cannot watch my favorite tv series netflix every day i become disturbed i cannot watch my football or cricket match i become disturbed so we are becoming more and more conditioned by material nature and how a conditioned soul can be happy now your team loses you become stressed match does not happen you become stressed the people whom you are attached to time will take them away from you time will change their nature or time will can cause calamity and accidents we become stressed in this way the more we are conditioned with the pegs of material nature we lose our freedom and vedic culture means ya vidya sa vimuktaye not vedic culture it is common sense also knowledge means vimukta ye which liberates you and this knowledge makes you conditioned now you find a good job if you don't find job after education then you are hopeless so no so that is why please whenever there is confusion in life always you can reflect what we have discussed here in the explanation of this third verse don't depend upon senses and our faith child is having faith tribals are having faith sun is dying sun is rising moth is having faith what is the value of such faith and perception find a liberated person find the vedas the user manual try to understand this is authorized knowledge or not and then try to follow so this is the process of advancement so those who are able to understand this thing they make advancement but ashraddha dhana those who are not able to understand the simple thing they base their convictions their direction in life basis what their senses and mind these inputs are giving them then they are lost they don't attain me मया ततमिदम सर्वम जगदव्यक्तमूर्तिना मत्स्थानी सर्वभूतानी न चाहम तेश्ववस्थितः बाय मी इन माय अनमैनिफेस्टेड फॉर्म दिस एंटायर यूनिवर्स इज परवेडेड 
all beings are in me but i am not in them now krishna is explaining his position maya tatam idam sarvam god is spread everywhere how avyakta murtina again it is in our reference in context of the conditioned souls we cannot see god so that is why god for conditioned souls he is avyakta otherwise for pure devotee is always seeing god every at every moment he is situated within and he is situated without but for normal conditioned souls avyakta murtina but murtina is important here unmanifest form formlessness is never supported by the vedas those who have comprehensive knowledge of the vedas that is why murtina murtina means form krishna is spread everywhere in a form which is unmanifest मस्थानि सर्वभूतानि न चाहम तेषु अवस्थिता ऑल एंटिटीज लिविंग बीइंग्स आर सिचुएटेड इन मी बट आई एम नॉट इन देम न चाहम तेषु अवस्थिता व्हाट डज इट मीन दैट आई ऑल द लिविंग बीइंग्स आर इन मी बट आई एम नॉट इन देम बिकॉज़ वी अंडरस्टैंड दैट कृष्णा इज प्रेजेंट कृष्णा इज एंटर्ड एवरीवेयर यस कृष्णा इज एंटर्ड एवरीवेयर बट in his original form he is situated in the spiritual world in his original abode and that krishna explains in the next verse na cha mat sthani bhutani pashchime yoga maheshwaram bhuta bhrinna cha bhutastho mama atma bhuta bhavanah and yet everything that is created does not rest in me behold my mystic opulence although i am the maintainer of all living entities and although i am everywhere still myself is the very source of creation so first krishna tells everything that is created rests in me all beings are in me and he is telling yet everything that is created does not rest in me so this is contradictory everything is resting on krishna everything not resting on krishna so like this we find arupayo ururupaya krishna has no form and then he is having many many forms these contradictions can be perfectly adjusted in the supreme all powerful majestic personality of godhead that is why he is god so what is the meaning of this contradiction everything is situated in krishna and yet everything is not situated in krishna it means not personally everything is being sustained by krishna example a king is there so king we can tell that king is maintaining all his subjects but is king personally maintaining personally going and feeding them personally giving them clothings and arranging uh, engaging them no king has got ministers and so many departments in this way everybody is being maintained but king would be directly maintaining some people king is directly maintaining his son his family in a similar fashion in the spiritual world krishna directly maintains them sustains them but in material world where we are living now it is impersonal maintenance by krishna krishna is not directly sustaining taking care of them so in this way every living entity all the beings are situated in krishna just like everyone is being maintained by the king and yet not everyone is being maintained by the king so in material world krishna takes care impersonally in spiritual world krishna takes care personally so thus this thing completely rejects the impersonal conception of life krishna is telling everything is situated in me but everything is not situated in me so if krishna was simply an energy which is spread everywhere then everything would have been situated in krishna but this is not fact so impersonalism is again defied here that absolute truth is not only impersonal impersonalism just like sun's energy is everywhere in a similar fashion krishna's energy is everywhere in this way krishna is spread everywhere but personally krishna is present in his own spiritual abode yatha kash sthito nityam vayu sarvatra go mahan tatha sarvani bhutani masthani ti upadharaya as the mighty wind blowing everywhere always rests in its real space know that in the same manner all beings rest in me so we think that the space is something vacuum or empty space is not empty space is a substance that is called k or kham shabd k parusham rishu just like uh, 
there is a screen on the screen movie is projected so when you are seeing the movie you hardly notice the screen but is the screen which is the cause of all the visible forms that you see in the movie theater in a similar fashion the space it's a real energy but you don't see this energy but it is the space this energy which is a cause of all the manifestations that we see around us you can call it a three dimensional screen so just like the wind is sustained in space everything is been sustained by krishna सर्वूतानि कौंते प्रकृति यानी मामिका कलपक्षनस्ता कल्पाद विस्तृजाम्यहम ओ सन ऑफ कुंती एट द एंड ऑफ द मिलेनियम एवरी मटीरियल मेनिफेस्टेशन एंटर्स इन टू माई नेचर एंड एट द बिगनिंग ऑफ अनादर मिलेनियम बाय माई पोटेंसी आई अगेन क्रिएट प्रकृति स्वामवष्ठभ्य विसृजा पुनः पुनः भूतग्राम कृत्स्नम अवशं प्रकृतिर्वशा द होल कॉस्मिक ऑर्डर इज अंडर मी बाय माय विल इट इज मैनिफेस्टेड अगेन एंड अगेन एंड बाय माय विल इट इज एनाइलेटेड एट द एंड कृष्ण इज टेलिंग डू नॉट थिंक आई एम एन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन योर चैरियर ड्राइवर और योर फ्रेंड I am the person who is sustaining all the not just planets solar systems or galaxies and not just the universes but the entire material and spiritual existence everything is sustained by me Arjuna is talking to that personality who has created so many universes you can just imagine what is krishna from the microbial of the microbial living entities to the greatest of the planets galaxies and universes krishna has created and this person is standing in front of him so thus krishna is establishing his position before he explains devotional service unto him na chamam tani karmani nibadhanti dhananjaya udasin vadasinam asaktam teshu karmasu o dhananjaya all this work cannot bind me i am ever detached seated as though neutral so god has created this thing and this world has got suffering so god is telling no i am neutral i am neutral to everybody your sufferings are created by you you break the laws of nature and thus you suffer i am neutral i have no interest in creating this place but you wanted to have your interest separate from me you wanted to become god rather than engage in my loving service so i have created this world and it is not that i am also the creator under the direction of some supreme person beyond me no i am completely free thus i am not bound by any karma i have created the laws of karma so krishna is telling here na chamam tani karmani nibadnanti i am not bound by any work any laws of karma i have created laws of karma i am completely free in all my actions maya dhyakshena prakriti hi सूयते सचराचर हेतुना कौंते जगद विपरीवर्त दिस मटीरियल नेचर इज वर्किंग अंडर माइ डायरेक्शन ओ सन ऑफ कुंती एंड इट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग ऑल मूविंग एंड अनमूविंग बींग्स बाय इट्स रूल दिस मैनिफेस्टेशन इज क्रिएटेड एंड एनाइलेटेड अगेन एंड अगेन सो दैट इज वाई डिस्पाइट ऑल द हार्ड वर्क हैप्पीनेस इज नॉट कमिंग इन लाइफ मिजरी कम्स इन सम अदर फॉर्म वाई because the miseries which we have created for us they will come to us because material nature is acting under direction of krishna and it is not some impersonal energy which we can escape by our small scientific maneuvers we have to understand what are the laws of nature so that i don't break them in future and how to properly atone for the mistakes i have done in the past so krishna is telling material nature we see oh nature is so smart nature is so intelligent how nature has given the substance within the spider how to make webs and also the intelligence not just substance if somebody gives a substance now you make computer out of it we will not be able to assemble computer or even if somebody gives us the sticky substance and they tell us you make this pop web we will not be able to do it if we are given the substance you make the uh, honeycomb we will not be able to do it but the substance is given and the skills are also given just see the amazing technology 
the pig has got attraction for the stool and the pig does not get diseased by eating stool if we eat stool we will we'll get diseased so the proper uh, science the proper management proper inner engineering how it has been designed by somebody so thus people are very inspired to uh, do research so we should understand who is the perfect scientist behind all this amazing creation he is supreme personality of god and he is telling under my control this nature is acting this automated engineering i have installed in the nature so thus do not try to arm twist nature do not try to somehow make your life happy without following the laws of nature because nature is not under your direction it is following my direction avajananti mamudha manushim tanumashritam param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram fools deride me when i descend in the human form they do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be avajananti people do not know my actual nature mudha mudha means foolish people as we have discussed krishna repeatedly tells uses this word mudha mudha less intelligent people they tell that i am an ordinary human being so when i take a form which appears like that of a manushya descendants of manu manushim tanumashritam people deride me they think he is ordinary man just a person who became very famous and people started worshiping him as god or he was just a messenger of god people started later worshiping him or he was just a powerful politician or a great mystical yogi a magician like this people take me to be more powerful but they don't understand param bhavam bhavam means nature my different supreme nature mama bhuta maheshwaram i am not controlled i am the controller of all the material energy the material elements maheshwaram maha ishwar i am the supreme controller my supreme dom- i will repeat my supreme dominion over all that be they do not know it so we should not take krishna to be just an ordinary historical personality who also took birth by control of nature like we take birth no krishna is in control of the entire nature that point krishna wants to establish here मोघाशा मोघ कर्माणो मोघ ज्ञाना विचेत सह राक्षसी मासुरम चैवा प्रकृतिम मोहिनीम श्रिताह दोस हु आर दस बिविल्डर्ड आर अट्रैक्टेड बाय डेमोनियक एंड एथीइस्टिक व्यूज इन दैट डिल्यूडेड कंडीशन देयर होप्स फॉर लिबरेशन देयर फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज एंड देयर कल्चर ऑफ नॉलेज are all defeated mahatmanas tumam partha daivim prakritim ashrita bhajantya nanya manaso gyatva bhutadim avyayam o son of pritha those who are not deluded the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature they are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as a supreme personality of godhead original and inexhaustible so krishna is giving the contrast those who are not able to understand krishna as supreme personality they are defeated you may become powerful yogi you may become very rich very intelligent you may become impersonally liberated also but you will fall down from all these positions we will leave the body and all the material uh, achievements are vanquished and if we get liberated also if we have not taken shelter of krishna in devotional service because the nature of soul is not just to have peace but positive happiness of loving relationship a person falls down from brahma jyoti on the other hand there are great souls who are called mahatma so mahatma is not simply a tag that any uh, person can be given here the definition is given who is mahatma to means but but mahatma the great souls against the mudhas they take shelter of the supreme spiritual energy of mind so there are two energies of krishna as we have discussed internal potency external potency internal energy means king's internal energy is there his arms are there with his arms he can carry his children on his own lap he can feed their children 
So this is called internal potency. External potency ministers the system set up by the king. Through that he is maintaining other subjects. So Krishna maintains devotees and he wants to maintain all of us by his internal potency. But when we become envious, just like so our situation is just like that of a son of a very rich father. Sometimes when the son becomes normally the sons are obedient to father. They give respects, they touch the feet. In India they fall down at the feet of the parents and they serve them very nicely but sometimes the son may become envious and he may leave the house even of a rich father and may struggle to find even small job so rather than giving some food to such hungry son who is loitering on the street that is also good work rather than giving skills to that son to set up his own job or business that is also good work but the best work best help to that son of a rich man loitering on the street is giving knowledge that please become non envious your father is so rich and he's a good man why don't you go back and live with your father he loves you so thus telling people that you are eternal why you are working very hard to temporarily become rich and even if you are rich this disease old age death these problems will not be solved so please go back to your father god the supreme personality so this is the best welfare activity so become devim prakriti ma shritaha rather than taking shelter of this external energy now we are we have taken shelter of external energy the laws of nature force us force us to become old force us to die force our senses to do certain activities and then we break the laws of nature and we suffer so this control of external energy is not good it is just like the indirect control of government in the jail the prisoners in the jail are maintained by government but not directly indirectly by the jail authorities and laws limited freedom and limited comforts they have but government directly is very very cautious of the people government creates so many facilities nice education health facilities and uh, so much welfare is being taken care if you serve government very nicely government will give you nice big house to live big offices servants everything will be arranged by government but to the sincere government servant So thus Krishna is telling Mahatmas they take shelter of my internal spiritual energy they are protected by my internal energy so thus even though they are in this material world they will not be affected by laws of nature so the question is and one more example i would like to quote in this context how a person is protected by internal energy how remaining in the material world one is not affected by the laws it is just like embassy in the embassy although embassy could be situated in a different country but the laws of the country don't apply in that embassy even person has committed some crime they cannot go and arrest that person so they cannot harm a person the local police or the army of that uh, country cannot invade the embassy so in a similar fashion when a person is engaged in service of krishna the laws of this material world do not apply to that person and how do we do that how do we come under control of spiritual energy it is very simple now this body is made up of material energy this mind is made up of material energy if we follow the dictates of our mind and body we are under control of external energy the spiritual masters they don't follow the dictates of mind and body they are liberated personalities this book is completely spiritual instructions of krishna So if we lead our life as per the instructions given in the Bhagavad Gita or as per the directions of the spiritual master spiritual master is not under control of material energy they strictly follow the instructions of god directly so if we follow strictly the instruction of spiritual master then we are immediately under control of devim prakriti and from the very beginning we are liberated so this is the way of becoming aloof from the control of material energy and thus a devotee remains happily even in this world which is full of misery and these people bhajanti ananya manaso so this mind and body will never give us knowledge of god unless it comes under control of internal potency so because the mind and body is is under control of internal energy of krishna knowledge of krishna is revealed and these people they do bhajan of krishna bhajanti ananya manaso without any deviation they have just one activity in life and that is bhajan of krishna what is this bhajan bhajan means uh, bhaj dhatu means to render service 
bhakti has come from bhaj dhatu so what is the meaning the definition is very nicely given sarvopadhi vinirmuktam tat paratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesh sevanam bhaktir uchyate so normally we think bhakti means we have to leave everything and maybe sit in a temple and do something no arjuna did bhakti by shooting arrows for krishna rishi kena rishi kesha sevanam sarvopadhi vinirmuktam understanding i am not the body i am spirit soul so my body belongs to krishna so let us use my body and skills for krishna this is called bhakti if your body has got skills and orientation to fight you fight for krishna it has got orientation to do research you do research on krishna your it has got orientation just for cleaning the floor clean floor for krishna business skills do business for krishna that is called bhakti you are a student take education for krishna so that is bhakti is very simple whatever we are doing if we understand that my body and mind belong to krishna so i should use them for krishna that is called bhakti so such mahatmas what is the symptom bhajanti ananya manaso they are engaged in krishna bhajan and bhajan of course begins with chanting and hearing the names of krishna unless a person hears very nicely with rapt attention other activities will not sustain so hearing is most important in the subject matter of bhajan and thus because they are engaged in bhajan gyatva bhutadim avyayam they understand me i am inexhaustible i am the source of all the other living entities so we cannot understand krishna from these material senses they are designed to perceive matter as different instruments are designed to perceive certain things from microscope you cannot observe heavenly bodies from telescope you cannot observe microorganisms from radar you cannot watch your cricket match that you can do on your television set so these objects although they are giving us vision of the world but they are designed to have a certain vision of world in a certain way in a similar fashion this material world this material body is given to us to have perception a limited perception of this material world as per our desires and the affordability as per the karma it cannot perceive anything and everything now how do we see god how do we perceive god sevan mukhe jivvada when we engage our senses in the service of god when we become sevan mukha service oriented and service begins with tongue jivva adau jivva means tongue we start chanting the names of god from here service begins then swayam es purati adaha god manifests himself and thus we will be able to understand. so everything will manifest so don't worry if we are not able to understand everything in the beginning simply we have to chant and hear hare krishna mantra very nicely there is no loss right so please develop this practice keep on chanting and hearing throughout the day as much as possible and uh, some time with great attention sit down and hear with rapt attention simply by this chanting and hearing of hare krishna mantra and this wonderful knowledge of bhagavad gita we will be able to understand everything how i am not the body how i am spirit soul nashyami atma bhavastho god situated in the heart gives knowledge because he becomes pleased this is the way by which we try to acquire knowledge in the top most bhakti yoga system so just try to chant and hear very nicely and god from the heart will give all knowledge and everything will be crystal clear so another very important symptom of mahatma that we always discuss and we just discussed is mentioned here so if somebody asks you that uh, where krishna has mentioned that you chant my name why you always keep on chanting name and this thing so you please refer this verse verse number 14 chapter number 9 satatam kirtayanto mam yatantascha dridavrata namasyantascha mam bhaktya nitya yukta upasate always chanting my glories endeavoring with great determination bowing down before me these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion so krishna has mentioned here satatam kirtayanto ma so these mahatmas what do they do symptoms satatam means constantly without any breakage while they are wakeful or even when they sleep if they wish to sleep they always chant my name continuously satatam and yatantascha dridavrata they engage in my service with great determination so people engage in tasks with great determination in this material world somebody is determined i will get this man or woman in my life somebody is determined i will crack this examination 
in this way we have determination why because we are convinced this thing will make me happy so when a person is convinced that krishna is god then uh, he will obviously engage in his service with determination because everything is under his control if i serve him if god is pleased why do we want to serve a big company because i am convinced i'll get lot of money this company is rich big so if i get convinced about krishna what whatever krishna has described here all the planets entire world krishna is maintaining he is avyayam he is inexhaustible the laws of nature are prakritim uh, it is under my control maya adhyakshena prakriti then such a person will obviously surrender to krishna but this conviction is not easy to develop that is why only mahatmas great souls are able to do this so for this we have to engage in service of krishna as we discuss satatam kirtayantu maam sevan mukhe jivvadau when we are kirtan constantly we are doing kirtan we do this practice krishna becomes pleased he purifies our senses removes the material contamination and then we are able to perceive see god and understand everything about science of god and when we understand then obviously we language we want to serve people why am i serving some rich man of this world let me serve the richest krishna the most powerful krishna so because such people have no doubts about krishna they engage in krishna service with determination so two things we have to do purify this body by engaging in krishna service constantly chanting his name and don't contaminate your body by breaking the four regulatory principles meat eating intoxication gambling and illicit sex so take the medicine and don't take the food which is harmful these two things if you are cautious of body will become purified and with pure spiritualized body the body will look like the same but it will be purified just like the water after purification looks the same but it is purified in a similar fashion this body becomes purified of rajaguna and tamaguna then we can understand very clearly everything namasyantascha maam bhaktiya nitya yukta upasate again the word is used bhaktiya so the mahatmas are bhaktas are devotees the gyanis the ashtanga yogis the karmis krishna uh, has not recognized them as great souls mahatma they are on the path but mahatma means only a bhaktiya how many times krishna has used bhajanti ananya manaso he does bhajan without any deviation again bhaktiya in great devotion he offers me respects and nitya yukta upasate he is always engaged in my service my worship upasate means worship so here krishna has mentioned the position of mudhas they think krishna he, they are ordinary uh, he is ordinary i repeat so krishna has mentioned here the situation of mudhas who take krishna to be an ordinary person then position of mahatmas and then krishna is giving the gradation now those people who are not mahatmas but they are on the path what is their situation gyan yagye na chapyanne yajanto maam upasate ekatve na prithakve na bahudha vishvato mukham others who are engaged in the cultivation of knowledge worship the supreme lord as one without a second diverse in many and in the universal form so those people who follow the process of gyan path of knowledge they are not mahatmas they have to reach the platform of supreme gyan bhakti so gyan yagya na chapi anye others who are not mahatmas they follow me by gyan yagya and these gyanis they worship uh, krishna not in a suitable way but in three kinds of worship they are also worshiping me only krishna is telling ye janto maam upasate they worship me but in different features not in the supreme feature the two handed shyam sundar form but ekatvena pritakvena bahuda vishvato mukham so as we understood that krishna is sachidananda pure spirit and we are also pure spirit but they misunderstand that i am same supreme spirit so they start thinking that i am god and they worship themselves that is called ahangraha upasana but at least they understand i am not the body so they are also advanced if they advance further this misconception may be removed and then they understand what kind of god i am i have toothache i cannot cure my toothache itself and i have to rush to a dentist why am i thinking i am god so many planets are there can i control the motion of those planets then they realize i am not god actually i am god substance but not in magnitude 
so some people who think i am that supreme personality so just like uh, the nature is creating various hallucinations i am man i am woman this is the last snare of maya the material nature makes you believe that you are god yes this percept that is why we should never depend upon our perceptions they will cheat us so this perception is created by maya you start feeling i am god i am the universal consciousness this is called ekatvena then prithaktvena another class of gyanis they think god has got so many forms any form can be imagined so you can worship either ganpati or you can worship shiva you can worship durga you can worship surya these different forms are there and these are all imaginative forms any form prithaktvena means so many separate so many different plural forms are there so this is also one class and third class is bahuda vishvato mukham who do not have any conception beyond the material manifestation as we discussed adi daivam this universe also is body of krishna because krishna has entered in this universe this universe has taken certain form and they worship this universe as a supreme organism and we are part and parcel of this supreme organism this is called bahuda vishvato mukham they are also impersonalists but because they understand there is a conception of god they are also advanced than the gross materialists aham kratur aham yagyah swadhaham aham aushadham mantroham aham evajyam aham agnir aham hutam but it is i who am the ritual i the sacrifice i the offering to the ancestors the healing herb the transcendental chant i am the butter and the fire and the offering so some people who do yagyas dravi yagya offer the material ingredients into the fire krishna is telling i am everything i am that fire the consuming agent i am the offering i am the off- i am everything because everything is manifestation of my energy pitaham asya jagato mata dhata pitamah vedyam pavitram omkara riksam yajure vacha i am the father of this universe the mother the support and the grand sire i am the object of knowledge the purifier and the syllable om i am also the rik the sam and the yajur vedas pitaham asya jagata so i am the father and lord shiva is considered to be our father because the souls which are impregnated into this material world they are coming from lord shiva but lord shiva is also coming from somebody mata dhata pitama so krishna is telling i am father i am grandfather grand sire also so lord shiva has come from lord brahma and lord brahma also has come from somebody and material nature goddess durga she is our mother she provides bodies to all of us so krishna is telling i am mother i am father i am grandfather grand sire everybody is my manifestation only i am rik yaju sam all the vedas in uh, other words krishna wants to tell there is nothing beyond me in this creation that you see gatir bharta prabhu sakshi nivasa sharanam surit prabhava pralaya sthanam nidhanam bijam avyayam I am the goal the sustainer the master the witness the abode the refuge and the most dear friend I am the creation and the annihilation the basis of everything the resting place and the eternal seed so krishna is the seed and krishna is the gati krishna is the ultimate destination of everybody tapam yaham aham varsham nigranami usrajami cha अमृतम चैव मृत्युश्च सद असच्चा हम अर्जुना ओ अर्जुना आई कंट्रोल हीट द रेन एंड द ड्रॉट आई एम इमोर्टैलिटी एंड आई एम आल्सो डेथ पर्सोनिफाइड बोथ बीइंग एंड नॉन बीइंग आर इन मी सो दिस ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज नॉट बाय चांस यू ब्रेक द लॉज ऑफ नेचर इट विल हैपन कृष्णा इज द कंट्रोलिंग ऑफ हीट द ड्रॉट्स आर नॉट हैपनिंग बाय चांस वी ब्रेक द लॉज ऑफ नेचर ड्रॉट्स विल हैपन so krishna is telling i am the eat i am the cause of rain cause of drought i am maintainer i am the annihilator 
त्रैवेद्यमाम सोम पाह त्रैवेद्यमाम सोम पाह पूत पापा यज्ञैरिष्ट्वा स्वर्गति प्रार्थयन्ते ते पुण्यमासाद्य सुरेन्द्र लोकम अश्नन्ति दिव्यान दिवि देव भोगान दोज हु स्टडी द वेदास एंड ड्रिंक द सोमा जूस सीकिंग द हेवनली प्लैनेट्स वर्शिप मी इनडायरेक्टली दे टेक बर्थ ऑन द प्लैनेट ऑफ इंद्रा वेयर दे एन्जॉय गॉडली डिलाइट्स सो दोज हु आर नॉट ऑन द पाथ ऑफ नॉलेज दे डोंट वॉन्ट लिबरेशन दे जस्ट वॉन्ट एलिवेशन टू हेवनली प्लैनेट्स they try to create somras they do sompan now somras is misunderstood the drink of the demigods that they are also drunkards they drink liquor no it is not tamasic intoxication uh, by the influence of intoxicants like liquor we commit so many crimes but drinking somras frees us from the sinful reactions and that is mentioned here that these people they take birth on the planet of indra where they enjoy godly delights so unless a person is purified of the lower mode they cannot have attainment of heavenly planets where satvik nature predominates so by drinking this soma juice who the papa person becomes free from the pap so reverse thing is happening by drinking liquor you commit sinful activities and here who the papa you become free from the sinful reactions you have more sattva guna in your body thus you go to urdhavagathanti satvastha to heavenly planets te tam bhuktva swarga lokam vishalam shine punye marte lokam vishanti evam trai dharmam anuprapanna gatagatam kam kama labhante when they have thus enjoyed heavenly sense pleasure they return to this mortal planet again thus through the vedic principles they achieve only flickering happiness so krishna is telling this is not right course of action indirectly you are worshiping me because the devatas are my part and parcels but even if you attain to those devatas their planets their living comforts are much more shine punye when the punya is finished then you come back of course unless you cultivate krishna consciousness is transcendental on heavenly planet also if you become krishna conscious you can advance further and become liberated but if you do not follow krishna consciousness then as soon as the punya material credits are over you come back on this activity material i'll repeat so when your pious credits are over you come back to this earthly planet and again engage in material activity again you commit punya you go to heavenly planets and if you do papa then you go to hellish planets and in this way a person keeps on rotating sometimes he goes very high material comforts and mistakes are inevitable in this material world he goes down suffers in the hellish situations and in this way the person keeps on enjoying and suffering in the cycle so krishna does not tell it is very beneficial activity ananya chintayanto ma ye janav paryupasate तेषाम So don't we need to worship some devatas get some material benefit at least live here peacefully and happily So this verse is very important Krishna mentions Ananya chintayanto maam Krishna tells satatam kirtayanto maam mahatmas always they are engaged in Krishna's worship bhajanti ananya manaso without any deviation they are just engaged in Krishna consciousness So if we are doing this thing then how shall we eat who shall arrange for us So here in this verse it is mentioned Ananya ha those who worship me with devotion meditating on my transcendental form i carry what they lack and preserve what they have so one very famous uh, acharya arjuna acharya he was a pure devotee he was uh, writing commentary on bhagavad gita 
एंड वेन ई केम अक्रॉस दिस वर्ल्ड वहामी अहम आई कैरी पर्सनली सो ही थॉट कृष्णा एंड वी यू नो दिस चैप्टर डिस्क्राइब द ग्लोरीज ऑफ कृष्णा हाउ ही सस्टेनिंग एवरी थिंग देर इज नथिंग बट कृष्णा ओनली ऑल द मटीरियल एनर्जी स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी ऑल द लिविंग एंडिटीज माता धाता पिता मह फायर द ऑफरिंग द हर्ब चैंड एवरी थिंग रिग यजु शाम अथर वेद एवरी थिंग इज नथिंग बट मी सो सच अ पर्सनैलिटी ही कैन सेंड सो मेनी एजेंट्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ द डिवोटीज वर थिंकिंग ऑफ कृष्णा वाई पर्सनली ही हैज टू कम सो देन ही स्ट्रक ऑफ द लाइन्स देर एनी एक्सप्लेन दैट through my agents i will take care of the devotees i will supply to them what they lack and preserve what they have and then he wanted because he was a householder he wanted to have some groceries and some essentials of daily need so on the request of his wife he went out to collect the arms and uh, meanwhile two boys one black and one white they come they carry a uh, huge loads on the bamboo you know there is a way you keep bamboo on your shoulder bamboo stick and you balance it with load on either sides so they were having this huge load and these two boys when uh, the brahmana's wife arjuna acharya's wife saw that poor boys young boys who has given you so much load they told no your husband no leave acharya has become so cruel he is not he is very kind told, no no he chastised us and he has told us to carry all this load here so anyway they put the load and the wife requested please sit down have some prasadam so they told no no and then she saw there were some marks on the backs oh how these marks have come no acharya has beaten us also told, no i will talk to him how he can be so cruel to young children so you please sit here and i will bring some prasadam no 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 he will come and chastise us we will go and they go away and when arjuna acharya returns and then the wife talks how acharya you have become so cruel those children this uh, so much heavy load you have given them and then you beat them also so then he saw that whatever he wanted everything was there in the house well, but i have not arranged i did not tell anybody and then he asked the description of the children and then he realized they were none other than krishna and balram and because this bhagavad gita is non different from krishna this is another very important concept of spiritual life spiritual world spiritual life is absolute so there is no difference between krishna and the instructions of krishna so if this faith but we need shraddha as krishna has told in the beginning with this faith if we read bhagavad gita then we will receive personal instructions of krishna the more we become qualified in spiritual life more and more this bhagavad gita will reveal itself to us so thus just see such an amazing opportunity we have personal instructions of krishna we are getting when we hear bhagavad gita or when we read bhagavad gita so because bhagavad gita is not different from krishna krishna wanted to show by his mercy to his devotee when he struck off the lines on bhagavad gita in the commentary the marks were there on the back of krishna so thus we should uh, with great faith love these are the practical historical incidents now of course some of you may believe some may not but there is you do some research work we will find many many such instances are there they keep on happening so yoga kshemam vahami ham krishna is telling it is not that krishna has so much love for his devotees because a devotee has nothing other than no business other than serving krishna krishna's only business is to serve his devotee to take care of his devotee thus arjuna is being served by krishna in a very menial capacity as his charioteer and here personally not by his agents personally krishna supplies so thus an intelligent person just tries to satisfy krishna and then we will never be in scarcity so we should try to do this ananya chintayanto maam always we are absorbed in thoughts of krishna but how to do it because uh, we have to do so many activities even though we may do for krishna in our job we need to have attention in everything we may need some attention so that is why krishna has told mahatmas what do they do this verse is very important mahatmas satatam so there are so many qualifications of mahatma but in the first line krishna has mentioned the most important qualification of mahatma and what is that satatam kirtayanto ma always they are chanting my names so this is easy to do we are doing any work if you practice then we can keep on chanting and with some practice we will not be disturbed by that vila prabhupad gives the example 
in the Indian villages earlier, women have to fetch water from the reservoir. So they would have an earthen pot on their head and sometimes pot over pot. And uh, they will walk very nicely. They will talk here and there, look everywhere, but the pots will not topple. So this is practice. You can do all the activities, look here and there, talk, walk. Sometimes they can dance also, keeping so many pots on their head. This is practice. So if we chant and hear always, then we will not be disturbed in our activities. We can continue whatever work we are doing. At the same time, we can keep on hearing the sound vibration. And in this way, Satatam Kirtayantomam will develop into Ananyas Chintayantomam. We will always be thinking of Krishna. We will never be without Krishna thought. So please try to experiment this. It is very simple. Just keep on vibrating your tongue always. Have this practice, whatever work we are doing throughout the day. And then there will be no scarcity. There is spiritual advancement. And materially also Krishna takes care of such a devotee. So when Krishna takes care, when Krishna wants to protect, who can steal anything from us? And if Krishna wants to provide, who can stop it from coming to us? So this is called sense. Yepi anya devata bhakta yajante shraddhayan vita tepi mame vakonteya yajantya vidhi purvakam Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods or son of Kunti is really meant for me alone, but it is offered without true understanding. Krishna has repeated before also in 7th chapter again that those people who worship other devatas, kama, istaitai, rit jnana, their intelligence is stolen away by their desires, material desires. Alpamedasam, their intelligence is less because the results are temporary. So those who are devotees of other devatas, they are worshipping me only. Yajante shraddhayanvita tepi maameva konteya, they are worshipping me only, O Kunti Putra. But avidhi purvakam, they are worshipping me in improper way. The example given is just like somebody is pouring water on the leaves or branches. He is pouring water on the tree only, but avidhi purvakam. There is no benefit either to leaves or branches or to the entire tree. But if you water the roots, entire tree, leaves, branches would be nourished. So this is the way of worshipping Krishna, directly chanting his name, engaging in service, then devtas are satisfied. If you worship devtas directly, directly it is mentioned, people don't read, just see the verses, direct verses of Bhagavad Gita. Where is the question of mal or different interpretation? Anya devta bhakta avidhi purvakam. It is avidhi, improper way. You are putting water there on the leaves and branches. It doesn't serve the purpose. Aham hi sarva yajnanam bhokta cha prabhureva cha natumam abhijananti tatve na tashchavanti te I am the enjoyer and the only object of sacrifice. Those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. So Krishna has been mentioning karmanne vadikaraste ma faleshu katachana. You have right to do your duty, but you don't have right on the results. Why? Yagyarthat karmano anyatra loko yam karma bandana. The works are meant to be done for sacrifice. The result should be sacrificed. Otherwise, karma bandhana, you'll get entangled in the laws of nature, repeated birth and death. Material bodies your karma will produce. And Krishna told, you sacrifice, do irena hi avaram karma. Don't do this fruitive activity, enjoy the results. Sacrifice the results of your work. For whom it has to be sacrificed? Here Krishna is again telling, aham isarva yajnanam bhokta. Bhokta ram yajya tapasam Krishna mentioned previously also. Now he is telling again. That I am the master of sacrifice, I am bhokta, I am the enjoyer of sacrifice. So all the sacrifices should be done for me only, for my pleasure. And those who do not understand this, Krishna is ultimate enjoyer of sacrifice, they fall down from their positions. Yanti deva vrata devan Pitrin yanti pitra vrata Bhutani yanti bhutejya Yanti madhya jinopimam those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors. And those who worship me will live with me. 
Some people tell you worship anybody, you'll get the same result. Krishna has denied that previously. Here again, Krishna is again reaffirming the same statement. Yanti Devarata Devan Pitran Yanti. If you worship Devatas, you go to respective planets. You worship Pitralokas and sisters, you go to the planet where they are living. You worship ghostly spirits, then you go to become Riksha, Yaksha, uh, a ghost. And if you worship me, then you come to me. So Devatas have their planet, the ghosts also live in some planet, and sisters live on planets. Similarly, I have my spiritual planet. If you worship me, you will come to me. If you come to me, here everything is completely spiritual, no influence of time. So thus different results are attained by worshipping different personalities, different manifestations of Krishna in this material world. Ghosts, tamasic result, you also will become ghost. Devta, you become Devta. So where it is mentioned that you worship anybody and you get the same result. These are not justified by Bhagavad Gita. Now one may ask, one has to sacrifice uh, for Krishna. Then how do I, what kind of sacrifice do I perform? So for ordinary devtas, I have to do so much of sacrifice. Lot of money is involved. Tons and tons of clarified butter, ghee and grains are required. Lot of money, lot of charity has to be given in ordinary yajnas. And sometimes the worshipper of other devtas, we have seen they offer their flesh, they offer their head also in the worship. So the worship of Krishna, such yajna is even more tough. So here Krishna is telling what sacrifice you are supposed to do for me. Krishna explains. Patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti upahritam ashnami prayatatmanaha Even offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. So Krishna is telling, does not matter. If you are not very rich, you don't have resources. Patram pushpam phalam toyam. You can offer me leaf. You can offer me flower. You can offer me water. Please offer it to me. Some fruit you can give it to me. These are naturally available. So these things anybody can afford. So if you cannot, uh, obviously now one should not cheat Krishna. I am having so much of wealth and resources, but I will give one leaf only to Krishna. Then Krishna also will reciprocate. Ye yathamam prapadyante. But here Krishna mentions, I accept. If even a leaf, water, anything is offered to me with Bhakti Aprayachati, Krishna is telling, in devotion. Because what Krishna is looking at is our devotion. Everything belongs to Krishna. Krishna is in no dearth of resources. Why Krishna will tell you offer your uh, will to me? Why you work hard for me? Is Krishna lacking servants? No. But by working hard for Krishna, offering our hard and money to Krishna, we develop loving relationship with Krishna. And that liberates us and gives us unlimited happiness. So thus Krishna wants our bhakti. So even a person is very poor, he also can make perfect advancement in this path by offering water, fruit, leaf or flower but with great devotion to Krishna. Yat karoshi yadashnasi yajjuhoshi dadasiyat Yat tapasya si konteya tat kurushva madarpanam. O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities that you may perform, should be done as an offering unto me. So now I cannot offer even patram pushpam phalam toyam, does not matter. Krishna is telling you, do not have uh, uh, these things, then you are engaged in some activity. Yat karoshi. You please do that activity for me, any activity that you are doing. And you are eating something, then please offer it to me. After offering, you can take it. Yadashnashi means whatever you are eating. Yat karoshi, yadashnashi, yad joshi, dadasiyat. Whatever you are offering in sacrifice, offer it to me. Whatever charity you are giving away, every man is charitably disposed. Here if we do charity, that will create punya for us. And anyway, if the benefit has to go to a person, we have to understand. Krishna's laws are not waiting for us to do charity, then only other person will be taken care. We can act as instruments of charity if we want promotion to higher planets in the next life or good birth on this planet, very rich birth. Then you do that. That is Karma Kanda portion of the Vedas. But please understand, has Krishna made such an imperfect governance 
that if you don't do charity then other person will starve even though he is not destined to no nobody enjoys or suffers more than destiny as per laws it is fixed so one should understand then what my effort should be directed for they should be directed only for spiritual life which is not as per destiny's control so that is why if we do charity then as per laws of nature we will get better and comfortable rich birth but then even rich men suffer disease old age death stress anxiety depression everything happens to everybody it will happen in rich conditions so this is not act of great intelligence so that is why krishna is telling whatever you give in charity you please give to me so in that way you will be freed and uh, uh, when you engage in the service of krishna your money even materially they are taken care just like we give uh, prasadam to the people so materially their stomach is being fed they are surviving and because that is food offered to krishna they make spiritual advancement also thus it is best charity if it is done for krishna for spreading krishna consciousness so krishna is telling here whatever you are doing do that activity for me whatever you are sacrificing whatever tapasya everybody has to do some tapasya you have to score marks tapasya you have to do job business tapasya hard work is required do that tapasya for me research work scientists are doing so much of tapasya so rather than investing your such valuable intelligence in some temporary achievements try to use your intelligence to discover me understand me so all tapasya should be done for me so any activity that we do if it is done for krishna krishna is telling then also you will make spiritual advancement shubh shubh phalai revam moksha se karma bandhanai sanyas yog yuktatma vimukto maam paishyasi in this way you will be freed from all reactions to good and evil deeds and by this principle of renunciation you will be liberated and come to me so again krishna is repeated here shubha shubh phalai evam moksha se one should be free from the result of ashub bad activity one should be free from the result of shub good activities also so please understand we should not do even good activities because so called good activities also uh create reactionary results for the instrument so that good thing anyway will happen to the people as per the laws of karma so i should be completely aloof from good or bad activities i should engage in krishna consciousness so when all my activity charity whatever i am eating it is offered to krishna then i am free both from good and bad activities good and bad results then i am free from karma bandhan and sanyas yog yukt atma such a person is actually sanyasi and such a person attains krishna samoham sarvabhuteshu न मे द्वेश्योस्ति न प्रिय ये भजंती तो मां भक्त मयि ते तेषु चाप्यहम आई एन वी नो वन नॉर एम आई पार्शल टू एनी वन आई एम इक्वल टू ऑल बट हु एवर रेंडर सर्विस एंड टू मी इन डिवोशन इज अ फ्रेंड इज इन मी एंड आई एम ऑल्सो अ फ्रेंड टू हिम समोहंस और भूतेशु कृष्ण इज इक्वल टू ऑल सो वन मे वंडर then why somebody is born poor why somebody is born diseased why somebody is born as an animal so from here we can understand because krishna is equal to everyone it means this is the result of my activity now one may ask i have just taken birth where is the question of doing any activity why you have given me this body miserable suffering body so thus this brings us to very important point conclusion that i am eternal it means now krishna is equal to everybody we are all children of god still from birth somebody is having defects and uh, poverty stricken it means he has done bad activities but when before birth it means we are eternal very simple to understand i am not the body i have done some activities in previous life unless i am eternal why will krishna give me a miserable birth because he is equal to all so thus we are eternal so please understand this important point we are eternal and human life is meant to regain our eternal position so god is equal to everybody god is not envious because we are all his children only but krishna tells tu ye bhajanti tumam bhaktiya mai te teshu chapi aham 
वन हु इज माई डिवोटी आई एम स्पेशली इंक्लाइंड फॉर हिम नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट पार्शियलिटी ऑफ गॉड इट इज जस्ट लाइक रेन्स डोंट डिस्क्रिमिनेट बट इफ अ पर्सन हैज गॉड बिग वेसल एंड द वेसल इज केप्ट राइट साइड अप देन लॉट ऑफ वाटर कैन बी कलेक्टेड बट इफ द वेसल इज केप्ट अप साइड डाउन नो वाटर कलेक्टेड रेन हैज नॉट डिस्क्रिमिनेटेड वी हैव बिकम अवर्स टू द रेन्स सो इन अ सिमिलर फैशन कृष्णा इज स्पेशली इंक्लाइन वन मे आस्क ओ कृष्णा इज फेवरेबल इफ यू डोंट वर्शिप मी यू सफर एंड फॉर डिवोटीज आई विल प्रोटेक्ट and i will carry what they lack personally no you also can become devotee chance is there for everyone so god is not partial like that because anybody can become devotee and take benefit apiche suduracharo bhajate mamananya bhag sadureva samantavya samyag vyavasito hi saha even if one commits the most abominable actions if he is engaged in devotional service He is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated. So, like many people may take to this process of engaging in service of Krishna, but because of the force of past activities, we may end up doing abominable activities, which is called durachar, which is not socially acceptable, may not be morally acceptable. So, Krishna is telling what to speak of durachar, su durachar. Person might be committing abominable, very bad actions. but not willingly because habits we cannot just like many people they start reading bhagavad gita and some devotees would tell for one year i was smoking having a cigarette in one hand and bhagavad gita in other hand and now he is fantastic devotee so many devotees he has made so because the habits are not easy proper knowledge takes time to manifest in the heart body takes time to purify so it does not matter important is that the person is engaged child should not be criticized you are foolish as long as child is studying in school if child is not studying then you criticize but if somebody is studying one should not be criticized it takes time just a matter of time let him or her go to classes and in some course of time they will be enlightened citizens in a similar fashion bhajate maam ananya bhag anybody who is engaged in the service of krishna bhajate in his service without any deviation then krishna is telling such a person is sadhu but sometimes he does bad activities so maybe he is not 100% sadhu no krishna is telling 100% sadhu you don't criticize all these activities will stop as krishna tells uh, in the next verse kshipram bhavati dharmaatma shashvat shantim nigachhati konte apratijanihi Name bhakta pranashyati. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. So Krishna is telling those who are not devotee, moghaasha, moh karmano. All the results they may be very sober, very gentle, all good habit and good manners, but after death they may become animals. Everything is lost. But name bhakta pranashyati. My devotee never perishes. because he is in touch with me in my devotional service he will become very very purified very soon dharmaatma very soon he'll become dharmaatma and attain lasting peace as long as we break these laws of nature even though we are engaged in service of krishna we'll be disturbed but if we stick to the service so that is why more important is the service of krishna don't worry much about bad habits they will get corrected keep on trying some fall downs failures will be there please don't get discouraged by that if we follow under proper guidance very soon our mind body will be purified and we'll attain lasting peace so devotee's position is so high even externally they may not know manners may not know how to behave may commit very bad actions also but one is not supposed to criticize who is engaged himself ananya manaso maam hi parth vyapashritya ये पीस्यु पापयो सुप्रीम डेस्टिनेशन सो स्पिरिचुअल एडवांसमेंट नीड्स फेवरेबल सर्कमस्टांसेस human form of life a satvik body body of brahmanas 
or that of raj rishis saintly kings they are very favorable because they are advanced in sattvic nature senses are under control mind is under control i repeat senses are under control mind is under control they are very very truthful very clean very great clarity is there about spiritual knowledge material attachments are not there they make very fast advancement and other bodies those of vaishyas mercantile community or uh, the working class shudras untrained people or women in these bodies rajaguna and tamaguna is very high material attachments and desires are very strong so they are not considered very favorable for spiritual advancement but even in these bodies because this process which krishna is telling it is so powerful it acts directly from the spiritual platform so krishna takes charge of guiding the devotee from the heart so it does not matter if mind and body is not suitable so he is telling here ye pisu pap yonaya so when we do sinful activities we get such bodies which are high in rajaguna and tamaguna so even in such bodies such a birth is also not a disqualification for those maam hi parth vyapashritya those who have taken specifically shelter of mind so anybody who takes shelter of krishna all the bodily and mental limitations are surpassed immediately so thus it is a great news there is no limitation our spiritual destiny is in our hands material destiny happiness distress is fixed but spiritual destiny is in our hands there is no disqualification if we surrender to krishna follow the advice of our loving father the supreme person kim punar brahmana punya bhakta rajarshayas tatha anityam asukham lokam imam prapya bhajasvamam how much greater then are the brahmanas the righteous the devotees and saintly kings who in this temporary miserable world engage in loving service unto me so if we have got body which is actually satvik of that of brahmanas or rajarishis devotees then that is even greater fortune we should not miss this opportunity an important words which are used here is anityam asukham lokam in the previous chapter krishna mentioned dukkhalayam ashashvatam this place is abode of miseries again krishna mentions asukham there is no happiness in this world so please god is telling over and over again in this place there is no happiness so where is happiness here where we are going to die and the people we love we are going to die and we may suffer horrible conditions and more so when our prerogative is to have an eternal life full of all happiness so thus happiness is not possible here that is a design because everybody by nature is full of envy in the bodily concept of life and thus they create miseries for their own selves because of this ignorance so it is anityam and asukham lokam even though for a time being we can be happy it is anityam it is temporary very soon distress will knock on our doors so now this is the most confidential knowledge of all the instructions that krishna has given this instruction this verse shloka krishna will repeat again at the end of bhagavad gita again repeating now please hear shunu me paramam vacha my supreme instruction here again so there is no doubt that this is the supreme instruction of bhagavad gita and what is this supreme instruction please hear carefully this surpasses all the process scientific rigorous difficult easy processes whatever krishna has described before of karma yoga gyan yoga and dhyan yoga this process surpasses and this is man mana bhav mad bhakto madya ji mam namaskuru mam e vaishya si yuktvaivam atmanam mat parayanah engage your mind always in thinking of me offer obeisances and worship me being completely absorbed in me surely you will come to me so we don't belong to this place in a dream world a person is lost like this we have got lost here in this material world we need to go back to the spiritual world to krishna krishna is telling repeatedly ma mupetya tu konte ya punar janma na vidyate come to me once you come you will not come here again those who think of me they come to me mad yajino yanti ma api yanti come to me upetya attain me come to me tad dhamam paramam mama that is my abode 
So Krishna is repeatedly calling, "This is not your place. This is Asukam Lokam. Come to me. Come to me." And how shall we go to Krishna? Our consciousness will be tested at the time of death. It is very simple process. So for that, man mana, always we have to think of Krishna. So we are very fond of planning our life, and planning has to be done. It is important. But which is the criteria? Most important criteria in our planning is we should never forget Krishna. That is why it is told, "Tyaj Durgjan sam sargam bhaj sadhu samagamam." Chanakya Pandit has told, "Leave the association of Durgjan, those who are not devotees, and bhaj sadhu samagamam. Always remain the association of sadhus who always talk about Krishna." So. Living with devotees is very important to always remind us of Krishna. Living in a holy place or around the temple is very important so that we are reminded again of Krishna. We should eat such food which reminds us of Krishna. We should read such literatures which remind us of Krishna. So in this way our entire life should be planned so that man mana we are able to absorb ourselves in the thought of krishna and what kind of thinking we are thinking of our boss also many times as soon as we get up in the morning we check our mails what mails boss has sent and then we are thinking oh boss will ask this report and that thing not that kind of thinking official thinking that is why krishna has told bhav mat bhakto we have to become devotee in great love we have to think of krishna So to increase the love, we have to do bhakti. Bhakti means rendering service. So earlier the system was in Vedic culture. There were arranged marriages. So girl and boy were not knowing each other. The horoscopes were calculated. They were matched. And uh, this is the right way. Not getting carried away by the infatuation again. Your mind and body will tell this is the right person for me. It doesn't turn out to be like that. So the horoscopes predict. You have got this nature. These qualities you are manifesting or will manifest in future. and your life partner should have matching qualities then you will be compatible so in this way marriages were taking place and they were having stable marriages now you test your partner very nicely rightly but there is so much separation and divorce is happening so when there is no love and they would marry each other how love will develop they will start serving so by service love develops automatically So this development of love is required for devotional thinking. For that, bhav mat bhakto, engage in my service. So always think of me, and become my devotee. Mad yaji and worship me. Respect has to be there in bhakti. Worship has to be there. And maam namaskuru, offer your respects unto me. So these simple things we have to do. Man mana, think of Krishna. Just these four things. If we do, then our life is perfect. Krishna is telling here. Mam eva eva means definitely or certainly without any doubt. Mam eva is just a yukta eva matma ana mat parayana ha. You will come to me without any doubt if you follow this process. Man mana always think of Krishna. In this thinking, we discussed how it is possible, as the Vedas are telling, Agni Puran is telling, Brahmand Puran is telling, Brahmanardi Puran is telling. and we saw here in this chapter itself verse number 14 shrimad bhagavatam is telling vedanta sutra is telling anavritti shabdat liberation happens by sound to so shabda sevan mukhe jivva dau we discussed padma puran jivva dau jivva it begins from tongue so everywhere chanting the holy names of god is glorified naam sankirtanam vishnu sarva paap pranashanam pranam dukha shamanas all the miseries will be resolved God will reveal Himself. We'll be able to perceive God, perceive the presence of God simply by chanting. So satatam, this is the first condition of Mahatma, which Krishna has told in this confidential knowledge in this chapter. So thus, I request, please always develop this practice. Keep some reminders, keep some alarms, so that throughout the day, as people get up in the office, they cannot work without tea, coffee, or smoking. You also get up in your office in between every half an hour, forty minutes. Go chant for five minutes. Come back. In this way, somehow train yourself that constantly throughout the day you keep on chanting. Then you can be doing your work, and you will be hearing Krishna's name also with some practice. And then yourself, you will realize how peaceful you have become. And then, if you can also sacrifice your hard-earned money for Krishna, as Krishna told, "Tat kurusha madarpanam," you see how much peace you have. Practically, you can experience. So it is very scientific process. Krishna is telling, "Gyan vigyan sahitam pratyaksh avagamam dharmam." Practically, you will see. how my life is so peaceful how 
I will repeat. Practically, we will see how our life is so peaceful and blissful. How I am making spiritual advancement and I am able to perceive the presence of Krishna. All the concepts will be understood. Just man mana. Always keep on chanting Krishna's name so that we can think of Krishna. And don't do sinful activities. If we do sinful activities, we become forgetful of Krishna. And to come to this platform of always chanting, always thinking of Krishna, we have to engage in service of Krishna, offer respects to Krishna, offer obeisances to Krishna, worship Krishna. Simply by this thing, respect, worship, thinking, devotion, our life is successful. So this is the most confidential instruction. Simply if we perform this thing, then we are happy in this life. There will be no material scarcity. There is peace and the doors of unlimited spiritual bliss are open. With this we end the ninth chapter, the most confidential knowledge. Now next chapter, Krishna is describing further his opulences. So don't miss, very soon we'll meet again to discuss chapter 10th, Opulence of the Absolute. Meanwhile, keep on chanting constantly, incessantly. Thank you so much for here. Hare Krishna.